Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. Over the past eight weeks, we've had players from all around the world competing for this top 16 slot to compete for the largest prize pool MK has ever seen, $100,000. My name is Dustin Kane. Of course, joining me is Brian Compton and our friends from the EU, Jake and Ryan Neal, Ketchum and Mustard. How's it going, everyone? Thank you very much, Dustin. I mean, you know, we're both insanely happy to be here with the Europe guys. Uh, you know, we have five European guys, two other Europeans from the International Mortal Kombat Cup. And they're all here. They're all to play for the massive sum of money that is the 100K. Uh, and there's hundreds upon hundreds of players that have entered these tournaments from the beginning. You know, two months later, here we are. 16 are left. And it's going to be a bloodbath. $100,000. Easily the oh. biggest prize pot we have seen in competitive Mortal Kombat history. And only 16 players left worldwide are eligible to actually stand a chance at winning even a piece of that. And I mean, they've been grinding for weeks. We've watched it from the months. EU, from the NA. It's been, it's been incredible. <laughs> It, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Who's going to win? I have no idea, and that's what makes it so good. It's true. But going into this, you know, thank you very much to Razer for sponsoring the ESL Mortal X Pro League. Uh, there are Razer Aatrox Arcade Sticks, not only available in the prediction point system that we do every time, but also in our raffle that will be taking place throughout the night. You can go to esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle, where there are Razer Aatrox Sticks, headsets, and also a custom-made Predator-style Xbox One. Obviously, the Aatrox Razor fight stick used by one of our entrants today, Perfect Legend, and also, yeah. as you guys say many times, the designated arcade stick of Joshua Gray here yeah. at ESL. <laughs> Shout out Official to the clutch. Yeah. Now, of course, Brian. Yes, sir. We can't. We can't have a tournament without, without a bracket. We cannot. Um, today, we are not going with the single elimination format like we, we have not. typically done in the past. It will be a traditional double elimination bracket. Very exciting. Once again, seven guys from North America, five guys from Europe. Two guys from Russia, and of course we have our two uh, MK Cup qualifiers. Uh, this is just going to be absolutely exciting. Now all of these matches leading up to losers and winners finals will be two out of three. And then of course the finals will be three out of five, with respectively grand finals being best of seven. In case of a reset, we will have that reset again, another best of seven. So best of seven being a set we haven't seen in ESL since the Fans' Choice Tournament a month ago. Correct. Where we saw right. Foxy Grandpa manage to take it over Nivek in one of the Nivek. greatest final sets uh. we've seen in the ESL leagues, but you know. Was... I still love Nivik, he's like one of my favorite players. But the, uh, <laughs> the Fans' Choice Tournament was just one hype moment from the whole of Season 1 so far. So yep. for those of you at home that may have missed some of the best moments from Season 1 of the Pro League, we put together a little highlight reel for you to watch now to see exactly what you're about to watch today. No, we've had incredible moments throughout the season, both NA and U, but I feel as though the greatest moments are still yet to come. I mean, these guys have brought their best. And we're gonna see it today. It's yeah. when you have the crazy it's when you have the crazy tournament pressure where, you know, the second the big money's on the line, that's where, you know, the the, the top player excels. It's the yeah. difference between good player and world class player. Over the last eight weeks, like if there's one time to bring it, it is now. This is where the Definitely. money is, this is where the eight weeks of grinding and you know the stress and the anxiety and this, you know the passion is all gonna um, you know come to a head today. Absolutely. Like this is where they have to bring it. Now for the NA side, we have two people that were definitely Online Warriors. Online Warriors. We yeah. had Crawling Shadow and Crazy Steady. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of, you know, our dark horse in the NA. And then of course we have our tournament veterans, offline scene, pick Perfect. of the hut. Perfect legend. Rio. Rio. MK9 legend, for Big sure. D. Big D. These are very, very solid players that have been consistent not only through ESL, but as well as all the tournaments, offline, combo breaker, CEO, the Commonwealth. I mean... For years. These are for tried the and true veterans. But of course... We got to talk about it? 
I mean, we could talk about it. So there's one <laughs> the player one. from from NA the that one. has definitely been a little more dominant than the others. Uh, Sonic Fox. Let's talk yeah. about this guy for a second. Let's right. talk about Sonic the Fox. Prodigy. The eight weeks the of season one, Sonic Fox has by far been the most dominant in NA. Um, this guy has had obviously he was your fate late champion, so he was a winner right from the off, winning some big money, yeah. um, really sort of you know kicking a nice amount of momentum into the pro league. And here he is today, number one seed in America, mid-season showdown winner as well. So you know. It's going to be hard to take this guy down today. But that's what makes him so threatening, is not just the online presence, but the offline presence. He had it for multiple games, Mortal Kombat 9, Injustice, and, you know, keeping that streak going with Mortal Kombat X. His one comfort of the most zone is players. everywhere. That's yeah. it. Like, there no, is really one is. situation this guy is not ready. And we, I mean, we've seen it before in the league where Brian and I were commentating, and he would bait out everything that was new to him. Yeah. For instance, an X-ray that no one had ever done. He's just like, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out right now. And he baits it out and he punishes every single time. And that's what's really impressive as well. I want to know, you know, there's two other people from NA that are technically champions as well in MK and that's Rio, Rio. and PL. Perfect legend. Back-to-back -back evil champion, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while since he's been really dominant. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic Fox kind of took that crown, obviously, but... Um, we, we could see them square off today. So. But we're going to have to if they both want to win that money. I mean, that's yep. just it. I mean, obviously, it's a top four payout today, but first place, $60,000. Oh. Like, there is a significant margin in money <laughs> from first to second. Yeah. Like, it's you know, it's, it's a life changing. Deal. It is a life changing sum of money. You know? I mean, that's all through the contributions towards crowdfunding, the Sub Zero skin, you know, through everyone at home contributing towards that, making it what it is. Uh, and it's before the end of the night, you know, a champion's going to be crowned, and only one person is going to walk away with that. Now, of course, we've, we've seen Sonic Fox lose before. He, he isn't completely unbeatable. He lost in the ESL online bracket to Killstreak. Kill Shout out to him. He's the only person yeah. that was actually able to stop him online. Then, of course, Dizzy was able to take him out at Combo Breaker. And then more recently. And then more recently at CEO. Mr. MK Rio. Rio was actually able to take him out. Here today. His first opponent. First, his yeah. his yeah. first opponent. That's going to be incredible. Now, we obviously aren't the only ones with opinions on Sonic Fox. We definitely caught up with him before this tournament. So let's see what everyone else has to say. Sonic Fox is a prodigy. He's great at everything he puts his mind to, except when it comes to beating me at Winner's Finals at EVO. Pig, if I had a dollar for every time it took you to get out of pools in an NRS game, I'd have zero. Man, Sonic Fox starting out super strong, just going in, getting the combos, pushing them to the corner. Sonic Fox is good, but this is godlike. PL, your dancing's actually really good. Too bad your Kung Lao's not the same. Two rounds away from Grand Finals oh, once goodness. again, which is obviously a huge redemption for him from, yes. from last week, which was 105th. Yeah. <laughs> not where he wants to be, indeed. What a block. Yeah, great what block, a sir. block. And now Takeda's in the corner still. Oh, man. This is a flawless. Sonic who? Oh, that furry kid. I'm taking him down. Taco's talking about, oh, Sonic who? I'm about to beat him. This random's about to go 0 oh, 2 in this tournament. Already from Sonic Fox. Oh my goodness, what a confirm. Yeah. If you ask me like my opinion on Sonic Fox, I don't know, I'll say yeah, he's alright. Foxy Grandpa's talking about, oh, he's alright. Like his Kung Lao the last two majors. Oh! oh my. And there it is, he bet it all! He bet it all on the the, the X-ray, unfortunately, and how is Sonic Fox so slow? How does he know? He's baited every single parry. I am CR Sonic Fox, and nobody's going to understand true madness until they play me. Every every time, <laughs> every time I see that, it, it first of all the Seawalk from PL just kills me. Oh, that's too me. much. Highlight, highlight every video single by time. Yeah. So Sonic Fox is talking about, and we've seen it before in tournament where players will say, "Oh, like I'll beat you." but then they actually get to play Sonic Fox, and it's a completely different story. And he, he's a very overwhelming person to fight. He's probably the most confident player in the NRS community yeah. right now, but it, it's confidence that's been earned through months and months, years of success. Like, this guy is through and through a prodigy. This guy started out 14, 15, like when he first started competing, and here he is on like a 10, 11th month win streak in Injustice, I believe. Current world champion for uh, MK9 and Injustice, Evo and here today, yeah. number one seed. Yeah, right. I think he has a little bit of the Wong factor too. I think when people sit down I next to him, I think he does. I, I, they're like, oh I man, really think I have to play Sonic Fox. So I, I do think that that may play a role here today. So this is really interesting because you mentioned it earlier. There's technically three champions for NA 
NRS. That's what massively excites me about this tournament yeah. because uh, for me, it's the rivalry between Sonic Fox and Perfect Legend because Perfect Legend right. really was the original world champion for Mortal Kombat. Oh, Two-time two -time Evolution champion using Kung Lao in both those tournaments, winning both of them. And then here comes Sonic Fox, basically takes that mantle of most dominant player for Mortal Kombat, takes it away from him, but they're both here today, and this is the most money that either, either of them have ever played for. So, you know, if one of them is going to take that title away from the other, there's a lot of money on it too. You know, it's not just yeah. money, it's pride. That's true, and obviously we can't forget about Rio, but the NA, our region is not the only one here. Let's be honest. You guys might have something to say about that. I mean, the EU is here in full force the as EU well. The EU guys, it's like, you know, it's going to be hard not to be biased today from our perspective because there We're are biased guys. biased all the like, time. All the time. It's We're, okay. We've seen yeah. these guys grind and practice and play in the eight weeks as well, obviously from Europe. We've got Nivek, the Greek Thunder God himself, number two of the fans' choice tournament, um, dominant play offline in Greece. Greece is national champion for not only MKX, but in Justice as well. We also have Madsen. And for those that may be unaware about Madsen, not only a really strong Sub-Zero player in MKX, but the noob cybot player of Mortal Kombat 9. The only noob cybot player in the world that ever took it at a big tournament. I and remember that. some really yeah. good players. You know, went to you know, big tournaments in America, did well for himself there. Then we've got Fasol, Mitsuwones too. On, I, again, our online warriors, the guys that have, you know, obviously a lot of people might assume you need a massive background in fighting games, offline experience to play and compete. These guys, you know, it's from bedroom to Burbank. They've, they've practiced <laughs> at home. They thought, yeah, I've got pretty good. So I'm going to play online. And here they are now in Los Angeles playing for this like colossal amount of money from just online play and nothing more. Yeah, and you were, you were telling me about Fassel and I mean, Big D is kind of the same situation where they never really won, but they were consistently in the top four, always well, playing week, very yeah. well every single Dedication. week. Dedication. They were right. able to bring it, and that's why they're here now. And Fassel is, is technically your big D of NA. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously he plays a mean Tempest Kung Lao. This guy brings it every week, he improves every week, and this is, you know, this is the final of, uh, of season one, so he has to bring it today. I'm really curious to see how the, like, the typically online guys are going to fare in this offline event against a lot of these guys who have a lot of offline experience. Yeah, We see a lot of upsets, <laughs> sorry, but we have, a, we, have, we have many situations where it'll either go two ways. If you have a player right. that is uh, used to mainly only playing online, it'll either be they surprise everybody and just stay composed, or it's overwhelming for them, you know, and they don't play at their best. But there's been a lot of prep time for these guys. Well, across the pond, you have your own fox. We do the one person we have not mentioned, and that's a foxy grandpa. And he, <laughs> one of our own guys, we, we claim him. Yeah, the, that's the, fine. The, you the can best have gamer tag in the game. You can have him. <laughs> now, foxy has been ridiculously dominant over basically every week that he's played. The only week he didn't win was when he came here. For the fan choice. And then he won that. And then he won that anyway. <laughs> the other week he didn't enter was for DreamHack for the MK Cup qualifier. Which he won, which which he won, won as, well. as well. And then when he went to the MK Cup finals last week in Paris, he then won that. Won so that 50, so what is it for you champion. that you think, why is Foxy Grandpa so dominant? Composure and amazing just confidence, good reads, and solid play. Like I He think, has his own yeah. set of rules that he sticks to. Composure above all. I mean, we, we saw the fans' choice finals, Nivek versus Foxy. Oh, yeah. Nivek took seven straight games of Foxy in grand finals on the loser's side. Match point against Foxy in all of the four games that he somehow managed to keep composed, pull it back, and win the whole tournament. Not many players in the world for any fighting game can be down that much with that much money on the line and keep it together and win. But there's also many people can do it. worth pointing out with Buzzsaw Kung Lao. Right. He has now yes. switched to Tempest, which yes. has now, as the character has developed, been seen as the strongest variation of the three. So he's now coming here. Last time he was in America, he won ESL. He lost Commonwealth, but again, Buzzsaw Kung Lao. Now he's playing Tempest. So he has a much stronger chance today, especially with this competition as well. It's a question whether people can be ready for that caliber of Kung Lao. Well... Let's see what our Fox, as well as the rest of the players, have to say about a Foxy Grandpa. Foxy Grandpa is only good because he has part of my name in it. But take that out and he becomes only a withered old grandpa. Again, the, the same combo now, slightly less damage. Oh, does it intercept with the spin. Wonderful use from Foxy. Will he use the... Not quite the conversion. Oh, here we go. What was that? Foxy Grandpa? I heard about that guy. Once. Right He's here. not gonna break. Oh! oh. Three I just, to two. I just, I just saw Foxy reel back in his chair as I soon as he hit that. Thing. Like the hugest sigh of relief. A Foxy grandpa. Way in bed. For a Brit. He drops the combo again. Oh no! Unfortunately, he does have the meatball spin as well. He is looking at a really hard situation here. And this will take it. Oh, get the grab! Just like Foxy that. Foxy is your third winner in a row. But what a set! Foxy Grandpa beat me at the fan choice, but I'm looking forward to a run back. What a read on the dive kick. He knows. He knows that the low hat is a problem. But he does hit a full for the corner combo. He has no breaker available. What will this do? Is this everything Foxy needs? One more hit will take it. One more hit will take it. 
This is going to be hard for him to pull through. He can't really get out of this. So much ship will take him and that oh. will take this tournament. Foxy Grandpa from the UK is your winner. Right. Mitsu owns. Only owns when Grandpa doesn't enter. Um, crawling Shadow. No, how do I spell that? Is it uh, D A? No, no, hold on. Uh, K. I. I uh, don't worry. I, I won't even bother with him. Um, who next? P L. Yes. I have respect to you, my Shaolin brethren. And Sonic Fox. Shut up. You're like twelve. <laughs> I can't. I can't. What I do can't. you say? Can't do it. <laughs> So we thought we were going to be composed after that. No, one. no we practiced so no, many times. Yeah. There's no composure after that. So again, Foxy Grandpa is right now the most dominant player in ESL. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there is Europe, as we have so many good players here. We have people like Taco as well. You know, Low Lowland Lions own Taco with a really strong Sub Zero, been doing really well for himself. One of the qualifiers for the MK Cup, along with Master VHD, really strong Kano. But we can't forget about the CIS guys. Absolutely, no, we cannot. Definitely. I mean, huge shouts, you know, back over in Poland for Atari and Flett, the two CIS casters that we're doing their rebroadcast. Really amazing stuff from those guys. They're putting such an amazing job, you know, rep in Russia. Surely those guys are proud of them. Speaking but of Russian players, Flett here today. Not Flett, sorry. La, Flett's and a commentator. Cheap, he's not playing. <laughs> yeah. Even though yeah. Flett is a player, I know. But uh, La, the number one, uh, he won the mid-season showdown for CIS. He also won the regional final, so he basically won everything there was to win for CIS. But then you've got Cheap Eddie, the Johnny Cage specialist through and through. Like, much like Pick of the Hut with Kenshi, this right. guy knows Johnny Cage in and out. All three variations, very matchup dependent. Again, which is uh, he's, he's playing to Mortal Kombat X very well when you take your character to that level. But then you've got La, our dark horse of the tournament. Yeah, we, we talked about that quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, we did. And I, we, we also think that possibly um, the other regions could be kind of sleeping on Russia. Maybe they don't know as much about them or they're honestly not, not worried about it. It's definitely something that you uh, don't want to do. Obviously, you never want to underestimate someone in any tournament, even if you recognize the name, maybe if you don't recognize the name. However, uh, La is very good with a very good character. If Hollywood you sleep on Cassie La Cage. and you underestimate Russia, Russia will destroy you. And that's what it's going to come down to. Now, none of this... None of this would be possible at all if it wasn't for the great minds over at Netherrealm. And fortunately for us, we actually have Ed Boon here, and he's standing by with Clutch. Take it away. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm Joshua Gray, your host for today's tournament, joined by the co-creator of Mortal Kombat and the creative director of Netherrealm Studios, Mr. Ed Boon. Ed, great to have you back. I can't tell you how happy we are to be here. I cannot wait to get started here. This is going to be an exciting time. Last time you were here was for the Fatal 8 tournament. It was an awesome time. Since then, Mortal Kombat X has been a huge hit. Tell us about the success of the game. Uh, well, you know, the last game that we did, Mortal Kombat in 2011, which we're, we call Mortal Kombat 9, was, you know, to our surprise, the biggest selling Mortal Kombat game. You know, 20-something years of it, which, who, who's going to guess that? And uh, so I thought, okay, that's... That's where we peak right there. And then this game comes along and so far has actually outperformed Mortal Kombat 9. So uh, unbelievable, 20 plus years and this game is still uh, going strong. So couldn't be excited. We love it, but congratulations yeah. on that success and we yeah. get to see it here today. And you've been able to attend a number of different tournaments in the US. We've seen a lot of tournaments around the world. What's that been like for you to see these competitors play for such big prize pools? Um, well, it's overwhelming. I mean, again, $100,000, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just, uh, I, I can't imagine what's going through these guys' heads, you know, uh, possibly getting $60,000 for the winner, which is amazing. Um, but it's really like looking at the game from a completely different set of eyes. You know, we, we really, these, these guys are able to dissect the game into moments that, you know, nobody, even on our design team, they're doing things that we, we would never have dreamed. So it's just, it's just a great... Um, Great feeling to see people embrace the game, really kind of, you know, break it down to like the smallest details. And we continue to see amazing type of meta in play and also a lot of new vocab terms for a lot of people that are new to fighting games. Yeah. I've learned a lot as yeah, well. And yeah. it's really fun to see that type of growth through all these players exactly. and also for the audience. Yeah. Another big thing, another big success during the launch of MKX was the Sub-Zero Blue Steel skin, yes. which helped the Mortal Kombat X competitive scene. Other tournaments around the world, especially here at ESL, how successful has this been, and what does that success mean to NetherRealm? Um, well, it's been multiple times what our highest expectations or estimates would have been as far as, you know, the amount of money that's generated. And basically, you know, that money goes into tournaments to, to continue supporting. So that really means that, you know, we're going to have these kind of big events 
you know, off into the horizon into next year. And that's going to be, um, you know, it's just going to really make the competitive scene that much more intense, that much more hype. Uh, we, we, we can't wait to see the, the kind of crazy uh, events that are going to come out of this. We're looking forward to it. We're also looking forward to look at some Predator today. Now, unfortunately, Predator is not available in the tournament because he was released on Tuesday. Yes. But we do have a special surprise. Right before the grand finals, we will have a Predator tag team show match featuring Hitbox Tyrant playing as Carl Weathers Jax and EGP Wonder Chef will be representing Predator. What does this mean for you and the NetherRealm Studios to release such an iconic character? Um, you know, the, uh, everybody at NetherRealm, we're, we're, you know, we're children of, you know, movies from the 80s and 90s. And um, so Predator has been such a... Uh, uh, you know, represented so much with us before, you know, the Sub-Zero Spine Rip, that was actually inspired from, you know, Predator. And so this is like a really great full circle moment where, you know, it's so fun to put these iconic characters into the game with the characters that we created. And uh, so it's, it's just a great moment. Also, I want to give a special shout out to your design team for sound. They do such a fantastic job. Really well done. I really expect to uh, see a lot of awards being run, uh, won for NetherRealm Studios next year. Fantastic work to the sound design team at NetherRealm. All right, Ed. Earlier on this week, we had a very special trailer we released where our very own technical director, Brett Beeling, also the master behind the Combat Class series, had a special delivery. And in that delivery was a symbol worthy of a champion. And it's time to reveal that symbol. Ed, if you'll do me the honors, please. Yes, I'm very happy. I, the first time I saw this, I was completely blown away. I love this belt. This, uh, this is the first time we're seeing it, as far as the... Uh... So the winner gets this. The winner gets this, as well as $60,000. I hear the guys talking back there. They said, you know, I want that belt. I don't care about the money. I want that belt. <laughs> which is great. Well, there we have it, folks. That is the championship belt that will be awarded to the first place winner along with $60,000 and a custom-made Predator-style Xbox One. Ed, thank you so much for joining us. That does it for our pregame show. Huge congratulations to everybody at NetherRealm. And that does it, folks. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox begins. Stay tuned.
Welcome to the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. 16 players from the United Kingdom, Germany, Greece, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, Russia, and the United States of America will compete for a $100,000 prize pool. First place, $60,000. Plus, a custom-made Predator-style Xbox One. To everybody watching around the world and to everyone here at the ESL America Studios, are you ready? Let the tournament begin. It is finally time for the finals, Brian. We've been doing this for, for months now. Yes. And it's all come down to this. Of course, our first match couldn't be more of a schlobber knocker, if you will. A real barn burner. A real barn burner, <laughs> of course. Number one seed. This, this whole tournament, real quick, is just ridiculous. Obviously, these guys have all earned their spot here. Foxy has earned it in spades, not only being the most successful player in EU, but as well as coming here for the fan vote and just dominating our players as well. Oh, yeah, that comeback against Nivik, um, that, that was one of the greatest things I've ever witnessed, like watching, you know, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I, I mean, how many times did we stand up thinking it was over? Uh, or at least I, I did it like three times. Quite a few times. times. I got and up, I, had, I oh, wait, sat no, down. Sit down again? Okay. I was doing my squats. It was nice. Yes. It was nice for everyone. Of course, Foxy, Grandpa, and Master VHD was, again, someone that the Neil brothers were talking about. Not to be underestimated. He's definitely a threat. He got here by qualifying. MK Cup. And MK Cup. So, mm -hmm. let you know what? Let's see what VHD has to say. I'm really excited to be here. Here comes Master VHD. Hard knockdown. I'm glad to be here. You know, it's it's a privilege, really. Foxy Grandpa, the comeback. I'm playing Cutthroat Kano. A lot of 50/50. <laughs> oh, be the knife. I can cut your legs easily. Oh my days! He caught. He pressed the button. There is no doubt I am one of the best Kung Lao players. Definitely am my spot here. Right it's here. not going to break. Oh! oh. Three I just, to two. I entered six online ESL tournaments, and I won all six of them. I just saw Foxy reel back in his chair as I soon as he hit that. Thing. Like, the hugest sigh of relief. You know what? Foxy Grand is a great player, but he played Kung Lao, and I really, really, really like this matchup. That was a forward two. Chest pump. So. I think I can beat him. My opponent is a bye. If the next touch will do it. No, Foxy, what are you doing? Oh, it's, it's done. Oh, the no. combo's done. Foxy, you troll. You troll. Yeah. I'm going to give him a good slap for the UK. Ooh, goes to Foxy Grandpa as well. And uh, continue onwards down the bracket and fight the All-American hero, Pig of the Heart. Who can beat this guy? I'm looking forward to the competition. Win or lose, it's going to be some cutthroat stuff. What a set! That was the best grand finals we have had so far in the European League. I'm gonna go for it, that's all I can do. Let's start this. We are back. We're right about to get into our first match here of the night. So, you made a very interesting comment about <laughs> two seconds ago. Did I? Yes. Well, since Foxy's up on the screen now, let's talk about him. Obviously, he's, he's coming here today with the target on his back for sure. And I'm sure we both had a chance to speak with him. Does he look like he's stressed out or under any kind of pressure at all? Not really, but I just want to talk about that faction real quick. What faction is he? And he's the most dominant player, right? So that must mean that my faction is the most dominant faction. That's what it must mean. I mean, that's what that's what the screen says. But of course, we have that's Kano. in Europe, dude. <laughs> yeah, Master VHD. Um, he is a Kano main, Cutthroat Kano. Yes. And I also kind of think he looks like Kano a little bit. Yeah. He is from he is from Belgium, so. <laughs> I'm glad she, <laughs> that's move, true, but he is, he is the MKX Belgium qualifier, and he yeah. is here to show us what he has. Of course, playing Cutthroat Kano. I'm sure he can probably play the other variations as well. Cutthroat is, I mean, for instance, if you, I'd like Cutthroat better because Cybernetic doesn't really have a true overhead, so it's gonna be more, it's gonna be difficult for him to open up Foxy. Whereas Foxy is just going to pressure him with orbits. He's going to pressure him with the string. One, one, right. one, two, one, two string. Wow, first match. Here we go. And here we go. The first match of the finals. And immediately, Master VHD is going in. 
playing real patient though. I mean, he was he was picking his spots there. Oh, and there's that overhead right oh, into the combo in damage. the corner, but he oh, drops. He that 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 could be huge. Foxy is not the kind of guy you want to drop a combo. What a bait! Good block. He has the corner pressure here. So one thing we have seen in the past oh. from from uh, Master VHD is that he's really not utilizing the maximum damage. Yeah, but here we go. Combos. Damage buff and oh, an uppercut. Yo. Wow! What a round! That life lead. What a round! round. Master VHD is not messing around right now. No, he's. I would hope not, but here comes Foxy. Oh, here we go. A lot of damage here. And he's get the mix up. Hard knockdown. You cannot oh. armor that. Yeah, you have to pay such close attention to Tempest Lao's meter. Yes. Because you really need to respect that hat. Oh, oh what a good uh, spin there. Right back in the corner. Hard knockdown. Yeah, not where VHD cannot. wants to be. And that orbit setup is so good because the second hit after the hat is going to break any, any armor. Oh, he gets out here. Oh, man, once again. I mean, it could be a little bit of tournament nerves. I, I oh, mean. I like that VHD was going in, though. He's oh, not that afraid. that was a beautiful Kano ball there. Oh, and he goes for a grab. So, Foxy. Yeah, answers right back. Okay. Answers right back. I'm excited because we really haven't seen Kano at all. No, no. In the I, North American region, we have not really seen Kano. We have not seen Kano at all. Again, using that EX spin. Yeah, so well. Uh, Master did bait it out once, and he needs to keep doing that if he's going to be successful in this match. Master, oh, oh! That was beautiful. He's trying to use the really down nice. four to stop that hat, but he yeah. stuffed it anyways. Right. Oh, Foxy getting his pressure game going here. Oh, oh he we go. through. It makes him break. That's good stuff. Master VHD is playing very smart. He's also using his oh. meter. Good punish there. If you notice, he's, he's not really using his meter to extend combos. He's using it to get out of pressure situations, which is exactly what you have to do when you're fighting Tempest Lao. Oh, and once again, the armored spin. This is going to hurt. Big life lead here for Foxy. Oh, runs up and he gets hit. He's getting pushed to the corner. That's minus three, but oh. he uses the dive kick. The EX, EX beautiful dive Beautiful stuff. Kick. And the first fatality from Foxy. Did, did we saw a little sigh of relief there. Did you see that? Uh, he did. Fatality. That's got to feel good, though, to get that first win out of the way. I mean, there's a lot of pressure here, man. This is the largest prize pool. I mean, the pressure is real, but the pressure must be real for Foxy looking over at VHD right now, looking not too happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. All right, going into game two yeah. here. Starting off, Foxy gets it immediately. And again, these will be right two in, out of three. Yep, right in the corner, and that pressure. Oh, oh, and he converts. I like that setup. Already 70% comp from Master VHD. Pressures into the throw here. Okay. Wake up Kano Ball. Doesn't get a lot of damage off it, but he does get himself out of the corner. I, Good block. I like that he used... I, I get he wanted to get out of pressure, but with that much of a life deficit, I think he should have saved his meter. Because now... To do some more damage. Now Tempest... Excuse me, Foxy has a full stick of butter, and on top of that, he has a round. Yeah, and then Master just burned his, his first bar there. Yeah, and there was no reason for Foxy to break. He, again, he's just really not doing the damage that Kano's capable of. Oh, oh went for an NJP, didn't get it. Foxy is in a good place to take this right now. He is on match point yeah, here. And I like this patience from him. Yeah. He knows there's no reason to overcommit, but he goes in with a down four. And mixing it up with the throw. Yep. Very smart. I Very love that. I really like when players start utilizing those grabs. This game has so many mix ups, and when you start throwing in grabs, it really makes your opponent think. It's another level of mix yeah. up, of course. It just it adds another layer yeah. to the gameplay. Especially if you're coming in with offense from Lao, but here we go, VHD. Master's looking good here, yeah, he has a life lead right now. And he's playing patient. Oh, oh but that, that knife throw. That was a critical error right there. Great jump over by Foxy, and now he's, he's got it all tied up. Yep, oh! Good block. Oh, the down two, he doesn't get punished. The hat hit, didn't oh. cause the throw, he and the now, throw. now he's going go from VHD. He's gonna get a mix up here. He just backs off. Oh, oh, with the grab! So tricky! Foxy, in, in fact, I thought he was gonna whiff and that was gonna be it. That's exactly what I was gonna say as well. That's why Master VHD is up there. Now they changed that orbit. It is no longer plus 27 to plus 14. Right, so. Which means that it's easier to armor out of in case you're caught in that situation where you have to block. Yeah, it used to be kind of an endless block stream. It basically yeah. was. Foxy with a lot of meter here. Good confirm. And again, a full stick of butter for Foxy. He's going to run at him. He's in the corner. And here comes that pressure. And he's got plenty of meter to keep it going. He has breaker. He's got to use it here. He he's not going to break. Needs to break. What? Oh, man. This is this is a long way to go for Master VHD. Oh, no. That's going to end it. So Master VHD is going to go down to the loser's bracket. 
<laughs> and Foxy is going to move on in winners. So again, really solid stuff to VHD, but I, I can't understand that, that decision not not to break there. I don't, I don't know, Brian. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, he, he already had a long way to go as far as life goes. That's um, true. You know, Foxy had a huge meter advantage, so you know he's gonna, he was just gonna continue the pressure after the knockdown. So, I mean, it was an interesting choice. Of course, he's just going to lose his bracket. He's not out. No, this is a double elimination that you and I are actually very excited for. Yeah, and um, he did. I mean, I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the first match is out of the way, man. Foxy's got to be feeling great. Yes, uh, Master BHD. He was. He was the 16th seed coming in here. Mm -hmm. And of course, he looked good. He looked really good. It, he did, but of course, I love that setup, the sweep from Foxy. With Kano, I mean, he has the right tools and he has good buttons to mm -hmm. deal with Tempest Lao. It's right. just once that pressure starts getting going on you, especially in a tournament setting, it's really hard to get it off, especially with yeah. Foxy's frenetic play style. I mean, he's going to be constantly in your face and he's going to be constantly pressuring you. So he's, He also he plays really patiently when he needs to. He's, he's a phenomenal player. I, I love watching him and... He is quite good. I imagine now, we're going to see quite a bit of him today. Of course, that's not our only match today. <laughs> no, it is not. Brian, <laughs> there's someone I want to talk about that's coming up pretty soon here. Mr. Uh -huh. Crazy Steady, okay? Crazy Steady, yeah. He's our one of our boys from SoCal here. He is. now. So, online warrior. I first met him on your stream, on right? my stream. I was just mm -hmm. casually streaming, doing my thing, you know, no big deal. And then in pops Crazy Steady, and he's like, hey, let's play a game. I was like, sure. I'll play Why with not? some of the viewers. I'm like, I'll mock this guy <laughs> up. It'll be super easy. NBD. I think he won like nine straight oh, with, oh, with Sonya. Right? With Sonya. Was it covert ops? It was. He was Demolition. playing covert. No, no, he was playing covert ops. Okay. And then I was like, "Dude, who are you? <laughs> like, what <laughs> you, are you, you doing?" You need to play in ESL. And I told him he needs to play in ESL, and he's like, "You know, I've competed once, but I didn't do too well." And I was like, yeah. "Try again, try again." And then sure enough, he made that that top sixteen the we, week of well, combo breaker. Actually, it was week three. He mm -hmm. made it to second place. That's right. Yeah. And that was his first top sixteen. Yep. He got second place, and from there he was able to grind and grind and grind, be mm -hmm. consistent. And now, of top course, eights, yeah, a lot of top eights. Doing the top eights, yeah. he ended up doing the tiebreaker, mm -hmm. and now he's here. Yo, in in the tiebreaker, he beat Rio and, and Dab. And he beat Dab. Oh. Three zero Dab, and it was heart. it was three two Rio. My heart for Dab, though. Yeah. Huge shout out to Dab. Thank you for competing all season long. Unfortunately, you're not here now. Who yeah. is Crazy Steady's opponent? Well, right now we have Crawling Shadow. That's and, that's and, correct. And Lara, yeah. But I just. You know what? Fine. We'll skip that. <laughs> I just really want to know who's... I'm, I'm, he's, he's my biased. He's my biased. Right oh, yeah. Now. He's a SoCal guy. Yeah. And obviously, we live out here, so... Now, Crawling Shadow, of course... A similar story. Similar story where yeah. he wasn't really huge in the offline scene, mm -hmm. but he's definitely been competing on the online scene, and he's been very consistent every yes. single week. And he's gotten second, of, I think, two times. He has a win. And he has a win. Yeah, That's correct. He won one of the weeks. He has, he has a couple second places, a lot of a couple top fours, a couple top, top eights. Top sixteens. Yeah, he's as well. he's been very consistent, and, now, he, and he's here today. And he 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 did really well. He actually took like the fourth seed. He did take the fourth seed, yeah. and of course his opponent is Lar. Now Lar is someone that we've been hearing a lot about from the twins. Yeah, he they, is their choice for the dark horse of the tournament. Their pick. Yeah, they definitely think that he's kind of the wild card today. He could wind up in in the grand finals. Yes, and we. You know, Russia, relatively compared to UK and NA, historically is kind of a smaller scene. But, I mean, I hear great things about Lara. I cannot wait to watch his Hollywood uh, Cassie Cage. Yeah, and he does play Cassie Cage, and she is definitely one of the better characters that most people agree in the game. And it's going to be really interesting to see, because we've seen we've seen Crawling Shadow play a Cassie before in mm -hmm. Dab. Right. But he was playing Brawler. Yeah, yeah, which is a really different variation. Yeah, and he plays Hollywood. As well as I, I, I'm pretty sure it's mostly just Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him play anything else. Yeah, uh, but again, these players that choose these characters, they usually have multiple variations that they can go into. So we'll have to see. But I'm excited to see what the twins are talking about. I want to know what all the hype is all about. And of course, both of these guys had a couple words to say before the match. Just a few. Yeah. So let's let's hear what they had to say. I don't think we're going to see what they have to say. I think no. we're just going to jump right into this. Okay. And in fact, we are going to jump right into this. And here we, here we go. go. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Going right in. Here we go. Ooh. Lar getting a jump in. Doesn't convert. Immediate break. And Crawling Shadow is switched to Tempest. We saw him use Tempest once before, though. One time, yeah. Traditionally, he's all Sonya. Yep. And he's been very successful with Sonya. He's, he's a tricky player. But here comes Lar with the corner combo. 
Oh, and baits it out. Beautiful bait. stuff. That's what it's going to take here. Oh, oh, good block on the oh, NJP, but gets right a, wow. back Wow, Lars with punishing right now is incredible. The Dark Horse. Round the Dark Horse. <laughs> We're seeing it right here. Oh, doesn't block the low, but no conversion from Crawling Shadow. That's going to hurt him because now he's right back in the corner. EX Snubbreaker. Oh, drops his combo. He still has corner position. Oh, gets the NJP, gets in, forces him to break. Crawling Shadow's not in a good position right now at all. <laughs> the preemptive spin. That was a good punish by Lar there. Right into the punch, and he's just going to do, yep. Wow. Simple, simple stuff. Wow. Lar looking very confident right now. He looks really like composed right now, too. He, mm -hmm. doesn't, he doesn't look nervous at all. Of course, he has a lot of uh, offline experience. Crawling Shadow taking a moment to think. I wonder if he's going to make the switch to Sonya. I wonder if he's going to change from Celine Dion to Carly Rae. That playlist? <laughs> Just curious. I'm curious how you know what his playlist is. Don't ask. <laughs> All right. So 1 0 here. All right, here we go. He's got to get something started. Crawling Shadow really needs to start hitting those. Man, he must feel really uncomfortable in this matchup with Sonya because that is his main. Yeah. And he had an opportunity to switch, obviously, after that first loss, and he went right back to in To be honest, Tempest. maybe he's just trying to make the switch completely to Tempest Lao, but he may not be as comfortable. I, I thought his Sonya was amazing, I, honestly. I agree. I mean, but again, this is something he isn't a mostly online player. He also could be kind of dealing with playing offline for the first time. Very in, true. In a major event like this. That's... that's I mean, if people are, are unaware, it is a huge difference. Absolutely. It really is. It's, to me, it's almost like two different... Two, well, two. it's definitely two different strategies. Yes. Right. Oh, that's going to be a punish. That is not safe on block. That was pretty risky. And he's going to pay for it for sure. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, he's getting something started here. He needs to maximize the oh, damage, no. and he doesn't. And that was two bars. Oh, this is going to hurt. And this this match is all our right now. Oh, goes for the low. This is Crawling Shadow's last chance. Lar almost has two meters here. And a huge life. Oh, oh, oh a little disrespect. And, and there that's it is. Be it. Wow. So, Lar. Lar. Just doing what um, everyone said he was gonna do. Yeah, I very, mean, very very dominant there. Fast. I, his match. his whiff punishing was there. Yep. He baited out some his good spins. His baiting was there. Good reads. His combos were there. I think he yeah. only dropped like one or two combos of the mm -hmm. 17 that he ended up getting <laughs> in that match. Right. And his spacing was great. I mean, honestly, I'm impressed so far. But I mean, that was just his first opponent. We still have to see what's coming down the line for him. He's going to advance in winners. Crawling Shadow's not out. Definitely not. Yeah. He's in losers. He's in losers. Still has a second chance. He. <laughs> that's the beauty of a double elimination, baby. It definitely is. Two <laughs> <Baby>. chances. <laughs> and here we go. This is the first sequence that they had in game one. I mean, he could not get out of the oh, corner. That, that bait, bait was right so there. good. And then right after that, Straight if in. I'm not mistaken, he's going to get a beautiful whiff punish here. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 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 A little complicated. <laughs> you having fun? Yeah, I'm having fun. Okay. This and then a down, a, just hard. a down three to perfectly end it out. Really great decision making from Lar. Definitely. I mean, he looked super solid, you know? The pressure's definitely not getting him today, and he's going for that 60 grand, man. Okay, now can we talk about Crazy Steady? We can definitely talk right, about Crazy right, Steady sweet. now. So Crazy Steady is actually going to be playing Fassel from yes, Spain. from Spain. Who is a amazing player over there hmm? Tempest using Lau. Tempest Lao as yeah. well, but he is, he's is he been very consistent this entire tournament for the EU. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, he's definitely kind of the, the, the bread of the EU, if you will. Yeah, because, you know, Brett, for us, he's been very consistent, yeah. placing usually top four, sometimes Every week, yeah. top two, and he's been very, very solid in that aspect. So I'm excited to see Fassel coming in from Spain. So he's, you know, he's there, just solid, solid player. And of course, Crazy Steady, we've talked about him a lot over the NA season. He's just a really cool dude. He's come down to one of your tournaments, EGT, he did. Yeah. and he's competed offline. He's a but really nice guy. He is a really nice guy, and his fro is sweet, however, I love his name. He used to have a fro, by the way. He cut that. I'm a little disappointed, <laughs> but that's okay. Disappointed? But, I mean, he has competed offline. It's not necessarily his forte. He's starting to get into the offline scene, but this is huge for him. This is huge for both players. This is massive, yeah. Yeah, I, at EGP, I did get a chance to, to catch up with him and just talk about it. And he said he feels kind of uncomfortable offline. 
So, okay. but of course, well, he it has, makes sense. He, yeah, definitely. He has had the last what two or three days to just. I mean, these guys have been grinding. Yes. Like all day. Actually, I know for a fact Crazy wasn't here yesterday because he had to work. He did have to work, yeah. But he, but he has did, been he here did the show other up, days. He showed up like after mm -hmm. and like got a bunch of hotel matches. So hotel matches. Hotel matches. All right, <laughs> well, they're gonna set up. So I think our dark horse might actually be Crazy Steady for the NA. I honestly, I'd have to agree with you. I was, I was, I don't want to say I was shocked, but when I saw the results of the tiebreaker, yeah, that he beat Rio and Dab, and, and Dab. Dab and Rio, I think are two of the best players in MKX. I right mean, now. Rio is here, and he's here for a reason. He has been dominant in MK9 and even early in Justice. He oh, got yeah, top Dab, eight at Evo yeah. as well in 2013. Really, so really I mean, solid. Rio is ridiculous, and he's always been ridiculous. But Dab, we've talked about before as well. One of the most underrated players in the NRS community. Uh -huh. He's so talented and so good. I definitely did not expect him to get 3-0'd by Crazy Steady. Well, so, and of Rio course, too. Well, we have Fassel, first place in the MK Cup Spain, second place Qualify. I mean, he is extremely solid. And now these two have to duke it out to see who's going to move on to winners. He Obviously, looks, he looks bored. Yeah, what's going on with that? He's just <laughs> like, man, I got to be here. Dude, I, gotta, I love his name so much. I gotta, Steadman. It's Baller. <laughs> what? That's an awesome name. All right. Well, maybe if you have another any company, maybe it's that Perhaps, perhaps. Just saying. So, a lot of focus right here. He's definitely ready to play. In second place, of course, ESL. Gives a nod. League week three, week six. I mean, he's obviously been there. Yeah. And of course, he um he's he initially played covert up Sonia. Yep. And I've now he's him, sticking. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I've seen him switch to demolition, which we're gonna see right now. Yep. And he also uh, plays Sonia. He's a very good Sonia. And a very good start though, and immediate break. So Demolition Sonya, oh, she there. has so much potential for damage. She does. And she also has decent mix-ups too, resetting some of her unsafe frames with those grenades. Right, right, exactly. They kind of, yeah, it just keeps her safe, it protects her. That's what grenades do, they protect you. I, they protect you. Yeah, I guess. Oh, what an anti-air though from Fassel, and I just want to say he's using the Gaucho skin. I and love, he's from, I love and the he's from Gaucho Spain. Skin. It's how appropriate. I don't think Gaucho's are from Spain. Either. I know. It, it, come on, man. G give me something here. Oh, uh, okay. But I'll, I'll allow it. Crazy steady right now. Oh, nice mix up with the low. Forces and this is the break. Yep. Oh, oh the no. throw. That was clutch from Fast. That was good. I was expecting it down too, but didn't come from I think Crazy steady was also. Oh. That is still pretty hard to punish. It is. Yeah, he even got like a low poke after that. Overhead low into the combo, and he's going to reset with grenades. I like that setup, but here comes Fassel. Pressure from Lau. He's going to confirm, but not into a big combo. I like the stagger steps that Fassel's using. That I think the, um, it almost looks like he oh, might look be dropping combos, but it really baits things yeah, out. Yeah, but look at that corner carry from Crazy Steady. Oh, what an air to air. Nice air to air. Here we go, right and he in the converts corner. It. He has the corner pressure. This is where he wants to be. Oh, the overhead. Good spacing there, and this should close out close the round. Up. Very nice. Crazy Steady is in it. He is in it to win it. Fight. Yeah, he's a. Uh, you say? Fight. I would say he's your. Hey. <laughs> Good blocks there. I want to bait. Oh. oh. Unfortunately, kind of he didn't a get punish. a punish. Oh, but wait a second. NJP still in the corner. Wow, that was a really ballsy. <laughs> yeah. It, it paid off. It did. Yeah. Oh, plus 14. You can't do too much out of that. He tried to jump back. However, Crazy Steady has full meter now. Fassel's got to watch out for that X-ray counter. Just a lot of respect oh. here. Wake up block. Fassel was expecting the, uh, the EX oh, wake up. Oh, there it is. Should be some good damage. Let's him fall in the corner. Oh, that is. He's got to break. Yeah, yep. that was huge. I know he wanted that for X-ray, but he, <laughs> he had is to out break. Of, trying to run in, but he's out of stamina. You can't run when you break. Which is why I would want to see Fassel going in more right now. Yeah, Crazy he Steady, he, waited he gave him a lot of, long. yeah, a big opportunity there for Crazy Steady. He was just sitting back, waiting for his stamina to get back. Because obviously, um, Sonya, especially oh. Demolition, uses a lot what of stamina. Oh, he had to break there. Smart break, smart this break. This match is going down oh, to the wire. In. And he, if he finishes this, it this goes for a hard, hard knockdown. knockdown. And wow. he gets mixed up. Crazy Steady, oh, little, little bit of a... And, oh, our first fatality? Well, our second fatality. Is it? Our third fatality. Well, we definitely saw one from Foxy. Our sixth fatality. Oh, that's that match went so fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's been Sonya 12 uh, this far. So far. Fatality. We haven't seen any Brutal Bros. Brutal Bros? Want to see some Brutal Bros. Is that a thing? It, you know what? I'm going to give a shout out to Darth Alma for that one. <laughs> Is that his I'm term? Give a shout out. 
Facile. I mean, he did not play poorly at all. There was no. a few times he is using back two a lot, which is Lao's overhead, mm -hmm. and the startup isn't necessarily the most favorable. And I think that's why Crazy Steady was able to get around him a lot more. Especially with, you know, the buttons that Sony has. Yep. Wow, just, I can't believe that dive kick worked. It, I mean, hey, if it works, it works. Three grenades. And he gets them all 34%. back. 34%. Oh, gets opened up here. There we go. Finally, something from Vassal. Oh, but drops the last hit of that combo. That was a hard knockdown for him. Vassal looking pretty solid, though, adjusting to this offline scene. He is. But, I mean, again, both of these guys are mainly online players. Yeah, it's, it's a, definitely a cool matchup to see two like, online players play offline. Now, when that grenade comes after the overhead low, you can actually down poke that on block. Okay. Or even jump. It's just really hard to see because you're expecting everything else to come out. Right. So there we go. First grab from Fassel. And again, oh. using that, that back two is just, it's not the best button to put pressure on, especially on Wake Up. Yeah, and Crazy City obviously able just to yeah. and and jump over in the punish. That he's done it multiple times though. You're right, Brian. Right. Match point right here. Crazy City. Oh. Fassel just. Oh, oh I really love nice it. run under. Good position change there. Now he has the corner advantage. Okay. It's working out great. So that 4 2 finally, or excuse me, the back 2 finally play, pays off. Good blocker, but. Oh, jumps out. Oh, oh good yeah. armor. And he runs right back under and puts Crazy Steady back in the corner. It's a really good situation right now for Fassel. Definitely turning it around, but here comes Crazy Steady with the low. Oh, he has a long way to go, though. A lot of damage he needs to do. Oh, oh he drops wait. it. Picks it back up. I don't know if he meant to do that, but it worked. So we'll call it a. A standing reset? Oh my goodness, not like this, Fassel. You were so oh! close. There we go. That as was a much clutch as, spin. As much as I want to see Crazy Steady win, it's, yeah. it's heartbreaking to see a comeback like that. Yeah, how could you not root for a guy with that kind of hat? <laughs> Fassel has a cool hat. I'm he just does. Saying. Oh, Spanish, man. I got style. Apparently. Oh, he blows all his meter. Fassel does not fall for it. And this he puts Crazy Steady back in the corner. A really good situation. Again, using. I don't like seeing that so much from him. Nice jump back dive kick there. And then, of course, the run to push her further into the corner. And the stagger step with the yeah. back three, but oh! Gets the jump in. No conversion, though. And again, that spin. As he said, he really needs to respect that. Oh, oh neutral jump punch. that was a deep NJP. This is huge. <laughs> and that's what Jumps I'm talking over. about. You can jump out of that. This is so tense. That could change everything that Vassal is onto that. I mean, it, if he oh, can convert the air this. And he Zip. is. 1-1, one, one. Fassel's coming back. Yeah. So good stuff to him, a little nod, okay. He's, he's, like, he's, all right, all right. he's awake. I'm good now. Stedman is checking his Twitter. He's like, man. <laughs> Do you think he'll go to Covert? Man, well, it looks like he doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> look like it. He's gonna stick with demolition, and he's really kind of the only Sony that I've seen use this variation for the most part. Yeah, especially in the UK, there's really been a total absence of demolition Sony. So I, I felt like perhaps this may be an advantage for Crazy Steady in this match, being that Fassel doesn't have a lot of experience against a demolition Sony. But I mean, he's adapting really, really quickly. Yes, he is. And an early break, Fassel did that to keep him in the corner, and I like that decision. But now he's just letting him out which is almost a waste of meter at that point. True. Good pressure here. There we go. Here we go, yeah. A little swaggy combo there, I like it. Oh, goes for the bait, good blocks. Now, if you notice though, Fassel is using that jump back too quite a bit now. And that's gotta be a sign oh, what a for bait. Crazy Steady, and here we go, but, but he, he throws, throws him out, out of the, of the corner. I know how much that, that bothers you. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> good throw here by Fassel. Pretty bad. This is a really even round. Step, Crazy Steady has a oh. lot of meter. That wow, was a what great a reach. Just jump air to air? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then he converted it, and he has a corner position. I see you, Step. Right. Oh, that's got to oh. be. I like it. Grab to the corner. Yeah. That's where he wants him. Hard knockdown. Goes for the NGP. Oh, just lets him jump out. <laughs> Crazy Steady hasn't gone for too many lows, and of course, as soon as I say that... Oh, he's got the dodge kick in there, but he's still got the combo. Good punish. Here we go. Crazy Steady. No meter to break yet. And oh, he, well, that yeah. was very risky. He burned his only bar. But he is out of the corner now. And out of stamina for a while. Good obviously, punish. Obviously, after you break, he comes back way slower yes, than it normally would. Significantly slower. 
A nice bit of damage there for Fasil. Oh, and good again, overheads there. The overhead worked this time, but... And nice, some nice damage. And no hat. Puts no orbit set up, but it's going to work. Okay, that was a smart break. Break for Crazy. Both players don't want to press a button. Oh, that was... And this might be it. Oh, just one more hit. Oh, Wait no. A second. This could be a... Wow. Fasil. That was so clutch. Oh, now just single hits. Oh, wow. Wow, Crazy said he's really keeping his composure, though, after... I mean, that was a ridiculously... He had a pixel left. Right? Yeah, that was Crazy City's game. Fassel definitely stole it. But... Good awareness, though. Oh, good oh, stuff. Oh, we're gonna see a punish there. He used the forward advancing stream from Sony to get Push. away from that teleport. Right. Very smart, very smart. Yep. Crazy Steady is absolutely not out of this just because of that round. Oh! And this could be it for Fassel. So, so close. close. And no, that's gonna be it. not gonna work this time. Not gonna work this time. Crazy said he saw that coming. But I mean, great stuff. Fassel. I mean, he looked phenomenal. You alright, buddy? Yeah. I'm Need a minute? Fassel's a great player, but I mean, crazy steady. Well, like, like we said earlier, we're. Oh, we are very a, biased. A little biased. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's not lie. We're okay, we gotta be honest. Biased. <laughs> so, man, and you know that whole match, Fasel was playing well. It wasn't was? that he he was the only issues that you know I was kind of having with it is he was using his back to a lot, which mm -hmm. again is an overhead and it hits twice, but it's just not the startup frames of that aren't the greatest compared to his other tools like one one two one two that the very fast hitting string. I mean that's very good. It also locks people down with orbit because it's a true block string. Right. I wanted to see that a little more. Uh, aside from that, I mean he was playing pretty well. His comebacks were solid, but crazy steady. So comebacks were solid. That was an am amazing clutch uh, ex spin. Uh, we're probably gonna see it again, I imagine. Right here, just oh, and, and then just perfect patience, waited for her to fall. Honestly, there yeah. was nothing else he could have done. Right. So I mean, he he put all his chips on the table and mm -hmm. ended up working out. Now, Crazy Steady was able to really push the pace of the match. He was able to get his mix-ups. He was going low. He was going overhead. He mm -hmm. was tossing the grenades. But really good stuff from Fasol to realize that you can actually jump out of that setup. Yeah, he. It's possible that he just learned that on the fly. Too. I think yeah, he because did. he didn't do it at first, and then he's like, oh hey. Again, there's, yeah. there's really not a lot of demolitions out there. Right. It's a very rare variation, yep. but a, so, a very strong variation mm -hmm. as well. Crazy Steady will be moving on in winners. Fasil mm -hmm. is still not out of this tournament. If he is one of your favorites, he still has a chance. But yeah. this next... Oh, this next this match, man. This is, I think this is the match I was most excited to watch in the first round of winners. I mean, to be in the first round, I mean, based on points, this is right. where they're at now. So mm -hmm. it's going to be Sonic Fox versus Yomi, excuse me, CR Sonic Fox right. versus Yomi's very own Rio. What happened last time these guys played, Brian? Um, oh, that was very recent. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was just a couple weeks ago. This was a couple yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rio sent Sonic Fox home out of the loser's bracket at uh, CEO, I believe, correct? That was correct. Yeah. So this is a run back from CEO now. Still fresh. Sonic Fox, <laughs> again, we talk about it all the time. But he's just one of the most dominant players in this game, period, in the world. I mean, he's up there with Grandpa, obviously, for most successful player. I mean, as far as his overall resume, I don't. it's really hard to find anyone it's that disgusting. can match. Yeah, that's actually a great way to put it. There's really, he doesn't have a lot of rivals as far as resumes go. Nope. Rio is one of those rivals, though, because Rio is one of the few people that has also beaten him online. Correct. In the preseasons. Yeah, he did beat him in a preseason. Mm -hmm. And of course, they got a run back in the regular season, and Rio did not win. Yep. And Rio so. has been one of the most dominant players in NRS games since, since MK9 yeah. 2011. That's 2011. Five, almost six years in the making of just dominance. He's, he's definitely a legend for sure. Yep. And I mean, so much of the tech, you know, from a lot of like mostly Mortal Kombat 9, but yes, it was all developed by him. Yep. And looks like we're going to get right into it. None so he's business. going. And okay. I knew it. I I'll knew Katana's Sonic yes. Fox was going to use Run. Katana. Fight. Yeah, I mean, I, I know a few people are aware that he's been playing Katana over the last uh, maybe few days, but I, definitely not everyone knows that. So it's quite a surprise that he's using Katana because he uses really strong characters with yes. um, Aaron Black and, you know, Antonia, of course. We see, and he has an amazing power match with Tanya. But he is going to be, I mean,. Rio is going to stick with Kobajutsu. That's what he used mostly at CEO as well. It worked last time. Fox actually said that he picked up Katana just for the Tanya matchup. Uh, apparently he did, and so far he's not doing too bad, but he is getting caught in Tanya's block strings with her Rekka. It's very hard to get out of. 
Oh, and Good goes luck. for the armor. That was really risky. Uh, also, that break was very late. I'm not sure if that would have been worth it, unless he can get something going here with a hit, but no, Rio is not letting him. Wow, Man, Rio. Rio what, a, what a first round. Round two, fight. There was, um, Yomi actually recently released a tier list, and they had Katana down yeah. to like 18, and so... I, I thought maybe they don't know how good she is, but I mean, I it, honestly, it appears that maybe they know. Look, okay, here we go. Sonic Fox getting something going now. The way tier list works is a lot of it is based, obviously, on tournament results, but a lot of it is also opinions. I mean, of course, it's it's really tier lists oh. are really just I don't know. Well, I think they're they're, all, they're very subjective. Yes. And I, I thought it was pretty funny because last week we were talking about, you know, you're, you put Shinnok in fifth place. They put him in eighth. So, I mean, that was pretty close yeah. to what they said. So, you almost agreed. Almost. Almost. He's number one. Right? He's definitely number one. <laughs> Best character in the game. Oh. I like the, I like the way Sonic Fox is using the floats, though. Yeah, but Rio's not biting. Nope. Oh, oh that is going to be a punish for Sonic Fox. That's going to close it out. That's gonna, yep. Just, just cause. A little swagging little, right there. Little float. Yeah. Building the little meats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this kid just, he, it seems like he has no sense of pressure. Yeah. Like it just, it doesn't even process in his brain. Like he's just, he's oh. like playing in his living room right now. Armor's through. Not maximum nice damage, one. but not the worst either. That does not work. Good armor by Rio there. Again, a lot, all this wreck of pressure and he can't, oh. Oh, nice reflect. He can delay those wreckers as well for a mix up. Nope. And this actually might close it out. It should. It should. Oh, oh the stage brutality. I love it. Oh, Sonic. man. He looks so serious right now. Oh, that was literally. Did you see that exhale? Like, yeah. And it's honestly, we don't see him like that too much, though. No. Fox is usually never. very lighthearted. Even you know, if he loses around, he's like, whatever, he brushes it off. But he knows that Rio is one of the players that has and can beat him again. Correct. He's done it several times, probably more than anyone else actually yeah, at this he, point. He's used that armor workup quite a bit. Surprised Rio has not baited it out yet. <laughs> this is exactly how Fox wants to play. Right. And Rio's obviously playing it right as well. Just yep. Well, earlier we saw Rio throwing his own Yeah, having a little uh, yeah, he was projectile war. The, the Kunai, or, excuse me, not the Kunai, geez, the size. Mm -hmm. But with, when nice you have the life Rio. deficit, you cannot make those trades. You have to walk in, and that's exactly what Rio was doing. Nice block strings there from Fox. And Fox wants... Wait plain, a second. Plain patient. A lot of respect. Oh, Run? Wow. And, and then as soon as love I say it. that, he just runs up and grabs Absolutely him. love it. And he does <laughs> it again. again. No way. Let's see how many he can get. Oh. Oh, and he goes oh. for the X. Barrel of rum. Another grab. See, this is what I'm talking about. That's why grabs are so disgustingly good in this game. Because they, they just add that extra layer of fear. Like, oh, oh crap, is he going to grab me now? Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's an additional mix-up. Mm -hmm. Oh, those oh, cancels. Here we go. Letting it rip this time, it. but now he's in the corner. Yeah, I think that was actually probably not the best time to let it go. Yeah, poking his way out, and still, Fox has not been able to hit any one of those. But at least Rio is he's respecting it, so yes. then Fox gets continued pressure. Oh, doesn't complete the combo there after that jumping punch. And a long block screen from Fox. Oh! Oh, man. So, of course, Sonic Fox match point here. But yep. real, real with the nice life lead. Oh, yeah. here we go. Oh, oh gets in with the armor, it. but he drops the uh, That jump was three. huge. Real needed that damage to close out the round. And now he's stuck in pressure from... Sonic Fox. Oh, oh the X-ray. That might. I think it's going to close it out. Yep, oh, that's that going to do it. it. Sonic Fox. That was probably one of the biggest matches of the tournament in Fox's mind. And he got yeah, it out of the way right away. Yeah, he got it out of the way. But again. Oh. Look at that. Respect. Oh, and of course, we could see them play again. I mean, Rio's one of those That's guys that thing. could definitely wind up in the grand finals. And he is—he has come back from losers bracket in the past, yep. and he has torn through. 
<laughs> and won tournaments. We've seen it before, so it's... Rio is a beast. Yes, he, he definitely is, is. And that matchup seemed to work well, though, mm -hmm. for Fox. He was able to kind of zone out Tanya, not deal with the pressure as much. He had good armor options. He also had the option to reflect if right. Rio was trying to get really crazy with throwing the side. Which so, he I did mean, initially. And he did. Mm -hmm. So overall, it seemed like it worked out. Rio was trying to do you know, his thing, get in there, do the pressure game, and really just start to dominate. But yeah, Fox is amazing. Fox was his, able to, to counteract it. Right. His adaptation is just off the charts. He constantly changes his play style. His reads are you know, phenomenal. Kids, yeah, kids, are, kids are prodigy, for sure. All right. So... Real quick, we have, again, a special guest for mm -hmm. our Predator exhibition, and that's going to be Wondershift, and right now Clutch is standing by with him. Take it away. Wow. Wow. I don't know who's more excited, me or Katana Prime right now, because that was some <laughs> sick Katana play. Well done. Well done, Sonic Fox. Wondershift, great to have you here. Tell us about what the season has been like for you and the different tournaments you've been attending. Oh, uh, I've been to some great tournaments. I've been to SCR Prelude. I've been to uh, all of the EGP season events. Those are extremely fun. Uh, I've been to a lot of online tournaments, uh, Wednesday Night Fights. Those have all been good. Uh, basically, the season has been amazing. It's been unlike the release season for a game that I've ever seen. I mean, you know, MK9, uh, Injustice, n none of those have been as insane as this uh, initial tournament season. And we're just getting started, folks. We're just getting started. Let's talk about some of the matchups here today. Do you have any favorites or any uh, upsets you think they're going to happen? Uh, well, I think that last match was really telling. You know, uh, I think that both of those are great players, Rio and Sonic Fox. And I thought that the winner of that has a really good chance of taking it all. And seeing, <laughs> seeing Sonic Fox upset with that katana, just crazy. I got no Katana is my main personally, and so I have a lot of bad habits uh, initially when she came out. So there's a lot I have left to learn. So thanks, Sonic Fox. Give me some pointers as well. In the tournament later today, after the winners and losers bracket finals, we're going to have a special tag team show match between you and Hitbox Tyrant. Now you're going to be matched up with some fans in the audience to play on stage as well. It's going to be a best of five, and you'll cycle through. Winner will stay. Loser has to change with their tag team partner. The winner, uh, if they win twice in a row, will have to change with their tag team partner. Tell me about Predator. How have you been practicing for this event? Uh, well, I've just been, you know, I just started going into the lab, just trying to figure out, you know, what's all the dirty stuff? I was thinking, what would Sonic Fox do, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, just trying to trying all his variations, just trying to figure out everything, playing with a lot of my really close friends, figuring out the matchups, of course, trying to practice the Jax matchup. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's been super fun. So. All right. Well, it's great to have you here, Wonder Chef, and best of luck tomorrow at the EGP tournament that's happening in Laguna Hills. And also, you're going to Evo? Uh, yep. All right, we'll see you there. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the action continues for the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. something out there, watching, waiting, and when the time is right, the ultimate enemy attacks. Any time now. Do your worst. Predator. Out of the jungle. And into combat.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are Ketchup and Mustard, and you're watching the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. And of course, thank you, Razor, for sponsoring the ESL MKX Pro League. Going into this next match, we have Lowland Lions, Taco versus Razor, Perfect Legend. Uh, these two guys, either of them, no joke, Taco qualifying from the International Mortal Kombat Cup, and uh, Perfect Legend qualifying with you know a very high amount of points from the ESL North American side of the tournament. So we've got Europe versus North America coming right up. Taco, um, a common representative in the ESL European Pro Very, League. very consistent, no yeah, doubt about it. A consistent player, literally the sixth per, uh, player in the top five. So he was just shy of making it through the points. But here he is through his success in the Mortal Kombat Cup, and that's how he's here today. And let's not forget his nail-biting grand finals where he narrowly lost to Madden almost making it from the uh, mid-season showdown too, so he had two chances. So before we talk too much about these guys, we have a video prepared for you as to what these players think about each other. I feel like I can beat everyone here. That's how I feel. But I have to show myself that and prove and just make sure, you know, I play my game, that's it. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, it was going to be easy because I know it's going to be hard. Every turn I won has, has been difficult. My first opponent is a perfect legend. Of course, a very, very well-known player, a really good player as well. X-ray, oh, it's not man. even going to work. He teleported right into the hat and then Peel converted yes. it. Perfect legend. Perfect legend. And we didn't see a break from Dab simply because he didn't have the stamina. Taco, honestly, I don't know much about him. But I don't know what character he plays. Uh, I've never really watched a match video of him or anything like that. But I hope to give him a good match. I don't want to like be like, oh, I'm just going to body him because I don't know. I don't know how good he is. Oh, once he starts going in, he really starts oh, going in. That was risky, and he's going to pay for it. For me, like, if there's added pressure, it's, it's kind of hard to really Say for me right now, because right now I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm the best player. Honestly, I feel like no one's the best player until they win the ESL. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can steal the win because these guys they played against each other. They have of course players like Tom Brady and other character specialists. But uh, from what I've seen, people in Europe do play slightly different, different characters, different ways of playing, and I kind of expect to surprise them with my style of play. I want to keep things competitive and very, you know, fun because this is an opportunity for us to show the world how competitive fighting games are and how it can, how it is in spectator sport. So I think that's more important than me winning or anyone winning. It's more so about like, you know, growing it. So understandably, a lot of respect shown from both players to each other. Uh, obviously, Perfect Legend now sponsored by Razer, sporting that Razer Aatrox deck that you at home can pick up in the prediction system and the raffle as well. But let's talk a bit about Taco. Like, what is this guy's background? What is he doing to be here? So first things first, Taco is a character specialist. He has only ever used uh, Sub-Zero with the occasional piece of Master of Souls Ermac, depending on whether he thinks the matchup is good or not. But the important thing here is that he played Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat 9. The reason he plays Grandmaster now is because the similar thing, you know, uh, Mortal Kombat 9 Sub-Zero is very true to Grandmaster now, and he's been sort of taking those fundamentals and doing uh, very well for himself. Then the same thing can be said for Perfect Legend. This guy is a Kung Lao main through and through. Been using him since day one, I mean, for four years. I mean, no, we've known this guy for a long time. He started things out, two-time world champion for Mortal Kombat 9, Kung Lao both times. Quite a resume behind him, so I expect a good match here. Obviously, there's a lot of money on the line. This is what the last eight weeks of preparation has boiled down to, so. Well, these guys have not fought each other in tournament yet, obviously, as it's uh, Europe versus North America. However, these are two very popular characters, and both players are going to know how to fight each other's characters at this point. But I think the first hit's going to be very important here. Obviously, yeah, whoever can get that extra bar of meter. I'm going to Taco, denying Perfect Legend of that meter build, and the uh, chip that is really, really important and imperative to Tempest Lao. There you go, Lao with no hat available. Could be really good time to go in. And there's a meter button spin, a counter poke. Oh, wait, or oh, Taco is put in the corner. That's not what we want to be against Kung Lao. Well, it's a game of corner game. I mean, Tempest Lao, when he puts you in the corner, it's party time. When Grandmaster corners you, it's party time. Oh, Perfect Legend knowing that goes to the teleport, just gets straight out. Oh, there's your bidding hat. Good hit confirm, Perfect Legend. Oh, no, hat spin. Very risky there, getting the forward 4-2. I'm not sure if that was hit confirmed, but either way, it does get him a good combo. Jumps over, does drop the combo, missing the hard knockdown on the slide. Good a lot of respect being shown the neutral by both players. A lot of just blocking going on. Here comes Tempest Lao, it's that chip and the meter build. I mean, it's just a complete block string. Opt to spend the bar, keeping the pressure going. Has the meter, really good read from Taco there. Getting that close on the screen. Oh wow, the Ducky gets blocked and there's a full. Oh, no punish from Taco! That was no way near intentional. Trying to get a full combo punish. That's going to bite him and Perfect Legend taking that round due to a, just a bad punish. Really. Round one going to Perfect Legend. Taco's got to be kicking himself for that one. That was his round left on the table. You just got to shake it off. Oh, he gets the 4 4. That's going to be big damage. That's like the bulk of Tempest Lao's damage. 36% meterless. Here comes all being hat. Teleport just to make it harder to deal with. 
Lowers his hitbox on the down four, makes himself hard to hit so the cross up doesn't connect. Orbiting hat once again, Prevalation uses it to go in. Oh, there's a spin! Good punish from Taco, 1 1 into the ice ball. So here's what he's trying to do he's trying to get the grounded freeze. Corner carry, obviously, that's what Subzero's going to do. Taco corner lives carry. for the corner game. That's that. Whenever I see this guy play, it's all about that corner game. Oh, no, that's a risky slide, but he does bet, for, uh, bet that kind of situation. Oh, free jumps himself. straight into the clone! I mean, a lot of the times you're going to jump in. That was one of the nerfs that Sub Zero received where if you block an attack, the clone disappears. So, no doubt you try and jump in and make the clone vanish. Really good challenge on the teleport from Taco. Meteor Band spin for Perfect Legend. Taco takes full advantage with Punish for the back two. Doesn't get the refreeze, but still the corner pressure is there. And that was actually really smart. Getting rid of the clone before he has a chance to shatter it. And he gets a nice hit confirm, throwing him into the corner. Amazing stuff there from Taco. One all both players. Corner Fantastic. is to Taco right now. This could be bad for Perfect Legend. He has got a bar, but it's a question of if he wastes it, he's going to be in the corner without bar. But PL's not, as I literally before I can say it, not afraid to teleport, but this time teleports into an ice clone, throwing him in the direction of the corner just to get the clone out. That's the obstacle course he has to deal with here. Like, we're not seeing a huge amount of damage from Taco, but it's just the corner carry that's important, and knowing that... Oh, nice any time! Four, two, me bird freeze! That's going to be corner carry once again. One side of the corner to the other. Nice hard knockdown. Here comes a clone! Hard knockdown runs just to get closer. Puts a clone out. Gives himself the space. Back three, three, safe. Perfect Legend goes for the back three. Oh, wow, good interrupt from Taco, recognizing it. Unfortunately, drops a combo again. Tries to do the anti cross up, but gets hit by a jump kick. If that was a jumping punch, I could have been a lot more damage. Oh, meter burn spin. Meter burn hat even. There we go. There's oh, the throw. Oh, crucial throw into the corner. Pio has no meter to do the wake up attack. Oh, double low. As the ice clone, possibly option selected. I mean, Taco tried to ant-yeah that, but unfortunately getting caught by the grab anyway. Oh, no how on his head. Perfect Legend couldn't go for the spin. And there's oh, Meatman spin to counter start. Remote. Back two's got some mad start time there. That could even be it. Wow, what a round one. Really good start from Perfect Legend. I mean, that was either that was anyone's game. And uh, you kind of got to shake these things off, because obviously in the first round there, Taco had the round. He just did a bad punish, didn't get the damage. That could have been his round. He already won a round after that too. But that's the perfect legend that we know. This is the perfect legend that plays on Reed. That clutch meter burn spin, if blocked, would surely have meant the game was going to go to Taco. But you can't be hit. afraid. You know, you can't be afraid when you're going to play now. You have to... Sometimes you will just make those risky decisions. And evidently there, you know, where sometimes it will cost perfect legend matches, but in that situation, those kind of reads, you know, it, it gave him the first game. And there's two out of three, you know, one more game and he's in a good situation. I do not think that Taco should change characters personally. I mean, it was like, no, it was a good game. It could have gone either way. Like I said before, it was just down to one good read from Perfect Legend, but that's what we know this guy for at this point. Really impressed from both players. And again, that crucial first hit to be really important. I'm nice blocking the hat. I'm blocking the down four as well. Oh, that was a really good time to avoid the clone. Now the danger is when, when Tempest Lau gets that first hit, and right there, he gets the meter burn spins. He gets the meter burn spins, and he gets the uh, the meter burn orbiting hat. And the regular orbiting hat. There's a down four. Tucker oh, might nice. just get the advantage. No doubt going to end in a hard knockdown in the corner. Hard knockdown, here comes the clone. Just nicely spaced, but this is a really smart thing. Going in for the jump kick, knowing that Taco's going to block it. If you block that, the clone disappears, you can land safely. There's a grab, jails him in. Has no hat, so Taco being a bit more risky with an advancement, but ooh, PL getting that match point. point. Anyway, match point, perfect legend. Nice. Perfect Good legend stuff. doing well for himself right now. Taco fighting back, the perfect legend just getting in those damage at the, the best possible time. The thing is, he's also getting really good reads on the teleport. I mean, we saw him teleport into a couple of clones, but for the most part, he's really had an answer for the ice clone mid screen. From his Taco is left with no meter right now. It's going to be really hard for him to the comeback without bar, especially with no breaker available for quite some time. Perfect Legend goes for raw damage, drops a wake up, trying to predict the slide, doesn't quite get it. Good defense from Taco. Oh, a really nice bait for Perfect Legend, knowing he's going to try and armor it. And that's the thing about the back down. This is one territory. Oh, just like that, Perfect Legend takes it 2 0 over Taco. A much more dominating second game. But right at the end there, I think the crucial thing right there was PL. We're talking about his reads, right? In that situation, back 3 2 1 into uh, Orbiting Hat. There's a gap there. Very little player uh, characters can truly interrupt that. You can throw the Orbiting Hat and block on prediction of armor. That's exactly what Taco did. Meter Burn Slide is unsafe. PL gets the full punish. The Perfect Legend just looking really, really strong today. Um, especially in comparison to obviously the last time we saw this guy uh, offline was at the Fans' Choice Tournament where you at home managed to vote him and Justin Wong as well as Nivek and Foxy Grandpa into play. And this is night and day for PL. This is this is the PL we know. This is the PL that got here successfully. This is the PL that won World Championships. I love that read there. Using the Orbiting Hat just to get rid of the clones so you can't shatter. It's just, it's just reads, you know, we, we talk about reads time and time again. That's what separates, you know, the top players from the good players. The people that not only they understand their character, but they can understand how to get into the mind of the person that they're against. And that's yeah. a very crucial thing in all fighting games. And obviously match-up knowledge, perfect legend. No um, doubt. Back in the MK9 days, Tom Brady was like his go-to training partner. Again, shout-outs to Tom Brady, one of our fellow commentators from the Fatal Eight. Uh, Grandmaster Sub-Zero as well, through and through. So I'm sure it was a match-up that Brady was ready for. Um, well, Pierre was ready I for. I think Sub-Zero was always a uh, popular character. I mean, it's unlikely that you're going to go into a tournament and not know how to fight Grandmaster Sub-Zero. I mean, it's such a popular character, especially day one, where, you know, <laughs> it was dominated by Grandmaster. It and Europe has a lot of Sub-Zero players as well. We have 
quite a handful to deal with. But moving on in the tournament, it looks like we have Nivek from Greece against Big D from Florida. So another Europe versus America showdown. This is a match that I've been really excited for. It's not going to be Thunder God Raiden versus Ermac, but Big D, you know, doing America proud. And we were talking about Faso earlier where consistency has gotten here. Big D is basically the North American equivalent of that. He's been so persistent, almost making top 16 every single week, getting top eight, top four, sometimes grand finals, even though he actually didn't win a ESL uh, online tournament. It was just consistent the con placing. Yeah, that the consistent high placing is what got him the points that he needed to make it here. Obviously, we had the honor of playing this guy in casuals for like the past couple of days. His Ermac is incredibly strong. But then uh, Nivek, especially against Nivek. Thunder God Raiden, as we call him before, the Greek Thunder God. This guy is the regional champion for Mortal Kombat X and Injustice Gods Among Us. We saw this guy have a stunning set versus Foxy Grandpa at the fan's choice, where it was seven straight games he took off Foxy. And when Foxy made the comeback, it was match point every time. This guy is no stranger to high pressure situations, especially for the big money he's playing for today. But we're also talking about the fact that, you know, with my character speciality, obviously with Mortal Kombat X, the fact that you can choose variations, you've got three different ways of playing one character. So if you're going to specialize in just one now, you kind of have a lot more sort of creative freedom as a character specialist. Nivek uh, and Big D, I know Big D played Nightwolf and Ermac in Mortal Kombat 9, but Nivek played Raiden exclusively in MK9 and MKX. Like this guy has a lot of history. A, a, a Raiden specialist through and through. You know, Big D, obviously, you know, he made his name in the, in the NRS scene with a really powerful Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat 9. The making best, the, the change to Nightwolf. Yeah, I, I would say that that could be uh, that could be true. Obviously, repping the Brotherhood of Shadow here today. Fifth place final round, third place CEO, and seventh place at NEC. This guy is no stranger to high pressure competition. But then you have Nivek. I mean, something I'd like to stress about Nivek is this guy is incredibly proud of his group of players, of the Greek dojo guys over in Greece, and just this country. This guy is proud to be representing Greece today. Well, uh, Greece has a really strong community of players anyway. Obviously, over you know here in the US, you have uh, GGA's own Nikolas, who is a Greek player. He was uh, the Greek Dojo Academy originally, moved to Chicago. Here he is now. And, you know, Greece has some really strong players. You have Metzos, you have Sumerian. But here, you know, more importantly, Nivek is the one remaining Greek in this tournament. And you know, no doubt he's doing this. His, his guy is proud, I suppose. And then we know that Greece, they have Metzos, the Ermac player. Who does Big D play? Master of Souls Ermac. I'm, I am sure we'll see some in-depth matchup knowledge here. Nivek is going to know the matchup. But the important thing about Nivek is he just has these... He converts off every single little thing, even a jump kick will convert into a you know a straight Superman. Insane corner carry, you know, crazy good 50-50 game. Uh, Nivek knows how to do all of this. I mean, in, in recent tournaments, we haven't seen him perform, like, I suppose, as highly as he has been at the start of the league. But as we've mentioned before, like, if there's going to be one tournament where you need to sort of pull it and do the best you've ever played, it's going to be for that 100k. However, that's where the tournament nerves might set in. Looks like we have another video ready for these players now, which we are going to throw to. I'm 100% confident that I'm the number one Ermac. I've proved myself online and offline. Oh my goodness. This is a dominant man. Finishes with an X ray. Wow, bread. Um, I don't think there's anyone else out there that does what I do with Ermac. And the name of the game has not changed since MK9. It's been fitting my play style perfectly ever since. Bread is he's like four for four on this. So Rebella really needs to you know, respect the fact that Bread's blocking doesn't punch. Uh, I've seen him all, almost every week at the uh, USA ESL tournaments. I'm very impressed, but uh, I'm sure with D, I'm not afraid. Get, oh, a neutral jump man. punch of his own! That like caught him at the very end of that uh, that hurt box. I feel extremely confident. I don't think I don't think he's ready for my Ermac. I don't think anybody is ready for my Ermac. I'm going to be taking a lot of people by surprise. Very convincing route right now from Red. That was, he almost got the punish. Nice neutral wow. jump punch. No breaker from Fox. Very smart. Is this going to be a flawless? To me, it, it will mean everything for me to win first place for 60k. But just to be able to be a part of it in general, that's one of the biggest prize pools in the history of fighting game of fighting games in general. So from the words of the man himself, nobody here is ready for my attack. Nobody is ready for what I can do. Nobody plays Ermac the way I do. Very strong words, but you know, he's a confident man. Very happy that Netherrealm released a classic Ermac skin. Very vocal about that. Obviously, it's a really cool looking skin. And <laughs> he got Nivek with Future Raiden just be like moments before we went live, making sure he went to uh, sign into his ID to make sure we get that skin. I guess there's that comfort zone that players will prefer certain skins over others. So both players will be ready to go. I mean, you it's going to be a matter of uh, Thunder God Raiden and Ermac. It's going to be a game on the ground. I think it's going to be just establishing a strong ground game. Uh, Nivek plays incredibly good footsies. Uh, loves that neutral jump punch. If he thinks you're going to press the button, he will get it. Oh, he gets a quick first hit with his down three. But there's the corner carry already in the corner thanks to one Superman dive, as is the power of Raiden. Oh, goes the trip guy, doesn't quite get it. Down one, punished by back throw. 
Already gets the down force. The down force being very plus. And uh, speaking of plus, getting that run cancel on the Thunderball there. Oh, nice instant jump one. Nice read on the neutral punch from Big D. Does drop the combo though. That normally does lead into Vortex. Uh, for, for those who may be unaware, Vortex is a situation where you stun somebody, put them in a situation where they've got a guess high or low, and you can loop that over and over again. Ermac, one of the characters that can do that. But as is Thunder God Raiden, especially on the corner, it gets big damage, but Big D really bringing it to Nevek right now. This will be a good confirm. Nice, and getting Soul Ball. This will be big damage, 35% into a low. Really smart stuff. Really good for the raw 17% damage. This is looking really good for Big D, but Nevek gets it into the corner carry once again. Big D back to the corner. Ooh. Option select back two, make it safe. That's the smart stuff. Gets the option select, but looks like the round might go to Big D. Oh, speaking that, caused him to use the breaker. Even if Nivek loses this round, he's made him for the bomb. Oh, he blocks oh, the teleport. He misjudged the uh, chip damage, but Nivek doesn't get the combo confirmed. That could have been his round. Oh, that's so upset. That was the comeback for Nivek, but unfortunately, a combo drop. But at least Big D was forced to use the breaker, so Nivek is going in with a big meter advantage. I mean, Big D definitely uh, misjudged the chip damage there. Must thought it was going to kill. Nivek tried to take advantage, but did drop the combo. Speaking of that, has got him in the corner. Oh, Big D goes to the forward ball. The overhead into the teleport. Fortunately for Nivek, it trades. Oh, catches it. That was no a good interrupt there. Nivek. Nivek. Nice interrupt, but again, as you said, no confirm. Now it's two for two. Both times, Big D has gone the jump and punch and actually contested an jump punch with his own jump. Oh, beautiful combo from Big D. Nivek forced to break. Not only trying to take the 50 50 situation. Oh, Big D doesn't get the combo. And once again, we'll end in the corner. Back to the wall. He has no meter, so he has no wake up armor option, even if he wanted to go for it. All confirmed. Nivek restanding. Goes for, the goes for the string. Chunky mid. Goes for the chunky mid there. Oh, nice wake up attack there from Big D. Risky read, but it did pay off. This will go into a restand, which will give Big D the potential to win the match if he gets the read. Oh, he does! Low. He takes it 1 0 over Nivek. I mean, that was that is Ermac through and through. He's going to land the hit. He's going to end the combo in Soul Ball, do good damage, and then put you in a situation where you have to guess what comes next. And uh, right there, I mean, case in point, he went for the low option. Got it. Great stuff there from Big D. So two strong rounds through and through. Big D, like he said himself, he is confident he is the best Ermac, and today he can prove that. If he manages to get really far today, if he wins, I mean, almost that will be like, hard to dispute. To an extreme degree, Big D has almost proved that already by just being the most consistent Ermac player. Not only in these online tournaments, but offline tournaments, but Nivek as well. Speaking of consistency, this guy has also placed really highly in Greek tournaments with his rating. 50 50 string, maybe just to grab it. Oh wow, there's the long range strings that Thunder God can bring. Nice block on the low there for Big D. Oh, and he needs to jump straight into the Soul Ball. That is one of the situations you cannot trade the normals. Nice new jump punch there from Nivek. Oh, Nivek drops the combo. That is unfortunate. Gets the back two. This could be big damage. Big D forced to break. And there's a really good read from Big D. Get the recapture. Big damage coming up right now. It's the air Soul Balls. I mean, if he's going to read, then Nivek's going to go for a jump in. He can get that. If that stuns, that's a full combo. Big damage. Oh, he's jumping into the Soul Balls. Not a great situation for Nivek. Oh, goes for the risky straight zoom, man. Oh, and he gets it again. again. Gets a jump kick. Kick confirmed. It's a dive. Oh, and he just goes for just one too many match points. Uh, nice big point D, even. Big D. Wow. On the verge of 2 0 in Nivek from Greece. Big D showing like, tremendous reactions right now to just deal with that new jump punch that, as you said, Nivek goes to so often. Oh, he just go ahead, tries to option select, unfortunately does not get the full version, gets the uh, shock, which does less damage. Big D tries to stop the new jump punch, but eats it this time. But no confirmed from Nivek, which is unfortunate. I mean, there was no doubt that Nivek was not ready for that new jump punch to land. That's unfortunately why he didn't get the conversion. Has Once to break again. that. Oh, good block on the sword ball this time. Oh, ends the string. Tries to oh, and he wow. comes up, gets hit by a jump kick. This is quite risky stuff. I mean, any hit could be important here, but the thing is, Big D has a breaker available. He can be a bit more risky now. Really nice pressure for Big D, showing just tremendous understanding of this character. Oh, Nivek with the corner carry. Oh, drops it once again. You cannot be dropping your combos at this point. And once again, that is unfortunate to see. We're just seeing, I think, too many combo drops. I mean, the nerves will get to these players. Breaks, putting Nivek in the corner. Really nice anti air from Big D. Ops not to go for the other juggle after that. Pretty sure Nivek yeah. has to watch one hit this time into Sobel will mean the game goes to Big D. Just that, that's gonna oh, be it. Oh, Nivek has to break. Oh, and he drops the combo. I, 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 before I can say it, doesn't quite drop it. Gets the grab. Lovely tech from Big D. Great tech from Big oh, D, and that will be the that set. That was the decider right there. Big D taking it 2-0 over Nivek. But I mean, like, it's it's situations like that where he's so confident a grab was coming. Gets the throw tech. Gets that throw tech. Amazing stuff. Moving it 2-0 over Nivek. Big D just moving playing out of his mind today. I mean, huge congratulations to moving on. Nivek still very much in the tournament. As I said before, it is double elimination. So that means there is a loser's bracket that when you lose in winners, you are sent to. But if you lose again in losers, then you are eliminated. Well, that really is the nature of the uh, double elimination bracket. You get two chances in tournament. You know? if, you, if you make it all the way through in winners, your rewarding grand finals is one set. But right, you can see there, uh, this was the start of a potential comeback. I mean, it looks like he's dropped the combo, but the string does convert anyway. It was the clutch throw tech. That about was the throw tech. Oh, no. Oh, that was it. I mean, in that situation, that throw would have been the start of something amazing. I mean, like, Nivek was chippable, but if he got the grab, it would put him about sort of maybe sort of 5% health left. Chip, any kind of 50-50 there. Another grab, you know, it's one of those read situations where you want it to be at, but the throw tech just shut it all down.
Oh, Reach, really good play from Big D and Jomi. Now, he is here to prove himself today. Obviously, you now this guy, he hasn't won an ESL weekly. He is here through consistency. So if the one ESL tournament he does win is the top 16 for 60k, that is, that's not a bad way to do it. That's the one that you want to win. I mean, we're going to this next match now, which looks like it's going to be uh, Madsen versus uh, Mitzwoens. European showdown. The, the two Germans in the tournament are having to defeat each other. The German Mitzwoens battle. getting hype on the stage. Wonderful the German, stuff. The German... The Germans are fighting each other. But it's funny because it's, it's going to be Scorpion and Sub-Zero as well. Madsen, as we mentioned before, uh, not only is he a really strong Grandmaster Sub-Zero player and Blood God Kettle Khan too, but he was really the noob cyborg of Mortal Kombat 9. Uh, I mean, no one else really achieved his level of just, uh, I guess, success um, among good players with the character. But Mitsu owns on the opposite end of the spectrum, began his competitive fighting game career through Mortal Kombat X, playing nothing but Inferno Scorpion. When the adjustment was made to Inferno Scorpion's combo strings, he started to have a little bit of a look around. He still plays a little bit of Inferno, but seems to now try and favor a little bit of Ninjutsu. But to the point that we don't actually have any idea at all which variation he's going to go with in tournament, because I have been seeing, obviously these players have been practicing extensively over the last couple of days, and I've seen this guy use equally as much Inferno as he has Ninjutsu now, so I don't know how to call it. But Madsen, we, we will see his true dedication to Noob Cyber. He'll be playing Revenant Sub-Zero, his faction's Brotherhood of Shadow, and we'll see the faction kills if we can get him. But as you can see here, you know, Madsen was the winner of the mid-season showdown. Um, he just kind of popped up there, took everybody out, had a really good grand final set against Tucker in a Grandmaster Mirror, uh, and just pulled through. He was your winner, getting, as, as you can see you know, here right now for the top 16 for the 100k. But uh, the interesting thing here is that before the tournament began, he did test your mic deliberately to unlock Revenant Sub-Zero <laughs> for the tournament that would have that the is, within uh, half an hour. That is somewhat dedication when you're just going to go into the mini games just to get your favorite skin. But you know, moving on, we've got Mitsu Owens. Like I said before, the Scorpion Specialist. First place at ESL Week 5 and Week 6. Uh, six. This guy won two weeks in a row. Well, the two weeks that Foxy didn't play in these tournaments, Mitsu Owens, really, that was his time to shine. Uh, he just popped up, beat everybody. You know, he defeated White Black. I mean, the favorites of the EU, I guess, as a whole, where you had White Black, Nivek, you know, yeah, Taco as well, like where, you know, some of these people that uh, Mitsu Owens fought, but just pulled through, won the entire thing. As you can see, a Pone Hawk in the crowd. Yes, I don't think we're going to see any Quan Chi's in this top 16, which does make me sad. I really wanted the chance to talk about Quan Chi a little bit more. We'll have to wait. Well, Rio is still in the tournament in the loser's bracket, so I'm sure we'll still have our opportunity to do that. If Rio picks Sorcerer in this tournament, I, I can already see it. I can already see Revenant Sub-Zero. That is the truth. That is what I want to see. But I don't think he's part of the Brotherhood of Shadows. We can't go for the faction kills. That's the thing that that's the thing that Madsen would always do. Where he would land in the finish him situation, he would do uh, he wouldn't do a fatality. He would do a Brotherhood of Shadow faction kill that looks like a noob cyborg portal, and I respect that. I mean, this guy loves it's kind of like straws, clearly. I suppose, but it's something. If you can't play noob cyborg, you can play the closest thing to it. I guess his brothers, all right? Yeah, that would do. I mean, we're going into the match now. It's going to be Scorpion versus Sub-Zero. I mean, we've seen this match time and time again. We don't know what variation uh, Mitsu Owens will be picking, so it's impossible to tell right until the tournament match. But Inferno really was where Mitsu Owens established his threat. Uh, he doesn't care. Like, he is the easily the most riskiest player. He is the tournament. most unconditional player I've ever seen in Mortal Kombat X. This guy knows what he wants to do. And if you don't respect his game before he respects yours, he is going to run through you. But it, it's very scary, because when you fight someone like uh, Mitsu Owens, who in any situation where, even if it will cost him the tournament, he will still make a really gutsy read that would either lose him that or, or win it for him. So, I mean, we, we saw time and time again, the two tournaments that he won, it was hard read after hard read, but 90% of the time, the read was always in his favor. This guy plays with his heart, you know, rather than uh, what is guaranteed and what is not guaranteed. He thinks it's gonna work, he's gonna try it out. Okay, so we're uh, moments away from going into the set. I mean, we're approaching the, the latest stage of round one here, obviously, uh, top 16, yeah, round yeah. one, uh, all the losers so far down in the losers bracket, but you wanna win. You don't want to be losing a set and then obviously doubling your workload to, to get a chance to win that money. Scorpion and Sub-Zero. I like this. I mean, it's very sort of true to MK, I suppose. Uh, but the variation has gone Inferno. How about that? It's Wayne sticking with his guns. This is what got him here. But he said the entire time that, you know, Ninjitsu was what he was going to try out. But I think he's realized that Inferno is what, where he belongs. You know, this is his character. I mean, he's using nothing but Inferno at the start. Ooh, but the very important first tip going True Sub-Zero fashion. Down four to bag that first tip. It's not respected. He'll grab himself a free bar meter at your expense. Oh, and he gets, goes for the vine, but actually goes straight into the clone. Madsen hard knockdown into clone. Now, in these situations, right as I said it, Mitsu owns, he, you can't condition him. You cannot lock this guy down. I mean, oh, the, the strat too, will he confirm? Gets the refreeze, big damage incoming from Madsen. Hard knockdown into clone. I mean, this is exactly through and through. Oh, grabs him into the clone. This is like, this is just a complete uh, workshop on Grandma Sub-Zero. This is exactly what you do. Oh, and he gets some low as well. It's very like, it's like we said a few weeks ago in the ESL European League. Madsen and Taco have very similar similar sub-zero. So if a Taco is more about a very game, Madsen 
uh, goes to the slide a lot more as a, uh, sp uh, a closing space option. But we're not really getting a chance to see it here because he's all over Mitsu Wounds right now. Oh, nice. Trying to block overhead and low. But here comes a clone once again. I mean, just keeping him locked down. But that's two for two. He's gone for the, uh, the slide and gone through whatever the offense was. The problem is Mitsu Wounds. He is using the meter to obviously get rid of the clone. But he's still ending in the corner with not a lot of frame advantage. Oh, Madden doesn't get the confirm, but still gets the clone. This is right where Mitsu Wounds does want to be. Three. He's gone straight through it. Gets the back three low minion. These are the risky stuff that he will just go for. Drop the combo. Very unfortunate. Uh, no doubt uh, Madsen's going to get a hard knockdown situation here. This stage is pretty small as well. I mean, you can generally find you being put from one side of the screen to the other from Ooh, one to zero. Three. Good hit confirm for Madsen to realize that's been blocked. Oh, wow! Mitsu owns clutch using the Viral Interaction, and that's a jump in! No confirm, fortunate for Mitsu owns goes to the down two at whiffs! If he was any bit closer... Oh, and he gets the trade anyway! That's exactly what he needs! Oh, oh no, he doesn't go for a full combo! combo. It's a grab! <laughs> oh, my days! Oh, and he takes the round on it as well! Madsen clearly not happy about that. Very, uh... <laughs> Enthusiastic. Uh, so very. I mean, that's the thing about Madsen. Just you, you can't, you cannot really count Bitcoins out. I mean, he's he's gonna do something crazy, and then win the round on it. Oh, he's gonna throw him in. Oh, 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 disappears oh, oh, oh. moments before. But there's a full jump in. Back one, two, freeze. We Good saw damage. that in round two. We saw it at round two. Madsen read the low uh, and got the jump in, but it was too far away to capitalize. But speaking of capitalization, tries to capitalize on the corner combo, but he's too high up. Yeah, refreeze doesn't occur. Oh, Mitsu Wounds buffering a minion, opts not to do it. Good block in the overhead. Oh, down four straight into the Ice Clone. This is bad for Mitsu Wounds. Ooh, drops the combo, but it does not matter at this point. He's so much down on life. Oh, oh back, back to back. back armor. I mean, that situation where you're chippable, he's got two bars where he can just do armor and more armor. Uh, it's unlikely we're going to win. Uh, but that will be, you know, 1-0 uh, for Madsen. Uh, I, I keep getting these guys' names confused because it's two M's. I keep trying to say Madsen, and I think Mitsu Wounds. It's not good. Obviously, Madsen moving up 1 0 right now. I'm not sure if Mitsu Owens is considering swapping variation, but just taking a moment to really collect themselves. Well, I think what happened there was uh, it was uh, basically token Mitsu Owens, you know, poking at people with high or low minion. However, uh, especially in this kind of offline environment, if you try and poke at somebody with a low minion and they get a read, there really is no chance that it's just going to catch you. Even if you predict it, if you know the low minion's going to come, you can block it and get a really good punish, or simply just go for the run and jump, as we saw Madsen do, not only in the second round, but the third round. Third round getting a full combo from him, from literally jump distance. So, I mean, I guess he's going to have to take a minute to think about it. Uh, he might. I think we're going to see a switch to ninjutsu here. I mean, I've actually, uh, we have Scorpion players in the UK, and I spoke to him. Yeah, no, he's gone for Inferno. I think he's just gone for the, not the stage change as such, but I think he just wants the time to think about it. Well, the stage was 50 50 and did go straight back to Quartan Jungle, so Mitsu Owens is on the same stage once again. Well, I think this is the stage that he likes. I mean, Madsen will only ever pick Jinsei Chamber. That's his favorite stage. Uh, but again, the first hits can be important. Both coaches have really good down fours, as I can say. Oh, Madsen goes for it himself, doesn't quite get it. No first hit just yet. This is a really important, because obviously it gives you instant access to a breaker. Uh, but that's the important thing about playing against both these characters. Oh, just no nice minion. read! Because on prediction of the Ice Clone, catches it before he can block. Good stuff. Mitsu Owens, no doubt going to go for a restand. What's the mix up? There's the throw, guaranteed 12% if you're not trying to tech the throw. I mean, sometimes in that situation where it can go 50 50 as such, uh, the throw is the lesser of two evils, or three evils as well. It will result in the least damage. It definitely will. But it's damage nonetheless. And that oh, was oh, from nice hit confirm. Back one, two, freeze. And he has him in the corner. And once again, I mean, we saw how hard Mitsu Owens just tried to get that uh, combo conversion here. But now he's in the corner. This is where he doesn't want to be. It's re frozen. Uh, hard knockdown from the slide. Tough mix up from that going into the throw as soon as you're blocking. 50-50s. Oh, Buffers once again goes to Meter Burn. Oh, no confirm from Madsen. Meter Burn, good block from Mitsu Owens. Catches the back one out in the air, tries to confirm a bit too late on it. Unfortunately, Mitsu Owens blocked down fours all day. Oh, and there's no minion. the close range, no minion. The risky stuff pays off, and he gets it again. This, this is, is the Mitsu, Mitsu Owens. Owens. This is how he qualified for top 16, and this is what might win him the set. No fear. No fear from this man. Oh, oh that's it. Play, play, that's no it. Minion. You don't see that every day, especially at an offline tournament. Oh, my days, Madsen can't be happy about that. And, and he gets it in round one. one. This is the Mitsu Owens we know and love. This no is what fear. got in top 16. Point blank low minion. No fear, mate. Oh, I didn't get the back one two hit confirm. That's going to be corner carry. He's halfway across the screen. This combo will put him in the corner. Hard knock down into clone. Too close to the clone. Oh, out. fortunately for Madsen, Mitsu Owens clone. backs straight into it. It's another clone. I mean, we aren't really seeing uh, Mitsu Owens ever go for wake up, beat, teleport in this situation. I, mean, I think he just knows it's so obvious. Oh, really, really bad read from Matt, uh, Mitsu Owens. That is unfortunate. Another clone. Oh, no confirm low. though. Oh, tries to grab him into the clone, but the clone disappears just in time. Speaking of wake up teleport, Mitsuwones getting the wake up telly. And he jumps over, putting him in the corner. The chip will take it. Madsen on match point right now has Mitsuwones in the and corner. Once again, back to the corner. This is tough. Hence Grandmaster Sub Zero, especially when you've got a player like Madsen. Oh, no, he catches him with the back two. That could have been more damage, but he mustn't have been ready for that to connect. Oh, and yeah, clone. Beautiful stuff from Madsen. Shades of Mortal Kombat 9. Don't jump, mate. 
Oh, oh there it is! He grabs him into the bone! This is exactly what Sub Zero wants to do. Very unfortunate drop to the combo, but he catches him anyway. Oh, good block from its own double block on the overhead. Not using the opportunity to get out of the corner. He needs to get away from the corner. Oh, that's going to be a clean punish. Unfortunately, Mitsu owns, has no meter now. He can't break this combo. Hard knockdown. Will not kill, but it's a setup of this death now. This is not a situation you want to be in. Gets down fours. All goes straight through it. Spencer's only bar. And speaking of bar, gets hit by Madsen. Reversal 2-0 to Madsen. Mitsu owns knocked into the loser's bracket, ending it in a classic fatality. A uh, very recent new item that you can get. Uh, for Mortal Kombat X. Obviously cool a free stuff. download now, you can get Classic Fatality for Scorpion, Sub-Zero and a few others from MK1. Johnny Cage. I like Johnny Cages. Speaking of Johnny Cage, we have Cheap Eddie coming up. This is a matchup I'm really looking forward to though, because obviously, uh... <laughs> two character specialists, but before we get into the next match we have right here, this is pretty much case in point. Uh, the rounds that Mitsuo won, right there, like the rounds that Mitsuo won, uh, were won off basically what Mitsuo does best, which is make really gutsy reads, have no fear, and take the round. But However, if you play on that and then drop your combos, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Because you're making the reads. And if you get the situation, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, I'll let you finish your sentence eventually. It's all but good. if you make the reads and you play on just, right, I'm going to get this teleport, I'm going to get this low minion, and then you drop it, you've made that really hard, tough read, and you've wasted your potential. It's from it. not only dropping combos, though. It's being in a situation where you play incredibly risky. If you're playing really risky against Sub Zero, you're not only going to get punished for your troubles, but you're going to get put in the corner. The second we saw Mitsuwones get put in the corner, he didn't have a good time. You know, one risky low minion, one risky teleport, one risky slide. You're in the corner, and it's not just the damage you took, but it's the position that you're in, and you can lose the round just through positioning alone. So huge congratulations to Madsen for moving on. Mitsuo owns still in the tournament, loses bracket now, but we are moving on to what I believe is the final match Ooh. of uh, the round one of the winner's bracket, which will be Pig of the Hut, Yomi Pig of the Hut, nonetheless, versus Cheap Eddie, the second CIS qualifier who got second place at the regional finals, losing only to Lai in that tournament. Before we talk about these guys, we do have a video that we can show. They have a couple of things to say about each other. Let's check it out. Petty, uh, last I checked, he's from Russia, and he uh, plays Johnny Cage. So I think we're both part of the Special Forces, but I, I've uh, jumped ship to the White Lotus, and that's the, that's the uh, one I represent. So if he's got some um, harsh feelings about me jumping to the White Lotus, he can come come from Russia and bring it because I'm going to be ready. Последний момент. Смотрите. Вот хорошо и комбит. Опять не продолжает. Но здесь никаких отговорок не может быть, что что-то не так. Есть у него армор, нет, и пропускает лоу и отлетает. Первая бруталити на нашем турнире. I am the best Kenshi because I live and die by the blindfold, and that's what I'm going to plan on to do forever. Nice armor karma to beat the slime. Dear Pig of the Hut, I'm coming for you. Signed, Cheap Eddie. Bring it, Mother Russia. I love Cheap Eddie for that very reason. This guy, he plays with Johnny Cage shades on. He is through and through very passionate about this character. But I think this is the exciting thing about both these guys. I mean, obviously we have Cheap Eddie here. Uh, one of the more consistent Russian players in Mortal Kombat 9 also. This guy played Johnny Cage in MK9, playing Johnny Cage in MKX. Uh, all three variations. Uh, and he generally will pick the variation that depends on the matchup. If he likes the matchup against the character, he's going to do it. Uh, but as we can see in many of these tournaments, uh, character loyalty really seems to do really well in these ESL tournaments. Um, however, speaking of character loyalty, you know, let's not forget the fact we have Pig of the Hut, the only Pig of the Hut from the US, uh, a Kenshi main, through and through. You know, the same level of dedication Cheap Eddie puts into Cage, Pig puts into Kenshi. Second place at EVO for Injustice in 2014, third place at EVO in MK9 in 2012. This guy is no stranger to World Championships. Well, he also knows what it's like to have the mantle of best player of a character. Like, Pig of the Hut was undeniably the most dominant Kenshi player in the world for MK9, and he was also the most dominant Zod player uh, in Injustice. Like, he, he knows what it's like to specialize in a single character, make it work, and then really just achieve that status of best in the world with that character. Well, you have two kinds of players, really. Obviously, you know, it, there can be more, but universally, it's character specialists or players that have loads of characters and will counter pick depending on the situation. We, uh, in MKX, at least so far, we have kind of seen specializing do you better in tournaments so far. I think it's also partially because of the variation system. We've had, people have put more experimentation into a single character. Uh, whereas normally when a game would come out, they'd play multiple characters. In MKX, many people have played a single character, tried all the variations, and they kind of just sort of uh, really build their repertoire there. 
Um, and as you can see, you know, Peter Hutt and Chief Betty, no exception, and both doing really well. Top 16 in the world right now, playing for the $100,000. Doing their button checks right now, making sure the buttons are good to go. You don't want to play for $100,000 with bad buttons. Now, once again, I would love to extend a huge shout out to Flet and Tari, the two Russian casters who will be doing their thing in Poland right now, obviously doing the rebroadcast to the Russian audience. So, hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Hopefully, you're cheering on your boy, Chief Betty. I expect there to be some bias in the commentary. I'd be somewhat disappointed if there wasn't, no doubt about it. But we know, we know nothing about being biased on commentary. Uh, Not at all. Except when Foxy's playing. And then it gets pretty brutal <laughs> against him if he loses. Of course. But I mean, obviously, uh, they looks like both players are ready to go. I don't really know how to call this matchup. I mean, Johnny Cage has to get in. Um, but you can be patient against Kenji. But. It is entirely dictated about what variation that Pig uses. It's definitely not something that I've personally seen before. But we know obviously Pig of the Hut being Yomi. They have Yomi DJT, one of the best offline players so far in the United States. Does play Fisty Cuffs Johnny Cage. Uh, I mean, I think it's a good call. Pig has opted to go for balance. This really is the uh, uh, the tried and tested keep away variation for Kenji. This is the one that you pick if you want to keep someone away from you. Uh, I know it's uh, everyone's favorite character is you know you like Kenji and Jackie Briggs where they they are built around keeping the opponent away. But wow, going that keep Eddie go straight punish. in. But very unfortunate, had no stamina to go in. Uh, can't run cancel, gets a dash instead, which is punished by Peter Hutt. The A-list Johnny Cage, gonna have to be very careful to use stamina to get in. If he uses all of his stamina when he gets in to Kenji, he's not gonna have it to do his uh, dash cancel, which is what you pick A-list for. And that's one of the risks there. Um, and also the fact that he's using his meter to uh, try and almost uh, whip punish a Teleflurry, which is a great, good stuff, but you're getting big damage. Uh, sorry, little damage for uh, pushback. And there's the meter gun, rising karma, just whip punish. Oh, Chibi doesn't get the dash cancel, that could have been big for him. Oh, there's the jump in! Complete jump, Chief Eddie, here comes the nut punch, full combo, nut punch once again, what's the mix up, goes for low, run cancels again, nice arm range up for Pig of the Hut, this won't take the first round, but, I mean, the positioning alone may do. This is chip territory right now, Pig, uh, Pig of the Hut just has to play really patient, oh, the oh wow. from Chief Eddie, and he wow. takes the first round with a down four! That's the damage buff that Johnny Cage gets when he's low on life, he does more damage than the specials, that kick did so much damage to Pig of the Hut. That was a clutch situation, Chief Eddie, I mean, he got here last out of all the guys. Oh, down four's under the Telefury, that was amazing. Great throw there from Pig. I mean, that's one thing Pig will do a lot. And after a grab, he will whip a spirit charge to build meter. The more meter you have, the more armored reversals you have. And that's what you want when a character gets in. Nice chunky 30% meterless damage. Oh, with the um, the shoulder just to get the meter build. Good stuff from Pig of the Hut. Yeah. Oh, and he gets the blocks the overhead. Great stuff. G Petty blocking that. Gets the punish. Doesn't oh, get the no, run confirm. Oh, that's a good jump from Pig of the Hut. Just get in that space. This is what you need as Kenshi. You just need to get that space between oh, you. Wake up grab. That's really smart stuff going for the wake up throw. You acknowledge that they're waiting for a wake up rising karma. So you get the block. You get the wake up grab while they're blocking, putting Chief Eddie in the corner. Not for corner pressure, but so Pig of the Hut has the entire screen to work he, with. He couldn't have more of the stage behind him right now. And that's exactly what you want when you're trying to play a somewhat of a keep away game. When you've got the life leads as well, oh, there's the meter by counter poke. Pig. Nice counter poke with the rising karma. Oh, meter burn kick baited from Pick of the Hut. Good jump back in prediction. Again, goes to the throw. Just to look at the full speed distance you get after that throw. Really smart from Pick of the Hut. I mean, Chief Eddie's being patient, but I mean, it really is an uphill battle when you're half health down. You have to get in, and your character has the, the character you're against really has no business. Oh, wow. You full screen run throw. Really good. Pick of the Hut just in Chief Eddie's head right now. Oh, he tries to go for the punish. Gets a meter burn grab. I don't think that was intentional. Gets a grab anyway. And it's uh, looking very lightly on the first game. We'll go to Pick of the Hut right now, unless Chief Eddie pulls back and. Miraculous comeback. Almost lost my word there. Oh, there's the um, overhead. Obviously, Pig the Hut expecting the low off that string. There's the nut punch. Oh, we thought a throw was coming. Oh, and he jumps into the corner, and Pig the Hut ready for the cross up. And he cross up there from Pig. Great stuff. Chief Petty looking like he was certain that that was going to get blocked, but obviously goes for the cross up from that. But it hits, wasn't ready for it, and that lets Pig take round one. I think, unfortunately, in those situations, you're, you can sometimes be so prepared for an outcome to be one way. Uh, when it doesn't occur, you, you just don't know what to do, you know? Uh, in that situation where he got the hit, wasn't ready for the hit, went for the jumping cross-up, probably thinking it was just going to be a block into a cross-up punch for the pressure. Uh, very unfortunate there, jumping over uh, Kenshi there. Pig getting the acne cross-up, he's ready for it. And if Kenshi has meter, you can't really jump Opt in. Opt to go straight for a rematch. I like it. I mean, Chief Eddie unfortunately dropping most of his dash cancels right now, so hopefully this doesn't come back to bite him. Oh, nice grab there from Pig, acknowledging the minus frames. Down for oh, wow, really good stuff. There's the dash cancel he needs, and there's the restand. That's what you pick Cage for for the restand and the nut punch. Oh, he tries to count the poke, but Pig of the Hut's Rising Karma has two hits. Chief Eddie's nut punch had one hit there. Very unfortunate. 
Oh, there's the meter burgers to get through. Peel the hurt corner, and a wake up back throw once again. Chief Eddie not respecting that option. I mean, the wake up throw is a much more viable option for Kenshi than you have the meter. You know, the second you have the meter, the wake up reversal is a threat. If you start respecting the reversal, you can hit by wake up grab. That's crucial to the way uh, he likes to play this character. Ooh, good patience from Chief Eddie to acknowledge. That's coming. Oh, he drops his combo. Oh, that could be big. Gets the overhead again. But he does not be confirmed. Really ready for to be blocked, no doubt. Very unfortunate. That could have been his round, but match point. Pick of the hurt. Very unfortunate. I mean, he had that combo, but he just has to shake it off. Oh, really good stuff. Obviously, he did a full screen running throw last time. Going into the throw this time. Oh, he's ready for the shadow kick. Neutral crouching it, ready for the punish. Gets a full punish there. Sending him full screen again. That's the important thing. Every single hit with Kenji will send you full screen. This is all pig right now. This is classic Kenji. This is exactly what Pig of the Heart needs to bring. And a good, again, another block on the overhead. Good stuff. Oh, and he gets the run cancel. I mean, Chief Eddie really making his execution count. He cannot drop anything at this point. Nice patience. Gets a punish once again. Here comes Chief Eddie. Nice hard combo, ending that punch. Wonderful corner conversion. This is what he needs, and that's the throw. He won't take the game, but he's chipped damage away. Oh, wow, actually, Ooh, he'll take 12%. Only just, only just 12%. Only just gets the damage. And he has him in the corner. If he can keep him in the corner and doesn't give him the space to run away, he's in a good situation. Oh, good bait once again. Chief Eddie showing great patience right now. Oh, missed the confirm. Oh, and he chews through the rising karma. This is a great situation for Chief Eddie. Oh, catches the strong block. Gets the down three, goes in for the advantage. Good block to pick the hut. Oh, good block on the low. And he's ready wow. for the punish. That's that's uh, that's the thing that Pig's hit confirming that back 3-2 rather than just committing into Rising Karma because it is punishable. Okay, as soon as Pig of the Heart realizes that his jumping is being waited for, goes to the kick to challenge the early crossover timing. Meet bone kick, get him into the corner. Nice patience from Chibedi, gets a full combo. Nice, gets a punish. Here comes another punch. Has no damage to make it confirm. We'll go to the safe string. Oh, really good interaction. Get out of the corner. Oh, Meet bone. Really nice use of the armor from Chibedi to blow through. Great reflect from Pig. That's good. This could be bad for Chibedi if he doesn't manage to get some damage. He has got a life lead, but. Obviously, Kenji's got to reflect. And the full screen oh, presence. looking bad. G Betty, here comes Pig. And that's a good trade. He's one more of those. Oh, there's a down for the change oh, of throw. G Betty makes it 1 1. Clutch situation, holding it through. G <laughs> Betty with a token dance. We've seen this many times. I am so glad he did it on the main stage. I love G Betty. Oh, man. Johnny I mean, that's, that's one way to get in. That's definitely one way to get in. To the Cheap Eddie stance change chance. We haven't seen that since the, the online league that the won, I believe. The Cheap Eddie stance change chance is his thing. That is it. Every online league, when he wins, he does the jig. You know, it's a good way to celebrate the win. But, uh, I mean, as you see, both players look really composed. No, I mean, no we've seen flustered. Lard does that as well. Lard does it with Cassie Cage. When he knows he's got so much advantage after a nut punch hits, he goes for some tactical disrespect to force you into doing something you normally wouldn't assume. Because obviously, think the Russians just like messing with people. In fact, that is the most realistic situation right now. But it works. I mean, if in that situation where you do a little jig, they go, man, I can't lose. He can't jig again. I can't let him do it. You know, I'm, I'm going to move. So full on rematch. This will be the last game of the set. Two out of three. Oh, wow. What a challenge for the forward three. Now, Chief Eddie just needs to kind of calm down. Do his thing again. I mean, Piglet Hut will stay composed. He's going to stay keep away. Uh, and if you're playing a keep away character against someone like Cage, the must get in. Um, it's very easy as the aggressor. Oh, really good place from Chief Eddie. Piglet Hut with the meter burn, rising karma. It's very easy to kind of, uh, I guess, kind of um, lose your cool, as it were. Uh, get a bit ahead of yourself and uh, not really scout the wake up. Another good wake again, up throw. Wake up grab from Pig. He just knows when you're going to block and wake up. I guess that's that's when you spend years being a Kenshi mate. You just know when someone's going to try and block your wake up attack. Great stuff. Wow. Swift round one. Match point, Pig of the Hut. Just another Too buddy, again, back to the corner. Pig of the Hut. All that screen to work with. Oh, it hits the uh, Teleflurry. Whiffs the, the charges to the meter there. Again, just to get the hard, I think he does have the hard knockdown, so we can then go in and do his thing. There's the restand. Oh, nice. Good reversal there from Pig of the Hut. Just knows when to do that reversal. But he is now with no meter. Chief Eddie gets him without blocking too many attacks. Pig of the Hut's going to have to be forced to take mix up next time. No meter to go into the armor. Oh, nice hit confirmed from Chief Eddie. Ready for that. Ready for the hit. Dash cancels. Oh, meet by Nutpunch. You think he's going to go in? Oh, another bar. That's Uses both bars on that. That's an expensive reversal. I mean, he still has good life. Oh, challenges the throw down one. Good pressure. I mean, look at the, the meter that Chibetti's building. Doesn't go for the dash cancel to finish that off. And that'll be the crossover. Oh, no, we're punished. He tries to get the forward three, but doesn't get it. Wow, one more combo from Bigger Heart's going to take it. Obviously trying to buffer right now. Ooh. There's the reflect. Oh, oh wow. He the reflect. Amazing <laughs> stuff from he knew. Eddie. He knew he was going to go for the reflect. He uses his only bar meter to go through it. That Match was point, both players. What we like to call the smart stuff. Going in right now. So we need a player with much bar. Bigger Heart just building one. Oh, and he tries to reflect too late on it. Gets hit by Teleflurry anyway. I mean, the final hit does the bulk of the damage, though. Oh, and he gets the jump in. Here comes Chief Eddie. Go for a kick instead. Good reflect from Pig. 
Another neutral crouch though. Oh, I can't call this one. This is anyone's game right now, but Pig's sitting on a meter burn reversal. That is the danger right here. The second G-Betty gets it, he has to respect the threat of a wake up. Or oh, any throw. kind of reversal. Nice anti air there from Pig of the Hut. G-Betty be really careful how he approaches, and he goes straight into a projectile. No meter to go through this time. Oh, and this is looking good for Pig right now. I hope that Chipe doesn't manage to sneak his way in through one of these gaps. Two bars, good reaction from Chipe. Oh, and he gets the anti cross up once again. This is looking bad for Chipe. He gets a run in. This could be game for Chipe if he gets this. No, oh, he's that's ready it. for the jump in. Delays his wake up. If Pick of the Hut, if, if Pick of the Hut managed to wake up as soon as possible, he no doubt would have whiffed that shoulder. But because he delayed it before, and then Chief Petty opted to go for the jump in, that's what gave him the cross up. Really, really good game from both players. But Pick of the Hut manages to take that one through to round two. It was an amazing set because it was impossible to call right until the end there. I mean, oh, that was anyone's game. It was just right at the end. The second uh, Kenji can get that momentum from full screen, Chief Petty was spending a lot of meter to get in. Uh, and the threat really was the fact that uh, Pig always had a Rising Karma available, or just the meter burn shoulder charge. I mean, obviously, if you're playing a defensive character, you want the meter, because the meter gives you the armored reversals. As you saw there, those armored reversals put in insane work at beating jumps and beating any attempt Chief Eddie went in to press a button. Well, Pig just showing how important it is to conserve your meter when you need the armor to interrupt this, the crazy pressure that A-list gets access to. If armor is what you do against it, you need bar to do that. So, you know, wasn't breaking a lot, was saving his meter a lot of the time, saving it for good wake-ups, anti cross up and just general counter-poking, which is what we saw him take the set with. Good stuff. As you can see there, I mean, that, that's that's the danger uh, of playing a keep away character, where uh, most characters, when they put you in the corner, they're going to kind of uh, play the corner game and establish any kind of mix-ups there. But, you know, Pig, as a keep away player for many years, uh, acknowledges that it's not really time to play the corner pressure, it's time to use all the screen you've got to just walk away, let him make his own mistakes and punish him. So that does wrap things up for round one of the winner's bracket, but we are going to go to an interview with Tyler Lansdowne, with none other than Josh Gray. Thank you, Jake and Ryan. I'm joined by Tyler Lansdowne, the Community Specialist with NetherRealm Studios. Tyler, you have been all over the place since the launch of this game. So much hype at all these tournaments. What's it like to be here at the ESL Season 1 Finals? I have been looking forward to this month, really, for quite a while, and it is not letting me down. The match we just saw behind us was unreal. So, I mean, this thing is exactly what I want it to be, and with the belt and everything and what you guys have done, it's just, it's amazing. We see a lot of players here that a lot of the U.S. players are not as familiar with, a lot of these international players from Russia and Germany and Spain that are showing some, some great matches so far. What's it like to see some of these U.S. players compete in such an international realm against these players from across the pond and other places? Right. I actually love it because, you know, we don't... It, this is really the first game we've been able to see all of this come together, and that's really because of what ESL has done overseas and here. Like seeing these players who you've always wanted to see Foxy Grandpa take on the best players here, and just hasn't had that opportunity a lot. And now we're seeing all these guys, Nevik and him and Taco and Madsen, everybody's here, and they're doing very well, and you know, the USA is on notice. <laughs> yes, they are. And Mitsu owns when he jumped on stage, just like, let's go, get yep. the fans hyped up. So they are all very excited to be Hype here. Hype is universal. It is. I think. So. It's a universal language, indeed. Let's talk about the combat cast. It's been yeah. an awesome series you guys have been doing so far, showcasing the new DLC that's been mm -hmm. coming out every single month. Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, the Combat Cast is just something we've done to kind of give the fans something from our studio that we do, you know, truthfully from the heart. Like, we want fans to be able to walk into our studio and see what we're doing right now. And it's been something that I, I love to do. I mean, I'm known for obviously dropping a ton of combos on stream, and Derek's known for making fun of me. So it's actually a pretty good dynamic. Um, we love doing it. We're going to keep doing it. It's one of the most fun things that I get to do for my job because people get to see us play and the truth is like I want everyone to know that we truly love playing this game as well as making it and I hope that comes across on the cast and your team truly loves designing these different oh, characters yeah. especially Predator now just released how exciting was it to keep that you know a secret for so long and then finally get to tell everybody about it it's been a long time and it was very very difficult um, you know, there's always on Twitter, there's people who like kind of speculate as who might be, and that name came up a lot. And I always, you, know, you can't say anything, and just the day we announced it, everyone was like, I see, I was right. I was right on Twitter. That was me. That was my idea. So it's pretty awesome. So unfortunately, Hitbox Tyrant's not going to be able to join us today to play as Jax, but Tyler Lansdowne has volunteered to play <laughs> as Commando Johnny Cage Ugh. in the Predator Tag Team Show match. So the pressure is on for you today. Yeah, because and what we've learned, I think, from the combat cast is that I'm really good with pressure. 
Like, really don't drop anything. I don't make any mistakes under pressure. So this will be really good for us, I think. I think I've been watching different combat casts. But okay, Tyler, it sounds okay. good. Best yeah. of luck later on. Thank Great you. to have you here. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you again to NetherRealm Studios. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox, continues after this. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for tuning in. You're watching the ESL Mortal Kombat X Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. Great to be with you, sir. Yeah, of course, you as yeah, well. I was looking always, forward to this moment. As was I. Yeah, the <laughs> last time was the Fatal 8. It's definitely good to be back. And, um, I mean, round two here, winners. This is I huge. Mean, we've definitely broke the point where, you know, the first set of matches are done. We have this next match coming up, which is obviously going to be Pig of the Hut. Yomi's own Pig of the Hut versus Foxy Grandpa from the UK. This is going to be a very, uh, I guess, true to the country battle. I mean, a flag is going to get raised <laughs> after this match, no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and that last match, too, with uh, Pig and Eddie was really entertaining. Some really clutch stuff by Eddie there. Of course, he's still in it. He's in the loser bracket. I mean, the beauty of a double elimination, of I was course. About, I was about to say that you know, that really is the benefit of a double elimination bracket where you know, everyone gets two chances. You know, right. If you lose your first game, it's not done. You know, mm -hmm. You're not out of the money yet. You just have to work that little bit harder, I suppose. You know, you've got no more chances. If you lose now, you're out. Uh, as you can see, the bracket first round of it is done. The matches we have lined up for you is Foxy versus Pig of the Hut. We have La versus uh, Crazy Steady, which can be fantastic as well. Very aggressive match. Sonic Fox versus oh, Perfect Legend. That match, we finally get to see it. We talked quite a bit about it earlier. It's kind of the... Uh, That's going to be a battle of titles. I mean, Yeah, battle of titles for sure. It's quite interesting because whoever loses that match won't be eliminated. They'll just be in losers. So they may very well get the run back later, but I mean, they have the chance now. And whoever wins not only gets that temporary bragging right, I suppose, but they get the breathing space. You know, they're, they're in a more comfortable situation. They're riding that win. They're feeling hype about it. Yeah. And they've also got the comfort of, I can still lose a match, you know, or I can take the entire tournament through winners and be in grand finals on that side and have to make, basically put in less work to win the $60,000, which is pretty sure everybody wants to win. Oh, like we said, life-changing amount of money, for sure. And that's all thanks to you guys at home, to the Sub-Zero skin. Yeah, and of course, huge shout-out to Razor as well for, you know, supporting this tournament, making uh, a lot of this stuff happen, which is great. Of course, we are doing a raffle right now, esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle. You can win all kinds of great stuff. Uh, Razor Aatrox arcade stick for Xbox One. We're doing uh, Razor Kraken uh, headsets for Xbox One. All kinds of stuff. Scorpion statues, t-shirts, so definitely check that out. Don't forget to go to esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle for your chance to win not only the Razer Aatrox stick and the Kraken headsets for Xbox One, but also the custom-made Predator Xbox One, which I'm pretty sure, as I mentioned before, you know, everyone wants that. I mean, it's cool. I do. It looks I definitely good. want it. It's over there in the cabinet. It looks I really know. Cool. I was looking at it yesterday. I'm a huge Predator fan, so it's really cool to just see it sitting there. Absolutely. It's hard mean. to not take it home with me, of course, but you know. I think both these guys, <laughs> it's, I, I feel your pain, I feel your pain. But yeah. we're staying on this next match, Foxy Grandpa from the UK versus Yomi Pig of the Hut. Uh, this is going to be, as I mentioned, an interesting match because obviously Pig of the Hut being Yomi, playing with people like DJT, who also plays a you know, phenomenally strong Tempest Kung Lao. Yes. Pig's going to know the matchup. Uh, yeah. I mean, we know that Foxy Grandpa can play Buzzsaw and Tempest, but at the same time, you know, uh, I feel like Pig of the Hut's going to be more ready for a top Kung Lao than Foxy will be for a top of the mark Kenshi. True. I mean, Kenshi is definitely kind of a rare character to see at a really high level. And uh, I mean, Pig, I mean, probably, ar possibly, arguably, but the best Kenshi in the world? I think that, uh, that's a fair assumption. I mean, no Kenshi player in the world right now. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't even X. No Kenshi player in MK9 True. performed the way Pig of the Hat has. And, you know, contrary to that, no Kenshi player in X has performed the way he has. So I think at, at this point, it's a very fair assumption to say that Pig really is the best Kenshi. Uh, obviously, you know, Foxy. The most dominant player in Europe, as I mentioned before. This guy is no joke. He's won so many tournaments. He's won the most MKX tournaments. He's won the most money. He has, quite possibly, next to Sonic Fox, the biggest target on his back tonight. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, he actually has double the points of, you know, the first US seed. And he hasn't lost anything, really. Yeah, as we mentioned the, yeah. before, the only two tournaments he didn't win were when the he handshake. actually didn't enter. You know? I love, yeah, exactly. I love the handshake. Oh, we've restarted. These so guys we're are all going, pros straight going straight in. First hit's going to be very important. Oh, Foxy gets the run and grab. Risky stuff, but that's going to be important. Denying Kenji that meter burn reversal. We'll call that's it a read. Be, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> undeniably. I mean, like, especially against Kenji, that's, that's risky business. Oh, good reflect from Kenji. Uh, Pick the heart ready for that. You can call him Kenji. I think he's okay with that. I think either way. Yeah, I'd be pretty happy with that, wouldn't he? Um, I mean, oh, now here comes the zoning game. Oh, nice reaction to there. Nice teleport just to add the yeah, Foxy Grandpa from that far away. He gets, he's late on the uh, reflect, though. But at this point, doesn't really seem to matter. Yeah, Pig, one of his strengths definitely is his patience. Mm. And, and that's going to be critical in this match. Uh, if you're going to play against an aggressive character like Lau, and you're going to be a defensive player, like, patience is key. Yep. Oh, speaking of patience, very surprised he actually didn't add the yeah, that. Oh, nice prediction there. Nice interrupt there for Pig of the Hut. I mean, that's one of the things that the... Uh, respect here. Yeah, the meter burn orbiting hat wasn't really nerfed. I mean, that's massive damage. Really good damage with just a single reversal. Foxy likely to lose this round, I think. Yeah, he's a... Yeah, I was going to say... I mean, that was some respect right there. Pig actually burned the meter at the very end of the round, even with a huge life lead. To guarantee it. Exactly. So obviously has, you know, a lot of respect for Foxy here. I think uh, Tempest Lau, a very good comeback character. Like, one touch. You get by a down four, you're in big trouble. But speaking of that, uh, Pig just... 
really opting to go for these reversals. Ooh, Foxy caught blocking low. That's going to be a good amount of damage. Sending him full screen again. Whiffing the charge just to build the meter. He's playing patiently, spacing it out here. Of course, he has to watch out for that teleport. Hasn't got the hat back, can't go for your being hat. Ooh, no any cross up there from Foxy, but good blocks from Pig. Just a uh, defensive. Oh, what a bait on that armor. Foxy's such a smart player. Oh, catches oh, the overhead. Doesn't get the two frame link. Obviously, two frame link, basically, uh, for those who have been aware. Very tight link, very hard to land. <laughs> it's very hard to connect. Oh, full screen charge, no fear from Pig of the Hut. Running grab, that's the thing you always expect some kind of projectile. Running grab, very, very viable with Kenji. Yeah, Pig's looking really strong right now. Pretty big life lead here. Oh, a lot of respect running uh, running block. Oh, oh the delayed reversal. So Pick up 1 0 on Foxy right now. Yep. I mean, that, that's a message. That was not anyone's game. I mean, that second round was just Pig being. Pig playing his own game, like denying Foxy any of that kind of 10 personnel pressure. And of course, the fatality. Oh, that's my favorite. I think that's my favorite fatality in the game. This I'm really happy that Pig keeps going for it. That one is one of the, it's one of the fatalities that bothers me the most. Kenshi I think that's why I like win. it so much. I mean, yeah, like, exactly. that's the thing about that, That's though. what makes it good, right? Next gen game would be more creative with finishing, uh -huh. finish moves. Uh, it's the sound, though. It is. Like, it's, the audio it's is the amazing. close-up as well. The yeah, exactly pretty right. Beast. Slow motion. But I think Foxy's just uh, going to shake that one off. Uh, I think it was just a matter of Pig just making all of the right reads. And of course, we've seen Foxy in the past. He's a huge comeback factor, so if he's down the game, no big deal. Oh, of course. I mean, in two out of three, slightly more prominent. Uh, of course. But yeah. obviously, I think Pig Hut, again, getting that first hit bonus. Yeah. Very, very important. Getting Pig's already halfway hit. there, yeah. Good patience from Pig. Oh, no doubt that was an uh, executional error. Yeah, in there for sure. Runs in, gets Oh. I like how he's throwing the blocks out here, anticipating the uh, the attempt of the reversal. Yeah, of course. Oh, he gets the back in low, really good stuff from Pig. I mean, this is this entire set has been all Pig right now. Yeah, it's one-sided for sure. Good patience. I mean, just yeah, good. incredible patience to Pig of the Hut. And even from Foxy here, like, great blocks and tele. I said that, that happened. <laughs> I think just Foxy Ooh. has been... Oh, and he goes for the risky read there. Pig just opting not to spend any barbs. Wow. Match point, just like that. Match point, Pig. You show this is incredible stuff from Pig, just no fear, playing a really strong game. Uh, tournament nerves, they won't get to this guy. Ah, oh, tries to get the run and punish, good block from Pig. Tries to get the anti-cross up, but gets a back one instead. Ah, oh, here comes the pressure, Foxy yeah. gets the tight link. This could be the start of something special. <laughs> and the corner carry, of course. Good blocks here. Oh, Ooh. and he baits out the armor, that was really smart. Even better blocks, goes for guaranteed damage, hard knockdown, this will be orbiting hat. And obviously you're not really going to be able to do any kind of reversal here. And that's there it is. you can't reversal this. Just choose up that meter. Ooh, wow! This is the start for Foxy. One all both see players it again. Fine. We're talking about composure. I mean, Fine. this could go either way. Pig either stay composed and win this, or the Orbit Hat just to bait it. But speaking of baits, Pig not going for the reversal anyway. Getting good results here. Now Foxy has to work his way all the way back in, or throughout a risky oh, teleport. Running the grab. Now Pig has the full screen to work with. Which is one of the most frustrating things about Kenji. Almost everything he does puts you at full screen. And then you gotta work your way all the way back in. Of course, oh, a little easier yeah, for Lau. Cross up. Amazing stuff from Pig. I mean, this is not a good situation for Foxy at all. Huge life from Pig here. And of course, this is match point. Oh, that was an execution error, oh, no, no doubt. Foxy did not want that uppercut. Now it's looking bad. Oh, and Foxy and gets it. a swift 2 0. Wow. That was amazing. A swift 2 0, man. Oh, man. Oh, I mean, like, it's it's kind of interesting because Foxy just was at, at no point was Foxy able to do any of his own stuff. Pig was just solid as a wall, you know, this brick wall style defense game. He really was. I mean, he had that one round where Foxy dominated a bit. Other than that, it was all one sided. Well, Pig got the crucial uh, cross up. You know, he, he managed to get out of the corner and then throwing Foxy in the direction of the corner. As I said in the last game, like it's not about uh, establishing corner pressure in that situation. Pig goes, I've thrown him into the corner and now I have the entire screen to work with. Uh, right. That really was the beginning of the end. I mean, the second he got that back throw in my head, I was thinking, you know, that's not good. You know, that's not a good situation. Yeah, um, Pig looked phenomenal. Obviously, uh, he was very excited about that win, so a lot of respect for Foxy Grandpa. He definitely knew that that was going to be one of his most challenging opponents to take down. Yeah, of course. And he has it under his belt. And um, like you know, like we talked about earlier, oh, we can see a couple of replays here. Those are always fun. Oh, Foxy trying to get the punish there. I mean, as you can see, like it was just read after read where Pig just uh, would just frequently make smart reads on Foxy. And then, as you can see, every single hit sends the opponent full screen. And that's what that's what balance does best. Every single right. touch only does the damage. Oh, but you get the best replay, screen. of course. Like, absolutely. I mean, pick <laughs> one of the more off. pick one of the more passionate players definitely, no doubt, of definitely. this top 16 uh, throughout all the games he's played. But I mean, you know, every hit sending you full screen uh, and just being just solid as a rock, non-stop.
And I really think if he can, if he can keep playing like that, he's in a good situation to get grand finals. He's definitely looking great for sure. And um, like you talked about earlier, it's yes, they have two chances, but it's it's a way it's a, definitely a mental advantage to be in the grand finals in winners because your opponent has to beat you twice. Yeah, which of is I mean, it doesn't happen that often to be honest with you. Well, I think that's the thing, like, uh, in the tournament pressure as well. Uh, but going into the next match, we have La from Russia versus Crazy Steady uh, from the US. This is going to be another kind of crazy match, because obviously Crazy Steady, uh, that was not really an intentional pun. It's going to be a crazy match without his name being Crazy Steady. But it's going to be, so yeah, see, you got it in the end. If I have to explain it, it gets a bit awkward, really. That's the problem. Uh, okay. We, we won't explain it then. <laughs> we'll just move straight on very <laughs> swiftly. So you've got, it's going to be Sonya versus uh, Cassie Cage. So it's, as we've said before, it's going to be who can get momentum first. Like, you know, Sonya's going to be extremely rushed down heavy, but, you know, equally as rushed down heavy is going to be Cassie Cage. Uh, La only really plays Hollywood as well. Right, and we did get a chance to get a few words from these guys, so let's take a look at that right now. I've been to a lot of tournaments, and this is the first time I could play a Russian player. Oi. Делай что-нибудь. А! Лар, 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 который лар, никогда лар, 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 лар. не проходил. Thanks to Lionheart, I can barely catch kids. Lars, I'm coming for you. А, ремак используется сейф миксапа, то есть небольшой дамаг, но и наказать их нельзя. И лар ловит. Сейчас пойдет миксап. I've never fought a Russian Cassie before. I'm sure this will be fun. Так. Задержался. Слишком Задержался поздно, своими атаками. Что-то терпел, да. Мало хп, все равно нужно забирать этот раунд. И угадывает, о боже, что, что ты делаешь? делаешь? Я подпрыгнул в студию. Что ты делаешь? Этот пистолет. А Cassie Cage player all the way from Russia, huh? Interesting. Let me remind you what territory you're entering, though. Серьезный урон, смотрим. 26, 29, 31, 33, 36, 39, есть, и опять... Есть армор. Перебивает Лара Амор. Очень быстрые ручки, Ой, буквально это... сантиметры. Это первое место нашего турнира, Лара. I will win. We are back. What, a, what strong words from Lara there. I think that's the thing. This guy is uh, he's solid as a rock. You know, he's, uh, he's very calm and collected. I've never seen this guy get visually flustered in tournament before. Um, but it's, that's kind of the interesting thing where he, he's such a sort of quiet, collected guy, but he plays such an explosive style character like Cassie. It's kind of like uh, the way he is is very much sort of emphasized in his gameplay. Definitely. Living vicariously through Cassie? Absolutely. It's always I, I the quiet so. ones you got to worry about, right? That's, that's the one, isn't it? I mean, that, that's the way. <laughs> of course, uh, Mr. Uh, Stedman Gibbs here. Our boy from Southern California. I mean, online player. Um, he's been really successful online. Um, obviously, that last match, he, he did really well against Fast Hall. Yeah, of course. So. I mean, the interesting thing is, um, obviously, you know, uh, Crazy said he started off, uh, well, is really an online player. Uh, La did not play more Combat 9. He started off with Injustice. Um, he started playing uh, right through now, Injustice, now just obviously he's new to MKX, soldier. just like Round everyone else. One. Picked a character that really Fight. speaks to him in, in Cassie Cage. <laughs> and he, obviously she's a great character, so good choice. Lara doesn't quite get the full combo there, that could have been a, a full convert. Ooh, basically baiting out the reversal, but I mean that is really safe mid-screen. Lovely Annie cross-up with Lara. Ding dong, and here comes the crazy mix-up. Oh, gets hit in the overhead, that's going to be good damage. Nice, goes for the wake-up. I mean, putting him in the corner, this is a good situation for uh, Sonya. A full combo, hard knockdown, no doubt, into uh, completely more 50 50s, and that really is. Yeah, there we go, catches the low. This is kind of Sonya through and through. I yeah, I was just going to say that. That's exactly how you play Sonya. And oh, initially, nice damage. Yeah, initially he uh, started off with co with um, covert ops. So, mm. and I remember watching, I would watch the, uh, the American streams after we finished Castle of Europe one. This guy is, uh, he's played Sonya just solidly, hasn't he? Definitely. And he also plays a really strong Tanya. I do remember seeing, but I mean, I oh, think Sonya, nice. really, uh, Sonya really is his jam, as oh, it were. His jam. <laughs> that was a great uh, flip kick there by Lar. Very unfortunate combo drop though from Lar. I mean, if you're going to drop combos as Cassie Cage, it's not really the damage you're losing, it's the setup. I mean, exactly, especially end... in, the, in the corner. But that's the thing, I mean, you want to end... Oh, such a... Wow! Oh, the brutality, I love it. Look, he doesn't even look surprised at all. That was a, a swift Weird. game one. Definitely. A very swift game one. But uh, with these two, we've seen this matchup quite a bit, actually. Not not so much uh, demolition, but of course, Sonya Cassie, mm, or at absolutely. least at least out here. I think and America has a lot more sort of Cassie and Sonya presence. Yeah, we have quite, yeah, we have quite a few. They they always go. They're blisteringly fast. So, you know. It's kind of. I mean, <laughs> that's the crazy thing about two out of three set. I mean, sometimes like before you know it, the set is over. Like before yeah, you've even yeah. you've started getting into any kind of flow as a player, the set's done with. I Very mean, true. As we mentioned though, the start of that was the fact that Lar dropped his combo. 
uh, Crazy City escape the corner and, and then fully capitalize. The exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, if you're gonna land your combos, it's not just damage, it's everything else you're missing out on. Yeah. Oh, it gets a nice jump back, dive kick, lovely prediction. Here comes a full combo from uh, Crazy Steady. And of course, pushing her to the corner here. Refills those grenades. Lops, go for combo hit confirmed. Oh, oh nice. Really nice. Here. Yeah, Antia, beautiful. It's a full combo. Oh, barely. Oh, what a conversion. He barely caught her out of the air there. That's one thing La will always do. Off the regular, off the regular nut punch. Oh, good oh, block on the great. low. Wow. Nice punish. Oh, actually, I say nice punish. Only gets two hits, but here comes a good situation. This won't kill, but we'll put them in a really good situation. Definitely. Crazy steady, just... Oh, goes for the zone. Oh, he barely caught him. Grenade, match point, crazy Smart steady. Stuff. Crazy Steady looking really Round solid. I mean, two. we talked about Lara quite a bit previously, and you know he was kind of your pick to potentially make a lot of upsets and be in the grand finals. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we mentioned like if people sleep on the Russian players, and uh, you're not kind of expecting a Cassie uh, to be as strong as Lars Cassie really is. Uh, you're not you're not going to be prepared for it. I mean, however, I think the thing about the US players is that you're always ready for Cassie because something can play this character. Definitely. Yeah. He uh, he did come out to one of our local events, and he. He played several Cassies for a long period of time. <laughs> and so he definitely has the experience. Oh, nice hit confirmed from La. I mean, this could be the start of a good comeback for him. Good damage the, right here. Good nut punch. I mean, the danger really is that Crazy said he has full meter. And uh, we know the damage, oh. the demolition can get. Absolutely. The -ray. And we very well could see it here. Oh, and he jumped. Oh, that's be a clean jump in. That's literally, that is death. Oh, he that's dropped the combo. Oh, no. La doesn't follow up. Oh, and he follows up and then catches the conversion. Oh, my <laughs> day. <laughs> Little head shake there from uh, Crazy Steady. He's that like, could have oh, been disastrous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Crazy Steady just really dropped the combo. I uh, didn't get it. Oh, yeah, he blocks. definitely had it. It was his round. Oh, gets the low. Here comes a good... There's going to be a good damage meatless combo. Our ops recharge out of grenades. And, of course, that was match point for Crazy Steady. Yeah, it was indeed. So, very clutch by Lars. Just too far away to convert off the very flip close, kick. Very yeah. Good boss. Oh, oh, he tries to interrupt. He tries to, hit with yeah, tries to press a button. Oh, that was interesting. That oh, was very strange. Yeah. Oh, oh, he jumped straight to the grenade! Amazing stuff there from Crazy City. Good read, for sure. Amazing read. No, oh, Antia, oh, he no. does it drop! He converts it, now he's the corner. Oh, oh good block by Crazy Steady. He commits. Oh, nice bait on that flip kick. Oh, no! That was a huge error. Oh, and he drops the combo. Has to make this one count. Crazy Steady breaks, has the meter available. Oh, he gets oh, hit no. by the 50-50! Lars doesn't convert, though! Delayed wake up. Oh, oh that's gonna be it. it! Oh, my God! That was almost the end of the law, but he's still he's alive. Like, it looks like he's watching Netflix right now. Yeah, just chilling out. <laughs> oh my god, I mean, the first game was just like, it went like that, like it was gone. It did. Second match, much closer. Crazy Steady will kick himself if he doesn't win the set. He'll Absolutely. kick himself over that he combo that wasn't finished. It was match point, he had it. Oh, oh straight, straight to the dive kick. kick. Has no meter to break. Or, well, no stamina either. What a conversion from Crazy Steady, good damage. Yeah, he's already built it up oh, three meters wow. here. The running under trip guard, you don't miss that very often. True, very true. It's that Russian tech, man. Oh, he tries to flip kick, but... Oh, wow, good conversion. He barely got the end of that. I think he tried to uh, flip kick, but either it was an executional error, didn't get the event, or he was oh, with his bait. meter. Oh, no. He's in the corner. Big oh, gets the new jump punch. Here we go. Oh, oh, drops, drops the combo. Again. Very unfortunate from uh, La. That, that was the start for him. Oh, and he's waiting for the neutral jump punch. Good patience, yeah. Oh, this is the air there. Oh, another drop combo from La. Good blocks. You can't oh. really drop a lot of combos in these situations. Tries to go for the air whiff punish, doesn't get it. Oh, wow. Here comes La. Ding dong. Is he going to go for chip? Definitely could get chipped out here. Oh, and that's going to do it. La, just like that, turns it round against Crazy Steady. Round two, fight. So match point for La here. That was a nice poke there, checking him with that string. Getting a good knockdown, nice situation. Oh, gets hit by the overhead. Here comes those 50 50s that Sonya has so well, especially in demolition. Getting the full combo on both options. Good blocks. Oh, gets oh, no. the cross up. Has to break. Oh, drops the combo. I mean, that's, oh, wow. that's important. Barely got over that flip kick. I mean, the important thing about the fact that Lard dropped that combo was that Crazy City would have broken. You would have got the two bars out of him. Right, and you would still had him in the corner. Nice hit confirmed from La. I mean, Crazy said he's really afraid to really answer these jumps. I mean, I know Cassie Cage has an amazing jump in. Oh, oh doesn't again. hit confirm it. Oh, drops the combo again. Lark it's a clean jump, jump in. Oh, no clean no jump in. That could have been huge. Oh, what the is train. going on? Compton, <laughs> what is going on? This is great. Oh, he gets in the overhead. Oh, no, this could be it. Don't drop it. Oh, oh my goodness. Like <laughs> I mean, he had it. He just didn't do anything of it. Fight. So now they're even. Fight. Of course, match point either way here. 
course. I mean, ugh, either one's going to earn this victory right now. What a set right now. Gets a jump back. Nice punish. Nice. Good hand. Yeah, finally ready for those jumps. That's back. It's like so tense. Every hit counts. But Lara has no stamina. Ooh, oh, run straight into the bars. They both have a lot of meter right now, too. Give the zone him out a little bit. Goes in. That was nice pressure. It's actually guaranteed the block stun. Oh, oh no, he gets to jump in. Lara needs oh, to actually make conversion. these combos count. Gets the breaker out of him. That's the important thing. Gets the breaker out. Oh, man. Now he has the corner. Here comes Lara. This is a huge opportunity He's for Lara. He's got so here. much meter as well. Ding dong. Oh, and he gets, oh, and he gets the overhead. Oh. Lara takes it over. Crazy steady. Oh, my God. He still looks like he's watching Netflix. Check out this guy. <laughs> if you just looked at his face, it looked like he lost. Oh my god. I, I, I honestly, genuinely, when it was match point crazy steady, I thought, that's it. I think La Especially I thought when you got him for. in that combo. Exactly, but yeah. I, you know I mentioned, like, the sec if, if La pulled it back and won, crazy steady was going to kick himself over that combo that he didn't complete. Like, he had he, it. He definitely will be, for sure. I mean, of course, he, he's going to go to the loser's bracket now. And I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be a long it's a long path though. There's a, I mean, it's full of killers. Everyone <laughs> in the tournament is, is definitely ridiculous. But so. I mean, La pulling it together and pulling it back. I mean, yeah. the interesting thing was, um, I believe this was was this the match point situation? I mean, I mean, even the situation. Yeah, he gets the full jump yeah, in. Yeah, this is it. That was it. That was a beautiful read too. He had full. Oh, he dropped the combo right there. He had full bar as well, Compton. He had full bar as well. <laughs> oh, very unfortunate. But you know, La and he gets that clutch jump. I mean, he, his reads on when. Uh, Crazy Teddy was going to press a button and hit the jump in. Not only the fact that, but Crazy Teddy seemed very scared to uh, deal with the jump. I mean, I know Cassie Cage has an amazing jump one, but he feels very reluctant to actually anti error. Right. Um, maybe a little too much respect. You know, it could have cost him the match for sure. A lot of opportunities missed. To but do I feel some like damage. he wasn't really sort of challenging those jumps. Um, right. And when, right. You, when you don't challenge the jump against someone like Cassie, in Hollywood, you're kind of just inviting her to do a 50 50 or some kind of meaty string to do chip damage, build meter, hit confirmable strings that can go into flip kick. You know, it's right. a good situation for Lara if he gets away with free jump ins. Yeah, you definitely need to check that and kind of eliminate that option from your opponent. I mean, that's really what it's all about, is taking their tools away, you know? Of course, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, we have a hell of a match coming up right now. Yes. It's, it's uh, old world champion versus current world champion, I suppose, uh, for Mortal Kombat as a whole. I mean, we know that uh, Sonic Fox and Perfect Legend have both had success with Mortal Kombat X so far. Uh, Perfect Legend winning a major in Australia, right. uh, winning a couple of ESL online tournaments. Sonic Fox winning the majority of the online ESL tournaments in America and uh, having really good success at offline events also. Uh, so both these guys are going to be familiar with the tournament standard. They're going to understand how this game works by now. Uh, they have not fought in tournament before, as far as I'm aware, um, in an actual MKX tournament. No, they fought in an ESL online tournament. Um, but at a major event, I suppose, it's... Uh, I guess the uh, the record is yet to be set. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do that right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited for this match. I mean, Peel he has a lot to prove. I feel like. I, I I completely agree. I mean, like when you spend two years being considered like the best, and someone takes that away, like it can cut deep. I guess as better like. Definitely. And, and now here you find yourself kind of toe to toe with that guy that is responsible for that being taken. Like you want to get it back. I mean, if Peel beats Fo Sonic Fox right now. He's gonna currently, you know, he's gonna ride that momentum. Right, and actually we got a few words from PL, which should be very interesting, especially after that little dance he did earlier. We're gonna take a look at that right now. Carl, you're a really nice guy and I respect you, but as the Spartan said, Molon Lave. Carl is converting oh, on what a confirm. Wow, this looks like a... F it is a flawless. <laughs> wow. Carl, you were great in MK9. This is an MK9. PL bro. Backs off. He knows that was oh, weird, but huge. it works. He doesn't have enough stamina to the break. Finally, he does. Perfect Legend. He's on match point right now. This is tournament point for Perfect Legend. And, this, and that's, gonna th that's be it. it. Wow. Perfect Legend. Yeah, he seems to be a nice guy in real life. But I think in game... You are freelance, man. Oh, once he starts going in, he really starts oh, going in. Oh, that was risky. And he's going to pay for it. Oh, my goodness. Carl, you name yourself Perfect Legend, but you're not unbeatable. Can PL close it out? Not quite. Oh, my god. I don't know what to Oh! He has the armor. One more mix up. Oh, oh. PL gets it. Dude, I am godlike. I have four world championships. I don't have anything else to say.
And uh, I guess that's that, really. You know, PL very confident. Uh, Sonic Fox obviously shares his level of confidence, no doubt about it. But as you can see, first place EVO for 2011 and 2012. First place EVO, for, you know, he's a, he's a champion in multiple games. Uh, yes. Four-time world champion. Not a lot of people games. can say that. Very little people. It's a very on short the list. For uh, sure. But <laughs> very few people can say that, but his opponent can. Definitely. And that's where it gets interesting. But obviously, Sonic Fox is also no slouch. Uh, this guy's won <laughs> almost equal the level of like serious, serious tournaments, if not more, for certain games. At the um, age of like 15. <sighs> he's a prodigy through and through. Like Sonic he really Fox. Is. If I was as good as games at his age. You know, it'd be good, but very little people are. I this would kid is good not, to go. I would drop out of school, honestly. <sighs> He's made more money than I have through tournaments, <laughs> yeah, and definitely. he is way younger than me, and that upsets me. I'm sorry. <sighs> I don't know. We'll just, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> we'll just talk about how godlike he is, and that'll, that'll do. But either way, as you can see there, look, first place Evo for 2014 for Injustice and MK9. Uh, you know, Fatal 8 champion. This guy won the very first tournament for the game. Right. Um, and Dominantly. He, he demolished people in that tournament. Yeah. Like He was just a cut above everybody. He understood he really the game. And I think the important thing is that how quickly Sonic Fox can take to mechanics of new games. I say that all the time about him. I, I, I feel like it's pretty ridiculous like how fast he can just analyze like the strengths and weaknesses of a character and, and know how to fully exploit that. Of course. I mean, like we saw that with his Aaron Black at Fail 8, where yeah. he just clicked with the character like within like... Immediately. Like a yeah, couple hours. Within like... If that, like, the second he picked Aaron Black and figured out what was going on, oh, he's going to go. Kitan? They've gone straight for it, I think, uh, by the looks of this. Gone for a button check first, I think. Yeah, um, it's like a button check. But during the button check, I think Sonic Fox is going to go for uh, Katana. Uh, he's been using Katana solidly the whole time. I mean, some people speculate Like Kung La? I think so. I mean, we, uh, quite a few people actually speculated that Sonic Fox was not going to use Katana in tournament. They thought maybe he was sandbagging, maybe he was going to go Tanya, maybe he was going to go Aaron Black, and he was just getting people prepared to fight Katana. You know, however, that that's evidently not the case anymore. He has no. strictly gone Katana so far. I don't think he does Rio. that. I don't think he plays those mind games, man. I really do. I just think, you know. Sometimes I feel like when you're when you're at the caliber of someone like Sonic Fox, you don't need to play mind games. You don't. Like, yeah. if you are that good and you can go, I can beat anyone in this tournament, it doesn't matter if they're prepared for my character or not. Like, you know, if anything, playing him beforehand is worse because it just... If you play someone like Sonic Fox early on, and you don't have prep games, the two games you have in tournament are prep games. They could right. be like a complete watch. Yeah, you yeah by the time it. you realize what's going on, it's already too late. But I think that's the thing, especially with a character like Katana that he's picking out, where uh, Katana seemed to be a, a kind of average character. I don't say weak, but average among the game. Uh, yeah, I Sonic mean, if, Fox, you, if you look at tier lists, they, you know, we were just talking about that Yomi tier list. She was, you know, low mid. But I think the thing about Fox is, uh, if he can take a character like Katana that people consider to be quite weak, and he makes it work, you're going to play this character thinking an average character, and then bam, you get surprised by all this crazy stuff that you've not seen Round before. One. And with someone like Sonic Fox behind the wheel, that's when it gets crazy. <laughs> yeah, so we, of course, doing another button check. This is a very, very serious match. This is a uh, what we like to call a token NRS button check, where the players <laughs> take a million years to check we, their buttons. We call it a SoCal button check. <laughs> with it, SoCal button checks have two rounds, possibly three. An entire game. Yeah, you're doing full combos, spending meter. Uh, <laughs> and it was a practice. Yes, yes. It was a practice all along. It's um, when you're trying to run a stream, it's really fun. <laughs> but I think um, <laughs> Katana versus Kung Lao. I mean, I don't know how to call this. Has he gone for? He's gone for Buzzsaw. Interesting. I think the interesting thing he's gone for Buzzsaw is the fact that uh, potentially doing the low hat to check those fans from far away. I mean, Katana isn't particularly hard to block. Yeah. It just a lot of sort of you know, she has frame advantage on some of those normal. Um, you know, she has situations where she has no head in the low, but the low will get her more. Um, what comes down to it is really the fact that he's going to uh, frustrate you with fans. Okay, come full combo, hard knockdown, corner carry. I mean, Tana gets some dirty damage in the corner. I will definitely say too, uh, when you're talking about being frustrated, I, I've never really said Carl's a patient player. <laughs> I mean, that's the danger. You're playing a character that is, sometimes when you play a character that is as mobile as Kung Lao, it can be a hindrance in some regards. If you have all these options that try and get in uh, more conventionally than just walking in, it becomes quite predictable. If you're, if you're going to get harassed by Katana, like you can see here, where he's just throwing a lot of fans and really just making himself very hard to hit. Yeah, that was a really fast round for Sonic Fox there. Two, five. The question is, what comes next? Is Gale going to adapt? I mean, he's throwing hats on the screen just to try and contest that. Obviously, you know, Katana has the reflect, but right. if, he's, if he's waiting for a projectile to reflect, he's not waiting for you to advance. Oh, Miss up there. there from Sonic Fox. Yeah, but it definitely got Carl in there. Ooh, oh, good no patience. Here. I thought if he was in Tempest, it would have been an anti-air, but if his buzzsaw count, uh, Kung Lao moves forward, it may have whipped. Right. 
That's why I kind of feel like perhaps Tempest might be a better variation to fight. I think it depends uh, on. Uh, I can almost I suppose it depends on what you're picking the variation for. Because you can see is trying to throw a lot of low hats. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Fox is really unable to throw a lot of low hats. Uh, sorry, <laughs> low hats fans. <laughs> he does have a problem throwing low hats. Yeah. Um, she really can't throw fans oh while the hat's goodness. on the screen. But oh as you saw goodness. there, the second the hat was not on the screen, he starts playing his keep away game. So I kind of understand why DL has gone Buzzsaw. He's, play he's picking Buzzsaw so that he can kind of contest those fan tosses. Uh, however, it's just that his damage is quite meager. When he lands a hit, he's not really going to do much apart from Buzzsaw exists to shut down the full screen game. Katana's still going to get in eventually. Uh, and when you get in yourself, you have no damage to really contest with the damage that she can output. Yeah, definitely. Carl here looking a bit flustered. I mean, he, as you can see, he's, he's remaining very sort of cool-headed. He doesn't look very, uh, I guess, frustrated at all. Has gone for Tempest, I think, just because if he's going to get in, he needs to start hitting like a truck. Yep. Because she can harass his fans, but when right. she lands a hit, big damage. Right. Uh, he needs to kind of... There that. it is, and right there. you go, right there. There's the interruption. No one can go for down one fan. Nice read from PL. And then, you know, quick 35% right there. Oh, when he gets the conversion. Oh, he's looking great right the, now. Uh, I'll just spend the bar on the Meeburn Smith rather than the orbiting hat. I guess he did it for the uh, reposition. Oh, man. Sonic Fox is out of the corner here. Comes a hard, hard knockdown. knockdown. Nice setup. Oh, goes for the low. Good patience from Carl. Nice block. Hit by the grab. I mean, that's the lesser of two even when you're trying to block a mix-up that can do big damage. Absolutely. I would... You know, you'd always rather take the grab for sure. But here's, here's the issue. Because he's in Tempest, he can't really stop Sonic Fox from throwing his fans. He has to get in eventually. Uh, teleporting is quite predictable. I mean, he might get away with a couple, but now he has no low hat and no straight hat that really creates an obstacle for uh, Sonic Fox. It's much harder for him to really deal with this from full screen. And he's still trying to use the hat. Oh, and he gets trip guarded in the full combo, and just like that, Sonic Fox steals the lead. Match point against PL right now. Yeah, Sonic Fox playing really, I mean, fight. I hate to use the word, but a very lame play. But that's the term, isn't it? I mean, it like, is, that, yeah. that's always been the way of Katana. I mean, even in Mortal Kombat 9, Katana Especially was... Especially in Mortal Kombat. Exactly, she was a very frustrating character to deal with. That's a good punish from PL. Ah, oh, and he gets the tight link. Nice, that'd be max damage it's off really his healers. Good that. Good, that, yeah, gets some good damage right here. Oh, and he teleports himself into Corners the corner. Corners himself. I'm not sure I agree with that decision. Gets the nice reversal. Oh, good nice stuff. run under there, yeah. I mean, he's very fortunate the spin landed, but I mean, as you say, he's yes. up the read. Yes, he's Ooh, very Fox lucky. jumps out of the corner. Oh man. Loses the bar, not great, but here comes Sonic Fox, full bar, and he can do like 50%. Oh, and he gets the all big hat. Just like that. Man, how good does Sonic Fox make Tanya look? I, I just called her Kitanya. That, I, I, <laughs> this is a character that's that how good she looks. Kitanya. This is a character that everyone said was bad. And right. Here comes Sonic Fox just making it work. You know, just yeah, taking did. it against some of the best players. He did that in one of the uh, in the Pro League weeks too, where he used Ermac. Oh man, his Ermac was amazing. Oh, and he gets a wake up button press. Good block. Good good box. Contests that obviously all being at minus three. Oh, he beats it out. Nice patience. It's gonna be huge. Full whiff punish. I mean, Sonic Fox has no bar to get max damage, but the meatless damage alone, dropping the combo, but at this point, doesn't matter. Right, huge life lead here. This is match point for Sonic Fox. I don't see how Carl could turn this around. Might oh, get tagged by just loads of down ones. It's looking bad. PL gets the intro. Oh. Is this the beginning? This I mean, is huge. He has meter. He has, if he's gonna go for wake up reversal, Why right as I say it. I think, I, honestly, I think that run was to reverse the input. Uh, we saw PL um, training that. And we, we saw PL, the brutality. I saw PL training that, uh, uh -huh. where he would basically do a forward run against Katana. Okay. Uh, knock her on the ground, and the forward run would interrupt your wake-up input. So you'd get the wake-up attack, but you would wake up straight through Kung Lao, letting him get with punish. Ah, so there was a little tech right there. I feel like the wake-up attack was so obvious and almost so free, because there was not much you could do to avoid that chip damage because of the range of the wake-up. PL tried doing the run on his wake-up to reverse the input. Okay. So that the wake-up comes out, it would go straight behind PL, he'd get the full punish. Unfortunately, right there, as you saw, just either mistimed it, didn't get the timing down, ran straight into Sonic Fox, and yeah. got, got hit by the one thing he was trying to actually beat. How I run? Yeah, I mean, you can see here, um, it, it, yeah, we have gone straight past it, but, you know, I think it was just that one situation where he tried something, Got the read, right? But the execution of the setup itself it just didn't ran, turn out. He ran straight into it. Yeah, the way he wanted it to turn out. Very unfortunate. Uh, Fox moving on. Uh, yeah. I guess for now has that title again. For now, for now. Dominant MKX player. Yeah, but Peel's uh, definitely not out. Still in the losers bracket. He's mm -hmm. still got another chance. Uh, just to remind you guys once again, we are in the double elimination tournament. You have two chances: lose your first game, knocked into losers bracket; lose in losers bracket, you go home. Yeah, and of course this next match we have uh, Mr. Germany. Big D versus Madden. Yeah. Uh, these guys have actually a little bit of a, a rivalry, a friendly rivalry. They were going to money match yesterday night in the uh -huh. hotel. It didn't happen because uh, the setup we had did not have Jason. Oh, oh that's gonna, right. He's been using it was Jason. Gonna be, it was going to be Blood God Kurtle Khan versus uh, Jason. They were going to have a $50 money match. 
didn't happen. Probably will happen tonight, no doubt, I think, or yeah. at some point. Uh, these guys have, like, uh, they've basically been talking trash to each other the entire time. So I know it's be been exciting. friendly. It's been yeah. a friendly fact, trash talk. speaking about the friendly trash talk, we did get a few words from some of the players about Big D. So perhaps we'll see some of that right here. Hey, Big D, congrats on making it to the tournament. Barely. I'm so glad that you have been watching me play Ermac because it's really <laughs> starting to pay off. Why is everybody so mean to Big D? He's a nice guy. Not. Nice down two there. Could've. Gets out of the corner. Oh, beautiful. Nice yeah. Dude, Brett is, he's like four for four on this. Who's Big D? I can't see him through all this freedom. Oh, that was so oh. risky. Oh, he doesn't, he didn't do the full combo though. He just, oh, oh. my goodness. No punish. And oh, now, wow. Man. Big D parece una buena persona, pero creo que puedo ganarle. Be Bars, careful. Yeah. That's punish. That's a punish. Oh, no, he doesn't get it. Oh, he wins the air to air though and gets the teleport. And a brute. Oh, oh that's man. one of my favorite brutalities in this game. I'm way too nice and way too good to have my life tried by a pig, a taco, and a guy in a fedora. But thanks, Madison. I like Pig the Hut and his showmanship. <laughs> yeah. Would it be appropriate to say Pig is a ham? Yeah, I think it would be. <laughs> I had to do it. The one a, time. A pig, a taco, and a... It makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. The one, the one time. That's good stuff, man. But uh, as you see, I mean, these guys, we, we've seen these guys before already. Obviously, we're now in kind of like the second stage of that, as it were, um, where we've seen how good they are already. Um, True. Big D, really strong Ermac. He has said himself, he really strongly does think that he is the best Ermac. Um, I think that no Ermac so far really has proven otherwise. Um, Big D really seems to generally at the moment have like the most success as an Ermac player as well. Um, especially with his uh, his rank in the ESL. But Madsen, uh, we've mentioned how good he was with Noob Cyborg and MK9. He has a very, very dangerous Grandmaster Sub-Zero uh, in MKX. Who's a very scary character. I completely agree. I mean, like, the one thing I think is that the threat of the corner pressure with Sub-Zero is always going to be there. Um, however, Ermac has... Uh, it's not an amazing move, obviously, but he has to wake up uh, teleport. Right. So if Big D gets put in the corner, um, I don't feel like he's going to be uh, optionless almost when he gets put in the corner against Grandmaster Sub. And as of, as you mentioned, like Grandmaster Sub is a very very popular character mm -hmm. in competitive Mortal Kombat. So no doubt, uh, Big D's going to be ready for it, and he, he's going to understand how to play against it. Yeah, the characters with the teleport definitely give far better options against you know Sub Zero because obviously for the most part his goal is to push you to the corner, set up that ice clone. And if you don't have the teleport as an option, obviously, it really takes a hard read to, to get out. Oh, they're doing their button check. I think yes, Madsen they thought are. it was uh, going. I think uh, Big D read his button, so they're just going to be starting that again soon. Yeah. Um, having I mean, a couple friendly words here. They're talking about uh, yeah. you know, the flight over here, probably. But I think, uh, oh, Madsen's there we go. like, okay, smile. Oh, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We got a smile out of him. But yeah, when their buttons are good to go, obviously, uh, button checks, the eternal button checks. $100,000 on the line, oh, your yeah. buttons have got to be right. I would definitely check my buttons several times. As if we I was have seen for already. Morning. All right, so see, they are nice guys. So they'll be going for the restart match. I mean, Madsen likes the Jinsei Chamber. This is his favorite stage, he always picks it. I mean, I think there are these little sort of cosmetic Shock things, that, like end. costumes, little right. things like that, that make you more comfortable as a player. Um, yeah, like Nivik. Oh, didn't he uh, He unlocked the skin earlier, huh? Like, he did. Um, that's your might, that was pretty hype. Madsen made sure to do test your might before the match began. Yeah. I mean, Madsen got the first hit, I mean, you're denying... Oh, uh, is Big going to be able to get in? Oh, oh conversion. That is Full a screen conversion, conversion from Big D. Amazing stuff. I don't want to say I'm shocked that Big D beat Nivik, but that's quite an accomplishment. It, it, it definitely is. I mean, he's riding momentum. I mean, he's beat one of Europe's best players already. Here comes Madsen. He's going to take up two European players in a row. I'm going to wait and see. Oh, gets hit by the low, but opts not to go for any kind of uh, pressure there. I mean, the trade kind of that was in Madsen's favor, really. Putting uh, Big D in the corner. Good yeah, damage as well. Oh, gets the cheeky overhead. Nice, good stuff. <laughs> Cheeky overhead, I love that. Oh, oh man, pushes he pushes him, into, him into it! I've never seen that before. I haven't either. We'll say he did it on purpose. Oh, and the phone disappears. Ops to break. I'll go for the book breaker. I think he's going to either. That might have been a mistake, or he's trying to keep him in the corner. Uh, I think either way, it wasn't a, a terrible outcome. Oh, nice Although, conversion. He could, yeah, so he just, he just he just spent two meters and then lost the round. So that's huge for Big D. I mean, I think he was confident. I think Madsen must have thought, if I can get him in the corner and knock him down, I've I got, got the cloak. And I'm, yeah, I, I, he must have truly thought that he was in a good situation there. But unfortunately, it does lose the round. Big D going into the next match. Well, it's good to see. If that's the case, it's definitely good to see the confidence there. I mean, you definitely need that. 
completely. I mean, uh, good block. Ooh. Ooh, goes for the slide. I'm not sure what the reason was behind that. Very unsafe. Right, and of course, Big D punishes. Ooh, Madsen tries to get the uh, jump in back one, but just too far away to actually get the back one to connect there. Oh, nice jump kick. I mean, that's one thing that Big D will do. And I think it's also an Ermac thing, is contesting a jump with a jump kick teleport. I mean, it's risky in some regards, but if you get an air to air with it, it's just there's so much priority on those jump kicks. Uh, right, and then, you, and then you eat a ton of damage off of it. Into Vortex, too. You know, yeah, into kind of Vortex, of right. The guest situation. Yeah, and Big D's so good at, at hit, I mean, assuming they're hit confirms on the air to air. That was a really, really nice uh, conversion there. Oh, here comes Madsen, has to make the strong count. Oh, he's too oh, he doesn't high get the, the air, doesn't get the conversion. Yeah. Oh, oh, and he does the vanish! And that's going to be Chip into death. Wow. So first match. That would have been so cool if he got that neutral jump punch. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. However, he was able to jump out of the corner, you know, and, and get himself out of that situation with Sub-Zero. I think the interesting thing there was that, uh, once again, like, Madsen was actually in a good situation. He just dropped the corner combo. Uh, I mean, he, he kind of did, he did the back one too, too early. Uh, they were too high up in the air. The clone didn't connect. Which just didn't freeze the opponent. I mean, if Madden got changed that, everything. Even, yeah, yeah, exactly. That changed everything. Uh, as we mentioned time and time again, dropping combos, you don't just lose damage, but you lose setup. You know, you lose a good situation that you want to be in. Oh, right, so teleports into the clone. And another, again, you don't see that very often. We've, I've actually seen uh, Sub Zero's use that quite a bit, where they'll put the clone up and then walk out in front of it to protect themselves against a character with the teleport. I think really it's actually smart really stuff. smart, yeah. Yeah, of course. Pretty good stuff for Madden there. And he gets the low, tries to go for the clone, but because it connects, too close. Gets the shatter, full confirm. And that's the damage that Madsen wants. Good meatless damage from Sub-Zero. Wow. Very dominant Huge round one. round from Madsen. And also Big D. Madsen sitting on almost full bar. Big D hasn't even got a single bar yet. So he can make this one work. Yeah, he's definitely in a good spot to take this match. Oh, here goes. Oh, gets the conversion. Still too high up in the air, though. Very unfortunate for Madsen. Oh, he tries, to, oh, oh, so he tries to clone and uppercut instead. Jumps into the corner. Oh, no. This is not good for Madsen. Hard knockdown. Oh, mix ups. Madsen just jumps out. Okay, this is where he wants to be. Run up throw. Um, oh, oh, nice. Great teleport. teleport. Great read there for Big D. And of course, drops oh, the combo. Drops though. The combo. Oh, gets the overhead. That's 50 50. Drops the oh, combo again. Oh, wow. And he's in the corner. This isn't good for Big D right now. Madsen gets the conversion, hard knockdown, clone, no meter to make it safe, gets hit by the grab! This will be a full confirm, this may not kill. Goes for hard knockdown slide. One more. Goes for chip, oh, wow! Chips him out. One all, both players. That's One more game now. That's... That was good stuff. Was very, very good stuff. I mean, like, it was just Madsen really enforcing his game. Big D did a good job of just kind of uh, reading Yo, him. Look at the intensity right now. You see that? <laughs> look, they both look, look highly <laughs> stressed. They both look highly stressed out. But I mean, it's completely understandable. It's one all right now. Uh, Big D goes back to the character select stream. Uh, probably just uh, think. I would think about what's going on. Uh, is he thinking going to chase it, or is he just trying to duke him out? He's not going to chase it. I highly not. doubt. Yeah, he's, he, he's been training with Jason for like two days. I think he might be trying to mentally prepare Madsen for probably. Jason. And then he might go back to Ermac. I think what's happened is exactly that, yeah. I think he's, he's thinking about it. He wants to think about what happened. He went, I won the first game. Why did I lose the second? You know, he needs time to think about what He happened. did drop a few combos, though. But that was it. I mean, he didn't drop very, he dropped very little uh, in the first game. And in right. the second game, a lot of his conversions that would have really tipped the odds in his favor, um, really kind of those drops, much like Madden in the first game, the Correct. drops, well, they lose your setup and they lose the momentum being in your favor. Right, so this last game is definitely going to come down to execution. Big jump in as well. Oh, and he gets the back to back down three. That's very, very unconventional. Three in a row. Good block from NJP. Wins the air to air, pushing him towards the corner here. Now, the one thing we aren't seeing Big D doing uh, is punishing forward 4 2 clone and back 1 2 clone. That's a clean punish. Yeah, especially with. I mean, Ermac does that really well. Oh, gets the wake up. Good stuff there from Big D. Oh, and the soul ball. Oh, that's not quite a trade. I mean, if he got frozen from that, it would have been a very even trade for both players. Nice conversion from Big D. Does drop the combo again. Instant jump punch from Madden. Throws him into the corner. Smart. Very smart throw. Oh, another trade that Madden can't take. Oh, he... oh it was a little bit too low there. Nice. nice good ant. Good ant here, though, from Big D. Ready. Oh, full screen slide. Good stuff there from Madden. It was uh, crucial, though, I think, that he blocked that 50 50 situation. Definitely. I mean, this is the last game here. These guys want to stay in winners for sure. Good use of the hover just to dodge that projectile. Madsen being very careful. That trade was completely oh, for Madsen. Wow. Match point Germany. <laughs> Match point Germany. Germany versus Florida. The battle of the ages. <laughs>
definitely. It's a classic matchup. Oh, and he gets the cheeky one too, catches it. Goes for the jump in. Ops not to go for a button press. Oh, good back dash. He doesn't get the trip card though. Oh, he blocks the there. Oh, no punish! Oh, he gets wow, the other card. Wow. Too. Oh, what did he hit him out of the teleport? I, I don't think it was teleport. It might have been an accidental move. Okay. Here comes the clone. Sends a clone Oh. By no means is Big D out. Oh, Clean jump. Get that jump. Oh, good oh. punish on the back two. Very good punish. Pushing towards the corner here too. Drops the soul ball again. Very unfortunate. I like how I was using that uh, like ground pound to get rid of those ice cubes. And that's oh, a trade for Madsen. It's going to be horrible. That's a good jump in. Putting him in the corner. Has all the stamina too. Hard knockdown. Spends the bar. Gets him to spend oh. the bar. Arnie gets the hard knockdown. D gets hit one by the one two. Oh, that was beautiful. And he's going to close it up. <laughs> Match point, both wow. players. It's hard to call this one. I mean, Madsen has a lot of meter. He's looking really solid right now, too. Oh, oh nice. what a reaction uh, from Madsen. That was a great reaction. He was definitely waiting for that soul ball. Oh, nice. Oh, I thought he was going to get the conversion, but he still gets the combo. Gets the hard knockdown on the slide. With the jump in, oh, nice no. delayed wake up from uh, Big D. Doesn't get the teleport, though. Jump oh, straight into jump a clone. Straight into a clone. Nice and yeah, what a there, beautiful big conversion team. as well, yeah. Oh, that's very costly. No doubt thought that was going to whiff punish. Has to break here. A lot of respect here. Oh, and he gets it. No doubt was not ready for that back one two to connect. Oh, and he punishes the overhead. Here comes Big D. This is going to take it. Big D's going to move on. Oh, and he takes on Madsen, takes it 2-1. I mean, the crucial thing there was really just punishing that overhead. Finally gets the punish right at the end. Really nice conversion. Good stuff there for Big oh, D. Big D looks so relieved. A lot of respect here. I love seeing that, man, like the sportsmanship, especially all these guys coming together from different regions. Of course, imagine, imagine he played excellent. He's got to be heartbroken right now. But of course he's still in. But that, that's the thing. I mean, it's very easy to be heavily, uh, I guess, kind of like uh, lose, your, lose your heart when you're yeah. losing a winner's bracket. But then you realize it's only winner's bracket. Like, yeah. you have another chance. I mean, a lot of these guys, many of them are feeling the same thing right now. A bunch of players already have been knocked into losers. You know, a bunch of really good players. Rio's in losers, PL's in losers, Foxy's in losers. Right. You know, there's a lot of people there that, you know, they're not used to being in losers bracket, but here they are. <laughs> Someone's gotta be there. And of course, uh, we tr you know, we try to, we try to call it like uh, we figure it was gonna turn out. We've already seen a, a few matches that, that, like, you know, definitely a bread nibbit. I was surprised that, I mean, not surprised, but, you know, Fred took that. I thought Nivik was going to get it, but I was definitely wrong. Fred's looking extremely solid. He definitely came here to play. Again, it's a lot of money. Well, I really thought that the, uh, the, the Bread versus Nivik match was going to be uh, last round, last game. I thought it could yeah, be we, uh, we did deliberate about, about that quite a bit. We, that was the most difficult one for us to call. Oh, look at that. That was so beautiful. Fred, I mean, he just played really strongly in that last round. I mean, Madden enforced his own game, like, in these clutch situations. But the thing is, because uh, Big D was just managing his meter management, he was managing his meter really carefully. In these clutch situations where it could have been uh, jump in combo, repositioning, right right there, that was so costly because uh, no doubt Madsen just expected back one two to whiff punish. Right. But as, Ma uh, as Ermac moves back. <laughs> what a great reaction by. But as there. Ermac moved backwards, back one whiffs. Uh, and he just played so strongly there. And in those clutch situations where the freeze would have put him in the corner into a bad situation, Big D was managing his meter, so he always had breaker. Right. Very smart stuff from Big D. He played great. I mean, Madsen was looking really good as well, but. Big D moving forward in the winner's bracket. He's still alive. Just He's in definitely still alive. And of course, with all, all right, with all that being said, we are going to get a few words from Mr. Josh Gray. Thank you, gentlemen. Very well done. Great little mix up there of our EU and NA commentators. Joined by Dustin Kane, one of the North American commentators here. I want to break down some of the very intrinsic things that happen in some of those matches. First off, Pig of the Hut versus Foxy Grandpa. That meter build with Kenshi's moves to increase that meter in a very opportune time. Yeah, I mean, you see that mostly from top-level players where they will get a hard knockdown or they'll get something that's giving them time to either get pressure. But Pig, because he's a player that likes to use meters so much, especially with Rising Karma being so good as, you know, stuffing cross-ups and things like that, it's really impressive to see that he has incorporated that into his game in order to just get one off of a knockdown, build some more meter, because that's the type of player that he is. He uses his meter. And moving on into Foxy or Sonic Fox versus Perfect Legend, that respect, I think that was one of the longest yeah. down blocks we've seen in a long time, but that's very significant to show both players 
trying to attempt to read each other and to figure out what's going to happen. So it seemed to us a bit of a long time, and, and for people that are not familiar with fighting games, like, oh, why are they just sitting down blocking? That's a very significant thing. It's, it's actually really exciting for me, as well as other commentators or, or top-level pills, to watch that, because we understand that there's, there's so many mind games going on, and even though they're just sitting still, there's a thousand different things, like, is he going to press a button? Is he going to wake up? And honestly, I think that's what really cost PL the match, was I'm sure he's watched Sonic play before, and he was expecting maybe for him to wake up. He knows he may not like to block as much, but Sonic Fox basically changed his play style off wake up, and it completely paid off, and PL was stuck respecting him. I know. I'm excited to see that Katana play, and <laughs> just to see Sonic Fox be able to completely mix up not just his character selection, but his pacing, his timing, and everything with just playing against Kung Lao with Perfect Legend, it shows how good this player is. Moving on to Lara and Crazy Steady. Ah, a little bit oh. tough to see Crazy Steady go down, yeah. but Lara and Cheap Eddie are the wild cards in this tournament coming from Russia, and we saw some good performance coming from Lara. Yeah, we absolutely did. Cheap, um, Cheap Eddie played very well against Pig. Unfortunately, he did lose, yeah. but he's still in the loser's bracket. And of course, Crazy Steady, it was heartbreaking for me, but the, the twins were absolutely right. Catch and were right. Lar is the dark horse in this tournament. I truly believe that now. His spacing is phenomenal with Cassie, and he has a character that can do it. She has really good advancing normals, and she has good punishes. And so far, Lar just looks really impressive. We saw Madsen with that Sub-Zero, mm -hmm. and then Big D with Ermac. Ermac representing very well Florida and the yep. USA. Still a close matchup, and I think, uh, as the commentators mentioned, the Florida versus Germany series may continue a little bit later today. <laughs> That's right. Um, to be completely honest, I think that's actually a good matchup for Big D. So I think he, not necessarily lucked out, but it was a good draw for him. He has different options to deal with the clone, whether it's the Levitate Pound or his Soul Ball, or even Lift on Block with certain strings, you can actually punish that, that clone. So Big D played very well, but Madsen was never out of that fight. I mean, he was consistently in there playing his game. It's just Big D was able to get out. All right, thank you very much, Dustin. We want to hear from you online, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to use that hashtag MKX Finals on Twitter. Who do you think is going to win today and take home that $60,000? We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the action continues for the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the SL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. My name is Dustin Kane. And I am Mustard. Starter, what's going on? We have an incredible match. We've seen some incredible matches. I'll be, I'll be honest, I was not expecting Foxy to go down like that to Pig. I mean, it just goes to show how good of a player Pig is, but obviously yes. you know, he's, he's really grinding out this character. He's been playing against Lau a lot of the last couple of days, so he was clearly ready for it. He's playing out of his mind, but there but. is one more match standing in his way of winners' finals, and that is against La from Russia, the dark horse of the tournament. You, you two are absolutely right. I had not seen him play before this, like, really that much, and I gotta say, he's really impressive. Right now, there's one standout Cassie to me, as far as the best Cassies abroad, and that's DR Gross, but from what I've seen from Lar, he's pretty much on the same level. He is a fantastic player, but we're now at an opportunity where this is for winners' finals. If you make winners' finals, you are minimum third place. This is for the money. Yeah. If you win this match, you're winning at least a couple of thousand dollars. Obviously, 60000 for the grand prize, but you're at least in that area where you're not going home empty-handed. That's true. Of course, we also want to give a huge shout-out to our sponsors, Razor. Yeah, of course, Amazing absolutely. Amazing stuff. Make sure you guys are also following that raffle at esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle, where you could not only win a stick, but you also win a Predator Xbox One, as well as some sweet headphones. Yeah, Krakens for Xbox One headsets. You've got Scorpion statues, T-shirts. Uh, Mortal Kombat X combat packs, uh, again, ESL shirts I mean crazy stuff to be won just for tuning in today. And obviously the Predator is now available. He is unfortunately banned in this tournament due to him coming out on Tuesday. But mm -hmm. we'll see the Predator challenge later on today where hopefully we can see some showcase of what he's capable of. I'm pretty sure we'll see some Predator. And of course, Tyler Lansdowne being the best cage in the world. I cannot wait to see what he's bringing to the table. Oh, that'd be fantastic. And Commando Johnny as well. Commando, so exactly. If it's they pick the Quartan jungle, I think we'll be even, all set. It's not even Vanilla Johnny, it's Commando Johnny. So I'm excited for that. Of course, we take a look at this bracket, we're going to see that the road to two grand finals is not at all going to be easy. But it was, a, it was a stacked forward. tournament. It was a stacked tournament from the start, but now we have reached to the point that in winners, we've got Yomi Pick of the Hut, La, CR Sonic Fox, and EVB Big D. Obviously, huge shouts to EVB for picking mm -hmm. up Big D. Obviously, this is a good first showing for him tournament wise, making the. <laughs> I would say so. You know, winner semis for uh, the top 16 right now for the ESL League, so good stuff from them. But La, um, Pick of the Hut, Kenji, Cassie Cage, no doubt about it. Oh man, it's it's gonna be tough. I've seen I've seen Pig play against Cassie before, and he doesn't really struggle. But there's definitely that point where once Cassie gets in, it can be very troublesome for Kenshi if he doesn't have armor, if he doesn't have that meter. It's, I can definitely it's see be a nightmare. that. I can absolutely see that, especially when you've got Hollywood Cassie with just the relentless freestanding. Obviously, the meter burn that punch forcing that mix up. Obviously, Kenshi can do a lot, like you said before in the interview. Yeah. Um, Kenshi can do a lot with meter burn armor for the rising karma, good damage. However, if you get Kenshi with no meter against uh, Cassie Cage that's on the aggression, that is going to be difficult. Yeah, naked Kenshi is no fun to play as, let me tell you. You, you don't have any options to get any, anything off of you. If you are stuck in the corner, it's even worse because then you really have to respect the mix-up, you have to block. But Pig, he's comfortable in those situations, regardless of whether he has the meter or not. We've seen him come out of that corner and do well. so. I'm really interested to see how Lar intends to mix him up if he does get him in the corner situation, which as Cassie, I'm sure he will at some point. I want to see how he adapts to that. And Pig, like you were saying, is playing phenomenally this entire tournament. I mean, the issue you'll have is combo drops. I mean, it might sound like quite a broad statement, but combo drops will be a big problem in this I matchup. I completely agree if with Cassie you. If Cassie drops, she loses the restand, which puts Kenji in a wake-up situation, which is dangerous. If Kenji drops his combos, she's not being sent full screen, which is where she needs to be. And here's the really interesting thing about this matchup. As we get into it, Cassie is very, Possessed very... Kenshi. Wow. Yeah, I was not expecting well. that, and a good start, but... Okay, so Cassie has to use stamina in order to get most of her combos off the ground. However, she's also got to use that stamina in order to close the distance between herself and Kenshi, so it's that management right there is really going to separate whether or not Lar does well in this matchup or not. We might be seeing a, a similar issue that Chief Eddie had in his match, where obviously A-list, Johnny, very stamina yes. intensive, had to use it to get in and then had nothing for his dash cancel. Uh, pretty obvious jumping from Lar, pick of the hut with a swift anti -air, and again the full screen space. No meter now, but a significant life lead. Oh, oh. wow, there's the read! Swift Just round one. Just right on top, all right. I was talking to uh, Pick of the Hut earlier, and uh, he mentioned that he would use Possessed against a lot of characters in the game. Because of, of a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before. I mean, we've seen him use it in the Pro League before, in the, in the Week 1, Week 2, but he really enjoys balance. But you are correct, he has used Possessed for a lot of matchups, and he continues to feel comfortable in it, as even though he doesn't use it as much. Ooh, Lark catches the back one on standing, there's the meter burn. What's the mix-up gonna be? Into the mix-up overhead, and he's gonna get a hard knockdown towards that corner. Here we go. But still, that's all oh, there, though. Beautiful space. Good footsies from La. 
Jabbar is bringing it right back. Wow. Unfortunately, he swapped the corner position, but now he's in the corner. Still, this isn't that bad because the pressure that Kenshi gets in the corner really isn't huge. Kenshi wants to be full screen. Yeah, it's more the space he's got behind him when he gets in the situation. And again, another good back one from Lab, but unfortunately he couldn't capitalize. Uh, one bar for Kenshi, so last gonna have to watch out for that meter burn. Great shots. And it, like, like you said, Pig has a lot of room to back up. If he wants to jump back, he Ooh. can as well. I'm sure if Pig dropped the follow-up or if he opted just not to do it. But again, good life lead right now. No meter though. La with three bars. Oh! Catches a challenge, but Pig manages to come out. Oh, good throw tech from La. That's actually the first throw tech I've seen from anyone against Pig. I love the way he incorporates that throw into his game. It's really, really solid. This is just that token Kenji uh -huh. counter pressure. Wonderful stuff. And a push. Beautiful. That's going to do it. Game one. Very Pretty convincing nice, yeah. to Pig. I mean, there was that one round with War where he was able to get some pressure in and get on. But unfortunately, once that reset, I think, really hurt him. He's being that second um, round. He's being incredibly impatient right mm -hmm. now. So obviously, we see Ken. Um, Kenji, Pig of the Hut, is waiting yes. for those almost full screen, mid screen jumps. And that's just a shoulder every time, which puts you straight back at square one. So Lars going to have to adopt a lot of patience right now. I know he wants to get in, do those big damage combos, get the restand, get the mix ups, but you have to work at it. You have to be really slow in your approach. Otherwise, you are just going to get blown up by yeah. one special move, and then you're back at full screen again. And you're absolutely right. That's why characters like Kenshi or even Shang Tsung in the old MK9, those characters are really built to feed off of your frustration and Absolutely. basically those characters are built to have you just hang yourself and they just take advantage of it. Hopefully we can see Lau make the adjustment though. Pick the hut one match away from winning at least a handful yeah. of thousand dollars. Couple bucks. One game away <laughs> no big being in that situation. Oh good bait from Lau. No punish. I'm not quite sure the frames on that move on block so I'm not quite sure how punishable it is but I need to at least stay safe on it. I'm gonna pretend I know but I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> okay. A wonderful catch, but unfortunately he drops it once again. But good situation right now for La. Oh. Uses bar. No doubt it's going to leave him to the restand. There we go. There's another punch. 26% damage. Not bad. Catch at the jump. Right at the corner. Oh, wait. Gets him. Catch and pick of the hut doing him uh, a wake up attack without using the bar. So we'll get beat out. Right. Well, that's not bad, though. I'm glad he didn't use the bar because he was not in a good situation. Again, running up to do that low. Oh, oh good stuff. Combo. Unfortunately, he drops it. Like I said before, I mean, the drops will be a big deal because look, he dropped it and he's mid screen. Yep. Oh, gets the overhead. Again, gets pushed mid full screen, excuse me. Oh, but he gets caught ducking. Oh, there's the low once again, double low. Good stuff. Pick of the hut. Oh, good conversion. 33%, not bad. Okay, I'm just going to slowly back up. I love the way he mixes his rush down in with his zoning. He's not just going to stay full screen, he will run up grab, he will use the teleport. Oh, wonderful stuff. I mean, as soon as Pig knows you're sitting there blocking, waiting for shoulders, he runs in the throw, this smash is, point, Pig This the is hut. not looking very good right now for Lara, unfortunately. He has the meter to work with, but unfortunately, if he uses it all in round two, round three, he's not going to have anything. Oh, there's oh, the meter challenge. Oh, he's from it. He's got to make this count, pushing Pig towards the corner. Wonderful, 35%. Oh, and good And he waits. Night. I love it. Just trying to jump out. There's another meter burn. But Pig will do it again. But it's just Pig's conservation of his super meter is incredible today. Not only that, but what I really enjoy is that Pig will never let someone shut down his best options, which usually are Kenshi's armor. So if he gets stuffed once or baited, he'll do it again. Oh, what a down to a challenge. Lars running in. Good stuff. There's another shoulder. I mean, just see that space it occupies. So much space, and now it's full screen. This is exactly what Pig wants. Bar is just, I think he's getting desperate. So that be, like I say, he's just built the bar. We're going to see it used immediately. Oh, goes the throw. Oh. There's the whiff punish. Magic's chase on the back dash. Wow, wow. That chunk of damage. One apiece now. I eat my words. Lar came back very, very well. Yeah, it's just this composure. Lar, like you see him, he gets hit by something, he gets punished. Just stone faced. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets to him. One game away from being able to take at least third place today. Are we going to see a variation switch possibly from Pig? Well, we know La is. CIS champion right now. He won the mid-season mm -hmm. showdown. He won the regional finals. This guy has won everything he can in CIS. Here he is today in top 16. Competing one game away from winners finals. One of the best North American players. So he's not doing too bad. I believe we saw a variation swap from uh, Pick of the Heart, but I'm not 100%. Would not surprise me. I mean, he was doing well with Possess, but I, I honestly feel that he plays best with Balance. Balance, going to Balance Kenshi. But I, I love that Pick of the Hut is so confident with multiple variations. It really hammers home how good the variation system is uh -huh. in this game. And how much of a difference it can make competitively, but good. Meter burn rice and karma to punish the neutral jump. And there it is, building that meter. I absolutely love that. 
Again, oh, beautiful. Pig is a very meter dependent player because his character needs it. So he uses every opportunity to build it. And here we go, full screen again, running in. Here we go, using that meter. Just every time I look at Pig's meter, he hasn't got any, but then he just gets that bar and uses it so well. Oh no, Imp error from La, use the environment interaction. Oh, that's gonna be, no, didn't get the punish. See, the, the shoulder is slower and balanced mm -hmm. by a couple of frames. That isn't possessed. Can't capitalize fully. No meter for Pick of the Hut. Lars got a good chance to go in here. Oh, he I just can't. built the bar. He, just built the bar. He is so good. And it, to every, it might just look like he's just using it, but he's very calculated in when he uses that bar. And if you notice, he's like 90% for hitting. Oh, good. Fuzzy got in for Pick of the Hut. Oh, catch the throw. Good stuff. I love how often Pick goes for the throw as an option, which gives him more mid-screen games. Oh, there's the weapon punish from Lar. Gets a full jump in. Right. That cracker into the mix up and he gets him and he's gonna run full almost full screen for that combo. Ow, that really hurts. Oh he drops the follow-up, but gets the string, can't convert though. <laughs> There's the low good challenge from Pear getting out of the corner. Oh good block of the overhead. Oh goes the right. Great trap at the end, but again he uses the armored flip kick. Match good stuff. point, both players. Wow. Look at the meters though, this is a bit of a roll of us right it's now. It's not looking into the meter department for Lar, but. Or pick the hut builds his stamina back right at the end of that. Oh, no, it's plus two. Oh, he Big will hard. do it again. I, I knew it. You called it, man. You called it. And that's the thing. He will never let anyone shut down his option. And that, that's a huge thing in fighting games. Oh, wonderful anti air. Meter burn rising come with 28% damage, but no bar. Oh, he chips him away. Bit looking, by bit. Very good right now. Slowly. Oh, catches him. Bar trying to make his approach. Oh, that oh. won't work. It's going to be difficult for Lard to bring this back. And that's going to be a push. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Really well played from Peck of the Heart, just that full screen and yeah, just punishing that impatience. Looks like Lar went back to his uh, sword match in the game one. Sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, man. He has earned the right to gloat, man. Absolutely. Winners finals. So again, I know I know I mentioned it multiple times, but when you are playing someone and they bait you out or they shut down what is an option that you always use, it can be very mentally draining and it can also crush you. Pig is one of those players that regardless of what you do and how you punish him, he will never let you take away that option, which is why he's so successful with Kenshi. EX Rising Karma is an amazing move, but it can also be punished and armored through. He will not relent in not using that, and I really like that about him. Well, the issue is, if, if you let the opponent know that you are no longer doing Meter Burn Rising Karma or Shoulders or anything like that, you're letting them pressure you. And again, against a character like Cassie Cage with the 50-50s, with the strong frame traps, that is giving them more mileage than they should have against you. Exactly. And I mean, Lar played really well. That let's, was let's it be was a great set. It was a great set. Last game, last round, but Pig managed just to clutch it out, bagged himself the first spot in winners' finals today. So huge congratulations to him. Lar moving on into the losers bracket now. What do we see again? That was Lar actually got caught by a lot of those teleport overheads. I'm not sure why, but well, balance does tend to be the, the ghosty variation for Kenji. So a lot of players that have experience against Kenji, nine times out of ten, it will be imbalanced. Yeah, but right. obviously that, like, like I said before, the strength of the variation system. You have to be ready for multiple versions of that character. You have to. I really like the way, though, when he did beat Possessed Pig, he was able to really get past that push, and, and like you said, he was able to gain the patience, and it really paid off. Fortunately, in the end, Pig was just one step ahead of him. And so moving on into the second match for Winners Finals, looks like we have uh, EVB Big D versus CR Sonic Fox. They have played before. In the Pro League for NA, they've played before, and Sonic Fox was able to take out Big D. However, with the way Big D has been playing so far today, I think we may see a different story. I mean, Sox is, excuse me, Fox is always dangerous, but Big D has really been leveling up throughout the Pro League, even at CEO when I was staying with him. I mean, he was really showing some incredible stuff, so I'm excited to see if he can finally take down Fox. It's like we said before, consistency above all else. This guy, week in, week out, would perform. He'd make it to top 16. He'd get as far as he could. He'd do better and better and better. Sometimes he'd fall short. Sometimes he'd make grand finals. And here he is today. One game away from winners' finals. Although to take that final spot, he has to defeat Sonic Fox. But if he goes into winners' finals beating Sonic Fox, in his That's mind, who can't be, be a huge confidence booster for him? Of course, Sonic Fox on the other side of the coin. Do we really need to say anything else anymore at this point? Oh, just I mean, just look at his professional results. Like first place at Evo, multiple games, the current world champion for MK9 and Injustice, ridiculous. breezing his way through to winners' finals today. Almost. I mean, if Big D can't stop him, I don't know if anyone can today. We'd have to look to the loser's bracket for that. I know, man. It's going to be, but again, if you fight Sonic Fox, like if he makes grand finals through winners, obviously he's now got to take down Pick of the Hut if he manages to beat Big D. But you will then have to defeat Sonic Fox in two sets. You have to beat him twice. Double elimination. You have to beat him twice. That's ridiculous. Getting right into it. 
He is sticking with Katana this entire tournament. He's sticking to his guns, man. He's been putting the pressure in. He's been putting in practice, and here we are. Oh, beautiful float into neutral jump punch right into the combo, and this is going to push him fairly close to the corner. Oh! That was actually a fortunate trade for Big D, otherwise that would have been a huge punish. But here we go, now Big D has corner position. Though this is not a matchup I've seen often. Um, I have not league. either. However, something I can see is obviously Ermac Sobor, the Master of Souls, giving him that massive combo. I can see that trading really well against Katana. Like, really well. I could also see it going in Katana's favor if she reflects it back. Because True. she gets a full combo off of that. No, that is a good point. I guess I have to wait and see. I mean, no doubt Sonic Fox will be prepared, knowing full well he'll have to fight Big D this weekend. But see, I don't think Big D would just kind of throw it out Will and Hilly. I, I really think he would kind of respect that. Sonic Fox trying to punish the down one, doesn't quite get it, but manages to get at least the block pressure there. And that will be round one. Good Actually, stuff. Actually, if you remember, one of Big D's most uh, valued training partners is Katana Prime. Yes, absolutely. So he has experience in this matchup, absolutely. A wonderful land here from Big D getting the soul ball. Uses the meter to get the restand, but oh, he drops his combo. I mean, against Madsen, Big D obviously managed to qualify here through uh, defeating Madsen. Hmm? He was playing really well and getting really strong rounds, but the rounds he lost were off his own combo drops. A lot of the That time. is true. And right he now, can, uh, tighten that up this set. Sonic Fox is not dropping any combos as he keeps him in the corner, but good use of meter to get him off, but he's oh, back. Once again, Big D always ready with that godlike hand here, but three bars, Sonic Fox. And we've seen he's ready to throw that X ray yes. out. He is ready to use that X ray. Good block for Sonic Fox. Down one fan. Can neutral crush the fan, but again, you have to be ready for it. What's up? What's two? Oh, he's the frame trap. Good stuff. Catches him jumping out. No fuzzy guarding. This oh. could be big. Almost got to confirm. Now using meter to get more pressure. But a teleport is going to be a punish. This will be the game. This and will that be the should game. be it. Oh, unfortunately, Big D throws away the game going for the meter burn teleport. Unfortunate stuff, but good stuff. Sonic Fox, once yep. again, a game away from making winners finals. So I think he's really going to have to think about how he can approach this matchup. Because I think if he plays a bit more patient, he should be okay. Because that, that was his round, but then that teleport came and that was it. That was that. Another problem with this matchup as well is Katana can, for the most part, be safe after all of her pressure. Ermac is more of a character where he lives and dies by his mix-up. Absolutely. And obviously Big D's been forcing those a lot today. Like, you know, he's willing to take the damage if it will also get him that combo as well. The restand. Just like, like that. Right there. I mean, if it worked, it would have led to about 40% or a restand, but it's it's a very risky business playing Ermac. Oh, there we go. No, it immediately well, break last time, got the combo this time, at least forces two bars away from Sonic Fox, but Katana not a character that needs meter to do damage to you. This is going to be such good positioning, a hard knockdown, oh, and goes the for the green. low. Oh, it drops the combo, that's unfortunate, the first time we've seen Sonic Fox drop something important in quite some time. But Big D is just stuck in the corner, finally uppercutting his way out. I just get that at least, I mean, I don't want to say sign of desperation, but a down two is not yeah, usually the go-to. That's uh, not the button you usually hit. Okay, Big D's got some momentum now. The light beat is his. He's got to watch these syllables. And oh, once again, the teleport. What a read. Shades of game one had the match, but decided to do a meter by teleport. I was honestly hoping he would use that vine to I get the chip. Big D went for it for, the for obviously the chip damage of three hits, but Sonic Fox, knowing that, neutral jumps on a read, makes it whiff. That was beautiful. And again, this is where most of this match has taken place. Sonic Fox with a combo in the corner. 34% damage, lovely stuff. Oh, get oh, the jump go. out. At least 20, uh, 20%. Okay. Let Sonic Fox out, but he does get a punish in the down two, but now he's stuck in the corner. Sonic Fox with a good reversal though. Obviously a buff that move received. She's now special out of it, so you can get the fan for a full combo now. One of the many buffs she received. There's the fan, big pressure. Oh, oh, the, the, the fate. float. And this might be it. Unbreakable, wow. wow. Sonic Fox bagging himself a spot in winners finals where he will fight Pick Up the Hut from Yomi Gaming. Wow, incredible stuff. Again, they, these two have played, but and, and Katana Prime is obviously one of his training partners for Big D. However, Sonic Fox just, I feel, was just playing the matchup really well. He was playing it to his favor. He was able to control Big D, do what he wanted to do. As far as keeping him in the corner, the punishes, the reads, I mean, it was all there for Fox. I don't think I'm yet to see uh, Sonic Fox fight a character that he didn't seem ready for. Obviously, you know, he's always got the punishes on deck, he knows plus frames, negative frames. He's always ready, obviously not, not to sound too technical, but he is, he, long story short, he's ready for every character, yes. and I'm yet to see it be different. He is, and that's going to set up our winner's finals match, which is going to be Sonic Fox versus Pig of the Hut. I don't know.
that's going to be Katana versus Kenji. We're seeing these matchups that I don't think we were ever going to see today. We saw that a lot, however, in MK9. We so did. That's Shades we did of MK9. Indeed. I can't remember. How did that matchup go in MK9? I believe Kenshi dominates Katana. Ouch. In MK9. This is MKX. Moving forward, MKX, obviously. But again, it's not something that I've personally seen a lot. Um, have, has Katana Prime and Pick of the Hut fought in ESL before? I believe so. May have been one of the earlier weeks, but in the, in the later weeks, they definitely did not. Okay, cool. So again, Sonic Fox, you know, just because you're ready for one player's version of the character doesn't mean you're ready for everyone. Obviously, That's right. the, the differences. Everyone has a different play style. Well, let's go ahead and find out what Pig has to say as he's standing by with Joshua Gray. Thank you, gentlemen. First of all, Pig of the Hut, congratulations on making it to the winner's bracket finals. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. I feel like I woke up this morning completely prepared. I warned everybody here that I was completely prepared. And... Um, the thing is, when, when I have time to sit down and work out all the matches, I knew who the players were going to be, I knew who the characters were going to be, and I grinded it unbelievably, and um, I think so far that training has showed. A lot of people are considering an upset, your victory against a foxy yeah. grandpa. Would you consider that your toughest match so far today? Um, I think in looking at the bracket, I thought Foxy, when, when they told us who we were going to play, I thought Foxy would definitely be the hardest person in my path, but unfortunately he wasn't. Lar was definitely the hardest person I had played today. And um, I mean, as far as Foxy goes, he is an outstanding player. He, I mean, he's won countless amounts of tournaments. Uh, he will do really well in this tournament uh, in loser's bracket, and he will do really well at EVO. But uh, I saw a hype video earlier today that said, uh, who can beat Foxy Grandpa? Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Pig of the Hut. I'm 33, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I have uh, one kid, one kid on the way, a wife named Amanda. And uh, yeah, I think I'm your candidate to beat Foxy uh, Grandpa. Thank you. USA. USA. Well, he's not out of it yet. He will be down no, on loser's not. bracket. Same for Lar. Lar considered the dark horse of this tournament. Overall, your preparation for this finals, I'm sure, was a lot of time and a lot yep. of effort. How was that, and how did Yomi Gaming help you? Um, Yomi DJT, Yomi MIT. And the uh, Kung Lao Tanya matchups. Uh, and also, I have to give a massive shout out to one of the most improved players in the entire FGC. Uh, Yomi Xenomorph. Uh, he plays Cassie Cage. There could, I could not ask for a better Cassie Cage training partner, and that last win was all Xenomorph. That was all Xenomorph. So I give him massive props for that. And, um, and I know he's got, a lot, he's got a lot of big things upcoming for Evo for him. He's got a great path, and uh, I think he can take it. All right, well, congratulations on making it this far. Your opponent later on today is going to be Sonic Fox. Any words you'd like to say to him? Um, get ready for that rematch, buddy. It's coming. And, uh, and I'd like to give a huge shout out to my wife and my uh, daughter Zoe and my mom, probably watching this right now. I love you guys and I miss you very much. All right. Thank you, Pig of the Hot. Congratulations once again. Appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the action continues in the loser's bracket for the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. Stay tuned. Prepare yourself. Who would fear a blind mortal? One who has never faced him. Kenshi, the blind swordsman of Earthrealm. Wielding the mystical sword Sento, Kenshi is empowered and guided by his fallen ancestors, the Warrior Kings. He offers three variations featuring strong telekinetic powers and swift swordplay. When the student is ready, the master appears. In the balanced variation, Kenshi's ancestors manifest themselves through his blade. Spirit Push, Back Forward Y, and Telefury, Back Forward A, are great combo enders that help push enemies to the corner. Rising Karma, Down Back X, is a great combo extender that helps Kenshi deal damage and build meter. 
Save your meter for enhanced specials to keep the tempo in your favor. <laughs> I merely hope to learn from you. In the Kenjutsu variation, Kenshi displays his sword mastery and telekinetic abilities with new overhead attacks and mix-up potential. Mix in his low attacks with enhanced spinning blade for deadly overhead combos. After rising sword, down back X, use low punch, down X to extend his combos. Watch Sento quickly return to Kenshi's back and flash white to help with the timing. And follow up with telesuspend, down back B right trigger to continue the combo. I will cast you into darkness. In the possessed variation, the broken Sento blade unleashes the fury of Kenshi's ancestors. Kenshi uses a low special move Demon Drop, down back B and right trigger, that will extend combos as well as a teleport to increase his mobility. Be mindful of which special move you choose to end your combos with. Demon Assault, forward back Y, will yield the most damage, but Spinning Hell, forward B, will keep your opponent closer for a mix-up. Kenshi's strength is in his zone control and knowing the ranges of your special attacks to pressure and force mistakes from your opponents. Patience and spacing are key. Use effective meter management to get yourself out of high pressure situations and extend combos. Use your safe strings like split ends, BYX, and spinning sin, back AY, to check your opponent and threaten hasty attackers with powerful armored specials. <laughs> Stand your ground and cut down your foes with this X-Ray combo. And unleash Ancestral Fury with the Brutality. You show little promise. Kenshi wins. Purchase a combat pack to unlock Kenshi's Samurai skin and tune into the ESL Mortal Kombat X Pro League presented by Xbox. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. This is the uh, ESL Morkama X Pro League Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. Where we've had... Uh, it's been crazy. I mean, uh, I really thought that so far, it would kind of be more of a blend of Europe and US. But so far, US, you know, obviously La doing really well at the moment, but the US has been very dominant so far. I'm going to have to completely agree with you. I was not expecting the spread to be so pro-US, if you know what I'm saying. Well, there's, there's, there's a lot of quality here, but I think uh, when it comes to the tournament itself, a lot of people have just kind of, uh, a lot of the US guys, they've just pulled through right now. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of the guys, you know, they're still in the loser's bracket. They still have the extra chance, obviously, because we're doing a double win bracket. There's still the extra chance to pull through. Let's be honest. At no point have I thought that the EU or CAS guys have looked free or out of it, but it's just been, right now, dominant by the US. A lot of the matches, in fact, most of the matches have been very close. So, our winner's finals is decided. Yes, it is. So we have Pig of the Hut from Yomi against CR Sonic Fox. That is going to be your winner's finals of this tournament. Now we've reached that point, we're going to be going into the loser's bracket. And uh, it is not a bracket that I would like to be a part of. This is win or go home. We're at that point now where, you know, the uh, the safety net is gone. You have to win these matches. Uh, the first match coming up is going to be uh, Lowland Lions, Taco versus Rio. Uh, that's going to be a crazy matchup. I'm looking forward to that one. But as I mentioned, this is the point where you have to win. 
you don't win, you're going home, and there's no chance of you being in that money. Nope, not at all. And right now, winners' finals, of course, they are in the money, and I can guarantee you everyone in losers is looking at that very hungry. There's no one in the losers bracket right now that's like, you know what, it was cool that I got here. I think I'm going to probably, you know, just. But it's kind take of an interest. It's an interesting one because uh, obviously, you know, there's $100,000 to, to win here. But um, a huge thank you to Razor for sponsoring the ESL Morecambe X Pro League. Uh, there are some Razor Aatrox sticks up for grabs in the prediction points and the raffle. Uh, you can find the raffle at esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle where there's an Aatrox stick for Xbox One, uh, Razor Kraken for Xbox One headsets, and also a custom made Predator style. Let's Xbox be honest, one. I really want that Xbox. I think everyone does. I mean, I like Predator and I like Xbox. I so mean, it's pretty much solid. How could you not like Predator? I mean, obviously he's a new character as well. We have the, the uh, Predator That's exhibition true. coming and we up. Will, we will see how that plays out. Of course, again, the world's best cage. Oh, it lands down. Ready to but play. But it's not about that. What it's about is Yomi Ryo and LLL Taco. We're going to see who is going to be able to take this. I'm actually putting my money on Ryo. I think the thing is, Ryo is just going to be... Uh, he understands Sub-Zero. Like, he yes. has played so many Sub-Zeros. Tom uh, Brady. Exactly. Like, we mentioned. So many high-level Sub-Zeros this guy practices with. Um, we know that Taco plays Ermac and Sub-Zero, but his real, uh, the meat and potatoes of Taco is Ermac. Okay. Not Ermac, Sub-Zero. Okay. Sub-Zero is my head, but Ermac came out my mouth. I was mouth. waiting, about I was like, okay. But yeah, so it is, it's Sub-Zero. Uh, and you know, it's much like Madden where he'll try and put you in the corner, really enforce that kind of game. Um, the only person here repping the Link way, as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, apart from obviously well, being I mean, obviously you two, but... In the tournament, in the tournament, of course. But, How do you uh, feel about that? I, I don't know, I don't mind. I mean, there's only one Link Kuei character in the game. That's uh, true. All right, so we've actually gone straight into it. It's going to be Tanya versus Grandmaster. I mean, no doubt, I think Rio's tried to really well play Tanya, just kind of be irritating to hit. You know, it's going to be, it's quite hard to contain Tanya as a character. It uh, really is, especially with her teleport. She'll be able to get around the clones. Of course. I mean, it's not about the fact that she can teleport and land a hit. I mean, obviously that was nerfed in the recent patch. Um, it's mainly the fact that she just can't be touched. You know, the important thing about the teleport is the positioning in this matchup. And of course, she still has the cancels, making her pressure safe. Just really good options, and she actually has Sub-Zero in the corner now. Ryo putting all the pressure on Taco and forcing him to break. Well, I've never seen Taco fight a really high-level Tanya before, so this is going to be very interesting. This yeah. could go either way. This could be uh, Taco puts up a good fight, or he just gets thoroughly overwhelmed by a character he might be unfamiliar with. Exactly. Two things are going to happen. Either he adapts or he doesn't adapt. Of course. I mean, like, uh, he's gonna he's trying to get something going from here, but I mean, Ryo really not really having a reason to put himself in harm's way. Nope, and I really like this play. There's no reason to overextend, but nice little profile slide. Oh, nice use of the armor, too, just to wake up straight through the clone. Just do it. I think that's the interesting thing about armoring through the clone. It doesn't do any damage to you. So no. it's more so the fact that you just gotta power through you it. You just don't want to deal with it because the mix of potential behind the clone is very obnoxious. Absolutely all catch is a good thing. Uh, doesn't quite get the hit confirmed because he's already in the air. Uh, doesn't get the full combo. See, yeah, so as a sub zero player, you want a clone as soon as you see someone jump in on you because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a free freeze. But with Tanya, she can either teleport in front of herself or behind herself. Oh, Rio reluctant to go for the ice yeah. punish there. Good blocks. Oh, and he catches and pressing buttons. Is he going to bring the mirror? No, because he doesn't have any. I think it's uh, Taco sitting on a full stick of butter right now, but I mean, it's going to be hard for him to pull it back. I mean, Sub-Zero doesn't need meter to damage. It's more no. so for like hit confirms uh, or not hit confirms, you know, just to be safe and just check out a mix up. Uh, but I mean, in this matchup, I mean, it's, the clone's really not putting any, in any no. work, really. And at this point, honestly, I would like to see Taco almost just play without the clone. Almost the fact that um, I know Taco plays Grandmaster, but. Um, you kind of wonder how much Grandmaster helps him against this character. Yeah. Know, like, oh, and there we go. Of it, finally, Clone finally does something awesome. Oh, it doesn't get the confirmed because he has not got stamina to run in. Very unfortunate there for Taco. Oh, nice. Low profiling on the down really four. Good down four. And that, bu that button is so good. Predicts he from beat, Sub Zero. He baits the, uh, the Wreckers there, but just gets yep. hit by the final hit. And there we go. Token Walker Fatality. I love this Fatality. Really, really cool. I like how nonchalant she is about it. She's very casual, like she does it every day. Yeah. It's awesome. It's disgusting. But I mean, like, that was very much all Rio. I mean, it wasn't uh, complete destruction as such, because uh, they were long rounds, but it was long rounds of Sip Taco not being able to touch her. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be frustrating for Taco. As a Sub Zero player, you're so used to dictating the pace of the match, but here you comes can't Tanya. do that. Yeah, here comes Tanya. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Tanya was uh, recently changed, but I mean, the, the sole well, purpose Rio is picking this matchup still remains. Well, you know, again, the mobility. There's, yeah, there's two reasons, though. It's here comes Tanya and here comes Rio, who knows this matchup inside and out. Of course. I mean, it, there's multiple dynamics going on here. I mean, I think Rio went into this matchup with an advantage. I mean, he understands how to fight Taco, uh, you know, in, in sort of general Grandmaster Sub Zero, I suppose. Uh, it's working for him right now. Rio just exercising a lot of patience here, getting the forward two, catching it. 
I love that he used his projectile immediately when that clone came out, just getting rid of it. Ryo obviously showing that he really knows his matchup. And I now, think, speaking of knowing the matchup, one of the things he tries to do, he tries to go in and punish the overhead. Uh, and that's going to show Taco that he knows the overhead punish. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Board four, freeze. Being knocked down. I mean, he spends his only bar on it. The comeback is completely possible, but you know, as the rest I, of the match has been, very I, difficult. Ketchup, I really don't like how he's summoning that clone when he has advantage. That's really what's hurting him in a punish. There's the punish. He went for it earlier, didn't get it, but tried to go for it again. This would be a nice, ooh, good damage there for Rio. Match point against Lowdown Lions, Taco. I, I, again, I almost want to see him stop using that clone, especially when he's in Tanya's face and he is somewhat close to catching her. He needs to keep that pressure. Oh, and there's an amazing bait there trying to get the jump. Uh, yeah. Teleports away. Just, and again, here comes... Oh, nice. I'm not sure if that was a reaction to the ice ball. I mean, that was a really nice way to go in there. Hey, it worked. Good, good stuff there from Rio. And a break. This is not a good situation for Taco. Catches the down four, but opts to go for the clone. I mean, your plus... Oh, go straight Okay, into so... Rio kind of giving him something there, but no punish. Speaking of punishes, Rio trying to punish the overhead. Doesn't quite get it, though. Taco kind of on a lifeline at the moment, I think. Oh, my goodness. Finally is bringing another clone. Taco needs this. He needs to make this count. Hard knockdown on the clone. Oh, and armor right through. through. The break from Taco has to break in that situation, otherwise he's going home. And this, this could be his last chance. No, drop combo, but it's still not looking too good for Taco, and that's gonna be it. Taco is gonna be going home. Uh, Rio advancing. I mean, uh, huge congratulations to Rio, but I mean, it's very, very unfortunate that situation that uh, just all over him. I mean, you can tell that Rio just was in much more control yep. there. He knew the matchup. He knew how to fight the character. Taco seemed a little bit lost against Tanya. I have never seen Taco actually fight a high-level Tanya before. Um, so I think that's a recipe for disaster, I think. That's a sub yeah. player. And again, Rio is just one of those players where if he knows he has the advantage, he will play to that the entire time. He's not going to mess around. He's not going to try to get flashy. He's not going to, you know, he's, he's not going to try to do swaggy combos, as they call them well, these days. All the, really, all, all the thing he really did there was the fact that he was just kind of sitting full screen, uh, checking the clone with the, uh, the taunt for throw. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Um, it's not a sigh, which I called it earlier. It's yeah, I know, right? Um, but it's uh, it's mainly the fact that he just kind of played a very slow, collected game uh -huh. of just getting round everything. I mean, that's what it really came down to. He was just avoiding everything, landing a hit, punishing what needed to be punished, and uh, just basically eliminating the threat of the clone, which is why you pick Grandmaster. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not really a Sub-Zero main, so I can't really say whether I think Grandmaster works against Tanya. Maybe it might be one of those situations where it'd be better to pick, like, Crymancer or something that can really yeah. play an aggressive game against Tanya or something, but who knows. So congratulations, of course, to Rio for moving on. It's unfortunate that we will no longer be seeing Taco, but congratulations, honestly, for making it all the way here he to made the, the top, top 16, 16 finals. You know? We hope to see you in future events. And in, up next, we're going to have Mitsu versus... Mitsu Ons versus my favorite player currently. Nivek. And that is Nivek. And it's not just because we're Greek boys. It's because I really love the way that he plays with Raiden, I love his anti-airs. He's a very clean player. His combos are insanely good. It's and he just controls matches very well. Nivek uh, plays very intelligently, and uh, it's going to be an interesting dynamic, I think. You're going to have Nivek, who plays uh, on punishes. Like, he'll try and punish every single thing that he can. Unfortunately, in this tournament, we saw a couple of punish attempts not really follow through and uh, cost him, where okay. he would try and punish every single little thing. And the way he got the button, he dropped the combo, you know? So, um, so if he manages to get it through, be in a better situation. Real quick, we actually caught up with Mitsu Owens. Let's go and find out what he had to say about everything. Mitsu who? Like, I don't know anything about this guy. Where is he from? Germany. Uh, okay, I mean, well, what character does he play? Scorpion. <laughs> oh, an online scorpion? Yeah, that makes sense. Mitsu Owens? Mitsu Owens? Who is this? Oh, just like a block! Wow! Mitsu Owens from Germany is your ESL European MKX Pro League Week 5 champion, earning himself 100 placement points and $500. Wow. So Mitsu Owens decided to just stick with his gun. Just, he, he did exactly what he's been doing all season. Mitsu Owens? I've always wanted to try German food. Oh! <laughs> wow, okay. Okay, we've got that. Meter burn teleport cancelled into meter burn teleport. What I don't even know what to say about that one. And he hits him over there. This could be what Mitsu owns. Needs to make this comeback. One more touch and it's over. White Black has no breaker. Catches the throw just one time and that will take the game for Mitsu I cannot believe that started from 
fainted meter burn teleport into meter. I, I just can't get my head around that. How is that a thing? That's Mitsu always throwing the kitchen sink at him. Mitsu owns, you're a great Scorpion player. And I'm proud that you represent Germany with me together. All that bar to spend. Oh, and this is it. This is going to be This it. is going to take the set. Mitsu owns will advance if he takes this combo. And that's going to be it. Mitsu owns taking this one. 3-2. Use for glue going home. This was a very important, a very important win for me. Guys, you can't trash talk all day, but you have seen me in the ESL. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. Who is next? So Mitsu owns had some things to say, and you obviously are familiar with him. You've seen him week after week. He's very scary uh, in the sense that he is not afraid. Uh, even if like a low minion up close will cost him the tournament, he will still do it. And on many occasions, it will work because you just do not expect some of the stuff that he pulls out, uh, and and it works for him. Like he he is unreadable. You yeah. cannot read him. And that's why players like Mitsu owns are so dangerous. But on the other side of the coin, we have Mivik, who is Again, extremely solid, and he's a very intelligent player. That's what I really enjoy about watching Nivik. When he was down here for the Fan Choice event, he was just consistent, and that's the thing that really impressed me about him. Well, I think it's uh, it's an interesting thing, because Nivek fought uh, Mitsuones ages and ages and ages ago, and back during the uh, preseason event. Okay. And uh, Nivek destroyed Mitsuones, like 3-0. Uh, he was just toying with him by the end of the set. However, uh, we're now in a situation where um, Mitsu Owens recently fought Nivek in the ESO Online Leagues and beat him. Uh, so okay. Mitsu Owens, he's, he's kind of like, I suppose, just improved his general uh, unpredictable style of play. The only thing that I would add to that that would still possibly keep Nivek in the advantage is that this is offline. Of course, I mean, Nivek uh, way more suited to an offline tournament. Uh, I mean, it depends on like you know, combo execution, little things like that. Uh, these offline situations where the money's on the line, these risky decisions would normally be, you have to second guess them, but yeah. uh, Mitsu owns just, it is never afraid to make those decisions. And that again is what makes him so dangerous, but Nivek is doing a very good job of playing his game right now. A lot of pressure. Yep, yeah, that's taken for Good stuff from Nivek. Great in strength, he puts you in the corner, basically no matter where on the screen you are. Oh, tries to go for a combo there to eat through any kind of armor. Does drop the combo, Mitsu owns gets a wake up teleport. Oh, oh nice beautiful AJP. Neutral jump punch. This round is looking 100% Nivik right now. Oh, oh my oh, goodness! He comes down too! And he tries to punish low minion, doesn't get it. The stones on this man, that is ridiculous. That was a, uh, a Mortal Kombat 2 uppercut, that one. Round yeah. 2, fight! Oh, he's buffering down back, trying to sort of uh, bait a teleport, I think. Oh, yeah, the run cancels. And we don't see a lot of Raiden's use run cancels on block. We see a lot of the extended combos on hit, but Nivik is one of the few that uses it on block to kind of get that pressure. Well, because he does, he is, uh, there are certain situations where he's, he's plus on block after doing, all, uh, after doing that situation. I think a lot of Raiden controls opt to go for the 50 50 strings. Uh, Nivik will often go for chip and meet again and then throughout the 50 50. Yeah. And that's why he's so dangerous. All over Mitsuones right now. Oh, Nivek drops the combo right at the oh. end. Here comes Mitsuones getting the forward too. Oh, oh the back that's what you're low minion. About. I, I told you, a point blank low minion. He is not afraid to do it. You don't expect it at a tournament like this. He throws it out and it works. Oh, but he messed up his string and now he's caught in the pressure. Oh, there's the ante. He's going to take the round. Drops it down one. Oh, that's it. And that's going to cheat him out, yep. Yeah, the second that down four connected, he was two plus. Uh, and that's the Greek finish. They always do that kind of thunder thing. Normally they do it into fatality. Normally they do that into fatality, but I think he opted to be nice that time and just end it normally. Um, but that was really just Nivek uh, making the reads on Mitsu Owens, staying on him, not letting him breathe. Uh, and I think just generally, he got hit by a couple of his mix-ups, but he had Breaker. You know, Thunder God Raiden doesn't require lots of meter. So does Mitsu play anyone else other than Scorpion? I've seen him play Scorpion before, but I haven't seen him play anyone else. He is true to Scorpion. Will only ever play Scorpion. Different variations? Uh, I think he's going to pick Infrared Scorpion by the looks of things, if that counts. Um, no, I don't think he is. But uh, he also plays, uh, he's been trying to learn a bit of Ninjutsu. Okay. Uh, when Scorpion received a downgrade to his 2 on 4 string, um, Mitsu owns kind of opted to go for Ninjutsu and try and experiment, really. Uh, it's interesting though, because Mitsu owns, he's been experimenting with Ninjutsu, and he does play a really strong Ninjutsu, however, I really feel like the threat of Mitsu owns comes from Inferno. Inferno, all it the mix-ups. Like, the tools that you get given in Inferno, that's what caters to him, and that is how he really establishes his dangerous play, is through what Inferno alone gives him. And it looks like he's going to stick with it, but I like that he went to the character select screen to kind of gather his thoughts, because that was a very fast match for Nivik. It was. Uh, it was just... It's one of those matches you see where they, they, they're all over him. You know, they don't give him room to breathe. Yep. Hanzo Hasashi. Five flames can burn even you. Round I like being quiet during those intros. Yeah. They're cool. 
There's always loads that you haven't heard before. But again, the all important first hit. Uh, it's gonna, oh. and there you go. I mean, against someone like Scorpion, you want the first hit bonus. Yes, you want that break. absolutely. You do not want to give him the meter advantage. And the Ken, uh, just the Brawlow Demon. It's, it's risky, but. From a punishable range, I might add. But that's the thing, I mean, it's so risky, but he's just, he has no fear. He is not afraid to do it. That'll be a straight stupid man getting good, uh, an extra percent for me, but it's mainly for, but just screen carry. And that's nice it. block. Ooh, tries to punish yep. him, doesn't get it. But another one! Back to back, Low Minion! This is Mitsu owns through and through. You just don't expect no. Low Minion to Low Minion. You just don't expect it. <laughs> and there you go, he <laughs> takes the first bound. It works though, you're absolutely right, because it's very unexpected. It, it works. Here comes Mitsu owns, all catches the board too. Neva gets hit by the overhead. Here the we go. Calculated randomness, if you will. It is. It's. It's complete. It's playing with the heart. Like, yeah. I'm oh, there to punish. That's here we go. Nivek. That's In what the corner. was always looking for. That straight suit, man. Nivik is three for three for those NJPs. Oh. Ooh. And there we go. Jump kick teleport. There's going to go into vortex. The question is, what's the mix up? Well, it's very early confirm. Confirm as well for Mitsu runs. Extra four percent grab. Nice. I mean, that's the lesser of two evils with the block. But as I always like to say, but uh -huh. it's good damage. You know, it adds like twelve percent. It's on NBNB. It's that extra layer on the mix-up burrito. You know what I'm saying? It's Mitsu runs on the verge. You're taking it one all against Nivek. Oh, he does one all wow, against Nivek. He threw it right back. That was a very dominant match for Mitsu Rons. I mean, <laughs> it was just, it's what we talk about all the time where it's just unpredictable stuff. Like low minion on block into low minion. <laughs> Something that only Mitsu owns does. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't know what to but say. But because he's the only player that really just does that. Yeah. You don't expect it. It's like you, you can't fight Mitsuones and go, oh, it's just Inferno Scorpion. It's, it's not. His it's, Inferno yeah. Scorpion, which is just unreadable. So that's it's important. Oh, run and grab. Grab. And now I fear that Mitsu might be in Nivik's head a little bit. I think Nivek just seems afraid to go in. Like, he's going to try and enforce the game. In game oh, one. Oh, nice frame trap. I think in game one, what? Oh, and there's the check in the full screen. Runs in, gets the grab. Doesn't get the full combo. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm extremely biased right now for Nivek. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, it's um, the matter is, like, in the first game, Nivek enforced his game. Yes, he and did. And denied it to any limit. And I think if Nivek wants to make a difference in this match, he's really got to start just disrespecting. There's the read. Speaking of, Mitsu. Speaking of it, just ready, you know, ready for it. Nice and yeah, from Nivek. Doesn't get max damage, gets a good 40%. That is by far one of his best talents as a player, is his anti airs. And there's a punish. Yeah, runs in forward one. That's guaranteed. Oh. Here comes the one bar punish. This damage will take it. And there we go. Full convert. Superman. So beautiful. Match point, Nivek. So beautiful. We talk about Nivek. When his, uh, when his execution is on point, Fight. that's it. That is Nivek when he is at his scariest. Uh, oh, when he is landing every armor. Ooh, good stuff, Nivek. And there's the conversion we were talking about. Oh, oh. Let's drop it. Again, using that six frame normal. So good. Nice job. Oh, very, very slightly recovers from that. Hit by the overhead. Doesn't confirm. Mitsuwain's reluctant to go for the spear. And he's just blocking low. He doesn't want to get caught by that low demon. Nice cancel for the grab. Now he's got him in the corner. And again, blocking, but no punish. No stamina. He had no stamina to run in. Oh, that, 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 that jump was kick a was a guard. teleport. Yep. No doubt that jump kick was a teleport as well. Yeah. And he gets it. Doesn't confirm the kick. Wow. That was so risky. Oh, no. Back three low minion didn't work that time. And it might put Mitsuwones out of the tournament. And it, and is. it does. Mitsuwones from Germany will be going home. Nivek moving on. Uh, in the loser's bracket, I mean, it's that was. I mean, at least Mitsu Owens really gave us a chance to to show us what he's yeah. all about, which is just, I'm not afraid to just do it. I don't care if it's punishable. I don't care if it's going to lose me the tournament. I will do it. I would rather Win. play. Win. Honestly, I would rather play against a Sonic Fox or Foxy than I would like to play against a Mitsu, who is just very unpredictable. It's very difficult to play against that type of player. Nivek will be moving on. Uh, as far as aware, Nivek will be moving on to fight Foxy. I think. Uh, if, I, if I have the brackets correct, I think yes. Foxy will be getting that run back with Nivek, or Nivek will be getting the run back with Foxy. I don't know also. if my body's prepared for that. I think it's going to be good. They recently, um, Nivek and Foxy almost had the chance to have the rematch at the Mortal Kombat Cup. Uh, Nivek unfortunately losing uh, to King Usha, who is a really, really strong um, Kel Khan player. Okay. But he would have almost had the chance to fight Foxy then, but uh, this is a chance to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So again, congratulations to Mitsurons for making it all the way out here. He qualified it very well. Fortunately, he's now out of the tournament. I think what really it, what came down to, what it came down to is the fact that um, I've mentioned that the way Mitsuwones plays and that kind of really like you know rago as people say in the UK. Yeah. Um, rago. Rago is a good word. Okay. It's a good word. Uh, where you know it will cost you a tournament or it will win you win you a tournament. Yeah. 
um, I think we saw well and truly like that style of play worked in game two and very convincingly in game two where it was just read after read and they all worked. It was just right at the last minute where that final read that he went with his heart on cost him yep. the tournament. You know, it cost him it. Um, whereas if it worked, it would have been, you know, Vortex damage potentially the round. And uh, I mean, again, that's the strength of Scorpion. Moving on, though, we're going to have Cheap Eddie versus VHD. Ooh, this is going to be good. I, I, I didn't even comprehend that these guys would fight. Uh, but we saw Cheap Eddie. We saw what this guy's made of. A really good Johnny Cage, almost defeating Pick of the Hut. Cheap Eddie, I don't know if he wants people to know this, but last night he got here late, so he didn't get to practice with a lot of you guys. So I ended up staying, and we played for a little bit. He is ridiculously good with Johnny Cage. He's really good with Shinnok. He's really good with Raiden. He's really good with Kung Lao. I mean, he has like five or six characters that he plays at a very high level. It's not just, oh, this is my pocket character. He plays them at a, at a ridiculously high level, and he has all of those options if Johnny Cage doesn't work out for him. And he was telling me that he, it's very matchup dependent for him. He's not just going to pick a character regardless of who he plays. He kind of wants to see whose opponent's going to play, and then he kind of goes for that counter pick. Of course. I mean, that, that, that sometimes, I mean, that is in the, uh, you know, in the light of uh, the high level fighting game players where it's not just one character. I mean, we, we talk time and time again about character loyalty, especially yes. with the variation system, but there are players that don't just specialize in one. They have, sometimes you have a pocket character for a bad matchup, or sometimes you just simply play multiple characters and play all of them in tournament, depending on what character you want to fight. And what's scary about those players is they play those every single character at the same level, which is very, very high. Exactly. Uh, but Master VHD, speaking of uh, playing multiple characters, Master VHD specializes in Kano. Uh, but we have seen him go to Sorcerer, uh, sorry, not Sorcerer, Summoner Quan Chi okay. on occasion. Um, I feel like... Do you think he'll pull it out here if he I don't is know. down a game? I'm not sure. Um, I like Master VHD's um, Summoner Quan, but he doesn't go for a lot of the, uh, the truly dirty The optimals. Ups. You know, the optimals, yeah. like the, the impossible to blockables, you know, <laughs> like the really hard to block stuff. Yeah. Um, he goes for the mix-ups, but he, he very rarely does go for the uh, really hard to block stuff. Here in America, where many people are used to that by now, obviously the US has so many amazing some of the yeah. one players. You have people like Wonder Chef, Michelangelo, Shijinki Dink, obviously over in Canada. There's so many really good some of the players. Rio, I don't you know, used to play of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, how can I forget Rio? Um, it's easy. Where, where you know they're ready for this. Yes. Um, and obviously, Chi Betty himself plays some of the one also. That is correct. <laughs> Among the hundreds of other characters, even though there's only about 20 and 26, so. He'll make Let's see. as well. I'm no sure doubt. he will. But either way, um, I strongly think it will be Kano and Cage, Kano Cage? first. Okay. I, I think it's going to be, you know, the cannon fight, Johnny Cage versus Kano. Uh, we're likely going to see... Master generally tends to go... Um, I've only rarely seen him pick a different variation of Kano when it's a character that he truly feels like he can zone. So he'll go cutthroat for the most part, but if it's a character that he thinks he can really keep away, uh, he'll change to cybernetic and then try and do like sort of knife keep away. Gotcha. I don't know whether he's gonna start with cutthroat. I mean, look, by looks things that he actually has already gone or is highlighting over Kano in cutthroat anyway. Um, but who knows if he's gonna you know, make the change? Do you know cybernetic. if he plays cybernetic at all? Um, he does play cybernetic. It's a uh, commando he doesn't play. Okay. Um, he plays uh, cybernetic. We've seen it. He does pick it more of a zoning thing, but he does obviously have it has all the conversions, um, has really good reactions. Master VHD. Um, the one thing I hope he, he does in this uh, is really sort of maximize his damage. He enforces Cutthroat Kano, but when we see him play a lot, he doesn't tend to um, go for like the true max damage. Okay. He'll get good damage, but he won't get... He'll almost leave damage on the table. But I feel like with Kano, that's that's a character that you have to maximize well, all it, of your damage. The thing is, if you start optimizing your combos, for example, like we see time and time again, Master doing exactly what he should do, which is go for hard knockdown Kano ball into chest pump, which is guaranteed. He'll do that in the corner. Um, and when you do chest pump with Kano, you can get 50% one bar off the overhead and 50% meterless off the low. Yes. So if you're maximizing your damage and enforcing the 50-50s, you're dangerous. But they have gone back to the character select, I think. They've probably done their buttons. I think they're just kind of waiting to see um, when they're good to go. Yep, and they're going to be good to go right about now. So who do you... I actually think that Cheap Eddie has the edge in this. I feel like... Simply because if he really needs to, he can switch either character or variation to a really poor matchup for VHD. But there's also the fact that um, it's also characters that we have covered. Uh, we very rarely, I do believe we've only ever seen Johnny Cage used in the Europe ESL one time. 
Um, we very okay. rarely see Johnny Cage. We have. That's true. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because obviously sometimes it's you, know, you have loads of one character, but not many of others. And Cage uh, has been absent from the NA as well. Of course, we really I haven't mean, had like, any Cage. That's the thing. Like, I mean, that, that might be one of the reasons um, that Chief Eddie you know does so well is that you know not saying it is the reason. Of course, he's a no, of phenomenal not. player and he plays Cage to its fullest. But also, when you're playing a character that people just don't play very often. You have you have an edge there. Yes. It's almost like when we saw um, Storm's Takeda at the Combat Cup, a really amazing Takeda, and he just destroyed people with Takeda because they just you know not only was More he a phenomenal prepared. player, but you're not prepared. You're yeah. not going to go to a tournament and be prepared for Takeda. Um, and I think that's you know there, there is heavy heavy factors there um, that as a character specialist of a lesser known character, you will have an edge over some people. This is really exciting. It's like watching CIS from home. But life. It is. I mean, I'm so happy that the European, uh, European guys and the CIS guys, especially the CIS guys, have come out and had a chance to show what they're made of. I mean, La, such a close game against Pick yeah. of the Hut. Cheap Eddie, again, a close game against Pick of the Hut. They both nearly took it to him, but Pick <laughs> of the Hut, you know, just pulling through for the US, doing really well. I was very excited to see the Russians play, and it so far has not been disappointing. Okay, so I think they are button checking once again. Last Cheap one. Eddie beginning the button check with the Cheap Eddie jig, which I'm really happy to see. If he wins it, if he gets into the uh, the finishing screen, he's no doubt going to do another jig. I hope he does a dance for us. I love it. It's the cheap Eddie jig. I love it. There we go. Nice friendly handshake to get going, and they are good to go. Looks like it is to be cutthroat versus. Uh, I actually see the variation. Who was that friendly? There we go. A list, and there we go. A list variation. All first hit goes to Kano. Very important. And the A list, like we were kind of talking about before, is all about managing your stamina. And there's that run cancel off the forward three. I hit confirm. And utilizing the down four it, on hit that jails very hard. Mm, of course, absolutely. I mean, like, uh, it's kind of interesting because Cage. Oh, what a backdash. Really good backdash. Cage and Kano both have phenomenal down yes. fours. Uh, obviously, down four, by the way, guys, is the, uh, the low kick, the low long kick, which on hit guarantees a lot of good pressure. Oh, no, messing up his cancel, and now he's going to pay for it. And as we see there, like, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, where he gets the overhead, which is fantastic. But he spends a bar for 29%, whereas if he went for max damage, he could have got like an extra 6% at least. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why he does that. I think he does it for more to guarantee his damage, but I feel like uh, if you're going to you maximize could... your damage, it can become muscle memory, you know? Yeah. It's not going to be droppable if you just practice it. I agree. I would really like to see him maximize that damage. Had he done that, this may have already been his round. Oh, amazing worth punish though from Master taking round one. Great stuff from Master BHD. Round two, fight. The interesting thing there was oh. that not only was that a whiff punish, but that was a whiff punish on a meter burn attack. Taking his meter away from him. Oh, nice grab. Good stuff from Chief Eddie. Here he comes. Opting to zone a little bit, but I feel like this is a losing battle as Kano has really good projectiles. In not only cybernetic, but as well as cutthroat. But and in uh, commando too, because I mean in commando yeah. you get the same knives as in cutthroat. Interesting how all three projectiles are fantastic. Um, it's just that cybernetic is that mid. Cybernetic though. And there we go. Here comes the confirm. Nice hard knockdown. Chest pump guaranteed the damage. Oh, nice bait. what a Eddie neutral whip. crouches the trade kick. Oh, cheap Eddie spent. I do believe that was uh, two bars. Yeah, he did. Did not work out for him. Right, he's going to go straight in for the rematch there. I mean, sometimes you can go straight into a rematch game. It will just ride the momentum. Like, if you don't want to get taken out of your flow, and you're playing for $100,000, restart match is a completely viable option. Yep. I would have liked to have seen possibly Eddie taking an extra second, and no. Oh, tries to punish. Obviously, A-list, the meat up punch is safe. A-list, I believe. Nice check over the down three. Just a lot of pokes here from both players. Oh, and he catches him. Nice run cancel. Obviously, in A-list, you can run cancel some of your moves to get extra damage on the yep. Indies. As well as putting on more pressure, which we see from Shibeti. He's really starting to hit his groove. And no, and he gets the punish. Nice. That, that, that move is a fantastic with Punisher, I think. Gets and the he grab. just grabs. This may take it. Very smart Ooh, very stuff. Nearly. He's got a bit of health left. Oh! Oh, jeez. Catches the down one. Almost did not finish his play, and that almost cost him. But I mean, that thing, when we saw Cheap Eddie fight Pig, uh, a lot of those run cancels that would hit, he didn't get them. You know, he, didn't, he dropped the uh, run cancel. Uh, here, we're seeing him drop very little. Has no stamina, so he has to be careful with how he advances. To be the Cheap Eddie that got him he wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quite often, like tournament pressure, your first game of the tournament, you'll always be nervous. Here comes a chest pump, guaranteed damage. Oh, oh EX nut punch immediately gets all that pressure off, but right back in the corner, and here we go. Master VHG is poking his way in. Oh, he doesn't get the run cancel. I think that's the danger, though. When you go for the chest pump, lovely hand, yeah, from Master. All right, trying to confirm. Good they wake up from a cheap Eddie there. Nice, getting the down four, down four blocks. He is minus. We really haven't seen any lows from Master VHG at all. We've seen a couple, and the ones that he's done have hit, so I think he's using it sparingly, I believe. Mostly oh, overhead, he, he spreads the, the bar as well. He loses the meter. 
He won't cancel the 1-1. Wow. How about that? Wow. Here comes Zibani with a brutality as well. Oh, Russia no, is coming. Huge deep breath coming out of Cheap Eddie right there. Uh, this is a great set. A great set. I mean, like, it's just... He's always ready. I mean, we are seeing very little combo drops from both players. Uh, you know, Master VHD is establishing his 50-50 game up close. Um, but it's mainly just Cheap Eddie getting good reads on that meter burn reversal. And that's the danger of going for the Kano chest pump. I mean, almost it feels like if the opponent's going to use his own health to get a mix-up, he's almost always going to go for the yeah. mix-up. So you're more inclined to wake up attack. And Cheap Eddie actually hasn't been hit by one mix-up after that chest pump yet. Mm -hmm. He's of gotten course. out at least every single Ooh. time. And speaking of getting out of a mix-up, it's a wake up attack. Let's drop it, though. Catches the overhead again. Very dominant first round. Here comes Cheap Eddie. And this nut punch is going to take round one. Doesn't even need it. Doesn't even need it. So Cheap Eddie. Eddie. Round Fight. Master has to get out of that corner. The corner is the worst place. I mean, it's never really a place you want to be in any fighting game against any character, but Johnny Cage, it is the worst. I mean, it's just, uh, in general, especially against A-list, we can uh, yeah. but cancel everything. Always. Cancels on everything, plus on everything, lots of pressure. But here we go, slowly, Master VHD is fighting his way out with down fours and a nice uppercut for the anti -air. Master VHD will always be ready for that down two anti-air. It's I mean, so good. It's, it's, uh, it's one of his strongest points is his anti-air game. You it's one of the in. best in the game. Oh, of course. And that one gets the overhead. Master VHD can't break. He tried. I think it's good that he didn't. Now he's going to fight his way out. He has some meter to work with here. And he's going to get the overhead. overhead. It confirms it. Meter by knife. Ops to go. But see that? That could win the round. Oh, I, I don't agree with it. You're right. Match point, both players. Oh, this, is, this is a good game. But I mean, like, it didn't matter. Master still got the grab, but I would like to see him maximize his damage. He may have damage. lost, though. That's the thing. He could have lost if he didn't get that read. But I think Master's not looking to lose right now. Oh, gets the jump in. Does whiff, though, because he goes for the down four. Oh, and he gets the wrong cancel. Oh. Drops the combo. Very unfortunate, but he gets a conversion anyway. Here comes the nut punch. Is he going to grab? Nope. Goes for the 1-1. One, one. Oh. Oh, he smart stuff. I know a thing or two about doing a reversal. How about that? And he's going to get a jump in. Puts himself in the corner. I, he uses the meter to keep himself safe. Oh, he whiffs the up but doesn't get the whip punish. This is almost this is gonna be game. Wow. wow. Fantastic stuff from Cheap Eddie. And he's going to end it in a fatality. Master VHD unfortunately going home, but not before giving us an amazing set against yeah. Cheap Eddie from Russia. And again, congratulations to him for making the top 16. Unfortunately, he's not going to be in the bracket anymore. I Cheap think Eddie's going to move on. It's in, the, in any tournament, inevitably, there will be players that go home in two. Like, yes. It will be unavoidable. And there we go. Please in the crowd. Fantastic stuff. Always a showboater. Fan great guy. But, you know, you know, there will always be people that go home in two. It's unfortunate, but, you know, these guys have shown us that they're here for a reason. Yeah. Really good players. I think you are absolutely right, though. If, oh, so sick. if VHD was able to really maximize his damage, he could have possibly taken that set. Because I also feel like uh, if you maximize your damage with Kano, you're not only getting more damage, but you're getting more hits in the combo, which means you're doing more strings, which advance you forward. Yes, you're getting towards more, the corner. Yeah, you're not only getting more damage, but you're getting more corner carry. And that that really is ultimately what you want, yeah, especially in Cutthroat, where oh, no. your overhead's not got much range. No. The low has a lot, but you're going to get caught overhead it, more so in the corner than anywhere else on the screen. In Cutthroat, you know, that's what we said, you know, 50% one bar, uh, overhead, 50% low, meatless. Like, if you maximize damage and get corner carry, you put someone in the corner with yeah. Cutthroat and it's party time. You know? it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to block him. He has a very fast overhead, but like you were saying, it's very short. So he needs that very uppy closey time in order exactly. to get that overhead going. And he was closey time, is that an American he, phrase? He wasn't, <laughs> it's, it's my phrase, I'm sorry. He wasn't getting, it. that's fine. Please do, please. He wasn't getting the corner carry. And in the end, that was really hurting him. The damage was hurting him. And he, was he, he did a really good job in the first game. Yes. It was just Cheap Eddie just kind of, uh, it's one of those things where he just kept making the right reads. Uh, you know, the counter poking. The reads, the damage, and the resets really of just course. overwhelmed him. Great stuff. I and mean, it's always hype watching Johnny Cage as well. Because, I mean, Johnny Cage, another character that people said was bad. And then we saw so many good players come out with Johnny Cage and just go, well, maybe not. This I mean, guy's initial thoughts good. when the game was early makes sense. However, it's not about that. It's, it's now about the next match. Facile and Crawling Shadow. And we did, of course, catch up with Facile to see what he had to say in his native tongue, as well as what the other players had to say. Now, you know you know Facile. I do indeed. You Very well. Facile. How do you feel about him before we go into this short video? He is the kind of fighting game player that I like. Every time a new fighting game comes out, Facile tries it out. He plays the game. He's always really good. I mean, I would play multiple games as they would come out. And to go online, first person I bump, bump into and ranked, always Facile. Always? He's always there. Okay. And I'm like, this guy, he's following me around, you know, like. Um, 
really strong in basically every game he picks up. Obviously, he's put more time into MKX because of the early support this game has received. Um, he's stuck at it, and evidently the commitment to this game because of the support that has been given, yep. um, it's paying off for him. Here he is right. in the top 16. Well, let's go ahead and check out Fassel's video. I don't speak Spanish, so I'll just have to talk to you in the universal language of beatdown. It's a forward two. No hit confirm, though. That was a free hit confirm into potentially the sequence of mix-ups that we didn't want <laughs> We see the Kung Lao brutality. Thing is, Foxy's not here this week, so I didn't think we'd see that this far. Learn from this. Fossil, I'm really looking forward to playing you. Good luck. But now he's just he's struggling really hard to open him up with it, and the Mivo's oh, will take this post. match. Fossil will take that 3-1. Fossil, huh? How ironic. That's all you'll ever be once I'm done with you. I mean, when Kung Lao does a string against you, he's only ever going to go low. I mean, Fossil, hmm. the Spanish Kung Lao. Man, don't fight me. Otherwise, I'm going to dance on your body. He is one touch away from being eliminated. Oh, oh. can I just the 1 1? Oh, no, quite confirmed. There's the Mia Van Hat. Oh, he's that dead. will be it. The chip would have taken it alone. Is he in the brutality? Who knows? No, he tries to do something there, but doesn't quite get it. I mean, Zen going out, uh, happy going home. I mean, Congratulations to Zen for making top eight, though. Paso will be advancing into semi-finals, but he'll be playing against Gags. Estoy muy contento de estar aquí y a partir de ahora voy a intentar hacer lo mejor que pueda. Buena suerte a mis oponentes. Definitely a very cool opponent. I like his style, and he's here to play, and he, like you said, he plays Kung Lao. I think it's good guy Rio as well. Every single one of these videos, Rio has been like, this could be a good game. Everyone else is talking smack, and Rio's like, it's going to be a good game. Can't wait to play. Good luck, everybody. I'm like, it's, me, it's good and bad. It's good me, and bad. Let me tell you something about Rio. It's all a facade. Does he hate everyone inside? Yes. Is that what it comes down to? He's a horrible person. Oh, I, don't, I don't believe that. But either way, Faso. Favorite fight, Kung Lao. He's actually mained Kung Lao since the beginning. Um, okay. It's uh, almost uh, not that he's been sort of taking after Foxy's example, um, but which isn't a bad player to take uh, after. But he started with Buzzsaw uh, when Foxy started with Buzzsaw. Uh, when Tempest received its upgrade, he moved on to Tempest okay. um, and kind of really sort of uh, experiment with it, just like everyone else. Um, and then he essentially did what everyone else did: we start with Buzzsaw, move on to Tempest, when it got upgraded, and, and then just roll with it. His opponent, Crawling Shadow, has also done very well in NA, and he's going to be playing possibly the same character Ooh, and he is. It's going right, to be a mirror. Say it, it's going to be a Tempest Lao mirror. And here we go, a lot of respect. We're going to see this a lot, where they're, they're both going to be blocking because they're both waiting for a spin. Yep. Oh, nice conversion from Crawling Shadow. There we go. <laughs> I love these mirror matches because the, the, the whole thing that excites me about a mirror match, especially when it's same variation versus same variation, is you have the same tool set. You know, yes. it's it's it will purely come down to outplaying your opponent. Like, there's no other option. I agree. And if I don't see a Blanche Talon, I'm gonna be very very irritated. Ooh, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Cooling Shadow using uh, obviously uh, the difference here obviously is uh, Cooling Shadow using the Revan come out, which he seemed to use before. So this must be a favorite costume. Ooh, catch the head. The, the, one thing, the one criticism I had for Fassel was he was using that back two a little too often, which is a very slow start of move for Kung Lao, especially for pressure. It's almost not used as an overhead, it's used as like a whiff punish. Yeah. Or if he thinks you're going to press a button, more so. It's a jump in, but has no hat, it can't be dangerous. Good patience there from uh, Crawling Shadow. The back dash, oh! Wait gets a second! By the string. Could this be the start of an amazing comeback from Fassel? That's the question. Oh no, he doesn't get it, but wait a no, second, the post! No. He goes for the jump, it whiffs. I mean, even then, that jump would have been a free spin yeah. from Crawling Shadow anyway. Round two. The question is, Fassel singing a lot of meter. Has Tempest? That's dangerous. Oh. Nice interrupt there from Crawling Shadow. He knows. he knows the gaps. He knows he the gaps. And a nice air there. He's going to confirm here. Crawling Shadow is still just going in. Gets the wake up spin. This will be good oh damage. No. Drops it. Unfortunately, too far away for that to connect. You obviously, Kung has to a really, little step forward. It's really heartbreaking when you spend meter and you don't get the maximum amount for it. That's what you see loads of Kung Lao players do is the wake up grab. I mean, almost the way people are doing it with Kenshi, where if you're expecting wake up spin, they're blocking. Right? Yeah. So you're going to go for a wake up grab, and in the corner, reposition. And here comes Crawling Shadow with great offense against Crawling Shadow's looking very good right now. Absolutely. He's just all over Vassal. I mean, the reality is he's just... Oh! oh. Spins collide. Mia Burn spins collide. Crawling Shadow gets his. He has more life. And there's Brutality. Fantastic stuff. Good stuff. Vassal needs to make an adjustment here, possibly take a second. Obviously, go straight for a rematch. I think he realizes that, you know, 
It's just you got to outplay the other guy. You need, you need in a mirror match, you need to enforce your game, so they can't. Yes. You know? I mean, you have the same tools, the exactly. same everything, right there. Lovely whiff punish on the back three. I mean, that's one of the bonuses there is that when you're know, going to press a button, and right game catches the head once again. I'm not sure what Queen Shadow tried to do there. Oh my it's goodness! Far away. Right Good at the hit. Fassel, great confirm. Well, they punch each other in the face. Oh no. Rage is not quite, and no spin anti here. Well, he had no meter burn, but I guess the regular one can Regular spin work. is still very good for an anti I've seen. And he cross up standing Actually, I've seen one Foxy well. do it. And he cross up standing one. Yeah. So, oh, there's the Tempest stuff moving into it. Spin you never footsies. expect him to move. Spin footsies. You never expect Tempest Loud to steer in your direction, dear. You? you never <laughs> expect scary. it. We saw loads of that at Dreamhack. It was phenomenal. <laughs> He gets the jump back to our oh, prediction. Well, with punish. Here we go. Goes for the guaranteed damage. You lose significant damage by not going for the tight link. But Fassel. the damage alone. That back two is going to be his bane, I'm telling you. Here comes the pressure. Pressing the button. Predicting he's going to end gonna it. He's going to get a hat, and that's going to be plus. He's going to lead into a combo in the corner here. Calling Shadow, bringing it back. But a he dropped the spin. hard knockdown. He dropped the hard knockdown, which gave Fasso just the early time. Oh, dropped the, he's the again. corner. Nice tech. Oh, lovely read wow. from Calling Shadow. This match is everywhere. In the corner, of course. Ooh, oh, that's, that's going to be a punish. punish. He's not even able to spend his bar. I think he's still confident he can win the round without it. Oh, he gets hit, has to break. He spent two bars, and oh, he's ready for the teleport. Great that was a really, really good read. I think the important thing there is that Faso got the meter out of it. Yes. He got Crawling Shadow to spend that bar. And now this is a very even matchup. Nice, nice uh, anti cross there from Crawling Shadow. Try to use that down forward to create some space for himself, but... Shadow's not going to stop going in. Ooh, tries to do down one into spin. No doubt that might have been an execution on her. Oh, tries oh. to read it. No punish from Queen Shadow. Tried to do it, but too late. Oh, what a neutral jump punch. I love it. And a conversion throws him towards the corner. Really Smart great stuff. decision. Smart stuff. No doubt Fasso was not expecting that. That would be a clean punish that, from Fasso. however, was a questionable decision. He's a Sonya player. He likes a dive kick. <laughs> oh, and he gets the clean. Get the side link. This could be the start. Oh, has no. no stamina. He has no stamina. That is so heartbreaking. Gotta be careful. Oh, he gets hit by the jump too! That and he jump two is so good. Doesn't burn the meter though. Gives Fassel one more shot. If Fassel gets a single hit. If Fassel gets a single hit, he's gonna have Breaker now. He has to do double the work! Both players have Breaker. At this point, he's gonna burn the bar. And he's gonna go for an uppercut, no break! Oh, and he goes for the spin! No, and it costs him! Calling Shadow moves on. 2-0 against Fassel. Great stuff. I mean, we've seen a lot of Tempest Lounge this tournament. Uh, we've seen a bit. We've definitely seen a bit. Overall, again, Vassal, congratulations for making it out here. Unfortunately, he's not going to be moving forward, which means Crawling Shadow will be moving forward into the bracket of killers and losers. It's as we keep saying, I think the US has just had such a strong showing in this tournament. I mean, I really thought it was going to be a bit more diverse. I, um, I but agree. At least, as, especially as far as the winner's bracket is concerned, you know, the top three in the winners was, uh, you know, Big D, Pilar, and Sonic Fox. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just great showing from everybody so far. I mean, there are a bunch of American players in the losers bracket. Rio is in losers. PL is in losers. Um, it's going to be a complete free for all in there. You know, you, everyone wants to move on. Can you say that one more time? PL is in losers. Rio is in losers. Like that's so odd that those two players would be in the losers bracket. That's that's how crazy stacked the tournament is. I mean, that's the thing. Sonic Fox took out both of them, and it's <laughs> that pesky fox. Uh, he's he lives to make everyone else. I don't think he, I don't even think it's about Sonic Fox winning. It's about him making sure that everyone else loses. Yeah, basically. It's great stuff. Well, well, <laughs> Let's I mean, go ahead and check in with Brian Compton and Joshua Gray over at the analysis. Thank you, gentlemen. Some great matches in the loser's bracket. Joined by Brian Compton right now. So far, Brian, we've had to say goodbye to LL Taco, Mitsu owns Master VHD and Fossil, and the Russians are still in the fight. Uh, the Russians are killing it, man. We definitely uh, expected a lot out of them. Lar looks amazing. Cheap Eddie, we really got to see what he was made of in that last match. Very exciting stuff. Some real tricky uh, tactics he was using. Really looking forward to watching them progress through losers. And the crazy story that Cheap Eddie had, he had some visa issues. He got here last night. We stayed later to make sure he was able to practice. And he was a little bit uh, jet lagged, but he definitely came to play today. So mad props to Cheap Eddie for sticking through that really, really grueling travel process from Russia to get here. And Lar as well, that dark horse performing so well. I think they're surprising everybody today. We still have a lot of big name players that are in the loser's bracket, as the commentators mentioned, and possibly some runbacks. 
Oh yeah, well, I mean, right off the bat, in the in the winter finals, we have a run back from the mid-season showdown, uh, Sonic Fox versus Pig of the Hut, where previously Sonic Fox defeated Pig, but Pig looks absolutely phenomenal today. Uh, the run back I'm looking forward to, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to, Nivik versus a Foxy Grandpa from the Fan's Choice Tournament. That's one of the most amazing matches I've ever watched in Mortal Kombat. And the biggest comeback I think we've seen of all time, well, for a long time at least, that best of seven format, Nivik was one game away, then Foxy Grandpa came back and won every single game he needed to in order to win. It was huge. It was a big victory, victory for the UK, it was a big victory for a Foxy Grandpa, and I know he is going to perform the best he can against Nivik. Nivik playing from Greece. Nivik fighting very, very hard for this money as well because we all know what Greece is going through right now in, uh, in the world culture and it's a little bit tough, but he talks about that with me a little bit to talk about um, why he's fighting, why he's here to win, and the money is really, really important to all these players, but especially for any of these players to have a chance to take home a huge cash prize. So each of these players in the loser bracket is still fighting to stay alive. In the future though, after running through the winner's bracket, we got the winner's bracket, then the loser's bracket, and then the Predator shell match, and then after that, the winner's finals. Any other upsets that surprised you today, Brian? Yeah, actually, um, I honestly, first round, I thought uh, Nivik was going to run through Big D, and Big D looks amazing today. He is playing out of his mind. Uh, I think he gave Sonic Fox the most difficult time he's had all night. He got a little impatient at the end. Uh, he's totally aware of that, so I'm sure he's going to come back to the loser bracket uh, with a lot more patience, and I mean, I'm look really, really looking forward to commentating his matches, for sure. We want to give a huge shout-out to our sponsor, Razer, and also check out the Atrox arcade stick for the Xbox One. That's actually my personal arcade stick right there. That's what I use to play Katana all really the time. Is. It, it really is. It really is. He's not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's mine, and I am... Uh, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm not Sonic Fox level. I'm not Katana Prime level, but uh, that fight stick, definitely check it out. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the action continues for the SLMKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. Stay tuned. I have no quarrel with you. I will tear your flesh. I now have a quarrel with you. Kung Lao, descendant of the great Kung Lao of old, this Shaolin warrior trained to be one of Earthrealm's most skilled defenders. Eager to prove himself and to restore honor to his family, Kung Lao enforces the iron fist of the Shaolin across three variations. You face a Shaolin warrior. In the Tempest variation, Kung Lao exhibits a high pressure play style with new special attacks. Hat Spin, Down Back X, is a great combo extender that can be enhanced to lock down opponents. His special attack Cyclone, Down Forward X plus Right Trigger, is a quick armored special that engulfs his opponents in a whirlwind, allowing Kung Lao to follow up for a combo. <laughs> A simple matter for a Shaolin. In the hat trick variation, Kung Lao can place his hat on the battlefield that can be recalled to pressure opponents. Because of the long startup of Hat Trap, use it after a hard knockdown. On hit, choose between another knockdown trap or go for a spin and cash out the damage. Hatarang, back forward Y plus right trigger, is a reliable way to combo and carry your opponent to the corner. Be mindful that your special attacks in this variation are very unsafe. You have found your demise. In the Buzzsaw variation, Kung Lao gains new slow-moving hat projectiles. Enhanced hat-related special moves, like Buzzsaw, back forward Y plus right trigger, can be held in order to pressure your opponent on wake-up or create mix-ups and apply offensive pressure. EX Spin, down forward X plus right trigger, is a fast multi-hitting attack that can crush your opponent's armor. Kung Lao relies on solid pressure to force mistakes from his opponents. Graceful Cat, 
Ford YA is an excellent low opener that can be canceled into a special. Use Chain Fist, another safe combo string, to keep up the famous Shaolin pressure. Forward is not always the best direction. Mix up teleports to keep your opponent guessing. Dive kicks are a powerful tool to extend combos and keep the momentum in your favor. Perfect your legend with this X-Ray combo. And unleash Shaolin Fury with a brutality. Brutality. Learn from this. Kung Lao wins. Enjoy the dive, kick, and hat throw in Shaolin, Kung Lao. And tune into the ESL Mortal Kombat X Pro League presented by Xbox. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. It's good to be back, yeah, more, more matches in the loser uh, loser bracket if you will. Um, these are very critical matches, obviously if, I mean these guys are going home now. We've already seen a few guys that are out now, they're fighting to get that, uh, that shot at that huge cash prize. Well, as is the stress with losers bracket, I mean, the safety net is gone now. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's officially done. These guys have one more chance. If they lose now, they are eliminated and will lose the opportunity to win that big cash. Right now, Sonic Fox picked the fight in winner's bracket. They've both guaranteed themselves minimum of third place. They yep. are the only players in this tournament right now that have secured themselves a cash prize. These guys and losers still have to work for it. Yeah, and of course, right now we have a Crazy Steady versus Rio. Um, very recently to get into this, you know, to the to get seated into this event, Crazy City did beat Rio three to two. So this is a little bit of run back here. Crazy City's been looking phenomenal, and of course, I'm big. I'm a huge Rio fanboy, but I got a root for SoCal. I mean, it's a question of who can bring it now. I mean, obviously Rio, no stranger to being in this situation. He's been on Evo World Stage, countless majors. Obviously, this guy had tremendous success in MK9 and in Justice as well. Mm -hmm. Crazy Steady, as you said before, one of the online warriors of the American side of the Pro League. Right. Very little experience offline, a little bit, but nothing on the level of Rio. No. However, when they last played in the Pro League, Crazy Steady took it. He did, and of course, huge thank you to our sponsor, Razer, for supporting this event. We are doing some amazing raffles right now, esl.gg forward slash mkxraffle take home a, I mean, a custom-made Predator-style Xbox. That's the one. It's the Predator Xbox One. Oh, That's the prize. I'm That's the one you want. I'm jealous of that. Yeah, definitely. Razer Aatrox Arcade Stick for Xbox One. Uh, Razer Kraken headsets for Xbox One. Just a bunch of great stuff. Oh, all tremendous around. stuff. All for yeah. free as well, just for watching this today. So like, best luck to you guys watching the home. Hopefully you can win some cool stuff. And uh, we'll find out who will be winning the cash momentarily. So I, I imagine right now we're going to see Demolition Sonya versus Kobujitsu. It depends, really. I mean, I've not seen the matchup particularly. I'm not sure if that's what Crazy Steady opted to use against Rio. But, um, I mean, I've not seen much of Demolition Sonya in general. It's not something that's tremendously popular in Europe, and I've not seen it much in CIS either. Uh, or even at the Combat Cup. It's very much like an American thing, Sonya. But Actually, then, well, well, Demolition Sonya, even out here, is very rarely used. Like, at our last tournament, Wonder Chef used her and Crazy Steady are really the only two guys I've seen doing it. It seems risky. I um, mean, obviously, I'm, I'm only saying this like as, as an outsider to the character, but right. when, you, when she's got the grenades, that's it. Big damage, big opportunities, um, good pressure. But as soon as she's got no grenades and she's on the defense, she's, she's practically variation of Sonya at that point. <laughs> variation. She needs yeah. to obviously get the, the drone in, 
not all the setups that you can do to get them are safe. Some of them can be punished, especially early when we saw him fighting uh, Fasol. was in beta burn spin, put to a thread and quite a lot of that. But then obviously, Cobra Jutsu Tanya received a significant nerf as well. She did, she did. So do you think we'll see that affect the outcome today if they choose to go with it? Well, definitely it's going to affect the outcome to some extent. Of course, Ryo plays her because I was recently speaking with him and he just loves the character. He loves the way she plays, she's fun. I actually love to watch her as well. I think she's a very entertaining character to watch. Maybe very reminiscent of uh, Cabal with the dash cancels. Maybe that's yeah, what uh, actually, intrigues him to her. And of course, he does that quite a bit with her teleport cancels. And um, I'll, I'll be honest, it's fun to watch. Like it, they're just kind of swaggy. I, I love like teleport cancels, especially hers because they uh, they sparkle. There you go, crazy steady already with Rio in his back in the corner. Oh, there's the grenades! Will he end with the... There we go, hard knockdown, instant jump kick. Oh, wonderful attempt by Rio to try and punish that, but save Crazy City and Nolly. There's no punish, though. That's what Crazy City needs to do. He needs to refill those grenades constantly. I, I really feel like he wasn't doing that enough last time he played. Oh, wow, there's that feint. Realizes his jump in would get punished. Manages to get out of the way just so he dodges the down, too. There's a bridge out. That's a good trade. Oh, off to throw a grenade. This is very close first round here. A lot of respect. Both players very patient. Goes to restand. Crazy City's caught trying to jump out. Smart. Oh. Okay, let's say Rio teleported out after he got the life lead, which was smart, but then he went right back in. And of course, I mean, shout out to all the Yomi guys. Um, Tremendous some... training partners, I can imagine. We actually got some of the world's best players, especially at least in America. Yeah, and our boys uh, DJT and MIT, who always came out to EGP stuff, you know, they're honorary SoCal in our eyes, so definitely shout out to them. Grenades again. There we go. No grenades available. And of course, had to end a combo there because of that. Wow, Rio is just content to just play very patiently, full screen. There's the VS spent for the damage. Oh wow, that was interesting. Like the slow teleport ball. Alright, just zoning around here. Oh, blocked eye kick, no punish. That, that is, obviously it's, oh, it's punishable, but it's very hard to punish often. Good block there by Crazy Steady. And that's gonna do it, Rio's taking uh, game one. Oh, oh, one fatality as well. This is Rio. Of course, we see fatalities. It's Rio Rio is that. famous for always doing fatalities. Tanya wins. Fatality. All right, so I do wonder if we're gonna see a character change here from Crazy Steady. Oh. All Tanya. right, Crazy Steady. Definitely taking a moment to think here. I don't know who else he plays besides Tanya and Sonya, so... It looks like he's gonna go with Tanya. Though, I believe he uses Dragon Nag Naginata. I could be incorrect. But we shall see momentarily. Oh, the Tanya mirrors. There will be teleports. In a way, yes. In a way, you should die. Round one. <laughs> I love these intros, man. They're great. <laughs> So yes, it is Dragon Na Naginata Tanya versus Kobe Jutsu Tanya. And these are always very exciting matches. They're really fast paced, teleports all over the place. Oh, catches her out of there, they're good stuff. Good blocks there by Crazy Steady. <laughs> Slow walking all over the screen. Oh, the Blanche. Get Blanched. Man, I would love to see a Blanched Tauti. That'd be amazing. I have yet to see one in tournament. Oh, Crazy City getting out of the corner here. Oh, Rio's definitely going to punish that. Oh, doesn't follow up with combo. Nice use of armor, though. Wow, what an anti-air. Oh, wow, Crazy Steady is just putting on a clinic right now. Oh, great jump in. Wow, that was clutch. Good read, jumped over the projectile, got right in. Round two, fight. Man, the range on that normal is just unbelievable. It's just such a great tool for footsies. I think the interesting thing here is that Sonic Fox and Aria have ran this matchup just multiple times. You know? um, I mean, as far as I'm aware, it was uh, the Tiny Mirror where Crazy City originally uh, beat. Uh, Rio, I might be correct. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe, um, well, Fox just uses Pyromancer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he started with Dragon Naganata, and then he sort of made the transition into Pyromancer. Okay, because, yeah, we saw him use Pyromancer in uh, the Pro League, and it was ridiculous. 
I mean, I think this is uh, quite oh, possibly the wow. most insane mirror match. Uh, yeah, game. yeah, I was just saying that. <laughs> I, I, I love this mirror match. It's just teleports all over the place. They're switching sides. Oh, some good respect there. Very steady, just... He's in a good situation. I mean, like, yeah, they're yeah. on equal life, equal meter, but I think, you know, both damage. If he manages to get the break, Rio opting not to break. Very interesting. I mean, this is match point. Crazy steady here. Because the jump in tries to forward two, too slow on the Ray uptake. from crazy steady, no punish. Oh, oh loses the air. There. This is going to be the air to air. Oh, no, does break there. He better, he better be able to bring risky. this round back. Oh, oh he, he could have three. It could have been anything guaranteed. Exactly. He could have oh, chipped. Oh my oh, gosh, he no. could have. He could have just chipped her out. Anything on that down three was guaranteed. It's yeah. insane. He didn't go for something else. Very crazy. I think. Uh, Probably showing a little bit of nerves here. I mean, oh, undeniably. sitting next to Rio, I mean, it would make me nervous. I mean, sometimes it kind of dawns on you the person you're playing. Not saying Crazy Steady himself is not a serious competitor because he absolutely is. And he you know, obviously defeated Rio. But uh, I think the, the crazy thing here is that um, when it reaches a situation where the easiest thing in the world becomes just impossible when you think about what's on the line. <laughs> There's a hundred thousand oh. dollars on the fact that I've got to get this down three, you know? Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's, that would be the worst thing you could ever think about. But I mean, yeah, again, Steady has the corner pressure here. Okay, he does get a hit out. Well, real pushes his way out of the corner, but doesn't get a lot of damage off it. I think, fortunately, so far, whenever Crazy City has been caught by an armor reversal, um, he's actually been hit in the air. So Rio has been like unable to convert off anything, which is very fortunate for Crazy Steady. Oh, absolutely, no doubt about it. Oh, beautiful Clutch down to anti air. I love Crazy seeing Steady. Anti and again, look at him. No big deal. I think he's trying to pick Tally. He's like, hmm, what was that? They out again. All right. He'll play it off. He'll play it off cool. He'll go, it's all right, I, just want, I just wanted to delay. I just wanted to give you time to think. That's yeah, all good. Right. I, I didn't screw up the fatality. No, no, you, you know. Mind games. Yeah, the, <laughs> the finish him mind games. Finish hims. Yeah, the finish hims, as you would say, sir. He failed the finish hims. I still can't believe I made that mistake. Anyway, going into the next <laughs> game. We don't have to talk about it. We, we shall not ever again. But I think. Until uh, your brother's back up here with you. And he'll just bring it up yep. over and over. I guess yep. the nice air to our face, did he getting that? Uh, I think just robbing, in, especially in a, in a mirror match, robbing the opponent of that first bar of is very important. It's so critical. I've said that, I mean, since the Mortal Kombat 9 days, the first hit in Mortal Kombat is so critical because you do get that extra bar of meter. But I think that's that's the interesting thing when you have X-rays and breakers, but... Wow, oh, what a jump in. Really cut stuff there. Nice conversion, full combo, good meterless damage. I mean, that's one of the things in that... Um, I think in terms of like meter management, uh, oh, I could be wrong, but Rio seems to be using a lot of meter on things like uh, the meter bird uh, wreckers as uh, with the right. Th th However, he's really not getting a lot out of. Yeah, and Crazy said he is not spending oh, any beautiful meter. Area. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it's totally, do not screw this yeah, up. I, I wanted to say something, but then I, I got nervous. Um, but I mean, like, Crazy said he is generally uh, not spending meter on his damage, whereas Rio is using his meter on uh, the Tomfa up, right. uppercuts. Right. Uh, Reco works. Hit. <laughs> okay, finally, uh, Rio putting in some meter work there to get some extra damage. Wow, just lets her right out of the corner. But I suppose with Tanya, it doesn't matter so much. Ooh, lot of jumping, but I guess oh, Tanya those really teleport cancels, gotta love them. No punish. I mean, that's good patience from Crazy Teddy, but I definitely. Mean, I'm, I'm familiar with Tanya, wow. but it's kind of hard to call certain punishes that I'm not aware of. Yeah, very true. Uh, the curse of being commentator, but as you can see, Ooh, get <laughs> oh! the block, fair whips, launch whips. Your death was in vain. Sorry. <laughs> That's horrible. There's a lot of duck. She's gonna get back up. There's a lot She's of jumping. Fine. There's a lot of jumping over Tommy, right man. Now. I'm actually surprised there's not more teleports. This is actually the calmest uh, Tanya mirror I've ever watched. Ooh, crazy he breaks Ops. He thinks he can take this round. Yeah, that is oh, that is bold. Unfortunately, it does actually whiff. Yeah, that, too. that was huge for Rio. I really feel like that was kind of it may have been an error. It might come back to bite him, you know. Well, I think that the, the danger is that because Crazy Steady, uh, Rio spent no bar on taking the round anyway. Crazy right. spent two bars. Uh, At the very end. That's it. You know, Rio went into the next oh. round, and as you can see, it's paying off. Here comes the mix ups. Crazy Steady all over him right now. And he just had to break that. I mean, oh, here we go. Getting out of the corner, getting some damage here. Rio can't break, has no stamina. But he does have a full meter. And that's it, where he would normally air to He's getting pretty good mileage out of these teleports. Great defense from Rio. Oh. Just good mobility. Yeah, Rio's looking really good this round. Oh, no punish. He gets tagged anyway. Oh, this is gonna. This is so close. Rio has a great Ooh, life lead right now. So many whiffs. I can't take Don't this. <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh what a read the by Crazy jump, Steady. Drops the combo though, and another teleport straight through the jump. Oh no. Crazy Steady chases it down anyway. He doesn't get a conversion though. Oh, and he oh waits beautiful for it. Guard. Oh, Rio and that moves is on. It's ends in the brutality. Very, very unfortunate for Crazy City there, but 
At the end of the day, Rio just ready for the 4-2, worth punishing it cleanly, and that's it. Moving on. Yeah, it definitely went. It went back and forth quite a bit. Um, you know, Crazy Static definitely looked great, and I, I mean, I doubt he's ever had the opportunity to sit next to, you know, a player of Rio's caliber and, and everyone in that in the room really. But I mean, I'm massively happy for Crazy Static. He brought it to Rio. I mean, it was oh, last definitely. round. Uh, really good stuff for both players. You know, a game each. It's, it's just really good stuff. You know, I mean, uh, to play against Rio is enough, but <laughs> to do well against him is another thing. Yeah, it's all right. I just saw both the players walk up on stage right now, and they were both wearing like their uh, their flag capes. It is epic. Um, everyone's excited for this match. Let's, I let's be am real. very excited for it because it, it's the run back. I mean, we saw the it last is, time we saw these guys yeah, fighting tournament. It's not was. just a run back. Though. That was. This is the run back of run backs right now. It's like a grudge match, but they're friends. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, is it really a grudge match? Uh, semi grudge match. Oh. Friendly grudge match. I don't know. It's, it's, we'll find a word for that, I think. So, yeah, at some point in the evening, we're going to have to. Uh, whatever. Someone, well, will, someone will tweet it to me, and I'll be like, oh, that's perfect. Well, and then I'll steal it. There's more to it. You know. <laughs> the reality is, both Nivek will want the run back against Foxy, because just to remind you guys, in case anyone is just joining us, Nivek and Foxy for. Uh, at the Fans' Choice Tournament, you guys at home voted towards getting those guys in this four-man bracket. They played for $10,000. Nivek uh, took seven straight games of Foxy in the Grand Finals. Straight. Match point. It was match point against him. Seven straight games. Seven and a half, even, if it was match point. Yes. Foxy yes. somehow managed to stay composed with Buzzsaw Lao. Uh, I believe it was Buzzsaw Lao. It was Buzzsaw. Um, and make the comeback. Four straight games. He was in the winner's bracket, so he won the tournament off those four straight games. Um, and that was that, really. Uh, incredible Grand Finals. One of the best, if not the best, Grand Finals we've had for Mortal Kombat in a long time, arguably ever. Yeah, I mean, definitely, in, in my personal opinion, in Mortal Kombat X. I completely agree. I yeah. think it, it was at least the greatest uh, Mortal Kombat X Grand Finals. But both of these guys want to move on. I mean, Foxy has never placed, uh, I guess, low, as you could call it. I'm not sure how, how to describe it really, but um, Foxy is only at the, the least he has placed has been barely top eight where at the Commonwealth, he lost last uh, yes. round, last game to Forever King. That game would have put him into top eight. And of course, and that is Forever the, that, King is just of course, one yeah. of the best in the world. Um, without a doubt, I mean, and that was that was the only time Foxy, I guess, placed what could be considered not top. Right. You know, everyone wants top eight. Top eight's always an amazing achievement. Foxy only just not getting top so eight. So ninth now. place is, is his worst record right now. Of course. Which is, I mean, <laughs> that's and, very and that's, impressive. That's one, of the, that's one of the scary things about these guys. Um, but they both <laughs> the want to play. The flags look so awesome. <laughs> the flags they are awesome. They don't even take so them the off to play. Yeah, they just, they're going to wear them the whole time. I think what I love here is that they're both proud to be representing who they're representing. You know, Foxy is proud to represent the UK. Nivek more than proud to represent Greece. And their guys at home, I'm no doubt, you know, that are watching this right now. Oh, yeah. I'm no doubt proud of them as the well. The handshake. Oh, man, this is going to be high. Well, the thing is, Foxy, it's not a grudge match because Nivek and Foxy are such good friends in real life anyway. I mean, I don't, think, I don't think Nivek could have a grudge match against anybody. That guy is a sweetheart. Here we go, first round. Best of three. And oh, he gets the neutral right jump punch. That. Here we go, this is how it begins. This is going to be some big damage, too. Well, he gets to wake up via Ben Teleport. Does whiff, though, because the. Uh, I just kind of dodges it with his jump. Oh, here comes Nivek. Drops the combo, throws him into the corner. Oh, oh once again, Nivek getting the neutral jump punch. Here we go. Oh, full combo. Oh, the delivery restands it. Goes for the low. Not expecting that. Very dominant game one. Wow, or that round was, one. That was Nivek. almost flawless. Almost flawless. 25 seconds, that was. <laughs> round two, fight. Well, at least I get straight into it. Nivek being oh, very there we careful, go. but he gets tagged. Here comes the meatless damage. Hard knockdown, all being had. 38%. That is... All oh, cool pressing buttons. And here comes the Tempest pressure. I mean, it's what he does so strongly. Oh, oh Foxy ready wow, for that. what a block. And he gets the overhead. I think Nivek tried to interrupt that and just got tagged. Uh, he must have tried to do a uh, shocker reversal. Okay. That would explain that. And I like that. I like that a lot. Just trying to sort of um, fight his way out of the corner. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, keep, he could make a comeback here. I mean, here comes the low. Uh, Foxy up well, to break, I think. Oh, that was the huge. Spin. Resand gets the overhead. There's the option select, oh. and he tags oh, him. Oh, he just, he looks like he used some meter there, too. I think well, Nivek I mean, tried to counter poke. That was um, ideal, actually, for Nivek, because he got Foxy to spend two bars of meter before going to the this, final round. So that's he, the important thing, Yeah, really. he has a meter advantage right now. Oh, gets the down four, tries Not to jump time. punch. <laughs> Running grab, oh, nice. great tag. It is very challenging to tech throws in this game. Oh, he's ready for it. Here comes Foxy. Does he get Straight in, pushing him towards the corner. Nice Another tech. Nivek. 
This is uh, oh, literally this is shades of winner's uh, fans' choice. Definitely. Where it's just, you know, everything so precision perfect. Everything plays so carefully. You guys are very, very fun to watch. Oh, oh nice. wow. You cancel into a grab. Oh, the dive kick just to go over that Thunderball. They barely made it over, too. A lot of patience there. Showing yep. Evek a lot of respect. Definitely. And you have to go for the guaranteed damage rather than the tight two frame link of the 4 4. Just playing it safe. Absolutely. I, re I respect that for sure, especially uh, playing against someone as good as Nivek. Oh, amazing patience from Foxy. He's going to get a punish. That would be good damage. Wow, Foxy Close takes down. game one on Nivek. Great Man. stuff. Foxy, he is unbreakable. I mean, he, he almost got flawless in the first. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was for you, huh? Forever the sh uh, that was If that was for me, I would have thanked him. Very much so. We taught him, we taught him everything he knows. Of course. In the original days of MK9. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing you guys at Evo all in uh, 2012. Oh, that was fun. Time. And here we go. Nivek getting the first hit. Here comes all the detail. Good low. Nice reset. So Nivek, it, looks, it seems as though he slowed his pace down a little bit. He got another good read. His read on the neutral jump punch so far has actually been very, very strong. Got oh, caught pressing nice. buttons. Here comes Nivek again. Good damage. Oh, Ooh, he baits, he baits it out. That would be a good punish. And again, and almost the wow. same amount of time, Nivek takes round one. And almost the exact same amount of life as well. History, history repeats <laughs> itself. Yes. Ooh, oh, it goes over the down four. <laughs> That's some, uh, There's the interruption. some Tempest tech, huh? Drops the uh, tight link, unfortunately. Still continues the pressure though, and he has meter. Oh, oh. he can't armor it. Gets the good option select to make the overhead safe. Foxy up oh, to spend the bar. Nivik just playing so patiently right now. Great oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> attack again. Throws do not work against Foxy. And of course, that amazing corner carry by Raiden. It's so good. Foxy to make himself very hard to hit. Tries to convert, but just too high up in the air there. Wow, oh, that the barely caught him. Anyway. Oh, and there's the punish. Here comes Nivek. He's a lot of damage. Oh, and he gets the low. This could be it. That's such good damage. And that's oh, it. Chip. Oh, yep. wow. One all. Opting to go straight for restart match. They're going to ride this momentum and go. One of us is going home after this game. Yep. <laughs> that's a nice little trade right there. Oh, Foxy trash drops it again. There. Very unfortunate again, there. And the tech. We haven't even seen that many techs in the entire tournament added together so far. So, again, one of these guys is going home. We, we had Foxy is definitely one of our favorites to tight link. in the winter finals. Yes, the tight link. I mean, this, this tournament's been full of upsets, but so many players playing so amazingly well. Here comes Foxy, gets the down one. Oh, whips the throw. Oh, that was, so, that was so close. Oh, nice check there from Nivek. Corner carry, here we go. Foxy finds himself near the corner again. Oh, there we go, jumping into the ball. Nice conversion from Nivek. Foxy opting to save his bar. I respect that. For sure. Oh, there we go. Instant jump kick. Foxy Makes breaks. Him break. That's huge. If it has the life lead and the meter advantage. Oh, Attack nice. Ten. Again, this oh, is ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Nivek on match Nivik point against match Foxy. Point. So, here we are again. Nivek on match point. Is Foxy going to do it again? Oh, oh he's he reluctant. Did, yeah, he he's did. reluctant. He definitely was. A little, maybe a little bit too much respect there. Here he comes. Oh, this pressure from Nivek. He has so much meter to work with as well. Gets the low. There he goes. Okay, okay, forcing the break. break. Oh, Ooh. wow, barely whiffs that NJP. This is looking, so good. This is looking good for Nibek right now. Corner positioning gets the... Gets oh, overhead. Foxy gets out, he gets the pushing tight buttons. Link. Foxy gets the tight link, drops the two hit though. Here we go, corner carry once again from Nibek. Oh, he drops it. it. Oh, and he gets hit, this could be it. This next combo could yep. take Foxy What's out. Mix he gets oh, and he gets the spin, runs under, puts him back in the corner. Oh my goodness. Oh, he gets the grab! That's Foxy's it. still alive! I'm gonna say it, sir. Oh, I can't my days. Take this. I can't take this, oh, my Mr. Days. Compton. I can't take this. <laughs> well, did we expect anything less? Last round, last game. This is it, though. It's not a best out of seven. There's no reset to be done this here. This round. This round is it. And Vivek is sitting on a full bar. Foxy That's has one. Oh, man, he almost punished that. That was so close. Oh, he gets tagged. Uh -oh. Both players here, they're, they're nervous. Oh, they are nervous right Foxy now. There. Nice down two. Oh, oh he tapped no. into it. Here comes that pressure. He's trying to poke out. Oh, oh, and he gets the interrupt. Oh, 
Oh, he gets the punish. But Nivek still has a bar of meter, so the reversal is always there. Here he comes. Oh, man, this is so close. The life lead is the same. The, the meter is the same. Foxy just got a second bar, though. He gets a wake up grab. This is so close. Impossible to cool. And it's hard to even... Honestly, it's hard to talk right now. I'm just captivated by this. Oh, Nivek got a stamina. Oh, did he convert? Oh, Foxy wow, converts and takes Nivek out of the tournament. That is... Without a doubt, the set of the tournament, and what a run back! Oh my god, the, I can't do this, dude. I, the, my, my blood pressure, <laughs> my blood pressure does not like this. Oh man, okay, that did not disappoint. That I mean, even the, the very end of that was spectacular. That conversion by Foxy was so clutch. But oh, I can't, I can't get over it. Like I don't think the uh, sportsmanship from Nivek. These guys, are such good friends, anyway. Yeah. Oh, I can't. What can you say about a set like that? I mean, that was just spectacular. I'll, I think the only thing we can say is thank you. Thank you very much, both yes. those guys. A huge congratulations for Nivek, bringing us the set of the tournament without a shadow of the town. Yeah, Doing I mean, his guys at home proud, definitely. no doubt about it. I mean, I'm, obviously I'm sure he's disappointed that he didn't progress farther in the tournament, but I mean, he's definitely made a huge name for himself in this in this pro league, and especially, you know, at, you know, at these finals today. That, but it's just little clutch things there, like, um, I just want to see that conversion one more time. I really hope we... And he got it. There it is. The one. But it, was, it would be very easy in that situation to lose it. You know? Absolutely. I mean, and that, like right there, I mean, like little things where Foxy, he was not still not afraid to bet it. Like right. in that situation where it was, he did the spin and it worked. If Nivek blocked the spin, it would have won. Game over. Yeah. You know, that was a yellow spin. <laughs> the uh, yellow know, spin? Like, I didn't know they say that it in the UK. It was almost, <laughs> almost kind of like so obvious it was unlikely. And Foxy went, I think he's expecting me to do something else because the spin is so obvious, I'm not going to do it. So here we go. So I'm going to do it. That's exactly <laughs> it. You know, here we go. Amazing set, though. Uh, who do we have next? I've completely forgot after that set. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, Cheap Eddie versus... Madsen. <laughs> oh, Madsen, Ooh, Here we go. Here we go. This is going to be good. Uh, Sub-Zero versus... Hmm, interesting. Sub-Zero versus uh, Johnny Cage if Cheap Eddie opts to go for Johnny Cage. We have said time and time again that Cheap Eddie can play basically all three variations of Cage. He is a Cage master through and through. He can play all three variations. We'll pick the variation that gives him the matchup that he yeah, thinks a, will benefit him the most. That's an interesting matchup. And with you know with that in mind, um, we did get a chance to ask some of the players about Mr. Madsen here from Germany. So we're going to take a look at what they had to say. Madsen? That noob Saibot player in MK9? It's ironic how he's still a noob in MKX. Oh, tries to backdash but gets chased down, hit by the string anyway. This game has been very dominant so far. Madsen was a clean, clean game one. Madsen, I will break you. They are now serious. You know, there's no, there's no messing about anymore. There's so much riding on this set. Both players are here to win. Madsen, you talk a lot, and that's all funny and whatnot, in your angry German accent, but uh, this weekend you're about to get slapped up, I'm afraid. This next touch could potentially kill Taco and send him out of the tournament, sending Madsen to the US. Catches the load! Oh, no, confirm! And that will take it. Madsen in the game! Madsen from Germany, the best noob cyber Mortal Kombat 9. One of the strongest players in Europe right now is your first European qualifier getting sent to the Burbank finals, where he will represent the EU to try and see that he can take the entire tournament. Madsen, nothing special to say about him. Great guy, have fun, good luck, man. Oh, here comes another noob cyborg fatality. You mean a, a noob cyborg finish him, right? Oh, I, might, I will live that down, I swear. You won't. If I hear that at all on Twitter, then I'll be really upset. Isn't it nice to have so many friends? All right, great words there. I love uh, the region guys, like, all supporting each other. Really fun stuff. This is, I think calling this matchup will be uh, dictated entirely by what variation Cheap Eddie goes with, if he goes from the cage. Because uh, as is life with Mortal Kombat, uh, as far as I'm aware, Sub-Zero has never been fun to fight as Johnny Cage. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same exact thing. I was trying to see like what variation would be the best. And if he did have a counter pick, now might be the time to choose it. Oh, well, look at that respect. I mean, there's a lot of respect from these guys. Yeah. I mean, like, there's confidence and there's smack talk, but every player here is respectful of one another. And that's what I really like about this kind of event. Yeah, um, it's, it's really great being able to hang out with all these players. And I mean, they're all just sitting next to each other and playing against each other and just 
talking about Mortal Kombat. It's great stuff. I still can't see what variation he's picked if he's gone cage. He has gone cage, and he's got. I think, I think he's gone A list. Uh, I do believe he's gone A list. And there we go. He's going to go for those forward three cancels. I'd have to try and get more damage. But Madden is definitely going to play a uh, sort of spaced game here. He's going to have no part wanting Cheap Eddie to get in. Uh, if he corners Cheap Eddie, that's no doubt where he's going to want to try and keep him. But that clone is going to be very important against the character like Johnny Cage. Yeah, absolutely, completely agreed. This is going to be a tough match. I think it depends on uh, who's going to watch out for Ooh, those things. That was real close. I like, I like the kind of uh, the little sort of bobbing forward and back that Madsen's doing uh, to try and get Chief Eddie to think that he's going to press a button. When Madsen feels like he's going to press a button, he'll go for a clone. Uh, just try and go straight through it. Nice patience there. Nice interrupt. I didn't even know you could interrupt that. Oh, Madsen, <laughs> as I can say that, gets hit by a wake up nut punch. Oh, nice slide. Good spacing though by Chief Eddie. Jump back one. Even better spacing from Madsen on that. Yeah. Full combo. Here we go. Hard knockdown from Madsen. Knock him on the ground. Here comes the clone. Now this is where Johnny Cage doesn't want to be. And there's the, that literally the back two. Just two up the neutral jump. I mean, that's one of the things. If, you, if you're a character with a really good neutral jump, right, you're right. going to be inclined to try and uh, neutral jump your way out of whatever advancing Round normal Sub-Zero does. Fight. If Sub-Zero just waits for that, he'll uh, trip guard you as soon as you hit the ground. Right. Wow. We saw right there. Madsen not dropping his combos anymore. He understands how much is on the stake, and he isn't going to land uh, anything no without it being max damage. Yeah, still keep him in the corner. Madsen's doing a great job here. And that's what Madsen does really well, is he just enforces that oh, nice conversion from Madsen, catching him down one on hit, throwing him into the corner. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely how you play Sub-Zero. Oh, no, no conversion. I mean, it was... A... Had no stamina, so he could yeah. up forward three. Very unfortunate for Chief Eddie. Oh, nice whiff punish down, the down four. Great stuff. I mean, both characters here having an amazing down four. Uh, Trinity Cage is, I believe, having a little bit more range. Uh, but both characters really being able to run in and capitalize on down force landing. Eddie has a bit of a life lead here. Madsen has the meter lead. Oh, he's caught. Oh, he's too high up in the air. Does not get the oh, bad punch. barely blocks that uh, ice ball. That could have been a fantastic trade for Madsen. Oh, yeah, he runs definitely. in. He buffers the Abiba uh, ice ball just in case it sticks a limb out. Great stuff there for Madsen. Hard knockdown into slide. Now here we go, that corner pressure. Now, the, the scary thing here is that... Uh, oh, well, himself. before I can even say it, I think the, the, thing, the one thing that would have helped him there um, would have been if uh, Cheap Eddie could have done the Mewburn straight kick. Because, I mean, in that situation, when you're in, when you're in the corner, he's got the clone out, there might have been something that he could have reacted to with straight kick, or he could have just got chewed up for the armor. Right, yeah, I mean, again, like we said, this is a tough match, and we're seeing it here. Obviously, he's taking a minute here to think about it, trying to reformulate how to how to attack this. Well, know? I guess I guess one of the things that you can do, um, it's hard to pinpoint about the clone a lot, because Madden's doing a lot of moves into clones that are not punishable. Obviously, back one, two clones are unsafe. Forward force, two clones are unsafe. Uh, no doubt, Johnny Cage can straight kick both of those options. Oh, and he goes straight right, into yeah, a clone. That was a huge error. It just looks he looks like, very frustrated if you saw his face right now. I think he needs to keep it composed. It's very easy to come and lose your cool. Especially uh, against Sub-Zero. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, no pun intended, obviously. <laughs> um, but if you walk straight into a clone, uh, and you're going to be, I guess, sort of overly aggressive. Uh, and overly anxious, just, to, yeah. just playing very, very vision. And there's the trade. That's the trade he wants. Full combo into corner carry. And that's one of the strengths of Sub-Zero. Hard knockdown, run in. Here comes the clone. Yep. And uh, he has no meter. So it's going to be difficult. And the range on that. Just too yeah. far away for the down one, but that will lead to like 45%. Uh, so it's like massive damage. Right, huge life lead from Madsen here. Oh! The cancel gets the low. Nice back dash. Instead of whip punishing, just go straight for the uh, clone, just to not even put himself at risk. No whip punishing, just getting rid of all the environment interactions at this point. <laughs> Jumps over the clone, match point. Madsen from Germany against Chief Eddie. Chief Eddie just really having a hard time Round just two. touching him. Fight. Yeah, I can imagine um, this is the last matchup he wanted to play today. He's like, oh man. And gets an up punch, this could be the momentum, but obviously Madsen acknowledging that you really just, just block high. He has no low starters, so if you're getting hit by a low, it's only ever going to really come from a uh, down four. No hit confirmed from Madsen, goes straight into the clone instead. I mean, that's one of the things you can do on block, hit confirm into clone, on hit, hit confirm into ice ball. Uh, hit confirm, just basically when you see something land, confirm into the next piece of the combo on the action. Right. Ooh, gets overhead. Nice, tries to punish it, but yeah, no everything punish. is slightly too slow. Very close. Madsen, full meter, man. He Pretty much just do what he wants right now. Nice down fourth for Cheap Eddie. Here he comes. Oh, Ooh, and he doesn't punish it because it's, it's like a parry as well, as well. In, yeah, in a way. it's kind of scary to punish. Risky stuff there for Madden, but yeah. he must have just genuinely thought like it was going to work. Oh, it doesn't punish it again. He gets overhead once again. Oh, this this is won't huge. kill, but the next touch will. Here comes Madden. This could be it. Oh, oh he, he ducks under it. it. And he and gets, he gets the combo. Here he comes. One more mix up. 
And he oh, gets it. Oh, and Madsen. Wow. No doubt Madsen got hit by that because he thought a grab was coming. He yep. tried to take the grab. Amazing stuff from Chief Eddie, knowing that Madsen's going to try and take the grab. Check him with a 1 1. Bam. The round is now his. Chief Eddie, he, he's fighting for, to stay alive right now, to stay in this tournament. He needs to win this round, otherwise, he's going home and he will not be in the money. And that, I'm sure, it can be punished normally with a meter and shadow kick. Unfortunately, no overhead again. No meter, and he gets tagged yep. again. Madsen not dropping any of his combos anymore. He knows that he needs to win this. He wants to move on. Oh, wow, that the grab clone. Here comes Madsen. Hard oh, knockdown, close. Huge life for me, too. Oh, good block. Oh, tries to down three. Out of range, gets the reversal. No combo. Gets hit oh. by the overhead again. I mean, the reality is you can say that's a lot, but that's a 50 50 tango low as well. Looking bad for Cheap Eddie, but here he comes. He has to make this count. He's gets got a long punch. way to go. He was push the getting. Oh, that was nice beautiful. Bait. Here he comes. He ain't gonna have damage. He has no meter, but he can just mix him up. Cheap Eddie, he's got you. Oh, oh the anti air. Beautiful by Madsen there. Madsen will be advancing, takes out Cheap Eddie from Russia. Cheap Eddie with an amazing showing here, showing us that he has got one of the best running cages, uh, one of the best running cages in the world, undeniably. Yeah, uh, all the way from Russia, he made yeah, it. I don't think anybody can argue that. And of course, I mean, he, like, like we talked about earlier, he had some PC issues, but he was able to make it. And he was here last minute. He was probably staying up really late and practicing. I feel and bad for him in the sense that, undeniably, Cheap Eddie got less practice than everyone else because he had so many issues getting here originally. Really feel sorry for the guy, but, you know, I'm just happy to see him here. You know, he was a complete blast at the Russian top eight. Oh, you know, yeah. Getting second place <laughs> there. You know, this guy is uh, passionate about Mortal Kombat. You know, it's, it's, his, it's his jam, you know. It's his jam, indeed. And, of course, this next match, very exciting one, Mr. Crawling Shadow. Ooh. Who is his opponent? Perfect Legend. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Yes. How about that? I mean, they fought in the finals for ESL, but the legend taking that. Yes, yes, this is definitely a run back. And of course, um, you know, Carl has not done what he came here to do so far. And uh, so far, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I guess you really kind of, uh, you, your goal is to go out and just beat everyone, right? You, know, you want of to body everyone. In winners, just free. Go through winners, yeah. win grand final winners, dominate everyone, prove that you're, you know, the best. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, you know, PL was knocked into losers by Sonic Fox, uh, Kung Lao versus Katana. Uh, and here he is now against Crawling Shadow in the loser's bracket, where it's basically, this could be, Crawling Shadow could go uh, any character, or it's going to be a Tempest Mirror. Yeah, yeah I, I'm actually, I don't know what he's going to pick. I don't know I about... Want a, I wouldn't want to mirror I feel Perfect like, Legends, Tempest Kung Lao. I feel like Crawling Shadow was confident in the Kung Lao mirror against Fasol, maybe because he had not heard much about Fasol beforehand. Okay. However, he has oh, lost yeah. multiple times to PL's um, Tempest Kung Lao, and at the same time, he also acknowledges that PL is very, very strong with the character. So, uh, is he going to be confident enough to go with the Tempest Mirror, or is he going to go back to Sonya, which is the character that really established his reputation online yes. uh, through these ESL online you know, online leagues? Covert, yeah, covered up Sonya. Yeah, he's a great Sonya player. And uh, what I like from him most is, I, you know, actually when I first saw him play, I, I felt like he was kind of one-dimensional. And then as he progressed through the weeks, he really showed a lot of adaptability, and he, he would change his play style, throw his opponents off. And, you know, the week that he won, he dominated. It's kind of interesting because um, you find yourself in a, a situation where uh, many Sonya players at the start of the game, um, they weren't bad at the game by any means, but they definitely kind of lived and died by the 50-50s that cover ops. Yeah, that, that, that overhead and um, they the kind low of, starter. And then they would do the 50-50 combo strings. Obviously, 50-50 meaning you can block high or low. Mm -hmm. um, or you have to guess of course, where it's going to end. Where it would be a 50-50 into a military stance 50-50. Um, right. Whereas as the game's progressed, many of these players uh, have really adapted that and they will start hit confirming, you know? If they see the overhead hit, they'll confirm into cut on block, mm -hmm. go into the grab. Like, many Sonya players kind of started off a little bit kind of uh, just really aggressive unsafe mix-ups into unsafe mix-ups. But just as the game has progressed in the small amount of time the game has been out, uh, their fundamentals as Sonya players have drastically improved, which has in turn made them much scarier to deal with because they're less unsafe on block. You know, they only do the unsafe stuff when they hit confirm on hit. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, if you don't have anything to punish, I mean, how do you get how do you get any damage in? But she's definitely a very scary character. That's, I mean, especially online. Well, he's going Sonya in the button check, so it's looking likely that um, if they opt to go straight for a restart match, we very well may see cover up Sonya versus uh, Tempest Lao. <laughs> this really was a matchup that. Um, oh, and there's that. Uh, the Razor Aatrox. Razor thing. Aatrox, the choice of perfect legend. Huge thanks to Razor for sponsoring the ESL Mortal Kombat X Pro League. Uh, you can pick up a Razor Aatrox stick for Xbox One today. And here we go, going straight into it. <laughs> 
Here we go. I mean, I, again, like we talk time and time again about first hit, getting the first hit, but against Tempest Lau, I mean, so important so that he doesn't get this orbiting hat shenanigans that, that make him so down. dangerous. That, that immediately puts you to the corner like we see right now. Now, that's one of the things, many characters in this game, like many characters have insane corner carry. I mean, Sonya also yes. has one of those characters. Yeah, Radiant is ridiculous. But right now, it looks like PL is just dominating Cornichello right now. Oh, Whoa, what a conversion! That, nice! That, I don't know how to say that except for that was sexy. That was good for business. <laughs> good for business. Oh, nice time out, for out here we call this the, uh, the pink jogging mon up. It does kind of remind you of, of, of a fitness DVD. It's really cool. Absolutely, yeah, like 70s stuff. I like it. Early 80s, maybe? Ooh, nice wake up attack there from Cooling Shadow. Nice hit confirm. I guess the low, this would be a combo, but obviously you can't combo off the low in the corner. Nice cover ops. And the combo, hard knockdown. Oh, Ooh, wake up teleport. Wow. Risky stuff. And then put, he puts himself right back in the corner with another one. I really feel like PL is not afraid to corner himself. We see a lot of Sonyas do that when they do the wake, they parry on the opponent's wake up. It's a risky attack. It, it's. Oh, he tries to get the orbiting hat, but Dude, does. PL is all over the place right now. I feel like he's playing quite nervous almost. Really? Well, kind of, because he's making a lot of kind of questionable decisions, I suppose. But that'll be, and speaking of nerves, gets the two-frame link, completely proved me wrong. Great stuff from PL. <laughs> oh, and he's not done. Oh, and there we go. That's okay, the end. He's just showing off right now. Showboating. I mean, that's part of it. Yeah, 42% into the brutality. Make the oh. opponent sit there and watch it. That You could end it there. I, but I you earned want this. But that's the one, you know, like in, in a lot of these situations where we see players like Rio who will fatality almost every single time. Yep. And he said during the Morecambe at nine days, I will do fatalities over and over again to make the opponent sit there and watch it. Like, you know. It's a good mental tactic. Well, there are certain. It's are very Sun Tzu. It, of course. I mean, there, there are so many amazing things in, in Mortal Kombat specifically that you can do to really mess with your opponent. Uh, brutality being one of them, you know. Just fatalities, an example. man. Back I miss fatalities. The, yeah. I do too. We were talking about that yesterday. So First again, hit. this is, uh, you know, Perfect Legends up 1-0. Crawling Shadow needs to get some together. And uh, Foxy, not Foxy, Perfect Legend. It's all right. I'm thinking of the next match, which could happen. Um, uh, Perfect Legend, obviously, you know, getting the first hit twice in a row. Very important for him, uh, allowing him to get Tempest pressure, which is just what makes Tempest such a problem. Here we go, nice. Reversal there from Queen Shadow. Here comes the 50-50. We're saying 50-50 into 50-50. Queen uh, Shadow really living by that right now. Go straight into a 50-50. Hit confirm again. Here we go. We were throw to another 50-50. Goes for the low again. I guess uh, he went for the low again, probably because he went for so many lows. PL was like, he's got low ahead of him. There's, there's no, yeah, there's no way he's gonna go. Round good round two. though. Very good round. Calling shadow. Yeah. Ooh, gets he's, the overhead, but he's fighting to stay alive here again. This is loser's racket. Loser is going home. Everyone here wants to be in the money, you know. Absolutely. Let's drop the link. Oh wow! Nice bait on the air. Martin now with the spin. <laughs> I love that. We I love them best. Yeah, we call that uh, spin footsies. Spin footsies through and through. Yep. That's going to be uh, a full combo. Bam! Perfect ended on match point against Crawling Shadow. How about oh, that? That was a huge round, too. Very good round for him. <laughs> That's what I think of his hat. Oh, when he gets the overhead, here we go. Full right. combo looking, in the corner. Yeah, looking good right now. Catches him jumping out, though. Unfortunately, drops it, losing the hard knockdown and the damage. Oh. Hit by the spin. DL goes in for the, uh, the reversal there. Repositions, but Crawling in the corner. And then back to it. Trying to catch the jump too, but it's not oh, working. Wake nice up, spin. regular spin. Regular spin. Here comes Cooling Shadow, gets the knockdown. That's for the low. Well, that's Good. unsafe. Ops yep. to go for the low on the block. I mean, we said you live and die by 50-50s. Sonya's are unsafe. Oh, he's got a good life lead right now, though. And he goes for the grab. Oh. One more hit, we'll take it. Oh, oh. no. Oh, he doesn't convert. And he's minus two. Spend the bar once again. Here comes the pressure. Crawling Shadow's got to be so careful. Oh, nice read, that was but a good read, but he, yeah, that was a definitely a good read. Oh, he's being a bit hasty now. Yes, he's getting nervous. No, oh, he, he goes went for the, the that could be it. That's it. Pio oh my god! And takes out Crawling Shadow. Wow, I mean, like that was undeniably like you can tell that Crawling Shadow was like, look, I just need one hit. I just need one hit. I just need one hit, and I uh, just didn't get it. You know, he did not get it. PL all over him. And he gets the reversal as well. Really good stuff from PL. Moving on in loser's bracket. Obviously doing Razor Proud, no doubt about that. Definitely, um, yeah. What is our next match? Okay, so very good stuff there from both players. Um, when you're in this situation, when you're in the loser's bracket, and you get... Sometimes it's like one... It's not even a game, it's a round. It's half your health bar and you're going home. Yeah. Uh, you know, PL staying composed, as always. Um, he kind of, it's interesting when you, if you compare like Foxy to PL, they both play the same character, but um, Foxy plays a lot more sort of like patient and conservative, whereas right. know, Carl goes PL's, nuts. he's all over the place, man. He, he plays at 100 miles an hour. And, and, and because of that, he's very entertaining to watch. He's very dangerous. I mean, that comeback at the very end was 
was clutch, man. It really but, was. But it's here, like any any sort of matter of an attack could potentially do it. Um, but like, and right there, that was a read. That was a really good read. But unfortunately, he could have uh, gone for an uppercut instead, or maybe neutral crouch uh, the teleport. But unfortunately, in that situation. Yeah, uh, he had the read too. Exactly. Like he, he just he had the read, but I feel like yeah. he just did the wrong thing. Um, he had he the did, read, was but close, did the wrong option. And that would have ended it. I mean, that could have t that could have changed everything. So. But I think that's that's it. You know, calling Shadow being an online player um, and the offline pressure as well, where PL is much more adapted to that. Yeah, and we are going to hear a few words from our Fatal 8 champion and Mr. Josh Gray in just a second. So it's EX Fan Toss, then 111, then Fan Lift. Yes. Okay. Oh, hey, everybody. Just reviewing some notes for Katana. Sonic Fox, you're in the winner's bracket. You're resting up right now, watching a lot of matches here. First of all, how do you feel so far today? Um, I'm feeling great. Like, um, I, can't, I can't wait to play Pick and win this final. This is going to be insane. Self-confident, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Let's talk about the preparation for this tournament. You won the mid-season showdown, guaranteeing your seed to be here, guaranteeing your spot. What was your preparation like amidst attending so many different tournaments in the U.S.? Honestly, it was a lot of the offline practice I was doing, I guess, with the Yomi guys out there. Shout out to you guys. And um, I guess uh, just learning a lot of matchups and grinding a lot, I was able to just go online and transfer it. That, I'll, Granted, I had to get used to the lag, but I did start off as an online warrior myself, too, about four years ago, so I'm like used to it already. So that's how I got the mid-season showdown free. Now, we saw you perform very well with Aaron Black at Fatal 8, and we saw some Tanya mix-ups happening during the weeklies. Now we see Katana. What is it about these characters that speak to you that you feel you can perform the best? Well, Katana mainly, it was um, due to a player named Katana Prime, and I was watching him play at CEO, and shout out to Katana Prime as well. And I was watching him play MIT's Tanya, and just like when I was watching, I was like, this is a solid character. That, and I also wanted to prove people wrong, that I can play characters without 50-50s and vortexes, and I can just play the spacing game. So yeah, all of you have to hold that. And, and, <laughs> and that's honestly it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are blowing up Twitter right now. <laughs> Moving on into the matches today. It seemed like the toughest match you had was against Big D. Why was that? Um, I guess it's just like Aramac. Aramac has like better tools to deal with Katana. Like I can't just be mindless with me zoning. Um, I have to be more patient. He can check me with like 50-50s in my face from a fan toss. Um, I guess in the soul ball is really scary too because if we if trade uh, the fan toss and a soul ball, I'll lose 30% and he'll only lose like what, 6%? So I, I just had to be more, a little bit way more patient. But I, at the very end of the day, I let him hang himself. Now I know your brother's here and you got a lot of people that are supporting you online. What would you like to say to your fans? Oh, yeah. Um, well, wish me luck. I was at the Grinders finals and I would like to give a personal shout out to. Uh, Pretty much critical reaction again for getting me out here or helping me get out here, and you guys too for all the um, this is everything, man. I love it. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to somebody who's always wanted me to give them a shout out CD Jr., Al, because he wanted me to do that. <laughs> um, shout out to Katana Prime for showing me the way with Katana, the fur community, the Skullgirls community, the SG Illuminati put up your dukes. Um, and that's really it. Now, finally, Pig of the Hut had some words for you. Do you have anything you'd like to say in response? Don't get bodied. <laughs> All right. You heard it from Sonic Fox. We're going to take a quick break. The loser's bracket's going to continue for the ESL MKX Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. Stay tuned. but a plague. We are your end. Ermac. Created to serve the former ruler of Outworld, Shao Kahn, Ermac is a construct fused together by the conquered souls of Adenia. He enforces the will of the ruler of Outworld with immense telekinetic power across three variations. Go! 
your soul will join our collective. In the Master of Souls variation, Ermac unleashes the power of the vanquished Edenian warriors to vanish and trap his opponents on the battlefield. While entombed, Ermac violently erupts his soul with soul release, back forward X, launching his enemy in the air for a combo. Mix up using ankle snap, back A, and crown breaker, forward B, into soul ball for high damage combos. <laughs> We understand your fear. In the spectral variation, Ermac uses Soul Extension to take to the air. While in flight, he still has access to some normal attacks and a few specials to extend combos. Ermac's move Soul Charge, back forward Y, is a quick special attack and combo ender. Canceling your strings early into Soul Extension is a great way to open up your opponent. Confirm your aerial strikes into a teleport to continue the combo. You are already broken. In the Mystic variation, Ermac wields his telekinetic fury to consume the life of his enemies. Telehang, down back X, will suspend your opponent for a combo, while Telechoke, back forward Y, will push them to the corner. Be mindful of the range of these special attacks. They are very unsafe in close quarters, but provide Ermac with substantial damage output. Ermac's playstyle is high risk, high reward. His special moves and combo openers are very unsafe, and one wrong guess can prove fatal. Less than the risk he takes by using safe strings, like Psychic Strikes, back X, Y, B, or Certain Death, forward Y, X, down Y, to check your opponent. When you feel you have a good read on him, go for Ankle Snap or Crown Breaker into your powerful special attacks. Unleash the fury of Adenia with this X-Ray Finisher. And we are back with more MKX Pro League action season finals. I mean, we're getting, we're whittling away in the loser bracket here. We've reached that point that we're getting on in the tournament now. I mean, we're about to see Yomi Rio versus PND of Foxy Grandpa. Last time we saw these guys fight was at the Commonwealth in Virginia, where it was a 2 0 set to Foxy, Buzzsaw Kung Lao versus Summoner Quan Chi. But it looks like Rio will be opting to go with his tournament proven Tanya today. Yeah, his Tanya's looking great. Um, he's fighting his way through the loser bracket, of course. Uh, it is quite a shock to me to see Foxy in the loser bracket, actually. Pick of the heart, you know, I mean, this guy brought it today. He's obviously been grinding out these matchups already. I mean, I was talking to him after and I was like, whenever it's Evo season and World Championships coming up, that's when Pig Reed seems to bring it. And obviously this year is no different and we'll see if 2016 will be the same. But looking at the bracket now, as we can see, we've got Rio versus Foxy Grandpa coming up and then Madsen versus Perfect Legend. So it's EU versus US for two games back to back. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. Uh, it's across, this commentary is going to be villainous. <laughs> villainous uh, commentary. Yeah, we're going to be wringing each other's necks by the end of this uh, set. <laughs> so, you're, so let's say, you know, for argument's sake, 
Foxy's winning, I'm going to be like, yes! And you're going to be just receding in your seat crying. Salty. Yep. Of course. And vice versa. I will, I will hold that if it doesn't happen. I will hold that. You will hold that. Cool. So it's going to happen. <laughs> so Yomi versus P&D basically right now. Yomi, yeah. obviously they picked them up. Yomi, you know, huge shout outs to them. Massively great team. But also shout outs to Razer today for sponsoring the MKX Pro League. Thank you so much for doing that. You guys at home can stand a chance to win a Razer Aatrox arcade stick for Xbox One and some Razer Kraken for Xbox One headsets as well through our prediction point system, which we do every week. And our raffle today, which you can find out more information at esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle. Man, this match is... Pretty legendary, man. It's two of the most amazing players I've ever watched, for sure. Uh, it's gonna. I don't know. How do you feel about it's Obviously, we're probably gonna see Tempest Kung Lao versus uh, Kobo Jitsu Tanya. I mean, how do you feel about that matchup? It's hard to judge because you know, Definitely. even though Ro uh, Ro 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 Rio has such a tremendous Tanya, this guy plays multiple characters at a high level. We've seen great Quan Chi play. We've seen great, uh, obviously. Um, Tanya as well, multiple mm -hmm. variations, but then it's the same very uh, same characters, but with different variations as well. Like this guy seems to play the board for the most part, but then obviously there's Foxy with just the Kung Lao behind. But it's international, that's what I like. It's through and through, Europe versus US in the set. Yeah, I've, I've always been a, um, a huge fan of Rio, going all the way back to EVO 2011 when MK9 first came out. And of course, there was this kind of West Coast, East Coast rivalry, so I really couldn't tell anyone that I was such a Rio fanboy. But it's it's great hanging out with him this weekend for sure, and of course getting to watch these matches. I mean, I mean this is like dream matches, man. But the last time we saw these guys play off, aside from ESL, aside from Commonwealth, was at Evolution 2012, yep. where Foxy eliminated Rio in the Kung Lao Mirror match. So, so that's that's the oh, oh we're, we're going, going straight, straight into, into the set. Wonderful. So, so historically, Foxy has defeated Rio. But today. Rio has really got to uh, like, stop this hat trick of a losing series to Foxy, and then he'll be that one step closer to that tremendous amount of money. Foxy just backing off here. If you see Foxy playing really slow pace, that means he's on point. Like, he's paying attention. If you don't see him do his normal just explosive self, that means he's really paying attention. Okay, so obviously, obviously Rio no slouch either. Yeah, making this match, or taking this match very seriously. Oh, catch us back three. Foxy. Do a significant yeah. chunk of damage. And of course, it's currently a Fox victory. Oh, good lord. If Rio makes the comeback, that'll be a wonderful way to start it, but it's looking unlikely. He, oh, there we go. He regained uh, dignity. Oh, there's a 4 2 catch the back jump. Fox Grandpa has done to put out a jump. Just normal. walking forward slowly. Oh, almost oh, gets it. Oh, that was, that was a great read. Good reaction. Oh, oh wow. That's a wake up dive kick. <laughs> We see that a lot. Delay wake up to beat, obviously, either 50 50 or meaty strength, and then obviously just stand up with punish. That's exactly what we saw the dive here. Quick to grab by going in once again. Get the orbit cap. He's looking great right now. He's looking like he wants to win. Obviously, Foxy in loser's bracket, much like Rio, they, they, the loser of the set will go home. Uh, pressure from Kobe Jitsu with the, with the cancels and the, you know, the EX projectile. He's up to go for the meter burn spin to challenge. 33% off a meter burn reversal. Wonderful stuff. Oh, Ooh, catches the return. So Foxy can't capitalize at the very least. Not bad. Rio, life deficit right now. Yeah, this is game point for Foxy, and Rio's got a lot of life to make up. Foxy up okay. to break. Yeah, that was... I mean, Rio was going to do quite a chunk of damage there. This way, Foxy has kept his life lead. He still has a bar to work with, so not a smart terrible break. idea. Yeah, smart break. Rio just spacing out right now. Really, really good stuff. Oh, catches oh, the jump too! Oh, that beautiful. And this will be a brutality. This is Foxy Grandpa, ladies and gentlemen. That is, uh, that's what he's famous for, I believe, right? Learn from this. What? <laughs> Learn from this. Who said that? Tempest, Lao, Kobe Jutsu Tanya. I mean, didn't look like a, you know, a, a terrible match for Rio, just through and through. I guess it was just mainly whiff punishing and Foxy getting good reads on those jump back twos. I mean, something you see Kung Lao players do a lot is just occupying the space with that godlike jump attack. Yes. Oh, catch the down floor! Oh, good meter from armor, Rio. Yeah. Doesn't continue the combo though. But he picks it right back up. Whatever works. Obviously, you, you, you'll see a lot of Kobe Jutsu Tanya players do two hits of that, you know, uh, repeated attack just to get the advantage to move on and do another move. Once again, he goes for it. Yeah, pushing into the corner, but of course the spin. Foxy runs under, changing uh, spots there. Such a powerful option for Kung Lao. You have to respect yes. when he's got bar, but there you go. Rio gets it. have to respect that. Wonderful conversion from Rio. So this is the first time Rio's had a life lead. Oh, catch the jump too. Good block. Oh, caught. Sleeping. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you will think that Kung Lao obviously doesn't have amazing lows. And obviously the overhead does so much damage, but then you realize if you just never crouch box, you're going to eat down four, down four, down four, down four. Yeah, but just kind of whittle round. you down, like chip you out. Exactly. And then Rio manages to take round one. Good stuff from him. Well, once again, just be big damage, catches the hard link. Foxy Grandpa paying attention. Yeah, I mean, Rio finally getting his first round in the bag, but Foxy Grandpa starting this one out uh, very well. We'll throw this full time so that's happy to regenerate. Almost that pseudo 50 50, you get the orbiting hat back four. Catch another throw! Wow. 
Look at the amount of blood that's just gathering on the floor right now. That's disgusting. Oh, he uses the spin. Very smart to blow up the NJP. Yeah, just sees him leave the ground. That's it. Match point, Foxy Grandpa. Look at one round away from eliminating Rio once again. And of course, the winner of this moves on to fight Bread, who's been playing phenomenally tonight. But that's not about. That's not what this is about right now. Real fighting to stay alive in this tournament. Burns the bar, gets the launch into the corner. Oh, doesn't get a combo off that. Mia Burn, nice return. Good, Good pressure. pressure. Yeah, and once again, real. He's he needs to beat those spins out. He definitely. That's what he needs to do. But it's punishable. That's it. Like like the two hits are punishable by Mia Burn spin. Kung Lao's Mia Burn spin. Oh, that's the counter poke from Rio. But break. Fox Grandpa, keep him in the corner. Yeah. Oh, doesn't go for the conversion. Just backing off here. Real has a life lead though. Big Box is just trying to get his stamina back. And oh, there's oh, a return! That is so smart. I'm sure Rio's doing that on purpose. This could be it for Foxy. Oh, drops his combo. That's going to be heartbreaking. Oh, the trade. Oh, oh the down two for the win. Ties it up. And look at Rio, man. Always so calm. He's very soft spoken. He, he's, he's a cool dude. The turning point really was um, the meter burn projectile just to catch the meter yeah. burn spin. Wonderful trade for Rio. Saves himself there. Good play from him. He's like saving his stamina, just walking forward slowly. Man, Foxy Grandpa really having to conserve his stamina right now. Just good use of projectiles, but trying to not hit a bad trade. Catches the overhead! Catches the link! Here we go, pushing him into the corner. A lot of damage here. Hard knockdown, orbiting hand. Yes. Oh, oh it opens burst. it up, it doesn't convert. Down one's good stuff from Rio, acknowledging that. Yep, pushing his way out of the corner here. Foxy just jump jumping back, back with a huge life here. It's the jump back too, it's this tremendous hitbox catches it this time! And there it is again. Drops the link, but doesn't matter, gets it once again. Foxy Grandpa finds himself a match point, but Rio, look at all that meter he's got to work with. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, catches him sleeping! Lovely not to break! Oh, Foxy Grandpa doesn't confirm no stamina to go in. Here's that pressure. Jumps back. Catches Rio, yeah, Rio catches him. Good trip, oh, guard. Yeah, very good. Uh, Right. Uses the bar. He's out of the corner, but and what cost? Oh, there's the, the punish. Spin again. Like I said before, beat a bird spin punishes. Looks like Grandpa acknowledging, but Rio once again. He doesn't beat him. Good blocking the head that time. Instant dive kick to counter down one. Oh, nice. Throws him back in the corner. Good throw by Rio. Oh. There's the whip punish. This is that his own neutral jump punch. The recovery. Oh, he's got to break. Oh, Rio saved himself just in the nick of time. Just the throw to win the match, but doesn't quite get it. Rio, good acknowledging. Rio's oh, coming back here. It. Obviously, this is match point for Foxy Grandpa. Oh, Rio, wow. what a comeback. Rio here to play, ladies and gentlemen. Match point for both players. Loser goes home, eliminated from top 16. I love seeing that. So many of these games have gone down to last game or last round. Ooh, almost guessed that. Rio scoping out really well. Casting jumping, can't confirm because he's gone for the cancel. Oh, finally baits it out. What a good punish, too. Doesn't love that combo, yeah. Oh, it drops the end of it, but still. 33% before the drop. Oh, wow. Rio. Rio. What a round for Rio! Oh, that is it. it! Rio manages to... Unbelievable! Make the comeback in round two. Clutch stuff! And manages to finally defeat his tournament demon in Foxy Grandpa. Yeah, and what a tournament to do that at. It's the, it's the tournament. It I mean, is the tournament. Eight to weeks do that. of prep. This is the finals, and this is where he brought it. So huge congratulations to Foxy Grandpa for oh, getting this far. Number one seed in the ESL tournament as a whole. But Rio will advance through the losers bracket and get that one step closer to that huge prize pot, hundred thousand dollars. What an amazing finish by Rio. He just looked so strong at the end of that match. He, he, he was definitely off to a slow start. Yeah, I mean, he definitely seemed to adjust to it. I mean, it was well played in general. I mean, I like how even though Foxy was punishing the wreckers um, on block, you know, the, the repeated attack. With the spin. With the spin. Yeah. Rio wasn't going, okay, well, I'm just never going to do it. Because right. it's what won him round three. So if he did decide to, all right, never mind, I'm just not going to do it anymore, then obviously Tempest can and start doing his thing. Foxy, good reads on beat burn spins, but wonderful bait at the last minute. Again, you know, just using the beat burn spin to whiff punish and he yeah, uh, just it punish yes, the jet attack. That could have been it. If that throw hit, that would have been the set, but Rio acknowledging. See that comeback. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful pressure, stuff. Pressure, pressure. There it is. Oh, this is that was it. That was the spin. That yeah. was the punish. And he, he really hadn't baited too many of those out. Wow, because the, the amount of that hit as well, like the ratio of spins that hit to ones that were blocked. All right. it took was that one block spin. That very, very one critical block moment, spin. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the threat of fighting Kung Lao. They just got meter. You know it's a threat. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what a great match by Rio. So obviously he's going to continue. And right now we're setting up Perfect Legend and Madsen. So Madsen is EU's, well, I don't say only hope, because obviously we've got a few more international competition, but right. EU as a whole. Madsen is left for them. We've got La yes, that's for correct. CIS, but Madsen is the last European representative. And obviously for NA, we've got Bread, we've got uh, Sonic Fox, Pick of the Hut. 
We've got Rio. Like, NA is still well represented, but Madsen has now the weight of Europe on his shoulders. He certainly does. And of course, the winner of this match is going to go on to fight Lar, who now has the weight of CIS on his shoulders. <laughs> so, no pressure, it's, right? I, oh, exactly. <laughs> I can imagine it being quite a, you know, a, a strange situation to be in. But you know, I, I'm, I'm sure these guys, they're, they're, at this point in the tournament, they're no stranger to tournament pressure. They know what's on the line. They know the money. They know they've got thousands of people watching right now, supporting them from either their country or around the world. So, I'm sure these guys are used to it. Yeah, I mean, Perfect Legend, he's still trying to prove his point here. I mean, he wants to get that run back with Sonic Fox. He's he was he was definitely very frustrated after that last game where he lost. So he's been obviously he's been tearing it up in the loser bracket. But he's, he's still got a ways to go. Yeah, he's, he's definitely closer. getting closer. You no, know, it's it's a strange situation we find ourselves in when Perfect Legend, obviously he's in the losers bracket thanks to Sonic Fox mm -hmm. defeating him, but he has to defeat. Europe and CIS Russia to get his run back in North America. Oh, yes, he, he has to send home the last two hopes for both yeah. regions. <laughs> he, 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 he has to eliminate Europe and he has to eliminate CIS to get his run back against Sonic Fox and also get closer. Because obviously, you know, pick of the hurt and Sonic Fox, like I said before, these guys have both secured themselves some prize money. Yeah, the, the worst they can do is, is third place. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Whereas in the loser's bracket, this is still, you know, you go home empty handed if you lose now. Exactly. And it's, I feel like it's even. I mean, it's one thing to get 0 2 which nobody wants, no one wants that to happen to him. But, I mean, it's even a little bit harder, in my personal opinion, when you get so much closer and you're just, like, fifth place has got to hurt, it's got to stay. There are worse places to lose in tournament. Like, yeah, obviously, losing, if you're a competitor, losing isn't great anyway. Correct. But, the worst ways you can lose is either go 2 and out, that's something that no one wants to do, and it's something that has to happen every tournament. That's the problem. Yep. It doesn't matter. It could be 16 of the best players in the world, someone's got to go 2 and out. It yep. just has to happen. But then, in, when top four is paid out, someone's got to come fit. Yeah. And and, and, well, two people are coming fit in, in the double limb, so... Yeah, that's always the heartbreaking spot to be that close, especially with this much money. This is crazy. Biggest price point in MK history. Like, we, we will not stop repeating. It is a big deal. $100,000 all raised through the Blue Steel Sub-Zero skin. So again, huge thank you to everyone that picked that up at home. Thank you for supporting the scene. This is where that money goes, what you're watching now. Yeah, so... Potentially, this is a match uh, that has never happened before. Has Madsen ever played Perfect Legend? I haven't seen it. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're, all the guys here have been playing a lot of casuals over the last couple of days. They could well, have I mean, played. In, but in tournament, like. In past. tournament, never. I don't believe Because so. I know uh, Madsen goes all the way back to MK9. Madsen, his last, um, I believe his last international competition was MK9. He attended uh, a big event in America, but I don't believe Perfect Legend was present there. Okay, so. This, this history is their being first made, time. of course, yeah. I believe this is and their again, first time. Again, I mean, Sonic Fox in the winter finals here, I, no surprise there. But, I mean, I'll be honest, I knew I knew Pig was going to do well today. He always does. He's very consistent. However, he is in the winter finals. He defeated a Foxy Grandpa. A lie, he defeated uh, yeah. Cheap Eddie. Like, he had to take down international competition to get where he is now. I mean, just so impressive today. I mean, so everybody's, been, everybody's been playing great, yeah. Up and coming, we've got, obviously, Madsen versus Perfect Legend. You're about to watch now. Razor Perfect Legend, nonetheless, obviously, he uses the Aatrox himself. The prize you can win at the raffle and the prediction points. So make sure you're getting those predictions in. We are reaching the end of the tournament, or at least the later stages of the tournament now. But then we have Bread versus Rio, and Lar versus the winner of this match. So yeah, we are it, approaching it. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely ex uh, excited to see Lar compete again. He, he's been... I mean, the CIS region, I, personally, I didn't know too much about them. And, man, they are just as good, if not better, than anyone else in the world. Well, look at the set that La lost to Pick of the Hut. You know, obviously, Pick of the Hut did take that, but that was super Barely. close. Looks like we're going to get going Barely. now. Yes, they've done the bite check. Oh, wow, right Miel off the bat. starts bravely with a dive kick, instantly punished. That was very brave. And Madsen, very wisely, um, just threw the block up, and it paid off. And now Pio's in the corner where he doesn't want to be. Pio down for the clone, but it's saved by the down three for Madsen. PL just pushing the way out. Madsen blocks though, which which I like because then it keeps PL closer to the corner. I like how I mean both Taco and Madsen both do that. When they have you cornered, if they get hit at all, regardless of the life feed, they will break just to keep you there. Because right. they know that the corner is when they'll make most of the damage, because that's what Grandmaster Sub Zero thrives to achieve is corner pressure. Absolutely. We'll get fuzzy guarding from Legend. Oh, catches up raw back too, but Madsen unfortunately doesn't confirm. Oh, oh what a it. great punish. Doesn't really get a lot of damage off it. Oh, that clone is gone. Well, Madsen's played against Foxy Grandpa a lot. Like, he is used to the Kung Lao matchup, so I'm, I'm sure we won't see much more oh, punish. Oh, what a good pay. Just like that. Blocked uh, block punish. Oh, just wow, like and that. he blew up a meter move at the very end of that. Fortunately, Perfect Legend will throw a bar of meter away, just like that. Yeah, he right obviously... Back to the corner. He, yeah, exactly. He didn't have the life to use the other. Catches it once again. I mean, a sort of, you know, a clean go-to 60%. Meter burn ice, just to hit confirm. Corner pressure, hard knockdown. 
Sub Zero's house. This is I'm your house now. That's <laughs> <laughs> just didn't work right now. Jumps his combo, but Cash has a reset. Perfect he Legend. Not breaking. Perfect Legend opting not to break. Oh, but Madsen drops the combo once again. Oh, and then he blows up our meter. What is <gasps> no, he thinking right now? Oh, Madsen is looking That was wow. a quick game one. That was quick. Madsen 1 0 on Perfect Legend right now. Former Mortal Kombat 9 World Champion. Damn. Germany representing right now. Oh, he's doing his thing. Madsen is here to play. He earned his spot through the midseason showdown, giving us a nail biting grand finals against Lowland Alliance Taco. But here he is. Oh, yeah. Last European surviving in the tournament, one game away from eliminating Perfect Legend. I watched that match. It was pretty crazy. Sub v sub. That was. I thought it was going to be really boring, right? Because I Me thought too. it was going to be. Me too. I was like, they're oh, going to put clones up. They're on the forest. Yeah. They're doing the gimmicks. They're both playing Revenant Sub Zero. They're both part of the same faction. I know. Lin Kuei. Taco plays Lin Kuei, so represent that. It's wonderful. But I thought it was going to be really boring on paper. But then we <laughs> saw. The set we saw, 3-2, last round, last game. It was crazy. No health left. Yep. Cove, will we see the stage brutality? That's what I want to know. Oh, those are great. I love that they added those back into the game. I, but I it's a Mortal Kombat so 1 stage fatality. You exactly. uppercut, they fall off. Exactly. Like the old pit. Must talk and loud. Perfect Legend has made the change. Interesting. So obviously his damage won't be anywhere near as high, but he has the uh, the low hat to deal with. Ooh. Locks no punish. Oh, no punish. Nice That's back dash by Madsen, yeah. Refreeze Madsen. Execution's tightening up. Hard knockdown, corner pressure. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, that Armor's might through. be why. That might be why. The, the door forward advancing. Spin. Yeah. We'll catch it. No, confirm. That's huge. I actually really li I like this switch by Perfect Legend. I, I think it was smart. Oh, oh the read. setups. Oh, that was nice. This is working out. This is working out really well for Perfect Legend right now. That's in still remission. It's round. Oh, that will catch him, but not quite enough to win. Oh, wow. Very nice. I feel. Sticks this, a foot. That was, the ice that was really smart. I, a lot of times. You know, in those types of situations, PL will do something risky. I like that. He just stayed full screen and just kept throwing hats, and it worked. Oh, and that's a good trade for Madden. Just look at the corner carry. They started mid screen, and they're basically in the corner. Ow, that's sub zero. And there it is again, that spin. Paying off. Oh, what a what a beautiful punish. Madden was ready for that. Reactions are on point. Reactions. He is looking he's looking great right now. I mean, you can see, obviously, Tempest can get 40% off that, but then there's Buzzsaw with just the relenting pressure. Buzzsaw is just going to chip your health down until there's nothing left. You know, I, I like Theo's Buzzsaw more than I like his Tempest. Yeah, he's definitely putting in work. I mean, yeah. again, one of the beautiful things about variation system is just the, the fact that it's matchup dependent a lot of the time. Absolutely. Tempest might be really good, but if Buzzsaw has more options than just damage, why not pick oh, it? Go for that low hat. This is so close, though. Yeah, I with a slight life lead. Good that, yeah. Clone. Oh, oh, catches him out of the, throwing the clone. That was really good. Hey, Bunner Hat. Plus a blow! Oh. Challenges! Match wow. point, that's it. Obviously, Buster coming out with the advancing spin can actually punish the clone setup and block as well. Absolutely. That might be another reason. Oh, the hat catches him. That's a good trade to imagine. That's a bar for a normal attack. Yep. It's a jump. Where's it goes for a trip card? He's playing real patient here. Oh, good getting beat in. From PL. Not quite yep. in time, though. Yeah. Oh! And he cross up, there's the Pazzy Guard, the Legend, that's what we need. All oh, goes oh, to Clone Road. Wow, All slide, risky stuff, but gets it. All blocks it. Again, PL using a lot of meter right now, but Buzzsaw builds a lot of it. All goes to Trip Guard, once again doesn't get it, only gets down four. And of course, PL needs this round to stay in the game. This is match point Madsen here. And the loser is going home. That's there the it punish. is. That's why he's gone to Buzzsaw, to punish those Clone setups, but no bar. Perfect Legend can't do it anymore. Oh, catch the Trip Guard with a throw instead. PL's looking pretty sharp right now. I like it. Just up. out of range, yeah. Ooh, not sure if I agree with the meter, oh, but what a read. Uh, what wow, a read. what a read and what a conversion. Uh, in the words of Dustin Kane, Kobe. That was wonderful. Wow, six of five in front of the clone. That's chip damage. Oh, Perfect man. legend. Wow. Perfect legend. What great patience and spacing right there at the very end. And then the double dive kick for the finish. Uh, but again, a close game. A close game. Yeah, it was, it was definitely very close. Madsen by no means is out of it here. We're seeing a repeat of what we just saw. Europe versus US. Europe takes game one. US takes game two. I hope it doesn't go the same way. I would disagree with you. I hope that it does go the same way. Well, we just have to agree to disagree. That's acceptable. Agreeable. I like it. <laughs> so Matt's obviously taking a minute to look decide what he wants to do. He looks right now, man. One thing I've always said about Carl is he, he's a competitor. Like, he's a true competitor.
I wonder what he's contemplating. So we've never really seen him play anything other than Grandmaster in serious sets before. We've seen him go to Cryomancer a few times for certain matchups in the ESL weekly, but there's a difference between online weekly and obviously the biggest there is in the grand finals. Of course. Do you stick to your guns or do you try something else? I couldn't get to see what variation he picked, but we'll have to find out in a few seconds. Grandmaster, I'm I really, stuck with his guns. I, I really think he just needs to start picking up those spins. I mean, he knows they're coming. He uses both bars and that gets the first hit bonus with it. Really good confidence from Perfect Legend. 41% damage. Yeesh. This is the last game, man. This is it. They're, they're leaving it all on the table here. Someone's going home with no money. Matic gets the clone to stop the low hat. Ooh, almost gets it. Gets a down four. Can't confirm because he hasn't got much sprint to go in. Sophia with a really nice life right now. He's very content just to sit back. Again, uh, some of the trade for Madison because a bar for a normal slide, but right. Right. Madison life deficit. Another good oh, trade for him. Oh, that is a terrible trade for Perfect this Legend. This is corner. Corner for Perfect Legend. No meter. This could be bad. Oh, what a punish. Wow, from that range as well. Doesn't get the refreeze, but still 90 damage. And there, as soon That's as he got the meter, he just used it. Oh, can't confirm too far away. Madsen goes for a unfortunate input error. Press by a clone. Watch out this to the wow. Oh, risky slide. That's Madsen. Match point, Madsen. Wow. Match point, Madsen once again. Yo, this kid is impressive. You can just catch that back too. Max range. Madsen just, he's playing footsies from as far away as physically possible with Sub-Zero. Oh, catches it. Oh, Vader, perfect legend. Unfortunately, misses the confirm. Another good punish. Oh, misses the slide. That's the hard knock down oh, miss. beautiful spin right there. And he cross-up spin. Good and stuff. cross -up. Oh, catches the jump back. Doesn't go into an ice ball. This might come back to haunt him. That's a lot of damage he's just missed out on. It's pretty even right now, though. Of course, Madsen on match point. Another raw slide. Madsen just bringing out the guns right now. Throwing the kitchen sink at him. <laughs> There no hat on his head, no hat on his head, so it could go for the by spin to punish. Right. So one of the good things in this Ooh. matchup is, instead of blocking the low hat, make it go over your, make it go under you, it's like jump over it, because then, it can't just jump, because then it has to take longer, it has to reach the end of the stage before it regenerate. Right. PL is opting not to break, he's gonna eat this climax up. Oh, he's gonna use both bars! Oh, he's gonna use two bars here. Forces Mads in a break, and he oh, blows it up, the slide, the slide. Good block. Oh, what? Oh my oh, gosh! Punish. Baits on baits! This is so tense. This is so one combo. Close. One combo, both players. Yep. One combo. Of course, Madsen just needs one to win. <laughs> he just said. Wow! 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 Good God! <laughs> so once again, a repeat going down to the last round. No meter to punish the slide. Yeah, clone even. Back oh, two. nice That's time kick. Good conversion. That was wonderful. Twenty percent. Not bad yes. at all. Back to. Oh man, he runs straight into the club. Oh no, he doesn't confirm. That is a big, big mistake. Man's gonna be kicking himself over that one. Oh, and then PL gets in. This might be one of the best sets we've seen all day. Absolutely. Although I've said that for like the last five sets. It's a good set. Good day for good set. Good jump as well. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I don't know how to call it. I yeah, it's it is difficult to commentate. I just want to watch. <laughs> oh my word. Oh. <gasps> oh, I thought Ooh, he gets over yeah. it. This is huge. Bill just backing off. He has a good life lead right now. Oh, we oh, said this man. time. Madsen, this could be it. This will end in the corner. This will end in the corner if he doesn't drop. That was a risky read. Gets it. He's got the meter burn. I would be watchful for that spin. Oh, there we go. Peel gets in. Oh! Oh! oh there's a meter burn. This is going to be it. Perfect legend is moving on. That was amazing. Madsen oh, with man. a risky read. Risky read. PL scouts it out. I'll and be honest, punishes. man. I am very impressed with Madsen. It, it's like it's a whole different game watching these guys play online and seeing seeing what they can do here. I mean, I, I'm just trying to think of what to say. I mean, that was just a tremendous set. The switch to Buzzsaw doing so much for Perfect Legend. That, I, I dread to think how it would have gone if he stuck with Tempest. Yeah. With the, the lack of low hat pressure, the, 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 the delayed staggering low hat you get on the floor, the meter burn spin to punch the clone setup. I mean, that's why you learn more than one variation of your character. You at home pay attention to this. This is why <laughs> it exists. This is why the mechanic is in the game. Yeah, I mean, that that was just epic. I mean, it's both of those, those last two matches are amazing. So. Uh, this next match we'll be coming into pretty soon is Mr. Big D, aka Bread, versus Rio. I haven't seen this in quite some time. However, Bread's been playing out of his mind today. Obviously, you know, he's in losers thanks to Sonic Fox, much like a few of these players here today. Oh man, sorry but to interrupt, but that that read by Theo was just so amazing. It's just I'm, 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 oh. that was so crazy. The trade I to thought, land on the buzz song. I thought in my head. Oh, I man. thought in my head, it's not still there. Nah, <laughs> it's not and then, there. And then nah. you just saw him. what. Yeah, it was difficult to see too. Like it, it just we just saw him die. <laughs> he landed on it. Yes, yes he thought, ah, oh, jumping conversion. We traded. That's oh, I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Oops.
Man, so Big D here, we're obviously we're probably going to see some Ermac versus Tanya. So you know, I, I would just like to, to comment before we move on to the next match. This huh? does mark, obviously, the end of the EU uh, representation in the top 16. So moment, moment of silence. So huge congratulations <laughs> to all the European players that made it here today. Definitely, obviously, the five definitely. representatives, both from the Mortal Kombat Cup. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Oh, look obviously, at that love. Look at that love for EU. These guys really had to grind to get here today, much yeah. like everyone else. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, huge congratulations to them for making it here. Free trip to LA, not bad at all. But... No. Moving swiftly on, we have Bread versus Rio. Right, I mean, th this is an interesting matchup. You know, Ermac and, uh, and Tanya. Is it 100% guaranteed that Rio's going to be going Tanya? Because I've, I've not seen him play anyone else today. I think so. I think he's going to go Tanya. But I just, I just you know. You never know. What... He's got a bag of tricks. That's yeah, for that's sure. it. I, I know what this guy's capable of. I know the characters he plays. But we've not seen him yet. But you know, he has been in some clutch, you know, on the skin of his teeth of losing situations, and he's stuck with Tanya. So I would yes. assume he's going to be sticking with her through and through. Exactly. Yeah. If he was going to, if he was going to change at any point, he probably would have already. He says, "Favorite fighter, Aaron Black. Black." That's just one of the characters <laughs> that he could play. And then, of course, we've seen him. You know, right out the gates, he played a lot of Quan Chi. Yeah, Quan Chi. We saw um... <laughs> Big D going for that. That was for you. I wonder. I love it. I, I respect that. Thank you, Big D. EVB, Big D as well. So again, huge shout to EVB for. You know, giving this guy a sponsorship, doing Definitely. really well in his first uh, offline tournament since then. Obviously, Mag has bagged himself this far in the loser's bracket, but we are approaching a point where it's between fourth place and losing. Obviously, top four payout. Someone's got to lose. Someone's got to come fifth. Yeah, like we said, the heartbreaking uh, placement there. Fifth place. But on a, I have to admit, I, I sincerely underestimated Big D today. I don't want to say everyone did, because you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like people were sleeping on him as such. However, you know, he did come here through consistency. He didn't win any of the weeklies, but it was through consistency. But this is showing that consistency alone is all you need to be a good player, to be a top level player, where you can come offline and take it to some of the best players in the world. We have some of the best players from all across the, uh, the globe here today, and Big D has taken it to him. We saw him obviously fight Nivek, Greece's, you know, best player, as well as countless good sets today. And over the weekend, just in casual sets alone, we this guy is here, he's serious business. Classic Ermac. Make sure you guys at home get your predictions in, stand a chance to win those Razer Aatrox sticks and those Kraken headsets for Xbox One. He's just starting off with a throw. Ooh, what the... Oh, there's the meter, because it cost him a bar. But he still might just get it. Catches the low, good string. We need 70% damage for a string alone, that's not bad. This kind of reminds you of Takashi Cage, the overhead string doing like 18% by itself. So you think, oh, he's not made to a special, but it still hurts. Playing real conservative here. Yeah, big thing, just playing patient. Yeah, he's just kind of. It looks like he's just trying to bait something out from Tanya. Is he ever had I mean, this, this, this is what I like to see from him. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, please. By all means. Oh, delays the wake up. Wonderful emoji for Big D as well. But Good jump I mean, back there. This is what I like to see from Big D. The, knowing the 50 50s, yes, they're unsafe, but he just goes for them sometimes. I mean, what we saw against Sonic Fox, and what unfortunately lost in both matches in that set, was throwing out Beta Band teleports at, in the neutral. If they were 50 50s, then at least you've got the, the mix up and the guess behind it. If it's just a teleport, then obviously that's not going to do too much for you. Wow. And Rio, again, what? just chipping him down. Rio is ridiculous. Comeback king today. I mean, in the loser's bracket as well, this is where to do it. Absolutely. Down one doesn't quite confirm, but still manages to get the knockdown. Oh, caught down three. I mean, up to this point, I mean, Big D has definitely given Sonic Fox the most trouble. Absolutely, but you know, if he wants to get his run back, he's got to go through Yomi Rio. What a what a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> to have to run through this loser's bracket. It's just ridiculous. I mean, all the time it's well, I'm in loser's bracket. Safety net's gone, but it's time to bring it. But then you're bringing it against everyone else <laughs> into the loser's bracket. <laughs> Who has the same frame of mind? All catches good low. But look at the health dead even right now. Dead even. It's a chip damage. Even, even the, the meter is pretty darn close. Well, until then. Commentator's curse. Of course. <laughs> of course. On the code once again, I want to see the stage Oh, catches a jump kick. I should say, you should probably say that you don't want to see it and then it'll That would make sense. Yeah. Ooh, catches it! Hasn't got three stocks, we can't get the recapture! So very smart by Rio to go in there because he doesn't have to respect the soul ball. Okay, hold on, this is almost guaranteed chip situation. Manchester, to get out! Ooh, oh, jump kick, what a conversion! Wow! What Big a, D! Is this, could this end it? Whoa, what was that? Wow. This, this dude. Hey, but, I mean... If you think, he, in Mortal Kombat 9, he played Nightwolf, which nobody played. It was a very hard character to play, and now with Ermac, Ermac is really strong in this game. So he's obviously developed some amazing fundamentals, which he's been showing off today. I was already writing that match off. I was saying, nah, chip damage, this one's done, and then that combo. Crazy stuff. Ooh, delays it. Down one low string. 
zero on block. Oh wow, Rio trying to just with another one. Oh, wonderful bait yeah, on the teleport. Be punished hard, yeah. He's in the corner. This is not looking good for Big D. Thirty-five percent damage. Corners himself, and that was but before the drop. Wow. Rio manages to bag himself. Game one. one I match imagine away. we're going to see a fatality. Of, of course, course we are. It's Rio. We're going to see a fatality. Real. Of course we are. And it's the I'm going to walk through you fatality. Literally. There wasn't a hole through you. Now there is, and I fit through it. And now Mac is dead. Big D, obviously, you know, contemplating what to do. I mean, obviously, I don't think we're going to see him go for a different character. I know he plays a really good Jason Voorhees. Yeah. But it's a question of whether does, does he bring it out in tournament? Like, how... I mean, I suppose it, de it depends on how, like, helpless he feels right now. Like, if he feels like he did everything right and he still lost the match, um, he's... You know, he probably is going to consider switching characters. However, if, if he's the right now, character selects, I think this this is the this is the decision. It's I've got potentially one game left in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just taking a breath though. I would love to see a character switch just because I love that. His Jason thing. is tremendous, but he hasn't used it today. So how ready is he to switch at this last minute? Or does he stick with his guns Obviously, against someone like Rio? Ermac got him here. Will Ermac be his final character in this tournament? Obviously, like this, this is where you you take the time to decide it. Absolutely. Where... Yeah, I definitely respect um, going to the character select screen, taking a minute. Um, this is actually a run back from week two. Is in, it really? In our weekly. Yeah, uh, Bread got to the finals, played Rio, and lost. This is the time to come back. This Yo, is the he time. Is in, he has some intensity on his face right now. I love it. Okay, you know, this guy's playing out of his mind today. This is the best I've ever seen him play completely. I 100% agree with that. But he's against Rio. He has to beat Rio in two more games. <laughs> And when is Rio not ready? He's reading a novel right now. Fight. Sticking with Monster Souls, Ermac. I like I it. Like, yeah. Sticking with his guns. Rio bags first hit. Great start by Rio here. Nope. Oh, corners himself though. God. Has to break. Good break from Big D. Either basically, if he didn't break that, that's conceding the round. And that's putting us up at match point immediately. But Rio still with the aggression. Man, the pressure. It, it's got to be difficult for Ermac to deal with. Kind of poke from Rio. Good point going off the down three. Good on block. Oh, there's a. Ground slam. Oh, there it is. That's the Ermac. And beautiful conversion there. Go for just for damage here. Just for damage. 40%. Wow. Ouch. Yeah. That hurts. Ermac definitely hits like a truck. Like a bread truck. I knew you were going to do that. I thought about it too. Match point. Yomi Rio. Just like this. Looking <laughs> to advance. He'll have to fight the winner of Lara. Perfect legend. Fight. But Big D not out yet, but he has a mountain to climb. Especially if Rio gets the first hit and still continues his corner pressure. How much damage is he going to look for here? Drop this last time, we'll see the same. 35%, ouch. That hurts. There's a trip guard. Rio paying attention right now, letting nothing go unpunished. Oh, air solo, I love it. Good read. He's so good at that. He, he just always throws him like right at the perfect height. Again goes to the, just the knockdown pressure, 34% damage. Oh wow, I love it, I love it. Just think he's gonna go for crossbow last minute. That would have been a really good situation for the BM. This is bad, this is bad for Big D. No breaker available. Once again, chip damage territory. And that will be it! Finish him. And, I mean, it's definitely unfortunate that that, uh, that Brett is out of the tournament right now. However, like we said, he played out of his mind. He put on an amazing show for us today. He was an absolute pleasure to watch. Huge congratulations to Brett for making it this far in this tournament. Played out of his mind today, but... Yomi's rear will advance on into the loser's bracket where he'll have to fight the winner of La and Razor Perfect Legend. Oh man, La versus PL is going to be amazing. The hard matches just don't stop, do they? No, I mean, uh, this deep in the bracket, I mean, every match is, is terrifying. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know? Yeah, in some tournaments, you might win a match and go, all oh, right, there we go, I can, I can breathe now. Then you see who your next <laughs> opponent is. This <laughs> is one of those tournaments. Not today, man. Yeah, not today. This, don't is, get... this, is, this is the combo. This is the one. That saved him, yeah, that saved him that round. Right here, I said, that's it. Match is done. Match is done. And then we saw that. But, I mean, Rio is just such a smart player, and he just applies pressure just perfectly. Just taking full advantage of Cobra Jutsu Tanya as well. Obviously, this guy's put serious time into her. I mean, again, across all variations, I've seen him play Pyromancer, I've seen him play Dragon Naganata, but Cobra Jutsu is where he's really he, found his comfort zone. He enjoys the character. And definitely to talk about some of these matches, we are going to hear a few words from your brother and, of course, Mr. Josh Gray. Wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. I am joined by Ryan Neal. Ryan, a little bit more goodbyes to some of the EU folks, especially Foxy Grandpa earlier on, losing to Rio, but a great run for a Foxy Grandpa, representing well the United Kingdom. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, um, I'm really happy about all the European guys. I mean, I was really kind of hoping deep down, as I'm sure you guys understand, you know, for it to be... 
uh, I guess more diverse as it went on, because obviously we have some really good European players here. The guys that were eliminated later on, like Foxy and like Madden, you know, last round, last game, as close as it gets. But, you know, you have to give it to the American players. They clutched it through. They proved why they are you know, so amazingly strong offline players uh, to sort of keep it together in tournament and just pull through on the other side. You know? Good days to them. I'm very confident that every American player here and all the Americans watching right now are surprised by the talent we have seen from Europe. And that talent is going to continue to grow as they are more experienced facing international players here in the U.S. Uh, moving on, your travel schedule throughout this entire season was pretty crazy because not only were you commentating for the European League for ESL, you were also visiting different tournaments around Europe. What was that like? Well, it wasn't just uh, the ESL Cup that we were casting throughout the week. Uh, it was pretty much almost like uh, for two months straight where we were traveling to a new country every weekend to cast the Mortal Kombat Cup. It was, uh, it was pretty nuts, but the good thing about that was you know, we had the chance to go to so many different countries around Europe and play with all the best players around the world, you know, around that area of the world. Um, and it was a great experience for the two of us. You know, it's, we are commentators through and through at the moment. You know, there, there's no doubt about it, but the competitive edge, we always want to play the best players. Like, you know, even if it's just in casuals before the tournament, we want to get as many games in as possible. And the guys, are, you know, they accommodated that very well. Now, no Cyrex and Sector in no, Mortal Kombat X. So there isn't. What was your process like of finding the fighter that really spoke to you and the same process for your brother? Well, I think uh, I can speak on behalf of Mustard here where I say that um, Sarx and Sector in MK9 and even elements of Mortal Kombat 3, where we started, um, really shaped the way that we were as fighting game players and the characters that we liked to play. So uh, when Sarx and Sector weren't in the game, and we realized that, um, we kind of just realized, well, we have a, a, we've developed a style now. So what characters in the game speak to us in that sense? And obviously that's how I found Quan Chi. I like characters that can't get out of the corner, it's brilliant. And obviously you've got Mustard who, you know, Shinnok sort of speaks to him in uh, certain areas that Sarax let him play. Shinnok lets him do a similar thing. Now in terms of the differences of the United States players and the European players, do you see a lot of style differences between the two? Is it more of an individual basis? I feel like America presses a lot more buttons. Uh, there's a lot of situations where, you know, if something's guaranteed, they're doing it, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna go in for it. Um, I think the general quality, like, um, it's not like night and day, as it were. It's not that, you know, clear cut dominates the other side of it. It's, um, there's a lot of sort of more balance there. Obviously, America have pulled through really well today. Obviously, we have uh, Evo next week where there will be a bunch of Europeans and more international competition there. So that would be really interesting to see. Um, but I think across the board, America just, the reality is they just have so much more experience in the constant tournaments, the constant offline events, and the pressure, which you know, as a fighting game player, it's not just the execution, but it's how to deal with the live crowd where half of them might be rooting against you or for you. Well, great job to you and your brother commentating over in Europe, and also a special shout out to the Russian team as well. We're going to take a break when we come back. The end of the loser's bracket, and then the winner's bracket final, the loser's bracket final, the Predator Tag Team Shell Match, and finally, the Grand Final. Stay tuned, you're watching the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals, presented by Xbox. You approach me as a foe. Depends on who's asking. Allow me to introduce myself. Kui Liang, known as Sub-Zero, is the Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei. In Mortal Kombat X, Sub-Zero uses three variations that cater to players who enjoy freezing and punishing their opponent. Death is more honor than you deserve. First up, Cryomancer. This ice weapon variation caters to an aggressive playstyle. Ford XY is a quick opener that can transition into a freeze or press Y a second time to complete the combo string and launch your opponent into the air. You will know the sting of winter. 
The Grandmaster variation provides the ability to generate ice clones. These clones can be used as projectiles or as a defensive decoy, freezing your opponent on impact. Not only is the Ice Clone a great tool for defense, it also allows Sub-Zero to extend combos and control the pace of the match by trapping your opponent. You only make this easier. The Unbreakable variation focuses on defense. Frozen Aura and Barrier of Frost are great defensive tools. They can also be used to maintain your offensive momentum and clear the battlefield of projectiles. Each variation allows Sub-Zero to control the tempo of the match. Bring the pain in Cryomancer. Lock down your opponent in Grandmaster. Or trade blow for blow in Unbreakable. Use Arctic Assault, forward BY, for a better stage position after a combo. Ice Pain. YBY is also a great combo that will launch your opponent and help carry them to the corner. Continue to corner punish your opponent with this damaging combo and X-ray finisher. And celebrate your victory with a cold-hearted fatality. Finish him! Enjoy the power of ice and cold with Sub-Zero. Stay frosty, my friends. Sub-Zero wins. Flawless victory. Purchase a Sub-Zero Blue Steel skin to support the Mortal Kombat X competitive program. And tune in to the ESL Mortal Kombat X Pro League presented by Xbox. Hello once again everyone and welcome back to the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox where we're about to see La versus Razor Perfect Legend. I can't wait to I mean, see how this, this goes. This is it. We are nearing the end of our bracket. We are starting to see who's going to be on top, who's going to be on the bottom side of the bracket. And right now Winner's Final is really looking to be an incredible match. Pig I think has a really, really good shot of beating Sonic Fox. Well, I assume it will be Kenshi Katana. Yes. But, I mean, we could see him go in black. He obviously still has that character in his pocket. He might go Pyromancer. I'm not sure. He has options, but I feel if Pig is able to take out Sonic Fox, he has a very good chance of winning. If Sonic Fox takes it in Winner's Finals, it's not looking good for everyone else. Well, the problem you'll have in Winner's Finals, if uh, Sonic Fox makes it through the Grand Finals through Winners, is obviously whoever has to win after that, has got to beat him in two sets. Yeah. Which, so if no one can beat him in one, how is two going to be manageable, you know? That's correct. Well, right now, it's not about that. It's not about these two gentlemen right here. And of course, it's about Razor. Thank you so much. If you want to go ahead and check out our raffle, you can win not only a custom Predator-style Xbox One, but as well as a Razor Aatrox, and of course, the Razor Kraken, as well as T-shirts and combat packs and other cool goodies. Go ahead and go to esl.gg forward slash raffle to check it out. 
Now, Lar versus Perfect Legend. You were absolutely correct, you and your brother. Lar is the Dark Horse. And here. Brian. That was we we agreed to that together. Brian? No no. You and you and you and your brother. I will not steal his props. He has earned those props. However, if Lar goes out now, then obviously it's for nothing. So if Lar manages to uh, to progress in the bracket, defeating none other than Razor Perfect Legend, yes. he will then have to fight Rio for that spot in Losers Finals. What a joyous prize. Oh, you've won? Here's Rio. Crazy, man. It was like, it was like I said with Brian before. I mean, we've reached a point. I mean, this is one of those tournaments that it's not like you win a match somewhere and go, oh, it's fine. I can oh, breathe yeah, for Oh, yeah, I got a break. No. Like, your next opponent's going to be another killer. That, that's it's what actually it... could be even someone tougher as well. So Top 16, man. Like, everyone here earned their place. No one is here through luck. No one is here through gimmicks. They have earned their spot in Top 16. Oh, man. And of course, I mean, Lar earned it through the regional finals as well as the Pro League. I mean, he was the midseason showdown. He's been very consistent, like you said. Kind of not so much unknown, but for us over here, he hasn't been the most showered player as far as watching him play. So we're going into the set now. They've done their checks. They're good to go. First, it will go to Razor Perfect Legend. And again, we much like we see before, just both players really slowing down the pace this yep. time. Just really just taking their time and realizing what each other's going to do. And I like Lars' approach here. He's not overcommitting, and he knows that he has normals that outrage Kung Lao, so he can definitely just kind of be patient, but sitting in block pressure right now, that flip kick got baited out by the teleport. Oh, good block on the double overhead. Oh, doesn't quite catch the jump in. Oh, could have punished that. Unfortunately, he didn't get it. See Kung Lao advancing himself forward with that forward too. Really good stuff to stay safe in that. Oh, that's a 4-4. You can't actually go in between there. I'm not sure if Lars willing to use the meter at this much of a life deficit. I would... No. Wow. Of course, he, I mean, Lara has access to the back one, the forward two, like really Rain. great normals with great range. Perfect Legend is doing a really good job of just shutting him down right now and not letting him get these things started. And he's staying right in his face, which is exactly what he wants to do. Ball being hat. Pressure. Oh, me, oh. flip kicks it up and no there's a combo reverse. Afterwards. Drops a combo and another, another one. one. This is not the time to be dropping your combos. Not when there is this much cash on the line in just a few short sets. It's the back four after doing I love the patience. From Perfect Legend, but Lars showing a little too much respect right now. Hey, Blowing meter Kong where Lao. he can't afford to. This is just not That's Lars' game be, right yeah. now. Swift game wow. one, Perfect Legend. Wow. Lars has one hell of an adjustment to make. That was quite possibly one of the most <laughs> one of the most dominant games we've seen all all day. No, undeniably. I mean, Lars just couldn't get anything going, and the few times he did manage to get a combo when he dropped it. But yeah. again, twice. Like, I cannot possibly stress enough how important it is to not drop your combos because you lose the restart, the damage, the setup, everything. Well, not that, but the most devastating thing is when you when you get to the point where had you landed that combo, you'd have won and you lost because of it. It's not it's the way you want to lose. No. It's not the way you want to go out. Oh, there we go. The ding dong. We have burned 27%. Next up. Good block. Good block. And a pun punish immediately from Perfect Legend, getting himself out of the corner, but an armored flip kick. Again. And once again, Lar dropping the combo in Perfect Legend using the meter again, but look at the meter that Perfect Legend has over Lar. Gets it, meter's conversion. Not only that, but Perfect Legend has hit every single straight combo, and here we go again. Once again, get, even gets the tight yep. there. Perfect Legend execution speaking for itself right now. And he's trying to bait out the flip kick, and there it is. Wow, match point Perfect Legend. Lar just like that, baited the flip kick. He has, once again, a mountain to climb. Yeah. Right. We've seen him make adjustments before, though. It is not impossible for Lars. Oh my what goodness! Was that? that was incredible. Full conversion. Finally, gets him to the back one into the combo. Yeah, Breaks Nutcracker much. again. Goes overhead this time and just goes for the string by itself. 18% damage. That's not bad. Added to any restand. And as much as I don't like him showing respect there on Wake Up, PL had three bars and he uses one of them right now to get this combo in the corner and a restand. Will we burn for the advantage? Uses so many bars. This is chip damage territory. Oh, and that will be the game. Wow. Be him. That wow. Was, that was quick. Lara is eliminated. Massive congratulations to getting this far, being the uh, most dominant CIS player in the region. But uh -huh. this now marks the end of CIS Russia's road in this top 16. In fact, looking at the bracket, it's almost looking very NA ish. No, I mean, obviously, we've got winners finals, Pick of the Hut, and uh, Sonic Fox, and the two players left and losers, we've got Rio and Perfect Legend. So it is the top four now will be all uh, North American. That is correct. I, to be completely honest, I don't think that is to say that 
NA is like the most dominant region. I just feel like today we played very well. They were good sets. They were good sets. They were very good sets. Nothing was really a blow up. I mean, that set wasn't a blow up, but PL was just able to really do what he wanted to do. That that was just PL just out playing yeah. through and through. That was baiting, punishing, execution, anti airs, footsies, all, all the yeah. normal stuff you see. PL was doing it to a T, and Lau unfortunately was you know, missing a lot of his combos. Execution wasn't quite there. And um, we saw a lot of punishable attacks as well. I mean, sometimes yeah. it just happens. And we saw Lar do all the same things that PL was doing to him in his previous matches. It's just he wasn't able to execute in that one, and unfortunately he is going home now. But congratulations to him. He did very well. He, as you said, was the highest ranking in this tournament as far as his region. So congratulations to him. PL is going to move on. I believe we're in a position that we are. Have we got our top four decided now? I believe we have our top four decided. They have money. They've all made the money today. So huge congratulations to them. But only one of them can take away the chunk of sixty thousand. Thousand dollars. You just had to say it. It was like I had to think this is, about this it. This is reality. This is reality. This is reality. Sixty thousand dollars for playing Mortal Kombat. I had to That's think about doing. how much money that was for a second. A lot. It's a lot of money. Oh, that's a, that's that, a that's down a, that's payment a on cars. a house. That's a, a new car. It's a lot of money. Just a lot of money. <laughs> there we go. We've got Bread, Rio, La, Perfect Legend. No. No, yeah, Rio. We've got Rio and Perfect Legend. So yep. I was reading the brackets incorrectly. And then, of course, waiting in the winner's bracket. Pick of the Hut. Sonic Fox. CR, Sonic Fox, Yomi, Pick of the Hut. Yomi, Rio, Razor, Perfect Legend. So four sponsored players. Not bad at all, obviously, no. showing that these guys have earned that through and through. They deserve to represent these brands. They've done very well for themselves today, but... So this is a match that I think you are also very excited for because there was always the age-old question back in MK9. Who was the quote-unquote champion of MK9? Because we had, on one side of the coin, Perfect Legend winning two back-to-back -back Evos. However, as far as tournament success overall, we had Rio winning pretty much everything else. At the time. At the time. So. Now they finally get to kind of decide. I mean, it's a new game, obviously, different. You know what I like about story. this? We're bringing up a rivalry from 2012. Yeah. Three years on, and these guys are Technically playing Technically, 2011, again. Evo 2011. True. No, Grand it, Finals it was these two. Yeah. 2012 was obviously where Rio con uh, continued his dominance. I mm -hmm. again, managed to win the World Championship that year. So this is this is an old rivalry between these two. Obviously, you know, I, I know there's no real beef between the guys. Obviously, that's not no uh, normally the way. We, I mean, we can pretend there's beef between these guys. We could. We could do that. But I, I feel like we should do that. I think I will not, and I'll let you do that. Then See, that's not fun for want. me, though. Well, then, your fun is not my concern. Watching <laughs> these guys win loads of money is... Okay. I see you. I feel bad now. Yeah, you should. No, you really should. So it looks like Tempest, Lao, Kobe, Jutsu, Tanya. I don't think this really surprised anybody. Didn't surprise me. I mean, Ryo has other characters in his arsenal. He has Quan Chi. He played Aaron Black, Cassie like it says on his really, <laughs> card. Yeah. He played Cassie really early on, as well as Aaron Black. But he's been sticking with Tanya pretty much since she's been launched. So sticking with her through the nerf, yeah. you know, obviously making the most of this character. She's, still, she's still viable. Let's be honest, she's still a very good character. Absolutely. Well, obviously, she's that that is being proven here today. All right. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look take at that, that money. Take that graphic down. I can't look at that. Sixty thousand dollars for first place, twenty-five for second, ten for third, and five for fourth place. So at least these and guys I'm, are all working with at and least five thousand. I'm sitting over here getting paid in cheeseburgers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Well, it's not ideal. But, but there okay. we go. I mean, that that's, like, like I've said before, and I will say this until the very end, $60,000, 100 total thousand dollars, again, all through the Blue Steel Sub-Zero skin. So again, I would like to yes. personally yes, extend yes, a yes, huge yes. thank you on behalf of every all the players, everyone involved with this Pro League. Thank you for picking that up, guys. It's been fantastic. And what a way to support the Pro Circuit, to give these it players really, tremendous amounts of money. really worked. So, that being said, Listen to the button check. Again, Let's NRS button check. Oh no, we're going See, into I it. can't tell sometimes with these two. Or with anyone in this game. And see, this is it. Did you see that walk up to Tanya on her wake up? I did. Incredible respect shown for both players. The grab. And a nice conversion in the corner. Oh, a throw break. Good stuff. I mean, again, there's no reason to not be taking one direction. Yeah. Either direction of a throw. And Perfect Legend Because, yeah, when you're being one. juggled, I mean... You're not going to accidentally break. Yeah, exactly. Spin footsies. Here we go. Oh, Tempest Kung Lao. You confuse me sometimes. Oh, oh and wow. a raw spin. My Mortal goodness. Mortal Kombat 9 says hello. 
Carl is getting the better of all these exchanges right now in the neutral game. Rio's got to make something happen. Oh, he tried to bait something out again. Wow, that's the uh, advantage. Really good stuff. 23% into advantage situation. So here's something I've really, really noticed this entire tournament. Everyone is respecting everyone's wake up. Absolutely. Well, that's it. Like, in, in Mortal Kombat X, you only, you only really get good wake ups if you use meters. So if someone's got a bar, you know it's likely, you know, that is a possibility. But it's more so, I think, this tournament than any other tournament. And that's because of how much is on the line. Exactly. You know that, like, sometimes the last thing you expect is an unsafe wake up. Yeah. Especially in this sort of situation. Which is so you why can use that smart thing. Yeah. Exactly. There's the first oh, Purple Legend. Well, game yeah. one. Learn from this. How many times have you seen that brutality? Uh, I have legit lost count. It no longer entertains me. However, I respect it. <laughs> okay, I respect that. It's perfect legend. Again, you know, this is what we saw with Foxy versus Rio. Swift game one, but then Rio managed to make a clutch comeback in game two, and then he took game three. Are we going to keep seeing this happen? Until now, I but... don't know. It's very possible. Another good start for Perfect Legend, though. Obviously, winner moves on to losers' finals, where they'll be playing either Sonic Fox or Pick of the Hut, so giving themselves a minimum of ten thousand dollars. Not a bad chunk of change. Not at all. He didn't have the advantage. I think he predicted that Rio was going to do a armor to interrupt, so he jumped over and yep. cross up, but Rio didn't bite. Good patience. And he just blocked, but now he just got pushed through the corner all by back. Two, three, two, one, and now the grab. My goodness. It's a down one hit advantage. Goes in for the back two on it. Again, tremendous defense and patience shown by Rio right now. Looking for that opportunity as a counter poke. There we go. Getting the hit. This could be what he needs. Ooh, oh, good block. Nice block. And again, nice block. Low than overhead. Wow, Blue Legend is looking so good right now. That's a teleport. I mean, teleport practically safe if used with the orbit. Yes. yes, some things can punish it in certain ways, but it's a lot more difficult to take uh, to take care of. Perfect Legend looking to take match point. If he can get this chip coming down, that will oh. be it. As soon as that wow. orbit was out. As the soon as that orbit was out. And he burned meter on it too, just to make sure. Fight. Match point, Perfect Legend will send Yomi's Rio home. Get a spot and lose his final, securing himself $10,000. Here we go with the cancels now. Good Real with his low. chance to get his offense going, but he just jumps and gets caught. Trip guard, wonderful stuff. Perfect Legend just showing why he is a world class Mortal Kombat X player right now. Ooh, oh, wow. Unfortunately, he holds the spin, but still goes unpunished. He went back a little bit, which was a good decision, but now he's caught in the corner. Real has to make this count. Rio needs to bring back exactly what he needs. Oh, instead he just jumps in the corner and blocks. It's come loud. That's not where we want to be. No. He's got the meter. He's got two bars. He has two bars. This could be big. I'm just not to spend it. Keeping the breaker. Again, he's trying. I think he's respecting that meter way too much from Carl. Here's the counter poke. Oh, counter poke. And he up. Crazy stuff. Wow, there you go. Rio. See, he needs to just put that pressure on. If he's going to wake up, he's going to wake up. But you have to show him that you're not afraid of that because Perfect Legend is taking advantage of all of that. What a throw to Good Rio. Tech. Paying attention. He just goes for another one. It's the mind game. Throw attack. Last thing expected to dash into another one. Catch it. Have a to jump back, respecting the options. Yeah, Rio building so many meters right now. PL is playing very slippery right now. It's very hard for Rio to get any offense on him. Who gets the down one? I just at least get a bit of advantage. Again, nice cancels going into more pressure, using the meter to make it safe and plus. But he's getting a grab and a nice tech. Have a leg. Tremendous, tremendous patience. Oh, that was super tricky. Forced to break his Rio. Hit himself with damage. Fortunate for Rio, he got that hat off of block. Now he's still stuck in pressure, throwing his own pressure in there, and here we go. We stand. Let's go to the cancel. And there oh, it is. Wow. Finally baits it out. He's got the bar. If Yumi doesn't drop this, he's going to be in such a good situation. Rio, chip damage away. And wow. there it is. Wow. You know what I said about the repeating set of him versus Foxy Grandpa? Yeah. What's happening right now, Dustin? Um, he walked through. So, he so walked look, through. That was a really Same thing. That's Kung Lao's heart. He's like, give it back. He's like, nah, nah, mate. Nah, you've been it's going to the third game. One game away from third place. Ten. There is five. This is a five thousand dollar money match. Yeah, this that's is a five thousand dollar money match right now. Five grand will separate the loser and the winner of this game. Obviously, you know, no shame in coming fourth in this tournament, but these guys are close. They can taste we losers. Should, we should also bet on this. I bet you a, a pack of juicy fruit that Rio's gonna take this. I will not. I will watch the game. Okay. <laughs> and we will be all right. You just don't want to give him a juicy food. Uh, I respect you. Oh, nice bait. Again, that's what happened against Foxy Grandpa. This yep. is same stage. Same stage as this well. This is ridiculous. This is almost an exact mirror. Wow, match point, Rio. Bringing it back as far as it comes. If you've noticed as well, Rio doesn't really start getting dangerous until he's really down. 
it's like you power him up. The more uh -huh. rounds you take off him, you power up. Which really sucks because then you can't beat him because you, you get close to beating him and then he just gets better. He's just like that final boss that never stops getting better until you think, okay, is he actually gone now? And then he gets back up and goes. Yell though, burn two bars. He's gonna get 40% off of this, but he needs to make something happen. He's burning. There's that armor. Good block from the legend. Not crumbling. This could be it. Oh my goodness. Is Rio gonna wow. do it? And he is! Rio manages to take himself at least third place. Perfect Legend is eliminated. Your fourth place of the day. Huge congratulations. Bagging himself $5,000 in fourth place at the top 16. But Rio, losers finals. This guy is here to exact play. Exact same thing that happened with Foxy. My goodness. I, I said, I hope it doesn't happen again. It did. Well, it did happen again. But and tremendous play. Tremendous play from both players. Obviously, the next set we'll be seeing will be the winners finals. However, that is it for losers for now. Yes. I mean, obviously, you know, Winners finals, these guys still have the safety net of losers bracket. However, if you get to grand finals through losers, you have double the work, double the work to make. Yeah, I mean, this could realistically go one of two ways. We can either have, like we said, Pig beat Sonic, and then it, it's going to be much more interesting grand finals, or Sonic's going to win, and it's going to be very difficult because, like you said, once again, no one has been able to beat Sonic at, at, at least one set. Then you got to do two in the mix, and it gets a lot more difficult. Yeah. So, that being said, of course, I believe we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Rio, who was just able to take something, and he's going to be with Josh in just a moment. Overall, I want to know, what's your opinion on this tournament? Just complete synopsis. I couldn't be happier, really. I mean, I, I truly feel we got 16 players that really deserve their spot here today. Obviously, no. It was never a one-week qualifier. Even the mid-season showdown, you couldn't have been in that tournament unless you qualified to be here in the first place. So everyone here, they earned their spot. They had success over numerous weeks. They really brought it today. Obviously, you know, I, I feel bad for the players that had to go two and out. I mean, you know, shout out to them for doing so yeah. well here today. However, you know, it's just, it's something that has to happen. Even in top 16, where you've got 16 of the best players all across the world, it's just something that has to happen. And then you've got players like, Sonic Fox, Rio, Pick of the Hut, that bring it all this way. Again, I, I'm really proud of Pick. Out of all the players in this yes, tournament, I've I been agree. impressed the most by Pick of the Hut, by Yomi Pick of the Hut. Because this guy, you know, he hasn't been bad in MKX by any definition, no. but he has not had the success that he did have in MK9 and in Justice. However, this Evo season, and this is normally where we see Pig really turn it on, switch on, and bring his best game. And again, today might be the start of something special for this guy. It's true. Again, Pig is gonna need to take this in winners, though. He's gotta put, he's gotta put Fox in losers if he wants a real clear shot at winning this. And he can win this. Pig has been playing absolutely amazing. Like he said, traveling to Yomi and practicing with all of those guys has been immensely beneficial for him. So it's just having that practice, really. Just yeah. having those players available that play world class uh, play at world class characters. Just having that option available to. Just get that practice in whenever you uh -huh. want. That matchup knowledge, just crazy stuff. But no, it, it's it's showing. Obviously, Yomi are doing their thing all across America right now. It's no surprise that we've got two members of Yomi left in the top three of this tournament. I don't really think that's a surprise to anyone. Yeah, it definitely isn't. Now, let's go ahead and get your brother's opinion as well as Josh's on these final three here at the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals. Take it away. Thanks, gentlemen. We wanted to take a little break there after that series. And what an incredible series, too. At the very beginning, Perfect Legend was hyper-aggressive. Seemed he was dictating that entire match. But the patience between both the players and then the reads afterwards with Rio's Tanya was pretty phenomenal. It certainly was. I mean, there's no doubt about it. In the first game, uh, Perfect Legend really kind of destroyed Rio in the sense that he just got in and forced what Tempest does best, which is land the down four, run in there, apply all of your pressure, the crazy meter build, the chip damage, uh, and that was pretty much curtains in the first game. I think what really turned it around was uh, Rio slowed it down and just simply just uh, denied PL that kind of advancement. Uh, you saw the real momentum change. It went from uh, Rio getting dismantled to him then dismantling PL. It literally was complete opposite end of the spectrum. Um, I think both of the characters do a really good job of just rushing down uh, and relentless pressure. And I think it really was just a matter of um, switching it. So that Rio really just realized, if I'm going to win this set, I need to Tempest allow him with Tanya. And that type of read and flexibility is so key that, that separates the pros from the amateurs of how to adapt to your opponent. And we saw some adaption coming from Perfect Legend throughout the series today. But that type of adaption from Rio is a little bit concerned at first going, 
Rio, what's going on, man? I mean, PL seems super, super in your face with this, but very well done by Rio. Very patient play, and now he's going to move on into the loser bracket finals. So he's still on the fight. When we come back, it's going to be the winner bracket finals, a best of five with Pig of the Hut versus Sonic Fox. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. For some, it is difficult to rise, to stand above the rest, to conquer as a true warrior. But not for those who share the bloodlines of champions. Ready? As always. What's your update from Colonel Flagg? He said, why are you bothering me? And I said, because my ex-wife is a pain in it. Prisoner transfer will be here in 20. Oh, now she trusts me to babysit. Well, if they don't kill us, my mother will.
Hello everybody and welcome back. You're watching the ESL Mortal Kombat X Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. We have winners finals coming up, so it's going to be Yomi's Pick of the Hut versus CR Sonic Fox. I don't exactly want to say this is a surprise ton of events, because obviously you know, these guys are both world-class MK players right now. However, this is the best we've ever seen Pig play in this game, by far. I think I think there is a, there is no doubt about it that the, uh, the top four that we have is a well and truly deserving top four. They've earned their spot in the top 16 to be here, and they've further earned that spot in top four today. Absolutely well deserved. Well, I think you know, we've had some incredible sets, especially leading up to the end of this tournament, where we've had so many tournament sets that are last round, last games. Some people turn it around, uh, make incredible comebacks. Rio's comebacks, like, need I remind you guys at home, I mean, this guy was down match point so many times in multiple different sets. Same thing with Perfect Legend as well against Madsen, and they've managed to pull it back, and here they are again fighting each other. I mean, going into this match now, these guys have played each other uh, in multiple NetherRealm games in multiple very important sets. Uh, you know, obviously, Pig of the Hut versus Sonic Fox. Grand Finals of EVO for Injustice. The World Championship Finals Grand Finals set. And that was, you know, not before, uh, well, almost this exact same situation where when Pig of the Hut and Sonic Fox fought at EVO for Injustice, uh, it was winners' finals went to Pig, but then the Grand Finals went to Sonic Fox. I'd like to extend a huge thank you once again to Razer for sponsoring the MKX Pro League. You guys at home can stand a chance to win a Razer Atrox arcade stick for Xbox One and Razer Kraken headsets through our raffle today at esl.gg forward slash MKX raffle and our predi uh, prediction point system, which is something we obviously do every week. So make sure you guys are still doing that. We have three tournament sets left today, so your predictions will count now more than ever if you want to stand a chance to win some of that cool stuff. Absolutely. I mean, uh, as you guys have obviously made aware, it's North America is all that remains. Uh, and it is really kind of like, uh, I suppose, the players that people expected. You know, if, if North America was going to place highly in the tournament, uh, it would be fair to assume that it would be these guys that are left. Well, Sonic Fox, obviously number one seed from North America, winning mid-season showdown. Second place in that tournament was Pick of the Hut, managed to get his way here through points alone. We have Perfect Legend World Championship for Mortal Kombat 9, and as well, winning in two weeks the ESL Pro Season and Rio through just consistency, consistency, consistency. And I think Pig of the Heart was obviously off to a great start in this tournament where he took out uh, Foxy Grandpa and Lara you know, as well. They're a so we're going into this. This will be a three out of five set, ladies and gentlemen. This is winner's way. finals. Winner will go through that, the grand finals, securing themselves a minimum of $25,000. Here we go. Let's get this on the go. Three out of five, ladies and gentlemen. This is not two out of three anymore. Sonic Fox going with Katana, Royal Storm. We've seen him play all day, just really just doing a fantastic job with her. Now, we like to talk about uh, getting the first hit. Denying the first hit of Kenshi is massive. I mean, you don't want to give him the chance to do a reversal. You don't want to give him the chance to do any, any kind of thing that can shut down your offense. But speaking of that, Sonic Fox getting a really nice conversion. Having Pig in the corner, not giving him the space to run away. A full explanation of whiff. To do. Uh, the whiff. Tally Flurry, just to get that full combo. Crazy stuff, 35%. Oh, wow, there's that bar. Goes down for Pick of the Hut, Sonic Fox, life lead, meter advantage, mid-screen, all that space to work with. Here comes the splat. That's a really nice setup that uh, Sonic Fox likes to go for. He gets the hard knockdown of the overhead and then goes for some kind of faint setup uh, from the air attack. This will be the round, absolutely. Sonic Ooh. Fox using as many specials as possible to build as much meter as he can. So close to an X-ray right now. I mean, I wonder how long Sonic Fox has actually been playing Katana, because he must have put some work into this character like long before these fights. Not long, as far as I'm aware, and that's pretty crazy when you think about it. It's upsetting and impressive at the same time. <laughs> Course. Here we go. Hat with the, the corner. Almost two bars stuck right now. Is there a breaker? There we go. Meter burn. Can I poke? Sonic Fox not quite there with it. It's kind of interesting how uh, Fox opts to kind of um, back up on that situation. Or gives uh, Opt to break and save the bar. Tasty meter damage. 31%. Pick of the height. Just building as much bar as possible. Catches the low once again. There's the full screen presence as where he needs. Oh, just building the bar. Look at his meter just go up and up. But that's the thing about Pig of the Hut, he will always have a bar available because he just does his meter management so well with his character. It's what really separates the top Kenchis from the competent Kenchis, I suppose. Oh, what he the goes block? for the that risky stuff. Meter overhead. That, wow, the block. That was a phenomenal block. And he's going to spend the bar just to get the extra damage. Chip territory, chip territory. Wow, and he runs straight into the telekinesis. That How is that. That's the PND prophecy. If you use your X ray and it doesn't win you the match and you waste it, you will lose the match regardless of your life deficit. We see it time and time again. I mean, like right there where all gets, the, all gets the punish as well. I mean, Please that's punish. one of the risks. Counter poking is, uh, is good in a sense, but if it's unsafe, it's always going to be a risk. Here comes some really tasty damage. Needs a player Fox. like Sonic Fox who's ready to punish you all the time. Catches the low, no fussy guy for pick a hut. This is going to be horrendous damage. Here we go. Oh no, this could be big damage. It's still going, it's not finished. 50%. 50%. Wow. That's disgusting. Chip damage territory. Sonic Fox 
And it's just over. He's just gonna this. do it again. So that's gonna be one game. Sonic Fox, he's gonna have to win two more. I think that has to win three more games. Uh, this, just to remind you guys, this is winner's bracket. Whoever loses this match has the safety net of loser's bracket um, immediately afterwards where they're going to face off against Rio. But I think it's quite funny how we, we find ourselves uh, CR versus Yomi once again. <laughs> you know, we see this time and time again in American tournaments where it's Yomi and Sonic Fox remain. Uh, and then Sonic Fox just has to kind of oh, run the gauntlet. slightly late with the anti cross up. Sonic Fox manages to recover in time and blocks it, but no punish, so pick a save from that. Manager back himself the first hit though. Oh, nice there we go. Poke. I mean, the important thing about counter poking, as you see the damage, but we've said this like uh, constantly, is the fact that you send the opponent full screen. If you're a keep away counter like balance, that is exactly what you want to do. And another combo from Sonic Fox. I mean, Katana, one of those characters that you know you've lost the game 10 seconds before you've lost it, thanks to the long combos, but big damage. Sonic Fox, tremendous execution. Wake up, nice wake up grab, knowing that Sonic Fox is waiting for the reversal, and a wake up grab of his own. <laughs> is he going to do it again? No, he's going to go for the reversal. That's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah, but an armor and wake up. Patch the environment interaction that's now gone out of the match. See, one thing we would normally see Pig do is uh, constantly use the reflect. Uh, it's just currently he's throwing fans too close. Lovely anti air. Ops the break, saving the round. Thinks he can take the round. Oh, that could be an anti air for Sonic Fox. Not quite there. That's a low. Pig the takes another round. Crowd Sonic behind Pig of the Hutts right now. Sonic Fox not going for the anti air and uh, just getting a full jump into his trouble. Oh, wow. Wonderful stuff for Pig of the Hutt. If Pig of the Hutt can defeat Sonic Fox now, he has done a massively good chance of winning this tournament. Oh, wow. oh, the feint! And it recovers so quickly. Big damage, sending the opponent full screen. 31% needless. Oh, running grab. That's the token Kenji running grab because you're expecting some kind of Oh my away. god, Pig of the Hut bringing this one back. Sonic Fox, full bar of X ray, but Pig of the Hut just so much life right now. There's the meter burn. Save with the down four. Almost catches it. Oh, Pig of the Hut is playing out of his mind right now. This is Pig's game. I this have is never Pig's seen game. Pig. Oh, oh, he goes with the X ray! The X -ray. That was a dominant second game. I have never seen Pig play this well in All Comma X so far, and I've seen some insane tournaments for him. Pig wow. without making Sonic Fox wait. Wow. I mean, this this is this is the way I wanted this set to go. Both players one match up on each other right now. This well, is it, a repeat of Evo for Injustice. It's never hype when someone gets dominated, but that was really never going to happen. Like, Pig is too solid with his main. Crowd is 100% behind Pig of the Hut right now. I mean, these guys want him to win. They want him to play so well. Obviously, this guy's here. He's here for his wife. He's here for his kids. He has put so much time into this game. He's looking to make so many people proud right now. And uh, Sonic Fox going for Outlaw Aaron Black, realizing, you know what? I'm not going to do Katana. I wow. have two games to win. I want that 60,000. He's going to go with his main. Obviously, uh, he's playing Katana, but Aaron Black, really how he established his reputation with the game in the first place, winning uh, Fatal 8 with Aaron Black, multiple tournaments, the Commonwealth as well. Um, really great stuff from him, and no doubt he's made the change. Really just rushed Kenji down. Again, first hit goes to Pick of the Hut. Ooh, I've I never have. seen that before. Genuinely surprised it went over the, uh, well, not even over, through the sample, but Pick of the Hut managed to send him full screen once again. Took the bar. Oh, wow, and that's oh, a jump, jump too, because no doubt you're always expecting to jump in one. Oh, and he gets a clean punish. That's the risk. I mean, like, the range on that. Uh, that was expensive bet for Pick of the Hut. Custom all three of his bars of meter. And he gets the capitalization. Nice. That's one thing Pick of the Hut will always do. Not Pick of the Hut. Sonic Fox will always look for that low sand. He hit will come off everything. It. Sonic Fox touches you with this character. You are taking damage. But a lot more damage than you bargained for. There's the Antia into Caltrops, into death. Even if he blocks that, he was dead. It's the Caltrops. Limp on back to Earth, bro. And this is, this is Sonic Fox. Um, this is his main guy. You know, this is his main character. Uh, it's it's the character he really has obtained most of his success with. As the sand plus frames goes to the down four, catches the pressure buttons as a tick throw, pick the hut four blocking. Oh, there we go, catches him. Nice. Uh, he has to break that. Oh, there's the a punish. punish. But no sound, I can't confirm. Catches the charge, full screen, pick the hut needs to build as much bar as possible. That's a bad trade for him. Ooh, tries oh, tries to wow. the wake up. He tries to the wake up charge, but I mean, by the time the attack came out, he's already right in there. Sorry, drops an jump punch. Oh, there's the advantage. Pick the hut caught trying to jump out, possibly predicting a. Uh, <laughs> Some disrespect from Sonic Fox into Vitality. Of I don't course. think Sonic Fox is happy that someone's taking a game off him. There we go, bam. I mean, like, the question is, uh, Pig Hut plays multiple variations. So, now it's 2-1 in Sonic Fox's favor. Is Pig Hut going to go for a different variation? Well, I, rem I remember seeing on Pig of Hut's Twitter, um, after he lost very early in the league to Sonic Fox in Grand Finals, he said on his Twitter, I wasn't ready for Aaron Black, I'm going to learn this matchup. Now is the time to show whether he's managed to do that or not, because it has been a significant amount of time. Obviously, he's with the Yomi guys. Rio plays a phenomenal outlaw air on black. So I hope he's had access to the right caliber air on black that he needs to be able to defend against Sonic Box. Well, I guess uh, I, I know I know uh, a general amount about Kenchi, but not enough to really sort of make any kind of uh, 
claim about what Pigathite's going to do. Because uh, Possessed actually has made the change to a different variation. I think Possessed lets him be slightly more agile. That's one of the things oh, that comes out. Oh, Pigathite not guard in that string properly. Just the reversal. Here we go. Beautiful stuff from Pig. That full screen presence, 18% damage. Catches the low. Play Wake Up doesn't quite catch it. Oh, nice. Good teleport. And I like that shimmy just to make himself uh, reposition. Good to go. Trying to build bar as well. Pigathite just realizing how important it is to have meter. Jump. Oh, gets the double low. That is safe on block. Nice block. And he gets tagged by the double low. Very unfortunate for Pig. This will not take the round, but the next up will do it. But Tony Fox in match point. Too little, too late. Oh, nice. He spends his bar. I mean, like, it's risky going for it, but he thinks he can take the round. Oh, goes in today. Wake up, catches it. I've not even seen that string before. <laughs> oh, no, and cross up. Oh, Tony Fox catches him. Match point. Tony Fox, he's one round away from going into grand finals. As soon as he sees that that one was blocked, that was it. That was chip territory. Right, Fox one round away from screwing himself. Ten, nice twenty-five thousand dollars. Very nice read for uh, Pig, but this round is a big sum of money for Sonic Fox, especially for a seventeen-year-old. There's that good shoulder. Send the full screen again. Sonic Fox. I'm not sure if he's trying to faint out going for that gunshot. Good block, good block, for Pig. Goes the shoulder. Here we go. I mean, Wonderful that's one stuff. thing. Aaron Black has not got an amazing anti-air game, so I mean, those teleports. Are good. <gasps> Easy. What a horrendous whip. That's not a good situation. Pig of the hut. Oh my days. Sonic Fox with the full four corner conversion into the Caltrop. Wow, me about to get out of there. Ping Pop, masterful use of his beater right now. There's the teleport once again. Good blocks from, Pig, uh, from uh, Sonic Fox, but... Oh, he confirms to jump the sword. Out. This next setup could very well put Sonic Fox into grand finals. Oh, I'm gonna wake up. Really good stuff from Pig the Hut. Still in this, still fighting. Watch out for the slide, Pig. Watch out for the slide. Gets the overhead. Good block from Sonic Fox. And he oh, gets the yes. slide. Sonic Fox is going to move it to Grand Finals for ESL Walkman X Season 1 Finals. How about that? I mean, that is insane. He's Making made a change from Kitana. So for the first time in the tournament, he did go from Kitana. He said he was going to be playing all day, but it did work out for him, obviously taking that set 3-1. Good stuff from Pick of the Hut. Tremendous gameplay shown, but he now has to fight Yomi's Rio. He has to fight his teammate. I also, I also wonder about uh, whether it's sunk in just yet. The Sonic Fox has won at least $25,000. I mean, he looks happy over there. He's happy to go. But I mean, the reality is he has earned his place in Grand Finals, securing him at least $25,000. If he wins this tournament, 60000 I think it's probably sunk in, but he's likely trying not to think about it. Because there is still a $35,000 difference in 60000 and the second place. I mean, it's. Uh, I was checking in my head that I did the maths correctly there. You kind of you respect Pig's attempt to change to possessed. Um, if you change to possessed, obviously, like you're giving yourself a little bit more uh, more mobility. That's a tongue twister. More mobility uh, from the possessed teleport, and also Aaron Black not really having uh, an amazing anti-air game compared to certain other characters. Um, so we saw there Pig getting away with a lot of teleports, especially right at the end. We went for the meter burn one for the armor just to try and uh, get that breathing space. Um, it was just unfortunate that. Sonic Fox is through and through a rushdown player. He's going to get in, force the mix-ups, be a huge headache for you, and before you even know it, you've lost. Um, he did the very exact same thing with Aaron Black, changed Aaron Black to get that uh, really on deck. And although Pig of the Hut's change helped him more than balanced, um, it just wasn't enough to close out the set. It goes to show a lot, really, about the composure level of a player when they can use a character all day, obviously Katana through and through from start to finish. But then, as soon as he makes the change to Aaron Black, which is obviously his main that we've seen him use countless times up until this point, he is immediately just as comfortable as he was before, doing these crazy hit confirms, ready for everything, punishing on point. I mean, just being able to swap from one character to another just like that and enforce just some of the best gameplay we've seen of these characters really uh, needs to be respected. Absolutely. Um, before we go into this next match, which is also no, no doubt going to be a fantastic match, we have an interview with uh, Josh and Sonic Fox lined up for you guys. Thank you, Ketchup and Mustard. Sonic Fox, you are guaranteed $25,000. Congratulations <sighs> on making so it much. to the grand finals. How do you feel? Uh. It's not over yet, so I can't get too excited. I'm going for the 60K, but I'm coming. I'm All right. Coming. He's on his way, and he's waiting for the winner of the loser bracket finals. Now, we saw a character switch there. What was it about Balance Kenshi from Pig of the Hut that caused you to switch from Katana to Outlaw Aaron Black? I'm, I pretty much presumed it was like a really bad matchup to begin with, so I was surprised I even got the first game. Um, but when I, um, after he beat me back um, with... Uh, Katana, I'm like, well, great, now it's might as well be a two out of three set. And I went straight to Aaron Black and it was kind of a mop, but that was it. <laughs> All right, Dominic, we're gonna let you rest up before the finals. Congratulations All right, thank once you again. Thank you so much. Now it's time for the loser bracket finals. Back to the commentators. <laughs> thank you.
All right, guys, we are two sets away from being finished here. Obviously, we have the Predator Challenge as well, but I'm talking about just pure tournament sets. We have Losers Finals and Grand Finals left, and that's it. It's been a long road. I mean, it's not just the night, but it's been three months of constant online tournaments, only these free to enter weekly tournaments where we had 16 people left. It is down to three more people. So we have Yomi Pig in the Hut, Yomi Rio, two teammates that have played for years and years, not just in Mortal Kombat X and Injustice, and also in Mortal Kombat 9, uh, where these guys, all a lot of them really established their reputation uh, from online and offline. Three guys are left. This is going to be the losers' finals match. So Big Thought has lost his safety net. You know he's no longer in the winners' bracket. He's in the losers' bracket. As is Rio. Whoever loses this match goes home. Whoever wins will move into the grand finals on the winners' side. Loser side, not winner side. <laughs> but then you have the difficulty of having to take out Sonic Fox in two sets as well. Obviously going from loser, uh, from winners' finals. Um, it's going to be best of seven grand finals, but these guys, best Another of three, wants the best of five even. Three yeah, five. We will get losers these words right I will get there in the end. Losers, losers, losers finals, guys. Finals. <laughs> Two sets to go. There is this. The Sonic Fox is waiting for them in the grand finals. Now, this is a matchup I'm not entirely sure how to call. Um, I'm actually yet to see uh, a top Tanya versus a top Kenchi. Uh, no doubt these guys would have ran this set before, being teammates. Um, but it's going to be a game of, I think one of the things Pig going to be really careful of is that teleport. The teleport was indeed nerfed, but on a good read, you can really get full screen presence and just go straight in, I would imagine. Rio gets the jump over into full combo. 36%. Oh, wonderful. Wake up from Pig of the Hut manages to get severe life lead I right mean, now. Before the armor can even tick, he got the hit there. So fantastic stuff there from Pig. Rio up for the kick instead of the punch. Doesn't get the combo, but wow, good shoulder from Pig of the Hut. I mean, I think that's one of the things that has helped him being a Kenshi loyalist uh, from the days of Morgan at 9. Uh, his knowledge of when to go for the uh, shoulder charge, that's one of the moves that I think is really underrated as Kenshi. And uh, we don't see people sort of use as much as Pig does in those situations where he knows it's going to hit. Clutch throw from Rio. Looking to bring this one back. Oh, he that tries to be a one. wake up. Very, uh, it's very interesting because in MKX, obviously, only meter burn wake up attacks that have armor will be viable wake up attacks. Rio just switches on when he's got 5% health left. It's crazy to see time and time again. Shoulder. We have seen multiple amazing comebacks from Rio in this tournament. Uh, Pig that just also have been playing out of his mind this entire tournament. Uh, you know, minimum top three for all these guys. They should be very proud of themselves, but they want that money. You know, whoever wins this will also win. But they're close, man. Okay. They are close. They're getting there. But they have to beat each other to even have a chance at winning the 25 for second place. That's a fantastic conversion from Pig of the Heart. I mean, that's one of the things he's played Pig, uh, He's played Kenji since the beginning. Even when Kenji uh, somewhat lacked in areas, he has stuck with the character and really sort of devised his MKX metagame around this one character. Looking really good in this round, but he was last time as well, and we managed to pull it back. I think it's just quite so difficult. And he just waited for the teleport. I mean, it's respectable. I respect Rio going for it there. Uh, it was unlikely that. Uh, he'd have been able to dodge anything else has not gone for the teleport there anyway because he just anti aired him regardless. Ooh, I nice. see Pig of the Hut with two and a half bars and I think reversals, I think. <laughs> running grab! That is the Pig of the Hut special. That is, I mean, you're constantly going to wait for the spirit charge, running grab, just to check you. And right there, he ran in and went for the uh, string just in case he thought he was going to go for a grab and he's going to try and check. And there you go, there's the loaf. Rio catches a clean 34% damage. Catches him doing a no normal wake attack. I, I strongly think that was supposed to be a reversal with armor and it just didn't come out. Pig opting to save his meter. Oh, gets a down one. Gets the low. the low. Does not hit confirm into the max damage, though. Tries Swift Punch, doesn't quite get it. Oh, wonderful down one. And he cross up. It's the meter rising karma. And once again, really good challenge. Had Pig not been spending so long building the bar, he would not have had all that meter. Lovely reflect. Oh, and he gets the armor reversal. He's still going to be alive. Pig that been a once again. Oh, oh wow. tried. He tries have to armor, but for those that may be unaware, you can armor an attack, but you still take the damage. In that situation, Pig had the reactions, he had the read, but he didn't have the health to absorb that jump in, and he did die for it anyway. So we are one game up. Both players guaranteed a minimum of $10,000, but it's like I've said many times before, the difference in 60 for first, 25 for second, and then 10 for the loser of this match. I mean, either way, I mean, either way, ten thousand dollars is uh, nothing to shake a stick at. That is, again, an amazing sum of money, but it just goes up and up from this point. And everyone wants the max. You know, everyone here is here for that sixty k, not for the ten k. I think Pig's thinking about it. I mean, are we going to see a variation change? It was a close thing. game. I mean, it was a super close game. It definitely could have gone either way. It was chip territory for both players right there. It was just Rio managed to clutch it out. Both seem to do many times, and they're going for a full-on rematch. First, it goes to Rio this time. It's very unfortunate, I mean, um, the thing about when you get a keep away character like Balance Kenshi, if you manage to corner him almost immediately, uh, you're denying him the space to run away, and that's exactly what he wants. But that's the thing, I mean, Pig is always going to whiff these uh, special attacks just to build meter. You'll notice that whenever he gets in, Pig almost always has at least one bar of meter ready to go. 
and that seems to be like your priority as a Kenji player. Have meter at all times. A wonderful environment interaction from Rio just to challenge that shoulder. He gets a full jump and punish. Some Rio. Damage. Good damage. Here come the cancels just for that pressure. Oh, nice reversal there from Pig. Opting to spend the bar. I mean, the damage is there. Keeping Tanya full screen, that's what he wants. I guess the low overhead, amazing stuff, but nice down one from Rio. Oh, oh wow, the armor collides with armor. How about that? Great stuff there from Rio. Rio, look at that. Corner pressure now. He's got all that screen behind him and the meter to work with. He has uh, Kenji denying Kenji the space to run. Amazing Pro tech. tech. Pro tech. And when oh, he God, pressing the back one. Nice whiff punish there. And here comes a full combo hard knockdown. Rio is hungry for grand finals. It's been a long time coming. Eight weeks of ESL leagues. And that's one of the dangers. That normal just does such an amazing job of chewing through armor. I mean, obviously, all of Kenji's reversals only have a single hit and a little bit of start time. It's that staggered first hit. Now Pig's going to have to try and run away, but intercepted by the teleport. Here comes another knockdown. Oh, and he's going to take it. Very convincing game two from Rio. Really two strong stuff. against Pig of the Hut. Strong stuff from Yomi's Rio. I mean, looking to one game away from bagging himself grand finals where he'll get his run back versus Sonic Fox. I mean, Rio went into loser's bracket. Game one. Round one of winner's bracket. This guy has been fighting his way through losers. But who did Rio lose to? First Sonic game. Fox. Exactly. Uh, it's... Whoever makes it through, both these guys were sent to losers by Sonic Fox. So whoever makes it into grand finals on the loser's side, it's not only the fact that you're going to have to fight, uh, it's not only the fact that you're going to have to fight the guy that sent you to losers, but you also have to deal with the fact that uh, you have to win double. You have to do double the work. Your work is cut out for you, but it can be done. We have seen losers finalists win this tournament countless times. Pick that has gone for the change for Possessed Kenji. I mean, we mainly see Pick that go for Possessed uh, if he feels like he needs more mobility, if he needs to teleport, he needs uh, slightly different moves. He'll still function in a keep away style fashion. His moves will serve the same purpose. Uh, it's just that he gets less damage on those reversals. Um, but at the cost of the fact that he gets that teleport right there, which very unfortunately, um, Rio does spend his first bar of meter. As does Kenji. Through. As does Pick of the Height, even. <laughs> so as you can see, you know, as you can see uh, one D-burn reversal goes from 18. It was 32% balanced. Whereas now he has the teleport, which makes it slightly harder to lock this guy down. And right as I say that, Rio goes in. As it starts up. There's that knockdown. Oh wow, good dash cancel, but again, Pig of Heart ready with the interrupt of the armor. If Pig has meter, you have to be careful when you're approaching it. Or goes for the teleport. Here's the back dash from Rio. Rio. Last nice. time the armor, this time off the back dash. I mean, the zoning does hurt less. I mean, that spirit charge there does significantly less damage than spirit charge in balance. I mean, it's technically the same move. That grab immune string, very crazy. Oh wow, just use the meter. Thinks that Pig of Heart's gonna press the button, but doesn't. Good really good patience, Pig. Pig. Good patience. So that one blocked. Goes to jump instead. Oh no, he uses his only bar on that. Rio Very match unfortunate. Point. Yomi Rio from the United States is one round away from getting grand finals where he'll get his run back against Sonic Fox. There's that neutral jump. Pick that. Oh, wonderful crossover. Now all this screen behind him. But Rio goes in, teleports behind him. Oh, he Fear burn. through with the armor. Here comes the grab. And I like that. I like the fact that he's going for that normal just to chew through Kenji's armor. Oh, Rio doesn't attempt the any crossover. We'll get the hard knockdown on that. The splat to the ground. Good for head follow up. Oh, number one jump back from Pig. Really clutch stuff. And that's the one thing about Possessed. I mean, without Rita, his combo damage is pretty limited. Oh, good jump, nice jump. Throwing him into the corner. Denying him because that screen to run away with. Oh, use the bar. This will be all right damage. Goes for two hits for the restand. 25%. Good block. Pick of the hut. Oh, and he gets the delayed reversal. Pick that. Still him. An amazing throw tech from Rio. Rio's throw teching is saving his life in these games. He catches it, this could be death! Oh, doesn't convert! Oh wow, Pig the Hut stays alive! Staying alive in this tournament! One round away from being able to tie it. He's to not two going home one. just yet. Getting closer to being able to come back in this set. If he wins this game, I will be unbelievably hyped for him. But I mean, it's going to be quite difficult. Yomi Ryu has two bars of meter. That would be big shoulder. damage. Just want to pick earlier. I think that is the best uh, variation for the shoulder. Putting it to good work right now. I guess at the, at the, the expense of the speed, you get damage. It does not hurt very much. Oh, armor meets armor. Very unfortunate. Pig losing his only bar there. This could be, this bad. Could be a full combo hurt. putting Rio into grand finals if he gets it. Oh, oh, wow. There we go. Yomi Rio will be your second grand finalist today, making his way to grand finals through losers bracket. However, can we here in Burbank, Los Angeles, extend a massive round of applause to Pig of the Hut for this phenomenal display of Kenji Third Blade. place, you know, taking out, sending Foxy into losers, beating La, beating so many of these international and American players. He earned his place here. You know, he earned his place, uh, took a really solid game off Sonic Fox. Uh, they changed out of Black, sent him into losers, and he fought Rio, didn't quite get second place, but massive congratulations to him for proving that he is undeniably the best Kenji in the world. So he'll be no doubt um, riding this momentum into Evo next week, but for today, 
we have Yomi's Rio versus CR Sonic Fox as your final two representatives at the final of Season 1 of the Top 16 MKX Pro League Season Finals presented by Xbox. Yomi versus uh, CR. Who saw that coming? Two players left. Hundreds of players from around the globe have participated in the eight weeks we've been doing these tournaments. Hundreds of players. We've had the Mortal Kombat Cup. You take that into account. There is a lot of people that tried to get into this position that these two gentlemen now find themselves in. Sonic Fox is 17, and he's about to potentially win $60,000. Rio, tremendous Mortal Kombat injustice. Another own player in general. This guy played MK Deadly Lights, MKDC, UMK3. Like, Rio is passionate about Rio Mortal is Kombat. as old school as it gets. I mean, even during the days before Mortal Kombat 9 came out, Rio was playing Ultimate MK3. Like, that was his game. Like, he has always played Mortal Kombat through and through. All of the 3D games, all of the 2D games, all of the modern games. Like, this guy is, he is the veteran, you know, he is the biggest veteran in competitive MK right now. And then you've got Sonic Fox on the other end of the spectrum. Um, I don't want to say a, uh, a new approach to fighting games. Obviously, this guy is the definition of prodigy. This guy he is started a prodigy. playing when he was 14 years old, I believe, having dominance in MK9 with Melina, a character not considered to be absolutely amazing in MK9, as well as the current world champion for MK9. He certainly made her look Justice. amazing. And MKX, he has really found his comfort zone. He is dominating the scene right now. This guy's looking to add $60,000 to his wallet right now. It's not so bad for a 17-year-old. A 17-year-old with $60,000 through playing video games. I certainly didn't have $60,000 through playing video games at 17. <laughs> Wonderful. But no, these guys, they have earned their right to be here through and through. Thank you guys at home for supporting this Pro League, picking up that Blue Steel Sub-Zero skin for making this prize pot possible. And again, thank you to Razor for sponsoring the MKX Pro League for uh, everything today. Absolutely. We are going to cut to an interview before we go into the uh, Predator exhibition with uh, Dustin Kane and Joshua Gray. Thank you, Ryan and Jake Naylor. Everybody give it up for the fantastic commentary coming from Ketchup and Mustard. Very well done all season long. Did a fantastic job today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Dustin, Tanya, and Rio seem to go hand in hand. That patient play, that waiting, those great block strings, and now he's going into the finals against Sonic Fox. Tell me about Rio's Tanya. You know, it, it's funny, when, when the game first came out, there wasn't really a character for Rio that really kind of masked Cabal in MK9 because that's what he was so successful with. But Tanya kind of has that same flavor where it's a lot of blocks, uh, blocks done, a lot of being plus on block, having the advantage, and continuing to put the pressure on. And with Tanya, I really see that with Rio. He really has found his groove. He's found his character. I thought initially maybe Cassie was his best option, but Tanya's going to be it for him. A lot of people predicted on Test Your Might and other websites that this would be the finals of Yomi Rio versus CR Sonic Fox. A lot of people are hyped. Did you predict this in the finals? To be completely honest, no. I would have expected possibly a Foxy Grandpa to be in there as well, or maybe even Nivik. I mean, Nivik played incredible. Him and Foxy, unfortunately, had to play. But, I mean, everyone has looked so good this tournament, it was really hard to have an issue in Grand Finals, but it makes sense, absolutely, that it's going to be Rio versus Sonic Fox. Now, you had a lot of fun putting together the combat class with the master behind the combat class series, Mr. Brett Beeling. Tell me about Predator. Oh, man, he's so fun, Josh. He's so fun. He is really great in all his variations, because we see most characters have at least two very strong variations. One that may be weaker, but is still viable, but not as as stand out as the other two. Predator has three really good variations. They're all very unique. They have their own flavor. He retains, you know, more of a Zony archetype in Hishkaten, but in Hunter and Warrior, very in your face, set up base, which is my type of play. So I'm extremely excited after Evo to start putting time into that character for tournaments. And we're excited to show off Predator right now, ladies and gentlemen. But first, let's take a look at the Predator combat class. He and others of his alien race seek out intelligent life worthy to fight and kill for sport and honor. A highly evolved life form, Predator possesses vast superhuman strength and an arsenal of advanced weaponry to hunt the ultimate prey.
Fish Q10 variation equips Predator with a plasma caster. This weapon can fire a single shot or a barrage of projectiles in varying directions, offering great zoning potential. Choose between a defensive style with plasma shots or rush down your opponent with scimitar slam. Back forward B plus right trigger for devastating combos. In the Hunter variation, Predator can use Medikit, down down A, to regain health at the cost of stamina. Deploy traps at three different locations to lock down and suspend your opponent for a combo. Enhancing your traps will extend combos and carry your enemies to the corner. After a knockdown, throw a follow-up trap at your opponent's feet or cash out the damage with Scimitar Stack. In the Warrior variation, Predator gets up close and personal with his prey. Dread launch, back forward X plus right trigger, and Yaucha pounce, down back Y plus right trigger, are great armored specials for catapulting your opponent into the air for a combo. After instilling fear in your opponent, activate self-detonate, down back B. This explosion allows Predator to follow up for a combo. However, self-detonate will disarm if Predator is hit before detonation. No matter which variation you choose, Predator is equipped with powerful maneuvers and high-tech weaponry, making him the ultimate hunter. Pleasure Kill, YXY, is a great launcher. Follow up with a jump punch and you're one, back YY. Show your foe you ain't got time to bleed with this X-Ray Finisher. And make sure nobody gets to the chopper with a brutality. Brutality. Predator wins. Have fun with one ugly mother. And tune into the ESL Mortal Kombat X Pro League presented by Xbox. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the Grand Finals, it's time to show off some Predator. Introducing the representatives of Team Johnny Cage in the Commando skin. Give it up for Tyler Lansdowne and Nivik. And playing as the Predator, Give it up for EGP Wonder Chef and Mitsu Owns. All right, gentlemen, here are the rules. This is a best of five series. The winner will stay seated. The loser must tag team his partner in. If the winner wins two games in a row, they must tag team their partner in. Clear. Clear. All right, any words for your opponent before we start? Some of you may know Tyler as the uh, community manager for NRS, but today he's just prey. Tyler, your response. I think I'm going to let my subpar play speak for myself, but I would also like to say, hashtag you suck. Gentlemen, please shake hands. Team captains, please shake hands. Mitsu owns a Nivik. You will be first. Go ahead and take your stations. Tag team partners, you will be just ringside ready to get tagged in. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Predator versus Johnny Cage show match. Best of luck to the commentators. So obviously we have the best Johnny Cage in the world being represented right now, Tyler Lansdowne. <laughs> of course, yeah. 
and we've we, seen it a hundred times. We've seen it hundred. I mean, he was he was playing sets in the back before the tournament started, and I don't even think anyone took a round off of him. Yeah, I think Chi Betty was taking notes for sure. Oh, absolutely. I saw him writing stuff down. Yeah, he had a translator and everything. <laughs> he speaks English. Man. I'm kidding. I I know he's a cool kid. <laughs> um, and if, okay, so we also have Nivik on that team of Tyler Lansdowne, you know, Team Commando, Johnny Cage, and Nivik so close, but now he's here to destroy his opponent as well as Team Predator. SoCal, it's not going to happen, man. Have you seen Nivik play Johnny Cage before? He doesn't have to play Johnny Cage. Because he's Nivik? Well, well obviously. Ah, oh, there it is. He looks ready. Tyler looks really close to him. This is awkward. Yeah. Tyler's borderline <laughs> hovering right now. <laughs> And of course, Wonder Chef, doing Wonder Chef things, you know, just in the back. That's our SoCal boy, man, <clears throat> Mr. Wonder Chef. All right, here we go. So Predator. Go straight in. I love Predator. Predator man. has a lot, a lot of different options, especially scattered out through his variations. It looks like he's going to be playing Hunter, which is my favorite variation right now, and it's a very setup-based variation. For instance. Definitely, yeah. I can't tell if he's having a seizure or if he's trying to teabag. It's one of the two. I don't even know. What That's to say actually right now. really impressive. How is? Look at his shoulder. Whoa. Okay, so that is real skill right there. <laughs> no. The face. They're not even laughing. They're yeah, serious. Mitzvones is now not um, not amused at all. He's not amused at all. Mm. So again, Hunter is a very set up base variation. Hey, it's very similar yeah. almost to Cyrax in MK9 where he has the traps he can throw. He has various <laughs> options. His down four or his down circle is ridiculous. That move right there is insanely that, good. Yeah, the range on that is crazy. He can also cancel that into any one of his specials, whether it be the disc or the trap. And of course, he has green blood, which is amazing. Which I just realized he does not have headphones, so he can probably hear everything I'm saying. Make sure you don't use down four <laughs> at all. So you're on Team Commander then, huh? I am on whatever Team Nivik is on. Of course. Greek boys, you know what I'm saying? Greek boys. Yo, look, he's already got Johnny Cage down. That's all you need to do. There is absolutely nothing <laughs> that Mitsu can do right now, so I'm not going to say what he should do. Go. He is so cool, man. Yeah, but Johnny Cage is still alive. I mean, it's not even a big deal for him. Oh, it's going to go into the trap. Oh, but he doesn't confirm. Good block there. Goes for the uh, back three. That is a low. And then he straightens the cap flush. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> All right, using that down four again. Needs to tech one of these grabs, please. The corner. Does he have a setup? Oh, he's going to. What are we going to call that? I mean, I don't want to call what we're supposed to be called. We'll figure something out. Green kick. Hmm. There it is. Green kick? Yeah, I don't like Vita. Yeah. Went for the confirmed, didn't get it. And he burned <laughs> the, the meter. meter burned Vine Hang. <laughs> Yo, respect. That next level. That's tech. Dude, that is some. That's some new meta right there. There's already a thread on TYM about it. Oh, yo, who needs combos? Obviously not Johnny Cage. Nope. Oh, and he's gonna kick right past again, jumping over the trap. Yo. Oh, this is not where you oh. want to be. <laughs> Oh, throws the trap out and gets blown oh, up for it. What a confirm! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is hilarious. No punish. Gets an uppercut of his own. Now here comes oh, Nivik. He's, he's caught. No combo conversion though. Oh, and a big boot to the dome. You know, you know what's funny is we. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh no! There we go. And the best Johnny Cage in the world. The best Johnny Cage in the world sitting behind, ready to tag in at a moment's notice, giving him advice. Tyler's like, look, keep pressing those buttons. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yo, that's that secret, uh, that secret NRS tech that no one knows yet. So of course- Mitsuon's Wonder giving Wonder Chef some words of advice. You got him, he says. So of course Wonder Chef has been grinding with this character for the last few days. Yes, and he it, has. It's, let's be real, like he is a amazing I'll technician. I'll be completely honest, if a Wonder Chef is responsible for a lot of the tech here in SoCal, including some of Tyrant stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. He is a he's a scientist. Man. Yes, he we is. We call him the mad scientist. Like, he is SoCal's tech guy. Definitely. Him and Crazy, who's not here. Oh, oh nice. Here we go. Nice combo oh, conversion. Here we go. And into the reset we get to see situation. Some setup. Oh, he tried to grab and throw. A predator grabs you and throws you into the trap. It will actually interrupt his throw and hang you up. Get the full. Uh, yep. And then, of course, full combo after yes. that. Yes, sir, indeed. 
And ironically, we saw Sonic Fox play so much Predator this week. Yeah. When, <laughs> when he's, you know, preparing himself for one of the biggest tournaments he's ever played in. I thought it was pretty And he's funny. just all nonchalant, like, I'm just gonna yeah. play Predator, why not? Oh, here we go. Vine Sweet. I love this stage oh. with these two characters. It's so great. Yo, he's chipping up. He's chipping up. What a confirm on the down one. But nothing afterwards. That trap. There it is. It takes a second you to activate. You know what? If he was going to go down, he was going to go down swinging. swinging. Literally. <laughs> oh! I think I'm going to pick up Johnny Cage now. I think Wonder Chef should continue playing like this. Good use of armor. And Nivik shouldn't change a thing. And now he's in the corner. These trap setups, he's just going to sit there and block. Oh. Of course, when Predator gets hit. Down four, so good. Goes for the mix-up. Oh, and he armors through! That was really well timed. That's, that, was. that was actually super impressive. Blocks the NJP, air oh, to air. Oh, trade. I don't know what he's doing here, but it's working. <laughs> A lot of whiff normals, my goodness. Oh, he wanted the uh, brutality? Is this the brutality? No, oh. it's only the first time. I mean, it would have been, yes. <laughs> you are correct. Yeah. Had it been, you know what? The appropriate round number. Sorry, man. I just assumed Chef already had two rounds, bro. Wow. Yeah. That's racist. What? Using that block pressure again, going for a lot of neutral jump punches, but <laughs> I was, he just sets up. That's his mix-up. I like how he's not even oh, stopping when he's too. out of range. He's just <laughs> continuing to swing. Oh, what a down two convert! No. Oh, turns a meter. Just a hit. You know what's interesting is Chef told me that he knew how to play Predator before this happened. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking a little scrubby, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be mean, but... <laughs> Please. Oh, oh, hung up by his jimmies. And he's gonna get the brutal, bro. Oh, here we go. See? He did it just for me. He's like, I'll try it again. Dude, Predator. Right, so now Mr. Lance so down. Sick. Man, I was so hyped when I first heard that uh, Predator was announced. I mean, I've been—I'm such a huge fan of the movies. Yeah. When I was a, when I was younger, which was oh, forever ago. My goodness. Yo, yo, the the, the turned around hat and the stare down. It's too real right now. Tension. So I mean, we've seen Tyler lose a lot on combat cast on the combat cast. But what I actually learned was Derek was paying Tyler to throw those matches so he would look better. So Tyler's actually technically undefeated. That's inside until. Not anymore. Well, I mean, <laughs> obviously not anymore, but... <laughs> I think everyone assumed that anyway. I did. Okay. Wow, no respect. <laughs> I'm just All saying. Right. He can hear you. Can he? He can. Tyler, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to ignore you. That's, and I can tell you right now, that is always the best course of action, to just completely ignore you. That's how I've survived this, these last couple months. Hey, man, you got to do what you got to do. I respect that. <laughs> okay. I'm, oh, dude, this He's is too serious. He's rolling up the sleeves. Whoa, Chef points right at the camera. Shaking Nivik's hand for no apparent reason. Here we go. Round one. Oh, and we Fight. skip it? I know what's up with that. Oh, what's up with that? Oh, there we go. They're just too excited to get into it. Lots of buttons here, good blocks, and Ooh. he's gonna block again. Nice poke and a green kick right through with the armors. Green kick. Here we go with the confirms. No. So actually, I believe this is Tyler's kind of like new main character, right? It is. Yeah. And he's already the best in the world. Incredible stuff. Oh, okay. look at. Look at these delayed he, projectiles. He's he obviously have messing a, them up on purpose. Of course. He does have a pretty difficult jump arc, Predator. Yes, it's it's rather floaty. It is rather floaty, yeah. Oh. Oh. jumps a combo. Now those... We call them those yellow kicks? Stun, <laughs> those stun doubles actually are plus on block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Round two. Now if... if oh, okay. That's That was the problem. This is the hat. If Tyler could hear me right now, I would say please wake up because he's not doing too hot right now and that combo's not helping. Good thing oh, he can't hear you. Chef. Unfortunately, Wonder Chef drops combos. Good blocks here. Tyler oh, is just jumping all over the Yo, I'll be real. Tyler has gotten a lot better since this game has come out. Like, really has improved. And I'm not even... Oh. Oh. So much nut punch. Such oh, wow. Oh, he overthrew. He misses the NJP. Gets the grab, though. 
I assume he's gonna keep him in the corner. I assume so as well. Yep. I have a question. Is Predator legal at EGP tomorrow? Absolutely. Yes! Oh! Again, that second hit is an overhead. The trap is a low. That's very risky business. And Tyler is going to pull a miracle out of his hat. Oh, 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 the brutality! It's not over yet. It's not over. There's Wait. more. Wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is my favorite brutality in the game right now, for sure. So we're going to see a switch again. We are going to see a switch. That, I'm so glad the chef did that. Man, the stare down. Oh, the hype is real. The hype is real, man. There's like, there are no friends up there right now. Predator, predator, prey, <laughs> rated. I don't think that's a real thing. I don't think you're a real thing. How dare you? Wow. If you want to get personal, we can do it. I'm so real. All right, so Nivik has to make, he's got to make this count. We've seen him win before. With Johnny Cage? We can see him win again. And, and his Johnny Cage is incredible. The back one, it's, hey, it's incredible. You. Back one, too. I've never seen someone lay it on so thick. Round one. Fight. Predator, not a man of many words. Or any words at all. Or, well, he, he does have some pre recorded uh, voiceovers. Yeah. They've been caught with that overhead quite a bit, Ooh. almost every time. Oh. Oh, a little late on the fisticuff activation there, but it's Fisty okay. Fisticuff. Fisticuff. Fisty Goes for the down two, but gets stuck. Stuck no, by the. Oh, oh he gets no. caught. Okay, some decent damage there. Not really. Okay. Of course, the Predator is capable of a lot of damage, but not a lot of button presses. Yes, he is. Oh, and that's going to be instant with the meter burn. And he's going to break it. Right. When you enhance the trap, it doesn't have that normal startup phase nope. that it's, it usually has. It's instantaneous. instantaneous. Yeah. Great zoning here. And he's going to run up for the down four. Nice stuff from Nivik. Thank you and good night. It actually looks like he's gotten better since last match. You know what? I would like to see Predator use Invis because he takes zero chip damage. Invis? Oh, that's actually a very critical Invis thing to... Invisible. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's most, a good thing to talk about. Most is people it? don't know that if you do go invisible with Predator, not only is it harder to see him and see what normals he's using, but he also takes zero chip. And of course, when you're not taking chip damage... You're, you're technically not losing. That's correct. Especially against Johnny Cage. Any character that Johnny Cage, Kung Lao, Liu Kang, Flame Fist, anything that does a lot of chip damage or oh, a lot yeah. of pressure on block, yep. Ooh. Man. Oh! The dirty stuff! I love watching the X-ray against Predator because it has like that alien bone structure. You know what? I don't know. Structure. How is Johnny Cage's knee not severed after knee and Predator in the face? Because he's a gangster. That's true. He's a straight thug. Ooh, the oh, classic. Oh, the classic. I love the classic just because it's super quick. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. Well, I mean, not clean. Disgusting, his head falls off, but I mean, it's... It's relatively clean. Yeah. yeah. Compared to other fatalities. Right, right, you're right. What's going through Chef's mind? He was, he was, uh, I spoke with him earlier, and he was very happy about the free pizza. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a true statement. Uh, who, who wouldn't be free pizza? Mr. EGP Steven Seagal right here. Yes. I miss his sunglasses. He is definitely the ancient reminiscent <laughs> of Steven Seagal. He's Steven Seagal with a little Asian twist. <laughs> that's how I describe If you've never met him, that's how I describe him. And then when you see him, you immediately recognize him. Yep. <laughs> that back 2 2 is so good. It has such, it's a really good advancing normal. Good range. It yeah. can be canceled into you know, right. a trap or yeah. a disc, or which a he has not done a single time. There's a lot of really good uses for that string. Blocks here. Chef looking good right now. Definitely much sharper. Definitely still dropping combos. Oh, oh goes for the overhead. Block on that overhead. Oh, all that jello flying everywhere. Here we go. And just armors through. Right back in the corner. That was very smart. That's one of the cool thing about that launcher is you could uh, you could essentially tell it which way to go. The thing I love about Predator is once you get someone in the air, he has so many different ju juggle options, so many different combo variants. He's honestly a 
fun, fun character to play, and he's really cool to watch as well. Yeah, yeah they NRS do. has done a phenomenal job, not only modeling him, but animating him, his sounds, everything is very reminiscent of the movie. It's just really, just really great, really great stuff. Yeah, they definitely watched those movies back to back to back for a few days before they yep. started doing character design on this. They, they really did nail it. it. It's very true to, you know, to the movies and the character uh -huh. itself. And I'm not even kidding when I say this is literally one of my favorite movies of all time. The first Predator movie was... It was I. Oh, dude. You have horrible taste and you have no idea what you're talking about. Wow. <laughs> if you want to take it to a personal place, we can hey, do that. Hey, when you said it was all right, I took it personally. Fair enough. <laughs> that overhead. Oh. Oh. No. No. That is I think actually Mimic's gonna not pick up safe. Now. I think Mimic <laughs> could possibly out-contend Tyler for the best cage in the world right now. That's the match after this. Yes, it will be the match after this. Yeah. The Johnny Cage of the world match. Fight. Oh, the disrespect! Runs right in his face with a grab. Oh, barely missed that uh, Jello ball. There we Again, go. getting caught with the back two. Here we go. I love his and sounds. if you actually notice, um, oh, Chef drops the combo. Chef is doing run cancels with his laser, his uh, blaster. Yeah, I was trying to do that the other day, and it was, it's pretty challenging. What's it's cool is not like the easiest, but yeah. and of course, I mean, we do, we do need to point out that he did the change variation. He's using the hitch content now, which oh, is more of a zoning variation. Mimic. And of course, you can charge his laser shot, and you can aim it after you charge it, before yes. you let it go. So or he has also, a lot of course, yeah, you can cancel it. He has a lot of different options in Hishiku 10. The, the thing that's really cool about that variation, though, is the fact that it's one of the... It's probably one of the truest zoning variations in this game. Yo, Team Tyler? Team Lansdowne for the victory? <laughs> yeah, that was actually really awkward to watch. Forever. So... You know, best cage in the world now. Best cages. Cages, yeah, of course. Multiple cages, of course. That was fun. Predator's awesome. I love his variations. I just, you know, I wish yeah. we would have had a better showcase of Predator from Wondershelf. <laughs> but I, I felt Mitsu did a phenomenal job of really showing us what the character could do. Oh, be nice to Chef. I'm just saying. He's sweet. All right, well, let's go ahead and, <laughs> let's go ahead and get Tyler's thoughts on, oh, on no. being the best cage in the oh, world. No. He's standing by with Joshua Gray. Take it Here away. We go. All right, Tyler, I don't think we're going to hear the end of this, but congratulations on winning the show match against Predator. Thank you so much. What were some of the pointers you were giving Nivik? Well, I told him pretty much everything that he did from point one to the end. Um, I told him nut punch, nut punch, nut punch, and then that's where I ended it. He added in the little one, two, one, two. That was nice. Definitely did a lot of damage against Predator. Yes, it did. A Predator uh, looked good, too. Today, Team Cage just kind of took it. I guess we answer the question, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. All right, no more puns. That's okay, fine. we're good. So, congratulations again to the Thank entire you. Nether Realm studio. Hey, wait, 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 Tyler. You may have gotten me this time. You may have gotten me today, but I'm coming back for you in ESL Mortal Kombat Season Two. <laughs> well, well. You heard it from Wonder Chef, ladies and gentlemen. It does not end here because of you. The MKX community and the MKX competitors, the journey will continue. Season two is coming. Keep training, keep fighting, keep asking the question, who's next? It could be you. Next up, the season one grand finals. Tell us who you think's gonna win, Rio or Sonic Fox. Use the hashtag MKX finals, get hype, stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 Finals presented by Xbox. The final match, the Grand Finals. First place, $60,000. Our first player, hailing from Yomi Gaming, give it up for Rio. And his opponent, the kid prodigy, CR Sonic Fox. <laughs> Gentlemen, you have fought through multiple weeks, through multiple tournaments, and through multiple opponents to make it to this moment. moment. Congratulations on being here. $25,000 for second place, $60,000 for first. Rio. Any words for your opponent before we start? I just want to wish my opponent good luck. All right, thank you, Rio. Give it up for Rio. Always a nice guy. Sonic Fox. Don't get set, pick a death, Rio. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's getting his motor started. All right, gentlemen, please shake hands. Good luck and have fun. So this is essentially a $35,000 money match. Indeed, indeed. Obviously, they're both going home with, with a pretty good stack of cash either way, however. Yeah, but you know that both of these players want that 60 k There is no way. The, I mean... The gap between first and second place is massive. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Thirty five grand. i am sorry. I'm still wrapping my head around that. $35,000 money match. One match for $60,000. Yep. yep. Incredible. And of course, I mean, it couldn't be... Two of the better players. We have Rio, Agreed. who we've talked about his legacy, what he's done in MK9. And then we have Sonic Fox. We've also talked about his legacy, <laughs> yeah, which exactly. is not only Injustice, as well as MKX. I mean, this kid is dominant. He is a true prodigy. We've said it multiple times. So will the weathered veteran beat the prodigy, or is Sonic Fox going to be able to just take it home in one set? I mean, it's interesting because Rio, as far as the US players, he qualified last place. Yep. And he's sitting here on the on the main stage in grand finals. Of course, uh, neither one of us are, are surprised. Rio, you know, we've, we've go way back with Rio. Yeah. He's an amazing player. And out of the few people that have beat Sonic Fox in the past, recently, he's done it twice. He has. So I think if anyone can do it today, it's definitely going to be... I'm not going to disagree with you. Yeah. I, I would have liked, not that I'm not happy for Rio, but I really kind of wanted to see a Fox versus Fox match, whether or not it was in grand finals or somewhere earlier in the bracket. But... It didn't get to that. Now no, we have Rio, no. who has earned his spot here, absolutely, and Sonic Fox, who, which has dominated his way to his spot. He has, of course, like we expected. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely expected to see Foxy Grandpa up here. Um, Rio was definitely my pick, though, for you know third yeah, place. Yeah, you were you were pretty strong on Rio, and yeah. and we talked about it early on, and I didn't think you were wrong. However, I didn't think it would go down this way. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, all night, man, has just been. Amazing matches. So many of them have gone down to the last round, the last game. And of course, I mean, that's definitely what we expected. And, and I mean, none of these guys have disappointed. And it's really been, you know, an honor and a pleasure to watch yep. these players from all over the world, you know, getting to meet them, hang out with them. It's been a long season, man. It's been two months. This is it. We are finally here. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and, of course, give a huge shout out to not only all the players that qualified here, but as well as all the sponsors, all the people that made the Blue Steel skin possible purchasing that. We have Razor to thank. We have Warner Brothers. We have NetherRealm. And, of, of course. course, everyone watching at home, thank you so much, guys, for making this, just making this a reality, making it possible for myself, Compton, the entire ESL staff. It's been, honestly, an incredible experience. So thank you to everyone. Congratulations to all the players that won money today. Yep. Congratulations mm -hmm. to everyone, it regardless, who made it to this point. Here we go, man. And here we go, go. ladies and gentlemen. Get hyped. This is your grand finals high. for season one of the ESL MKX Pro League. So, of course, we do see Fox is back yeah, to Royal, Royal Storm Katana, which really he picked up just because of, you know, all the time he's uh -huh. the CEO. And it honestly has paid off dividends for him. He's beaten... Almost everyone. I mean, he's used this in other matchups as well and been very consistent and very dominant. Yeah, the only one that was able to make him switch was Pig. Was Pig of the Hut. Yeah, Pig made him go to Aaron Black. Well, it, I guess it proves to two generations of MK that matchup is still rather bad for Katana. Well, I mean, Pig is also obviously a phenomenal player. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Going back to MK9, you're right. 
man. Just a zoning battle right here. And these trades are actually really good for Katana. Yeah, she does. She does typically have advantages in, in trades with most other projectiles. That is correct. And here we go, going for the low, oh, getting that, the combo dude, conversion. That conversion. Some big damage right here. Forty-four oh, percent damage. Wow. And Rio was oh. just trying to get away, but Sonic Fox chasing him down. So of course this is a best of seven. This is a best of seven, which means that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's... don't say it. How many matches is he gonna have to win? Was that? Oh my goodness. The tea bag. Jokes on you, man. I don't even think Rio drinks tea. That was really funny when I heard it like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's clever though. What's well, not clever? The hurtful words, Brian. They're very clever. Again, Rio, this I mean, is he's, he's this is exactly what Sonic Fox wants to do. He wants to push the pace from full screen, make Rio make a mistake, and then yeah. cash out with those huge juggles that Katana gets off of those fans. And of course, the whole time he's just back here building meters. Yep. I mean, both players are sit are sitting on a full stick of butter. They both have bar. They both have X-ray. So realistically, whoever gets hit first is most likely going to break. Unless it's Sonic Fox, he doesn't need to. Oh, and oh, an X-ray. Okay. That was interesting. A lot of damage, though. This is not a very good situation right now. Yeah, just Sonic Fox just spacing it out of the full screen. And <laughs> Rio just calmly walking forward. He has forward. to, because he cannot, he cannot spend his meter running. Yep. He's going to need that, and it, it doesn't even matter. Game one in the bag. And of course, if Rio manages to win the first set, it is a double elimination bracket. So he's got to do it he's one gotta more do it time. He's got to do it again. And, yeah. and everyone here has struggled just to beat Sonic Fox a single Game. set, let alone two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ridiculous. Yeah, quite a task for Rio here. But again, Rio is one of the few people in the world that has been able to do it more than once. Sonic, look, look, Sonic Fox is definitely human and he's definitely beatable. We've seen it before, but the Real level starting of, off strong. Yeah, the level of play you have to execute to do that is it's gotta be very impressive. And right now, Rio is fighting his way. He has the life lead, oh no. but gets caught. Yeah, he dropped that combo. Again, a ton of damage coming here. And this is also why Rio can't spend his stamina running too much because he's gonna need to break those long combos and they right. do a lot of damage. Yep. She gets quite a bit meterless, and if she wants, she can get 50% with just a bar. Yeah, that's not, not a bad day. So once again, Sonic Fox is just jumping back, playing the full screen yep. spacing game. And, and this of course, is exactly, Rio just this is to exactly what he wants to do, and as boring as it may seem, Fox is playing this 100% correct. Yeah, he definitely knows the matchup, and of course, he trained with Katana just for this matchup, so... And he's not overcommitting, he's taking the traits he wants, and he's forcing Rio to make well, that was hard risky. decisions. And here we go, Rio's finally getting something started on block, but Fox oh. is fighting his way out. Oh, the crate for and the a, kill. And a crate to the face. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Oh. And runs, wow. <laughs> runs the movement the and the decision making right now from Fox is impeccable. I mean, this is why he's here. He, obviously, he's in winner's finals. He's just going to be patient, and he's going to lane this out, which is very smart. And at any moment, he, he is prone to just dashing in. And he has done that, or yeah. he'll run up grab, so just it, like yeah. that. So it, very mean, smart. So, I mean, Rio can't just keep walking forward. If you notice, he's kind of you know, going back and forth because of that. Look, honestly, Rio's going to have to make something happen here. He's going to have to start going a little ham, possibly even playing a little unsafe, because the way he's playing right now, it's not working. There we go, Brian I was just going to say that. I was going to say he's going to have to get a little bit risky here. Oh, no, oh, and definitely combo. not drop combos. Gets it down two for okay. his trouble. Not bad, but still, he, he's got a lot of room to close here. He's got to close the distance and get some pressure. Fox is just not letting that happen. Nope, and of course he uses the throw to put her all the way back. Yeah, mixing it up with grabs, yeah. coming in, doing a string, and then backing off, running under all of Rio's jumps. I mean, Fox is playing ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Rio's getting some going here. But he teleports all the way back out. I, don't, I do not understand Good that block. decision. Yeah, that was huge. He definitely saw that extra coming. Oh my goodness. And that's going to do it. Yeah, it All should. unbreakable damage. All unbreakable. I always, I always felt like uh, that's one of Katana's really strong points. It's her unbreakable it combos. Even in MK9, that was that was why Katana was so, so hard to fight. Because you knew if you got touched once or if you made one bad jump read, you were going to eat a fan. You were yeah, going to eat at least 30% that, yeah. that was just... It was just free for him, or for her, excuse me. And of course, even if you had the meter at the end of the round, 
You it just doesn't matter. sit there and watch it. Yeah, nothing you can do about it. All right, so this is the most shades of MK9 I've seen Katana be played so far in MKX. Very true. I would 100% agree with that. And of course, in MKX, she has a lot more tools. Yeah. She also has other variations. I mean, if this playstyle may not work against a certain character that we haven't seen too much of yet, she right. always has two other variations that are very solid. Mournful is very, I think, unexplored and very good. Yeah. And Assassin is, is very good as well. I actually really like Mournful. I think someone's going to open a can of crazy with that variation soon. Well, I actually saw Neo Russell play Mournful yep. at, at uh, what, Cannon Cup? And it was really entertaining, and he got a lot of damage, and it was a great variation for sure. Right now, these confirms for, from oh Sonic Fox, he's just slowly inching his way towards $60,000. This looks... He's playing so unbelievably This looks patient effortless right now. for him when he's playing one of the best NRS players, period. I mean, that's, In the history that, that's of NRS. How, that's how incredible he's playing right now. Rio just, he really just can't get anything started. Good nope. block. No punish, though. He needs, that mean, was huge. Yeah, there's there's not a lot that he can do. Sonic Fox is not leaving any holes. And is, and I I mean, do you think we could potentially see a character switch if he doesn't win this match? I would hope so. I really would. Possibly a different character, maybe even Pyromancer. True. Yeah. But then, of course, that also opens the door for you know Sonic Fox to... Pick to go to Aaron well, Black, yes. possibly, or any other character that he would want to play. We've seen him use Ermac. We have He's seen a great him. Ermac. He has a ridiculous Ermac. He does. I really hate praising Sonic Fox so much, but the kid has earned it. I mean, let's be honest. He has really earned all of it from all of us. A very true statement. He has absolutely earned it. And oh, again, the X-Ray, and that's definitely going to close it out. And Rio, unfortunately, taking the last couple of hits of that X-Ray, he's going to go down to 0-3. Yeah, he has a, a huge hole to climb out of right now. <laughs> Just, just no respect. He's just having fun up there, man. Actually, to be completely honest, looking at him, I don't think he's having fun. He, that is the most serious I've ever seen his face. He wants this. Yo, he's one game away from $60,000. He's not smiling. $60, he's not messing around. He is in there for this. And his ears are at full attention. Yes, they are. Rio needs to make something happen. I, I, we, okay, good. We're sitting on character selection. He needs to, we he need needs to, to, he needs to make something switcher. happen with a different character. Oh, yes. do it. And if he plays Bone Shaper, yes, this could possibly be the answer. I think Bone Shaper is still one of the best characters in this game. Yeah, I mean, see, uh, season eight in the Pro League, we had a season. Oh, I'm sorry. Week, Excuse me, week eight. Week eight. I was yeah. like, wait, we've already had. Where did the seven <laughs> seasons go? Excuse me, week eight. Yeah. Yeah, we saw a uh, Bone Shaper or like a, a Shinnok Shinnok Shaper, mirror. Yeah, yeah mirror. I think this could possibly be the character that does it for him. I definitely respect the switch. He had to do something. Space Butter? Space Butter. Hashtag Space Butter. And that down forward. This is a this is very good because Shinnok has great buttons that can compete with Katana's at that mid-range. He also has Hell Sparks. He has an incredible standing reset. And Sonic and Fox Sonic just kind of saying, I don't care. not letting us see any of that. Okay, so now he has completely switched up his playstyle. He was, you know, leaning it out before, now he's disgusting. just going it's in. absolutely disgusting. Yo, how this, intelligent this kid this is. This is tournament point right now. Tournament Fox. point, Sonic Fox. This is this is honestly looking like the easiest match for Sonic Fox against one of his most likely hardest opponents. Yeah, that he's already lost to. He just lost to him a few weeks ago. And it was, it was obviously crazy, offline man. This is very This is crazy. Of course, this was before he was playing Katana. That's true. God, he could just make any character just look phenomenal. Like, like, as I was saying that, I hate saying it, but... Watch, everyone's gonna cry for... <laughs> yeah. <Nerf> Katana. <laughs> Everyone was, uh, buff, buff, and now they're like, ah, oh, she's OP. We should just not let Sonic play these games. I mean, that... Oh, wow, a be... rare drop from Sonic Fox there. I mean, Ryo's definitely still in it. Barely. Okay. Can you get something go. going here? There we go. What's the mix Goes up? for the down four. He could've got a forward four instead, but he makes it work anyways. Okay. Getting the momentum oh, in his favor, wait and a that second. just turned it around. This he, if he has a chance to break, he really needs to. No, nope. and, and he's he gonna grab. Throws. He's not gonna let him. Obviously, Sonic Fox is probably looking for that, and he want to get that damage in. Sonic Fox is so close to taking this and winning sixty thousand dollars. Oh, oh no. he dodges. Oh, is Rio gonna stay? He could finish it and right he here. Is. What a comeback by wow. Rio! My goodness, he is not out. I actually just clapped right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then I realized I was doing it. Oh, what? That was so risky. He wanted to keep him in the corner, get the combo in the corner. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Yeah, unfortunately for Rio. Rio is still safe. Nice down four to get under the fans. 
Oh, scary jump in right there. He's, he's trying to low profile those jump, those crossovers, which yeah. is really, really smart. There it is right there. We just saw it happen. Oh, runs right into a fan. It's really hard to run a katana because she has the fan option going oh, with the low. Here we go. Nice little combo here. Sonic Fox the trying to close damage. this out. 42% and he can finish that. Rio is not out of it yet though. He's gonna use the armor. Here's a confirm. What's the mix up? Oh! oh and good the decision! Puts himself in the corner, that's scary. And meter burns it, goes in. So okay. close, Rio. Is there fighting. it is! And there it is! Rio! Wow, I'm biased right now. Jeez. <laughs> Even the crowd, too. Even the crowd is starting to root <laughs> against Sonic Fox. I mean, we just we just watched him win so much. It's I love that fatality, man. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> but I got these Clap little your hands. hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rio making a slight adjustment. Even even still, though, he almost lost. He did. I mean, he definitely maintained his composure. I, I mean, those were clutch wins. I for do sure. feel though that this. Should be the character that Rio uses for this grand finals. I mean, he's still in it. He's got a long road ahead of him, though. Yeah, about eight games, or excuse me, seven more games worth. Yep, seven more games. Don't repeat it, please. I'm so <laughs> glad they can't hear me right now because Rio would. Well, he knows what he's getting himself into. Good blocks. Rio is picking his spots pretty well here. There we go. And that that blaster on block is only minus three. So a very safe so option, it's, a, it's yeah. a very safe option. Oh, what a conversion, though. That at the very top of the screen. Our Sonic knockdown Hawks. mix up. And that's going to do up. for this. Wait a oh, second. Rio's still in it. Oh, oh, wait a second. No punish, though. That was huge. Oh, oh, no. Man, little scramble at the end there. He had a couple opportunities yep. to do some damage. but Once uh, again, Sonic Fox is on two. tournament, tournament point. point. Tournament point, Sonic Fox. Once again, can Rio clutch it out? I almost don't want to say it. This is so tense, I don't want to say anything. You don't want to jinx it? I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> no one heard you. No one heard me, good. Look, I mean, Rio's so frustrated, he's starting to throw barrels. That's what I do when I get frustrated. <laughs> I don't believe and that. just the walk-up throw. This mix-up, it's... It's hard to find barrels to throw, though. It's true. Try, he is trying to space out that okay. down. Oh, oh no. no, he missed the NJP. The problem, that was huge. The problem with that is he's catching it with the very tip of the. Oh, and, and that, that is going is to, going do to it. be it. Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox wins sixty thousand dollars. He's been playing so well all season. He's been dominant throughout every single week. Even the weeks he took off, he came back and he still just did it. He's been dominant offline. And because of that, because of all the hard work that he's put into it, Sonic Fox is your ESL MKX Pro League Season 1 champion. Sonic Fox just shouted, Katana's not broken. Sonic Fox, you are the ESL MKX Pro League champion, and you're taking home $60,000. How do you feel right now? Ah! <laughs> This is, that's it. <laughs> now let's talk about your entire run throughout this entire season. The sacrifice you had to make playing on Sundays, playing on Wednesdays, and then coming here, playing through all your matches, was it worth it? Yes, it's 60K. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> I asked you this at Fatal 8, and I think the question still stands. Can anybody stop you? I mean, we'll find out at EVO where I finally get my final run back against the only DJ team who's the only other person that so far has stopped me. Well, this MIT, but like, uh, I mean, his Tanya's not the, Tanya's not the same anymore, so I'm very confident in the Tanya matchup. I mean, watch him quote me on Twitter, it's fine. We're good, we're good friends and all, but I'm really looking forward to my run back against Jeremy DJT at EVO, and hopefully I'll get it. And maybe I might not get bodied in pools, so we'll see what happens. Final question for you, Sonic Fox. What would you like to say to all the people that have supported you all these years and are now cheering for you right now? I love you all! <laughs> but no, <laughs> seriously, like I said, I have to give shout-outs again. Like I said, thank you all for all you guys for all coming out and watching the insane ESL Put your mouth. So <laughs> coming out and watching the insane ESL tournament, which is amazing. Like I said, shout-outs to everybody on 
with, with like the whole testing my community, um, everybody supporting me, like I said, the Skull Girls, because RLC is my Skull Girls okay, um, community, really good friends, all just supporting me. Um, shout out to uh, like I said, Katana Prime for showing me the way. Shout out to Rio for giving me a really, really good match and not getting invited like everybody else did. But um, <laughs> and I guess, um, I'm gonna thank you guys for playing this whole tournament. Critical Reaction for getting me out here. Fire Liger because he wanted to get a shout out and. Um, <laughs> For our community, all, all of that. Just thank you guys so much. It's Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your season one champion, CR Sonic Fox. What an incredible tournament. What an incredible season overall that we've had. The EU guys, you've had amazing players come over. We've had amazing players. CIS, just everyone involved. Sonic Fox did it. I think it was the surprise of not many people. I think a lot of people will undeniably expect the Sonic Fox to at least get grand finals. Just maybe not with Katana. I think that was really that was the uh, that was a surprise. surprise that today. was that the was a surprise. I mean... Uh, <laughs> It just kind of goes to show, really, you know, not to say that, because uh, obviously Katana is represented really well in other top players. There's no doubt about it. Definitely. Um, but Sonic Fox really taking a character that people thought was weak. Right. You know, weak, lacking, and just really proving everyone wrong. Showing that she can shine uh, at this top level among other players as well. Fantastic stuff. So huge congratulations, Sonic Fox, bagging himself $60,000. Uh, the single day most prize pot that we've ever it. seen in a competitive world Can we? Can we just talk about again how young he is and how much money that means to him? At oh, 17, dude. he yeah. has just won 60,000. That this, is this ridiculous. Is, uh, this is the McLean college fund for sure. Well, I was about to say, that's the amazing thing for someone his age. Like, this will only ever go towards his future, which is no doubt going to be a bright one. Yes, yes. definitely. Whether yeah. it's in fighting games or something else that he wants to pick up, I think just his determination that he showed in this community in fighting games will definitely carry over to whatever else he picks up. I mean, the dedication is real. It's paid off. Tremendous player, man. Tremendous player through and through. Well deserved. Earned his right to be a number one seed from North America. Mid-season showdown winner. And here he is with Katana taking top 16 of season one global finals. Will we see him again in season two? Ooh, I don't think that's that's a, that's a given. Is that like even that's a given? I don't think that's should we, the, the real question is, should we ban him? Yes. Okay. I'm it's flat. unanimous. I'm no flat. more Sonic Fox season two. Unfortunately, season one's winner is not allowed to compete in season two, yeah. so that's been taken care of. Brian, what do you, what do you think? Official? Should we do it? Yeah, we'll 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 send some uh, emails. We'll see how it goes. All right. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk to Tyler. So again, I also want to thank you guys coming out all the way from from Europe. It's yeah, been a pleasure man. commentating. Oh, the pleasure's been all ours. Thank you for having yeah. us. It's been a tremendous two months. It's been a complete honor to, uh, I guess, sort of just be as involved as we have been. Obviously, you guys, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. To be this involved with the game that is responsible for us being here in the first place. You know, like we're all dedicated to Mortal Kombat. It's how a lot of us started our passion yep. for the video games. And so, you know. I want to thank our sponsors, Razor, Warner Brothers, and of course, Netherrealm. On behalf of ESL, thank you, everyone. We will see you in season two.